Over the next 30 days, I'll be trying to complete an Animal Crossing island using nothing but DIY items. I can't buy things from nooks, I can't receive items as gifts. By the end of this challenge, we'll have a completely handcrafted island. And aside from crafting all of our own items, here are the rest of the rules. Time travel is in fact permitted. The island must be completed in 30 real life days. I'm not allowed to use any Nintendo Online features, and I also can't use the Happy Home Paradise DLC. But that's not all, because I also have some goals that I'm going to try and meet within this 30 days for this challenge challenge to be a success. These don't need to be completed in any particular order, but the first one is going to be trying to get at least three villagers that rank at least in the top 50. The website that ranks these villagers is linked down below. I also need to achieve a fully upgraded house, just all the rooms, not all the loans. That house needs to receive an S tier ranking from the Happy Home Academy, and the island itself needs to reach a five star rating. And finally, the real reason I'm attempting this challenge, I'll be looking to create an island that's worthy of being toured by a notable YouTuber. Getting five stars is great, but the real reward comes in the form of admiration and acceptance from my peers. And this YouTuber could be anybody. Consul Kato, Mr. Beast, Conan O'Brien, we just need a YouTuber with some level of notoriety to want to tour this island. So let's get to work. All right, our journey begins once again. You know what's interesting about this part of the game is that Timmy and Tommy go from like having established jobs in a travel agency to having to deal with me. And then they just kind of end up wandering around an island and running a little shop. But I don't know, this seems like a good gig. We're gonna keep it simple and call myself Dan. And I think for the design of my character, I'm gonna kind of go with a lot of similar settings that I, I typically do with my Animal Crossing characters. I, I don't know about you, but whenever I start something new in Animal Crossing, I kind of just keep my character looking <laughs> exactly the same. Now, as for the map layout itself, this is always really, really exciting. Um, I'm seeing some very unique looking maps. In fact, this first one in the top left has resident services really far from the airport and it's probably not perfectly aligned, but it's like close. Let's just, let's just grab this one. I am desperate to see the first villagers I get because if we get one of those like top tier villagers out of the gate, I'm going to be ecstatic. It's the 30 day DIY island. It looks like our, tr our fruit trees are cherry which is awesome. I don't think I've ever gotten cherry out of all the times I've started new islands now. Maybe I have, I don't I don't know. A cherry's exciting. Oh my gosh. My first villagers ended up being, I think that's Paula and Stinky. Definitely not the top tier villagers <laughs> that I'm looking for. That's okay. I do feel like it's kind of rare to get your like favorite villagers right out of the gate, right off the jump, right? You know, this is this is just something we need to work towards. Let's, let's at least introduce ourselves, we'll be polite. It is Paula. Uh, and then and then Stinky's here. We got to get a move on. They're just kind of rushing me. They do not want to talk right now. All right, here's the center of resident services. And like, if I go to the airport, I kind of dodge this tree, dodge this tree. I'm trying to just go straight down. <laughs> it's not lined up. It's not even close. But hey, I mean, it's pretty cool. I have a ton of room to play with the entrance. I can make that a pretty awesome deal. So of course, the first order of business is to find my home, like where I want to live. And because a lot of this challenge is really based around design, I think I'm going to do what I like to do on a new island and try and put as many people on the beach as I possibly can. I just want everyone out of my way because I'm trying to build here and moving stuff is expensive. We do not have a ton of money to play with. Um, fortunately for us, we kind of have a, this whole side of the island to work with. So I'm going to try and put my tent somewhere over here on this beach. Not a terrible spot. I do wish I could have tucked it in a little bit closer to this shoreline here because I'm going to try and throw a neighbor right next to me. And <laughs> I'm just going to put people, I, I, maybe if we're lucky, we can fit three houses, my house and the two starters, like right here. Stinky just literally gave me his whole house. Like we just met. I just got off the plane and you are entrusting me with literally every possession you have <laughs> just in my pocket. I'm going to put you right here and you're going to need to hope that climate change doesn't sweep us all away. Okay. Just never trust a stranger you just met at the airport to determine where you're going to spend a portion of your life. It looks like I, the closest I can get to my tent is about right here. There we go. All right. I, I have a good feeling. I think we can fit Paula's house right behind Stinky's as well. And this is good. Having these first houses just well out of the way gives me a lot of hope for the early like designing and terraforming we're going to be doing. Because I don't know about you, I really like to have a clean, fresh slate when I start terraforming a new island. So this is pretty exciting. We need to find Paula now, which is something I'm sure nobody's ever 
said <laughs> voluntarily. Uh, but okay, here we go. We found Paula. We're going to go ahead and find you a spot for your house too. I know exactly where you're going to live. Aren't you excited? Can I literally just put this in the ocean? I, you know, stand right here and just kind of... All right. If it can go anywhere, it's right here. Well, maybe a little bit closer to the, <laughs> the grass. But I don't know. Oh, it'll work. Here, let me try to move it a little bit back. There's no way I can fit a fourth over here. So let's just try... Yes, this is great. Oh, I'm so happy the first three buildings are just completely out of the way. <laughs> so the next task, of course, is to gather up some sticks and we're also gonna be asked to gather up some fruit as well. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab 10 branches and just a, just a handful of cherries. Uh, I, chances are I will probably go ahead and like take as many cherries as I can find. Also, now that I'm free to check my inventory, I do have one more order of business. Yep. <laughs> That's right, I am not allowed to wear clothing. You thought this was gonna be a challenge where I just get to buy whatever I need? No, I have to craft my own clothing if I wanna wear anything. Or I do have the option of making something myself. There is, you know, custom design tools. Uh, that does count because crafting things is making items yourself. So why wouldn't custom designing be? So I might customize myself uh, a nice little shirt, something to keep a little bit warm. <laughs> uh, today, I'll just need to figure out what the heck that is. I have a feeling this is how we're gonna roll for quite a long time. We need to start getting crafting recipes that allow us to dress ourselves, basically. So I've picked every single cherry that I can currently access and I've found every tree branch that's already laying on the ground. So this should be more than enough to kind of get us started. All right, Tom Nook is lighting the inaugural uh, fire pit. It's time to officially start our new lives. Our new lives on uh, G-Wiz, as in G-Wiz. This eyelid's gonna be a disaster. All right, now that my belly is full of uh, whatever cherry goo is in these glasses, I'm gonna go ahead and get some rest. We're going to work our way towards paying down our first loan. And of course, to do that, we're going to need to get a whole bunch of Nook Miles, essentially. And here is what we are currently dealing with. Uh, we have our trusty dusty lantern and we have a little radio. And Tom Nook did just give me a camping cot uh, as, you know, a housewarming present. But also, in order to progress, I actually need to use the camping cot. So, this is it. This is the one and only time I will be using an item that I didn't make myself, purely just to like get through the next phase of the game. <laughs> but after this, I'm, I'm waking up, I'm picking this thing up, and I'm never using it again. All right, Camping Cot, thank you for your service. Let's move on. Got ourselves our very first and only Nook phone, which is gonna be great. And we are now being sent off along our way to gather up 5,000 miles to pay off our crummy little tent. And there's our first 500 miles now. <laughs> we got G Wiz miles, which is great. Now the first bits of mail you get when you first start a new island are from Nintendo. They give you a couple of very interesting things. Uh, and this is true. These are items that you in fact did not craft. And so instead they're basically just, for ooh, I was gonna say free money, but wait a minute. That's our first crafting recipe, which we can't learn just yet. We need to go actually learn DIYs, but this is what we're here for. We're here to gather up as many of those as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and take that DIY workshop immediately so that we can craft our first items. And what I've just realized about this challenge, like it's just kind of setting in now. Um, I'm gonna have to craft all of my own tools forever. Normally when I get a little bit into Animal Crossing, I start to go to Nooks and buy tools from them. Like that's just what you do. Um, I'm not really allowed to do that. I'm only allowed to use Nooks as a way to progress the story. If, if not using Nooks somehow prevents me from getting five stars, then I need to use it for that. The real rule is that I can't decorate with any items that I purchase. But you know, in reality, I think it's also a little unfair to go in there and like, buy tools and stuff, especially when you can craft your own. So I will not be using Nooks to buy tools or anything. I'm only going to use it if it becomes an impediment to completing the challenge, if that makes sense. Speaking of using Nooks, I'm also going to use it to make money. It is, of course, the source of the entire Animal Crossing economy. And so right now what I'm going to do is sell some stuff. 
Um, we can, oh, these are such cool items too. Like for the type of island we're probably going to be making, these are both perfect items. <laughs> but yeah, all of this, um, DIYs. I will need to buy some DIYs, for example. So again, if it, if it continues to move things along, then I will use nooks in that capacity. In any case, pretty much every item that I have can be sold unless it's like a crafting material. I'm going to keep some cherries. I'm going to sell some cherries. I'm going to sell the clothing. Um, so this should actually make me enough to probably buy DIY for beginners, I hope. Let's see. Uh, 4,000 pounds. Wow. You know, um, liberating yourself of basic society seems to be a decent money-making method. That's, that's not bad. Selling things got us some points, which is awesome. And first-time buyer buying those DIYs got us some points. Wow. <laughs> Two-fifths of the way. Uh, and that's it. That's all the points for now. I'm looking for fish, and I'm seeing in the distance my very first balloon. Maybe I should have brought, bought that slingshot recipe after all. Actually, I don't think it would matter. I think the slingshot takes, um, you know, chopping up logs, which I can't do yet. But uh, you know, I'm just I'm just going to enjoy some some fishing. It's been a very busy uh, first several minutes, and I, I think uh, I think I could really use the break. I will be going ahead and taking all the different fish I catch and putting them aside for blathers. Uh, I think in order to get five stars, we are going to need to at least get the museum upgraded from a tent. Um, if not, have things donated. You guys can let me know in the comments how that all works. I would love to make this so I don't worry about giving the first items to Blathers, but I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I, I think it's actually really important that you do some of the museum if your goal is five stars, but I don't know. I could be misremembering. Um, you guys will let me know. I caught my first Popeye goldfish already. I feel like I didn't catch one of those until like over a year into the game last time I played. Maybe I just wasn't trying too hard. That's that's kind of a cool catch. Do you guys see how nervous the Popeye goldfish looks? Honestly, whatever it's nervous about is making me nervous. So this is the first one to go. It's freaking me out too much. Our next order of business is to place down the museum tent. I'm going straight to the beach with this because again, I want it out of my way. Um, I think I can fit a good amount of stuff on this beach, which is pretty nice. I'm going to try to put it somewhere over here. We'll just do our best. All right, this is about as close to the edge as I can get it, uh, but this is good. This, I can still walk around it, and we still have plenty of room over here for nooks and maybe even a house, which would be awesome. Our DIY collection has grown, which is really nice to see because uh, these are the menus we're gonna be living in. Uh, so I'm about to craft myself uh, just a nice batch of tools. These should help me start earning a lot of miles towards paying off this first loan. Now, thankfully at this time we are in summer, so this is a really good time to be catching bugs. I think bugs are gonna be a huge game changer for, for us right now because we're able to catch a lot of them really quickly and they should contribute very nicely to getting a lot of early nook points. But for now, let me go ahead. I'm gonna place down the fish that we caught just to get them out of my inventory. I need as much space as possible to catch bugs and gather supplies. Tom Nook also gave us some flowers, which I am gonna plant right here by the entrance. Uh, this should also get us some points, I hope. Let's see, it's five flowers, no points. I ended up catching enough bugs to break my first net. So I guess that's 10 bugs. I got 300 points for that. And uh, that's it. So points are kind of slow going, but uh, we'll make a new net and I'm going to craft some things as well. I'm just going to go ahead and pester some of the uh, the trees around here and try to find, you know, some wasps so I don't get hurt. But then also, uh, you know, chop them up for logs and begin crafting some uh, furniture. Mostly I would really like to get a uh, the, the simple DIY workbench just for outside since we're gonna be crafting so much. And uh, also I think in doing that, I'll probably earn a bunch of points, I hope. I, I really felt like it was easier to get points early on. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe this was a really ambitious goal for episode one. All right, there goes my first ax. Let's collect our spoils. We did also achieve some points, so we'll see those in a little bit. Anyway, let's start crafting up some of our stuff. Oh, it looks like we need some iron. All right, I know where to go find that. Let's collect up some of these points. Uh, we did get some points for, I believe, chopping up trees. We got some points for exterior decorator just now because I placed uh, the bugs that were in my pockets. That's it. But, uh, you know, we're, we're getting it done. Uh, I need to find myself some iron. Okay, yeah, see, I didn't even get all the rock, every everything harvested from it like to its full potential, but whatever. Um, there's also still bugs that I, I keep stopping to make sure I can catch, like the saw stag, heck yes, and 
the robust cicada. I made myself a hay bed just now. Uh, after making the simple DIY workbench, I saw this and thought, hey, <laughs> my first bed, that's great. Uh, I can also make a frying pan for some reason. That seems like a waste of iron right now, but a good item to have. Uh, and then there's like log stakes, other things. I'm gonna need crafting supplies to actually like place down villager homes. So I'm not gonna do any of that just yet, but I will craft up a watering can. After checking the recycling bin for the first time, I found a cardboard box, which I will take and then promptly sell because again, I did not make this myself. <laughs> just one more type of item that I'm not allowed to use. Looks like we got some points for doing something with the Nook phone. So we're almost at 4,000. And uh, I did also check the Nook stop, so I got the 50 points for doing that as well. You know what we could do is create our first bulletin board post. That's always a fun thing to do, right? I figured out a fitting welcome message, and now I need to just draw our mascot. Which probably looks something like that. I don't know, maybe we'll refine him in the future. Speaking of mascot, now might be a good time to, uh, you know, <laughs> create our first, uh, our first masterpiece of a t-shirt. Now, I'm not using the pro design tools yet, so we'll just keep this one really, really, really simple uh, because I can't do the, the sleeves and everything, um, you know, by themselves. But uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll do our best, right? Let's see, so we got the eyes, we got the mouth, move them down just a little bit, get them nice and centered, perfect. And just like that, oh, I can't wear it as a shirt. Uh, oh wait, top. I, for some reason I thought top was like a hat or something, I don't know, but there we go, just like that. We have our first article of clothing and <laughs> custom design. Uh, I think so, let's see. We got some points for a bulletin board message. There we go. And how much did we get for our first custom design? 500, okay. That is more like it, we are almost there. I also think that placing some stuff down in my tent will get me some points. And I do have my my bed made of hay, which we can put over here. I have no idea which side is the, the top and which side is the bottom. And then I have my simple DIY workbench, which I can put in the corner. I don't think that's enough stuff. So why don't we go ahead, we'll, we'll make a couple more things. How about an old fashioned wash tub? And then maybe a nice cozy place to sit. And then uh, maybe we'll place down some log stakes as well. Um, I don't know why. Maybe this is like a <laughs> three little nightstands next to my bed. I did get some points after crafting the log stakes. I did not get them from placing them down in my house. And I don't really have a lot of supplies to get more things to place down. I need 50 more points though. Oh, wait a minute. I just came out of the tent and I got more points. What is this? Horde reward. Okay. That is more like it. And just like that, my tent is paid off and now I can finally get Tom Nook to give me a real house, maybe with some storage. That would be kind of nice because we are gonna be collecting a lot of supplies. He's just let me know that the first home loan is gonna be 98,000 bells, but I'm not super worried about that. And thankfully we did just unlock Nook Miles Plus. I'm probably not gonna be doing these because <laughs> I've been playing forever. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, so I'm doing this really cool thing. Um, and I thought maybe you'd be interested. So I'm gonna design an island, like a whole island, but I'm only gonna use DIY recipes and I'm gonna do it in 30 days. And I was wondering if maybe you You're wanna- You're doing what? Uh, oh, I'm designing an island in 30 days with- Hey, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Blaine. What's up? So Dan calls me and mm -hmm. guess what he's doing? What? 30 day challenge with only DIYs. The thing that you and I were gonna do? Yeah, thing we were gonna do. What, did you tell him that our idea or what? No, I didn't tell him. Dan just stole our idea. Was he staying up all night on the AI chat room figuring out what to do again? I, I guess so. I just, I thought it'd be a fun- You did. You totally stole our Classic idea. Dan stealing ideas. Always. Like, do you have any original just ideas of your own, Dan? What, what's DMs happening? Asking for ideas, it's ridiculous, I just man. Can't even believe this this you know, you is, is gonna be harder than I thought. It is day two of designing an Animal Crossing island using only DIYs. Yesterday we landed on our new island and named it G-Wiz. I placed down my tent, took off my clothes, made some new clothes, and generally just kind of got all the day one Animal Crossing things done, including paying off my tent in that very same day. It's the 30 day DIY island. So I have a uh, good amount of goals today. I would really like to get all of the basic kind of building set up. So Nook's Cranny, I want a place for that. It's really nice to step out of my house and then have a DIY just at my doorstep. What is this? This is fantastic. I need these, as you know, the entire series is just 
me trying to collect as many DIYs as possible so that I can build out an island and try to get it maxed out to five stars. Uh, let's also see what kind of stuff we got in the mail. It looks like it's going to be some items that I immediately need to dispose of because I didn't make these myself. At least I don't think I did. Um, Happy Home is sending me some stuff. They're super excited to judge me completely. But I'm not excited, okay? I've never liked Happy Home. And what I'm about to do is going to feel... Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought it was going to be an item from them, but they actually sent me a DIY. So... I don't know, maybe Happy Home isn't so bad. And we're getting some miles today, of course, because our house is fully built. I am working on miles still, but I'm not going to let that, like, take up too much of my focus. I'm really just focused on, like, making money first and foremost. Look at these two just kind of aimlessly wandering around. Their, their tents are on the beach. I have to imagine High Tide came in and got them a little bit wet. They're probably not super thrilled about their sleep last night. Let's just find out, though. Um, the spot you found me is incredible. Oh! A cat that likes water. I didn't realize. I hope we can keep looking out for each other uh, like this. It's good to have buddies. Look at that. Stinky's all right. That's okay. Um, I've got something here for you. And a present, too? Oh, my gosh. It's, oh. A tulip hat. Yeah, I can't wear this. Um, no, I won't be pressing X and A and all that. No. No. Thanks, but no thanks. Just go ahead and put that right there. What about Paula? Getting a real good vibe from the tent plot you picked for me. Okay, good, good. Looks like everyone slept okay. All right, if they were mad, I wouldn't blame them. I came up with a recipe for a leaf umbrella. Do you guys talk to your villagers early on or do you get distracted by all the other stuff that happens? Because I feel like I miss out on some of these little presents and stuff. I, I didn't realize just talking to Paula would net me another DIY. The leaf umbrella is awesome. I think it's a really cool looking item. And uh, we're going to need to get pretty creative when it comes to different items to use around this island. We, again, need to get five stars, and that takes placing a lot of stuff. So it's good to have variety. Now might also be a good time to check out my new digs. Look at that. Congratulations to me. Uh, I now have a house, an actual house with storage, which is awesome. Now, I think storage in this particular Animal Crossing game that we're playing isn't going to be too big of a deal because... I have a lot of crafting supplies, but I'm not going to keep anything that I haven't made myself or would not benefit me in some material way when it comes to crafting or making money or what have you. So I can store a lot of this stuff and not really worry about running out of space, I think. I, I say that. We'll see if I end up eating my words. Uh, let's let's rearrange here a little bit. I'm going to put my hay bed, um, you know, kind of here in the corner. I'm going to put my... Uh, I, I guess decorative log stakes right there just jammed look at those spikes just jammed right into my nice wood floor we'll put our stool here maybe we'll put our wash basin or whatever that is right there and then yeah crafting table kind of in the upper corner there so yeah this is awesome my inventory is clear with the exception of some peaches and some tools we need to get the shovel that's step one but in order to get that shovel we're gonna need to give some stuff over to blathers i think and i believe we got to give him like 15 things i'm just gonna start taking all of these critters and <laughs> putting them in his care i know how much he loves bugs and yeah, we should start to unlock some recipes, make some progress. Let me just go through this whole process now, giving Blathers all of this stuff one thing at a time. So he did give me the recipes for the shovel and the vaulting pole. We have five more things that we need to donate. If we can find, I believe, all six fossils, that should cover us no problem. I think there's six by now because it's been a couple days. And uh, I need to afford a vaulting pole, which means we do need to chop up our trees. Um, which we can do no problem. All right, chopped up some trees until I lost my axe, which is more than enough supplies to make the vaulting pole. We're gonna cross over the river and we're gonna see what we can find. All right, first time leaving the center of town. There we go. We've crossed over into new territory now. And my focus again is, is mostly fossils, which is great because there's two literally right here next to each other. I love that. So far, this has also been a fantastic day for just getting points. I think day two is just normally like that in Animal Crossing. But yeah, we've just been having the phone go off constantly. I'm going to stop looking at it for a bit. I'm just going to let the points kind of build up. I know hitting a rock was one of my daily Nook Miles goals. So I know I'm just going to get some points for this. And this represents fossil number four, which uh, is good enough. Fossil, like four fossils. That's awesome. 
there is a chance there's a couple more, but they would be up in these cliffs, which I don't currently have access to, but I will shortly. And, uh, wow, wow. This is a lot of, like, naturally spawning cliffs. Let me take a look at the map here. I didn't even notice this, but, like, the right side of the map... Oh, wow, yeah, all of our cliff is, like, in the corner. So there's even flat area that goes into the top left, like, in the back of the map. I've never had a map like this before. Uh, of course, we're probably going to terraform it into oblivion, but <laughs> it's just kind of cool to see. I, I think this is a really unique uh, Animal Crossing map layout. Certainly not, like, one I've ever... Uh, seen naturally spawning before or had myself. I still have not yet crafted a slingshot, so that's disappointing. Everything Blathers needs to upgrade his tent into a proper museum has now been achieved, which is great. And I've just finished giving Gulliver everything he needs to get out of here, to leave. Now, he's going to send me something in the mail, and I, when I, while I was gathering up those parts, I thought to myself, like, why am I doing this? But I think it is just for the points. I do think you get points for helping him out. At least I hope so. Because I'm not keeping the rewards. Like, I'm just going to sell those. And I hope they're worth something. Because selling rewards like that is is kind of hard. <laughs> it's, it's hard to let go of things. Yes, I did get points. It is hard to let go of things that are, like, difficult to obtain in the game. You know, this is not the way I would normally behave while playing an Animal Crossing game. But, uh... You know, that's the nature of things. We're not we're not keeping stuff. Okay? We're not we're not sentimental. We we can make our own way. All right? We don't need your handouts, Gulliver. Anyway, the next stop now that the museum is all complete and Gulliver's been placated is of course Tom Nook. We now need to take on the quest that has us gathering up materials for the Nook's Cranny location. Uh the proper store that we need to put up. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty much the most useless thing you can possibly imagine for a challenge like this. It is going to be great for making money, but it's not going to be, you know, really much use to me other than that. I think I'm going to need to make a habit out of buying things from there just to get the store fully upgraded, just to make absolutely sure all of my five-star requirements are met. But, it, you know, that's just a waste of money to me. I'm not excited about that at all. Speaking of buying stuff though, I am finally going to buy the slingshot recipe. Too many balloons now have evaded me and uh, that needs to stop immediately. So slingshot recipe obtained and I am just trying to sell some excess bugs and fish that I've caught that don't need to be donated to the museum. I'm trying to clean up my inventory a bit because now I've been asked to gather up 30 of each type of wood and 30 iron nuggets. It looks like Paula's going to do me a solid and give me some stuff for the shop. Is it? Oh, I thought it was going to be iron. Figure out how to make a shovel. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, it's a pretty good shovel, meaning it's not like a flimsy shovel, right? Look at that. I've I've never had that happen before. I've never had a villager give me a, a fully completed tool at this stage. Usually it's like, oh, here's some iron or here's some logs. First wasps. Nice. Gee whiz. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, of course, I don't have a ton of inventory space to be uh, carrying around wasps and their nest, but we can just go ahead and put those over here with their friends. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe one day, if we save up enough nests, we can craft up, oh my gosh, <laughs> speaking of nests, we can craft up some of the uh, beehive items, which are amazing. I always like to have a lot of those on hand. I see our first balloon in the distance, except I didn't, I didn't actually craft the slingshot, I just, I just got the recipe for the slingshot, so never mind. That's that was a trick. That was a trick, and uh, yeah, I just I tricked you. That was not the first balloon, and if you thought it was, then you're a silly person. Looks like Stinky is gonna give us the hookup. Please give me iron. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you so much. Stinky is becoming very quickly my favorite villager. I know that. Listen, I know that the nameplate and the fur is all puke green, but listen. Hear me out. Looks aren't everything. Okay, Stinky's pretty awesome. Stinky's been nothing but fantastic, to be quite frank with you. Um, <laughs> I'm almost done. I have 30 of the regular wood, the hardwood. I have 25 softwood. Iron is going to be a struggle, and I'm starting to uh, get a little bit tired of chopping the trees on this island. Mostly because the trees on this island are, uh, you know, filled with bees. And I don't really want to get stung, and I'm kind of tired of shaking them all. <laughs> So I'm tempted to use my my one and only Nook Miles ticket on a trip to one of those islands and, and just, I want to go out there and decimate it. 
Always pick your weeds. <laughs> I screwed up. I, as soon as I started hitting the rock, I'm like, oh, shoot. That's going to be two entire potentially iron nuggets that I'm not going to get from this rock. So having to waste this Nook Miles ticket is looking more and more likely. From what I can tell, this is the last rock I have access to without the ladder. And yes, it is the money rock. That's perfect. Uh, this is perfect because I also have my first like money spot as well. And this money rock means that we are going to be able to uh, plant a 10K money tree, which will yield in total 30K, a 20K profit. If we do this every single day, uh, this should be some really nice semi-passive income for us, which is great to see. Uh, just for those of you who are a little bit newer to Animal Crossing, this is a tip for you. Go after that money rock, you know, get get it to its fullest potential, and then take, you know, 10,000 bells from it, find this hole, bury yourself a money tree, and then you can pick it up and move it wherever you want. I like to do this. I like to put them kind of close to wherever my house is, and you kind of have four growing at any given time, maybe five, I think four. I'm not too good at math. It just depends on the speed in which the trees grow. But you can just plant it right here. And uh, yeah, every day I'm just going to plant another one next to it. And once one fully grows, I'll chop it down and I'll just keep doing that. As long as you play daily, uh, you'll always have a money tree every day to harvest. And if you plant 10k, it's guaranteed that it will spawn 30k when it's fully grown. All right, before we head off to our first Nook Miles Island ever... Let's go ahead and clear out our inventory of things we need to sell, and let's go ahead and craft any last minute things we haven't crafted yet. I don't know, but I think like the big boy axe is in the crafting menu for me, which means like I can chop down trees and not just use a flimsy axe. I could be wrong about that. Maybe we have to order it separately, but uh, yeah, that would be kind of nice. And also we got the mug that fell out of a tree, so that should be worth a little bit of money. Uh, some duplicate fish and bugs are worth 1100 bells i'll take it and i just realized that actually the axe is probably in this set of recipes right here the pretty good tools recipes thankfully with all of that gathering i was doing i have a ton of points i haven't yet redeemed i don't know if you guys save up your points but this is so satisfying so we're gonna go through here we're gonna grab this which is obviously times two because uh we got that daily and then I have a whole look at this. <laughs> if that's from cutting logs, this one's from hitting some rocks, it looks like. This is from finding the, our first fossil. We did get points for helping Gulliver. We got points for either digging up or planting a money tree whenever we dug the money out of the hole. We got points for shaking fruit from trees. And that was it, but 5,230 points. We can now buy these better tools. I definitely want to leave here with a good axe. I'm kind of tired of using the flimsy axe. And with that, we can now make stronger tools, including the axe I was looking for. We can also make the slingshot, which I have refused to make thus far. So yes, we will be upgrading our flimsy axe to a regular axe, and then we'll be getting a slingshot. And I think we'll be on our way to our Nook Miles Island. I know I don't need a slingshot on one of those islands. I just want to get like all the tools in my pockets because I keep missing stuff. I forgot about this, but my rewards for helping Timmy get these supplies are different bits of like furniture and and clothing, things that I'm immediately going to turn around and sell right back to him. All right, we're flying off now to our very first Nook Miles Island. I'm not 100% sure there will be a villager waiting for us when we get there, but maybe there will be. That would be kind of cool. Maybe we'll get someone nice. Yikes. <laughs> this is not really good luck for a first island. There is a torrential downpour. I... I don't see this a whole lot. Um, <laughs> so I'm already a bit stressed out. And if there is a villager here, it's probably not going to be a good one. There is a villager and it is Celia. I know part of my progress depends on getting them, but 195 is not really a great rating. So I'm probably going to go ahead and just, you know, focus on destroying their campsite. That's, that's going to be my goal. Ooh, free fossil. Massive flaw in my plan. I was just about done with the island. I thought, oh, I'll just go up on the cliff and grab this last rock. I don't have a ladder yet. And I have 29 out of 30 of the iron nuggets I need. So I now need to spend 2,000 points for one iron nugget. Unless there's a rock somewhere on my own island that I missed. I, I'm speechless. Right, I just cannot believe my luck. This is probably it's probably karma island number two also raining <laughs> this is weird this is so weird also i thought when you didn't have a ladder it didn't give you <gasps> what eric is rated number 27 
on the list. Unbelievable find. I was going to spend the entirety of our time here complaining and wishing bad things to happen to, to the Dodos and Tom Nook and everyone who put me in this situation. But now I see that this was all for a reason. This Our trip today had purpose to it. it it's as if Tom Nook know, knew that Eric was out here in the rain, lost, cold, scared. Eric, listen, man, come live with me full time. You're talking about living summer full time. Hey, like, gee whiz, right? Say it with me. Gee whiz. I honestly don't know if I have it in me to destroy Eric's campsite. <laughs> I just, I think I'm just gonna, you know, gather up a few trees and some fruit and stuff, get my iron that I need and, and just go. Uh, this is, this is awesome. Wow. I chopped down the coconut tree. I'm leaving the other trees on the ground as they are right now because it's raining a lot and Eric is obviously going to need some shelter of some form because he doesn't even have a tent over on Gee Whiz yet. So I'm, I'm letting Eric, you know, have, <laughs> have those supplies. I'm going to fly away without them because I do not have the heart to chop down those trees. I cannot do it. We just got back with everything we need to get nooks built. And we can now place down the shop. This is, of course, as closest to the museum as I can possibly get it, but Nook's Cranny is now placed. It's right here. We have a location, and I think the only thing that's left to do is uh, skip ahead to when it's complete. Now, I only skipped ahead one day, so the construction of the museum is happening right now. We did not skip ahead to when the museum was actually built. I could have, but I also wanted to make sure I could still get like the daily Nook Miles goal. So just skipping ahead to one day was probably like the right thing to do for now. Once I have like a ton of points, it won't matter. I could skip a whole bunch. Um, and then the shop is now open today, which is what I wanted to see. I wanted to get things going and get these buildings actually built. That was my goal today. And I have to imagine this is Eric calling Tom Nook, begging for a place to live. <laughs> so the museum has a tent around it and Nook's Cranny is here. Oh, and we found our DIY too. <laughs> yes, I'm more excited about this than anything else. This was way better than a shop being built. Open wooden shelves. That's a great item. Let's step inside. This is huge because this represents the next phase of the early game. We have Nook's Cranny. Next is going to be Able Sisters. And boom, there's one of the Able Sisters now. So, you know, a bit more time skipping and we could probably get that shop built and thrown on a beach in no time flat. I am going to be buying up the store every single day, you know, just buying it up, turning around, selling everything back to them until the store is upgraded. And then I'm not going to come in here anymore. I'm going to be done after that point. Well, I mean, that's a lie. I do need to come in here and get recipes for new things and uh, maybe customization kits and stuff like that. But I'm not going to be worried about what nonsense they're, you know, working with. Turnips, I can see us probably doing turnips. So I guess, I guess this will still be a hub for us. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to like proudly claim that this store was useless. I, for our purposes, it's like, you know, 80% useless. There are indeed new recipes and recipe books to buy, so I'm gonna go ahead and just snap these up really quick. It's also just occurred to me that all of these cool wallpapers and floors, <laughs> I'm not entitled to. There are craftable wallpapers and floors, and we're gonna have to collect them if we want our house to look any different than it does now. Paul is teaching me reactions for the first time. I'm, I'm learning joy. I think this comes with a, a handful, right? That's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I haven't unlocked any reactions yet, which is excellent. The other thing I forgot to do before I time skipped was plant all of my fruit trees. There were there were a few things. I got so eager to get nooks built that I, I forgot <laughs> completely. I wanted to do some stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to plant the uh, peach trees just over here for now. I'm going to keep them, you know, pretty close together and, and not overthink this too much just, just to get them in the ground. We'll make a proper farm at some point. But yeah, let's just get these out of the way. I'm also going ahead and just planting a couple of palm trees, trying to leave room for houses. I think a house could fit here, not sure. And I think a house could fit right here. So I just put a couple down for now and uh, that's good. That gives us some extra points and obviously a couple extra ways to make money. 
We have peaches there, coconuts there, and we even got our first reactions. And so we got some points for that too. Let's get some more points from the Nook Stop, some daily points there. Ultimately, I'm really happy with our progress today. It's day three of designing an Animal Crossing Island in 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we donated enough to upgrade our museum from a tent to an actual building. We found our very first villager, Eric, who is in the top 50, and we donated enough materials to complete Nook's cranny. It's the 30 day DIY. Today we're going to try and place down the three villager plots that we need for our three initial villagers that we got to go find. One of them already being Eric, which is awesome. I'm hoping today to find the next two, uh, but it looks like our current residents have their houses all fixed up. Let's see who's crafting. It is not stinky. Hopefully Paula is crafting. We will say hello though. Paula is not crafting, which is a shame. I was hoping to get that extra DIY today. As you know, we're going to need a lot of DIYs. And we are on day three of this challenge. So the anxiety, it's getting intense. We do of course have the fully finished museum now, well, minus Brewster. And this is great because now I can spam a whole bunch of bugs and fish <laughs> fossils and uh, unload all of the stuff on blathers. It's always nice to get to this part of the game where uh, when you are trying to complete your museum, you can just uh, come in here and quickly check and see what's already been donated or not. Also, I need to make it a daily ritual to come in here and buy up everything I find in Nook's Cranny because we need to try and get this place upgraded so we can stop worrying about it. So we're going to buy some furniture that we are immediately going to sell back. And before we continue, one thing I'm kind of worried about is how our mascot is feeling. You see, the Gee Whiz mascot is meant to represent extreme indifference to the island of Gee Whiz. But unfortunately, when the mascot shows up on a shirt, it just kind of looks too happy. So I thought today we would make some subtle changes and improve the Gee Whiz mascot. And I think the best way to do this is to take full advantage of the line tool, which can really turn this, you know, mascot into a masterpiece. I'm also going to give him some, you know, larger eyes. I think that'll help a little bit. I'm going to do a larger mouth as well. Yeah, I think extreme and existential indifference is starting to shine through here. I am doing my dailies now. I found all the fossils that I can grab without the ladder anyway, uh, which I should be getting today, I believe. And we got our DIY as well, the stone table which I was probably going to learn one way or another. It's not every time, but a lot of times those first three plots include needing to build some kind of table and stone table, pretty common, but fine. You know, it's good. It's good to get some of those early items out of the way because hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll be able to get some really interesting crafting recipes to play with. And we did find our money rock, which unfortunately I did not do on the previous day. So we are behind on getting those, uh, you know, consistent money trees and uh that's okay I'm, I'm doing my best i am still kind of using the money rock money to grow new money trees because i'm kind of poor but uh the money rock or the money tree rather is going to be grown from a spot i found just across the river here there we are we got our bells we will plant ten thousand bells in their place and we will put this tree in the lineup get everything donated we'll purchase some clothing from mabel that i will not keep receive our daily points and then finally deal with tom nook who is going to ask us nicely or not so nicely uh, uh it kind of depends on your interpretation i guess about placing down three new plots for some neighbors. We have a lot of items we're gonna need to craft and uh, you know, we gotta kind of pick where these things are gonna go, uh, which is giving me a little bit of anxiety because again, I want everything out as much out of the way as possible so that rebuilding the island eventually is easy. Uh, there's one thing I always forget and that's that we have to craft the first bridge. Uh, this is required for getting the plots because he doesn't want people to like fall in the river or whatever. So crafting the bridge requires us to first craft four log stakes. And because I'm trying to be, you know, a little bit stingy right now with supplies, I'm only gonna craft three log stakes and then we're gonna take the other log stakes that I've been calling a nightstand and just use those as well. These ones right here that serve literally no purpose except ruining my nice floors. But once we have all that, we can make what I like to call the hot dog bridge. I call it the hot dog bridge because once it's built, it'll look like a pack of hot dogs. Um, <laughs> looks like we already have our first excuse to time skip today, which we will do uh, momentarily. I don't think we can place down the plots until that bridge is done. Oh, that's a lie. We can wait for the bridge construction to finish, or we can just ask him what he should, what we should do 
I think he'll just give us the plots, which is great. I really don't need them to be across the river. Um, <laughs> these are going to move anyway. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, let's ask what we should do, and let's get these plots. I did finally get the ladder DIY, and now a pro tip for you if you're newer to Animal Crossing. Once you get a bunch of recipes like this from Tom Nook upon asking for the plots that you need to put down, I would go ahead and just favorite all of them. And the reason you want to do this is because at this point, you know, there's a good amount of DIYs. And it's hard to remember every single item that is required for, you know, each house. Each one requires six items. we got three houses to build. You do the math. Um, but now, if you go into your favorites menu, you can bet that pretty much anything those houses will require is in here. Which should help jog your memory once you're going back and forth between your house plot and your crafting table. And while we're on the subject of, like, new players to Animal Crossing New Horizons... I have a bit of a, a confusing thing that I just thought about that kind of annoys me. Why is it that the hot dog bridge is the first and only bridge you craft, or that needs to be crafted, rather? So every other bridge from here on out, I'm going to have to purchase from Tom Nook and then pay off and then wait for it to be constructed. But he had me go out and literally handcraft all the elements for the bridge. And yet, for some reason... I'm still gonna have to wait a day, which is weird, right? Like I had to craft everything. I had to choose a spot for it. Why can't we just build the bridge today? <laughs> it's especially weird because it's not even making me wait a day to do the next phase of the game, which is to find homes for all these villagers. You know, it, it would make sense if it was like, oh, we wanna slow walk this. We wanna make sure that you can't do everything in one day. Uh, but no, it's just, it's just making us wait. For no, no good reason at all. <laughs> anyway, the reason for chopping down all these trees is because we are going to be putting uh, probably all of these plots right next to resident services here. And I think, you know, that'll kind of keep them out of the way a little bit. I'm not, I'm not sure which island or part of the island we're going to decorate first, but it might not be this one. So <laughs> I might actually start with our island entrance and work my way back. And by that point, uh, it won't you know, matter so much because these houses, like, I don't know if you know this, but when you first place them down, they take up way more room than a normal house. You need to have enough room to put, like, a bunch of furniture around them. I think this is probably a good spot. It leaves room to get behind the bridge. So, yeah, let's uh, let's just put it here. It might delete that rock. I don't know. Oh, the rock's fine. But, yeah, as you can see, it has that outline on the outside, and that's just for all of the different pieces of furniture that this is gonna ask you to put in the yard. It looks like before we place the third one, I will need to move my peach trees that we planted last time. I was just crafting up some tools and I realized there is one thing that I can buy from this catalog every day that doesn't really break the rules and that's music. Uh, music is cool because, you know, it, it kind of adds a lot of personality to different builds. And, you know, I know I didn't craft it, but I can craft music players, different types of radios, at least one that I can think of off the top of my head. And so I think it's important to, to have as many songs as possible. We got our third plot placed down, and now it's pretty much time to start putting furniture in all of them. I don't know if I'm supposed to go look for the villagers first or put the furniture in and then go look for them. My plan though is to get all the villager hunting done like today. So I'm just putting these down and getting them out of my inventory and out of my way. But yeah, anyway, let's start just seeing what each one needs and we'll worry about like who's going to live where uh, in a moment. I think what's going to happen is that we get the items for this first plot and then it will tell us that Eric is moving in, which means we then don't want to get the items for the other two plots until we hand pick our other villagers. Went ahead and got my peach trees moved out of the way for now. And I've also crafted myself a new DIY workbench. I've been meaning to put one outside anyway, just chilling here next to resident services. But with all the plots also right here, it just felt like a good way to kind of optimize this whole process of uh, finishing these up. So going to my favorites, I can see uh, all the items that we just earned and I already know what I need. I need cherry speakers, the cherry lamp and the pot for inside. And then I need a barrel and a swinging bench, which is not in here and a hay bed on the outside. Some of those I unlocked earlier, so they did not make it into my favorites list. It's not a foolproof system, <laughs> but hey, it, it is less to remember because having to remember all six of those things as you run back to the crafting table, 
does prove to be a bit challenging. So having most of them in one place is kind of nice, I guess. Here are all of the interior items. And then here are the last of the exterior items, which is cool. So now let's go see if we go in and out of this tent, I think Eric will be moving into that plot. And indeed it is sold and it is Eric's new home. Okay, now this means we need to go out and try to hunt for two handpicked villagers. The problem, of course, is that I have <laughs> no points, virtually no points. We can earn enough to get like three tickets today, unless I really grind this out, but I don't know if it's worth it. We have 30 real life days, I guess less than that now. Since we already have Eric, who is in the top 50, at least for now, uh, <laughs> because they can move around, um, we are already in a really good place. So even if the very tiny villager hunt we're about to do doesn't, you know, yield any great results in terms of villagers we're, we're going to find, um, I'm not too worried yet. We have plenty of time still to earn some points and try and get a couple more top 50 villagers on this island. Basically what I'm saying is, unless I'm ready to spend several hours gathering points and Nook Miles tickets, we kind of just need to take whoever this is, okay? We have one ticket left. I don't know. It's either take this person or autofill. Is it freaking Celia again? <laughs> what? I've only gone to like two islands. How am I already getting duplicates? This is unbelievable. I'm looking for a recipe real quick, but I don't, I'm not seeing one. I'm not going to stick around. I'm so disappointed. I, I cannot believe how bad our luck is. All right, <laughs> last ticket. So one of those plots is going to autofill. That's what I've decided. I'm not going to keep grinding away at this. I mean, I was originally going to make this challenge to get three top 10 villagers. And I realized as I was, you know, setting things up, that's not a good idea. <sighs> but now I'm seeing that the top 50 is probably also going to be difficult to do. Let's be fair. I don't remember your name. It is Bertha, who is number 222 on the villager popularity list. And again, this ranking does change, but we are not anywhere close within the margin of error. There is no way Bertha moves up over 100 spots to be in the top 50. However, Bertha is kind of cute. For, for you know, a hippo villager, I wouldn't normally go for a hippo villager. Bertha's pretty adorable. So I don't like surprises. I'm going to move Bertha in so we know what we're getting. And then we're going to try to get a good autofill. That's the that's the kind of gamble we've taken now. We're going to get a good autofill, hopefully. And then don't forget, the campsite is always a smug. The very first campsite villager is always smug, which means there's a couple different like top 10 villagers that we could get from the campsite. I hadn't caught a black bass before. That's cool. Maybe this island wasn't so bad after all. I also found a free fossil, which is great. And uh, I am going to hit the rocks while I'm here. With a bunch more chores done, it's now time to look and see what the second plot requires of us. And that is going to be the interior, which is wooden block stereo, table, and then lily wreath. And then the exterior items, which are going to be natural garden chair, table, and bird bath. So not too bad. Uh, I think I have everything I need to make those. Maybe not the stuff for the lily wreath, but we can go into the cliffs and grab the flowers. And that's going to be white, red, and yellow lilies, which I have to remember to go get. Let's do the bird bath and everything else. Okay, we got the two wooden block items donated. I'm placing the table and chair down here facing resident services. I have a feeling that <laughs> guests at resident services are going to be using that all the time. Uh, so I'm putting it there because I, I don't really think the homeowner is going to get a lot of use out of it. Do you ever see your homeowners using stuff we put out for them? No, it's always some other rando. Anyway, and there's their bird bath. So that should be all of the exterior items. Now we just got to go get the lilies we need to finish up. Everything's been placed. I've come back outside and boom, the plot is sold and it's sold to Wendy. Oh my goodness. So Wendy is number 177 currently in the rankings. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm glad we went out and, and got at least one villager we know, but this was the surprise. This was the autofill villager. I was thinking this was going to be plot three. I guess not. That means Bertha lives here. All right. So we just got to get all the items. I'm a little disappointed. I don't, Wendy, Bertha, eh. I'm just so glad we managed to get Eric. Okay. Officially our first balloon. Here we go. I hope it's a recipe. It is summer. 
there are a bunch of recipes that would be awesome to have. It's clay. Anyway, all Bertha's stuff is now placed down, which means each of these plots is done. And Tom Nook has awarded me some fencing, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to keep it. I can't, well, I didn't craft it myself. Huh. No, that is a conundrum. I would really like to keep it because it's 50 fences and I'm so <laughs> material poor right now. But also I'm money poor, so <laughs> I guess... I guess selling them is probably the right thing to do. There's also something else that I remembered. You see, <laughs> the floor and the wall here are not made by me. And that means they they need to be made by me. And unfortunately, this is all I've made so far. But rules are rules, okay? And it took me a few days to realize this, but we're here now. Here we are. This is my house. This is where I live now. Speaking of my house, that is going to be the next thing we have to tackle. I need to pay down another home loan. There's honestly so much to do, and we are three days into this challenge. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. It's day four of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we built our first bridge, began the process of moving in three new villagers, and increased the difficulty on this challenge yet again. It's the 30-day DIY it is day four. It looks like we are welcoming in Eric. The customization workshop is available. And this might be a little ambitious for day four, but today I'm hoping to maybe place down the campsite, which means we might need to skip a couple days. Because I would also love to get our first campsite villager. I want to know who that is. Now, like I said, a bit ambitious because we have a good amount of people who still need to move in. We finished these plots, and I have a feeling it's going to be kind of a one of one at a time ordeal. So I'm considering kind of blazing through each day until we get the ability to place down the campsite, because that's going to be huge. Also, we got to talk to Red. We got to meet Red for the first time and get our first piece of art. There's a lot going on. So trying to rush the early game um, again, a bit ambitious. But listen, it's day four, and I've done nothing to make any progress at all towards designing an entire island. We need to get five stars by the end of this challenge, and I'm starting to worry a little bit. You know, I need to start playing more regularly. And by that I mean uh, <laughs> playing irregularly, because uh, I'm not gonna play as intended. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to time skip like mad to get this done. But that doesn't mean I won't allow for some distractions. You see, I've been kind of annoyed by the, the mascot we created uh, last time because I just don't like, the, the way the mouth looks is kind of goofy to me. And so I wanted to see if I can kind of fix this up a little bit. And I don't exactly know um, how I'm gonna do this, <laughs> but the, the it's just too strange looking. So, you know, stand by. I decided that giving him a smaller mouth makes him look actually significantly more annoyed. I'm also making the eyes white now, and then I'm gonna put little pupils. That just, oh gosh. <laughs> Now, now it's a bit surprised, which uh, that's not what I'm going for. This would be our mascot rolling his eyes. And honestly, <laughs> I don't hate it. I've also added a nose and some eyebrows, which <laughs> I think gives it way more personality. Just move it down a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so going forward, this will be the G Wiz mascot. I would say in shirt form, he still looks a little bit happy, but not as much. Kind of looks like he's looking up at me. Like, you know, hey, you gonna finish that? Almost as if, you know, He's hungry, I need to feed him. Anyway, let's go introduce ourselves to Eric. He took our advice, moved here as quick as he could. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I cannot believe we already got one of three top 50 villagers. This is amazing. I've been giving it a lot of thought, having, you know, one of the villagers we need for that goal. I can do one of two things. I can try and grind away at Nook Miles, maybe off camera or whatever, just to, just to get enough to get a bunch of tickets to hunt for villagers endlessly until I get three top 50 villagers. Or I could go ahead and simply let every plot autofill, hope that some of those are top 50. But as we kind of proceed with the challenge, villagers who want to leave, that is when we'll kind of spend the points to do, you know, a, a bunch of uh, <laughs> hunting for certain villagers. Now, the reason I'm thinking about doing it this way is because that will give me time to kind of let my points accumulate. As you know, in the early game, there's a lot of other really important things to spend your points on. And then eventually you kind of start adding them up because you bought your pocket expansion, you bought all the hairstyles, and all that stuff. I'm probably gonna prioritize certain things. There's certain things I need, certain things I don't. 
But that is where I'm at right now. All I'm saying is don't be surprised if I load up the beaches with uh, different housing plots and I do little to no hunting for each and every one. And just, just play our luck because we could easily get... It's the top 50, you know? It's not impossible. We could easily get two more top 50 villagers out of all the different plots we're going to have to fill. What, what is it, like seven? Like, there's a good amount of opportunity there. Just found a recipe for a wooden table. Nice, very, you know, simple recipe, but one that I think we'll be making really good use out of. Very simple items like that uh, on a DIY-only island are probably going to come into play frequently. Today's times two Nook Miles tasks aren't too terribly bad, so I'm probably going to do all of these before we skip to the next day. Uh, it'll just be good to like start building up those points. It's our first shark. What's it gonna be? It's a sunfish. I just shot a balloon out of the air and I got five iron nuggets, which is great. But as you can see, I'm kind of juggling inventory right now. So before I try and do these Nook Miles goals, maybe we should buy ourselves a bit of an upgrade. That upgrade is gonna cost us 5,000 miles, which we are just short of. So it's time to do one of my least favorite activities in the game. And that did push us over 5,000 points. I think we have, oh, nope, that's it. Great. Let's go upgrade our pockets. Ugh, finally. <laughs> That's gonna make it so much easier. Ooh, got my first gold nugget from hitting this rock. Oh, fantastic, and I'm learning a new DIY. Now, <laughs> um, I'm not bringing back gold core or anything like that. I did do a gold core island once. I'll, I'll let you just go look that up on your own. But uh, it is exciting to get gold nuggets. I can see maybe doing, you know, an homage to gold core somewhere. Maybe we do like a little gold core corner. Gold core corner. That. That's hard to say, so prob probably won't do that. Ooh, we're getting our first crafting recipe from a villager. Paula is crafting something. What is it? Dark wooden mosaic wall. Oh my gosh, really? That's so cool. I just decorated my house to look like a total nightmare, and now I have like a legit wall that I can use in my house. We'll worry about that later though. Right now I need to wrap up these dailies. This is fish number three out of five. And again, brand new, which is great. So I'm gonna get all the fish caught. I'm gonna talk to Harv. I'm gonna, you know, get the museum going. By that, I mean donate everything that I catch that's new to the museum. And that's just a few things today, not a ton of stuff. We need to sell our excess junk, including all the shells that we found and all the things that I just bought from Nooks because I'm still trying to get the store upgraded. I'll talk to Harvey, get him to invite me to his island, and I'll take Tom Nooks' DIY workshop. I think I'll make the wardrobe green. I'll probably actually get use out of the wardrobe. It may become part of my, uh, my first actual interior build. So I think I'm gonna go with like a green theme with my furniture and I think that'll look nice. Also having 48 customization kits to start off with is fantastic. Let's not forget we also need to buy our first piece of art. All of the art is real on the first trip so it's just kinda take your pick. I like to pick one that is kinda hard to like find consistently and I think this one, you guys might disagree, this one I always struggle to find an authentic version of, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy the scenic painting. And that was just one day down. Now I got a time skip to the next one. And it looks like Bertha's moving in today. I once again have some pretty easy Nook Miles goals, so I may do all of these, but honestly, I I am kind of like feeling in a rush today. Oh, Gulliver's here too. I should probably do that as well. Um, I wanna just kind of focus on getting the money tree and getting ourselves, uh, you know, just this the very bare minimum daily things done getting the points out of uh you know the nook stop maybe buying a song like just the stuff that you'd really want to do every day if you're trying to collect all that stuff and then move on but i just keep getting so tempted to like play each day to its fullest which is making this take way way longer than it needs to just like me trying to find my shovel <laughs> it doesn't need to take that long to find a shovel just open your inventory and get it i would love to buy the tool wheel i think i have enough points so I don't know, maybe I'll do that today too. Let, let's go say hi to Bertha. She's unpacking, but you know, things look good. Things look good. Eric is out and about, which is great to see. Uh, my new favorite villager. I overslept a little today, but that's cool. It gave the bugs in my house some extra quiet time. Ugh, God, I forgot about lazies and their obsession with bugs. That's the one thing that, you know, I get on with lazies pretty well, but the one thing we will never have in common is their obsession with bugs. I hate bugs, bugs are gross. If I find a bug in my house, I immediately move. Other than that, Lazies are okay. Stinky's gonna teach me how to make a dog house, which believe it or not, I think this is a recipe that I find really difficult to get. I only ever got it on my forever island, and then all the islands I've started since, I never get this crafting recipe. So I'm actually really, really excited to have this one because I think we can make a cool build with it. I am gonna help Gulliver. I'm also gonna pick up some shells and weeds along the way because there's a couple of different point, point goals for uh, selling those. Learned how to make a butter churn thanks to the recipe on the beach. 
another fantastic item. If I wanted to make like a, a rustic looking farm, the butter churn is great. There's also a lot of really cool items in the nook stop that you can get that are kind of like great for a farm. And of course, we won't be getting to use a lot of them uh, because I have to craft it myself. So I was buying out nooks for the day and I noticed something sitting on the shelf that we really should talk about for just a moment. And that is this book here. Now, I got a comment somewhat recently asking, what are you gonna do if you wanna create like a bookshelf but it requires building materials like the book that you have to buy from Nooks? And so my options are to A, just not make bookshelves and stacks of books, or B, only use these as a crafting material. I think I'm gonna go with B. And I'm doing that because I think it's gonna limit me quite a bit. Like I'm already so limited on like builds and designs for this island. So I am gonna go ahead and buy a handful of these, squirrel them away for, for a rainy day. But the one thing I cannot do is decorate with them. I can't place them around the island. If I make like a little book reading area, no open books sitting on the tables allowed. Is, does that make sense? If, if enough people disagree with this turn of events, I'll just sell the books back. <laughs> but uh, I, I think this is within bounds, okay? It, they are a crafting material, just like I had to buy a diving suit just so I could like actually dive and do that part of the game. I did that too. So a few exceptions do have to be made uh, in order to carry this out. But I really like those recipes a lot. And I'll be missing out on three or four really good recipes if I don't buy them. Um, I'm also buying some customization kits. And I wanted to just share that as a pro tip, by the way. If you ever get a Nook Miles goal that's like, hey, spend X amount of money, but you're way into the game by that point, and you're like, I don't I don't have anything I wanna buy. Just stock up on some customization kits because there's a lot of times where it's like spend 5,000 bells. You get, you know, two five packs of customization kits and you're done. So I've now started to make that kind of a regular habit for me, going around and just buying out customization kits every day because it'll take care of that Nook Miles goal and once we get to building, we'll be really, really glad we just kind of slowly stocked up on them over time. I also like to use them every day to kind of repair my tools. <laughs> I did finally find the money rock. I've planted the money tree. We've taken care of our fossils and I've just finished my diving task, which means all of these Nook Miles Plus tasks for the day are complete. We're back up to 5,000 points. Let's visit the Nook Stop for today. That's number six. While we're here, I'm also gonna buy the tool ring because I use it all the time and it's so frustrating not to have. Eric's giving me a present. It's it's a shell lamp. Oh man. I think a shell lamp is a craftable item, but I didn't make it myself, so I'm gonna have to sell it. All right, we've helped out Gulliver. That means it's time for another time skip. Wendy's moving in, our final villager we were waiting for. Hopefully she brought Frosties. And Tom Nook is announcing that Resident Services is relocating into its building, which is really, really good because that means we're gonna be able to uh, skip ahead and <laughs> that means tomorrow it'll be closed and then the next day we can uh, get the campsite from uh, Tom Nook. So yeah, let's rush this day. I don't even care what our Nook Miles tasks are. I'm just w focused on the money rock and the money tree and then my uh, points as, as well. Birth is giving me an incense burner. I will also be selling that. By the way, whenever I say I'm worried about my points, I'm really referring to Nook Miles, and in this case, getting them from the Nook Stop. Sahara is here, and I'm really, really glad that I don't need to worry about that at all, because I can't use any of the fancy wallpapers or floors that are being sold there. <laughs> so, not my problem. Finally got our money rock. I lied, I'm also looking for fossils too. And the DIYs. You know, the tea table's actually a great item. I'm not mad about that at all. I did finally find the money tree though, and I got my daily Nook Miles. Cardboard boxes are just kind of like the books. I'm also gonna be keeping those just as crafting materials. I will not be decorating with just plain old cardboard boxes. Stinky just gave me this street lamp. I, ca I can't believe it. I've never gotten a street lamp before. The, the reason this is so cool is because those items cost miles and a lot of them they're not they're not cheap so i'm not using it and i'm gonna sell it immediately but i just thought that was kind of cool i've finished all of my tasks before time skipping to the next day but i am just gonna say hello to wendy real quick um not seeing any ice cream of any kind in here so that's a little disappointing resident services is indeed behind a tent today that gives us one less thing to worry about i am just gonna focus on fossils money rock and money tree today I guess I should also buy for Mabel. I just want to make sure that we're uh, working towards getting Able Sisters as well. Other than the little daily tasks and money and things like that, 
The big benefit to time skipping one day at a time, right now at least, is that we get pretty much almost guaranteed two new crafting recipes every day. I say almost guaranteed because we just hardly have any crafting recipes right now. So most likely anything we find is new. And uh, yeah, so it's just it's just kind of nice to get more of that stuff. Um, I got to buy, I think you have to spend a certain amount of money. So I'm just, just in case, I'm going to buy this stuff and immediately sell it back to Nooks. Another present, this time from Wendy. It's an outdoor bench. I hope it's worth some good cash because I can't keep it. Our peach trees and coconut trees have grown in today, which is awesome to see. I'm not really going to worry about those. I wanted to make like a, a fruit farm earlier in, in the, the series. I think like maybe even episode one I was thinking about it, but that just did not happen. And right now my focus is just getting this big like story stuff out of the way. So good to have that stuff. Not going to worry too much yet about optimizing it for, you know, bells. There's our money rock for the day. Now we'll plant our money tree for the day. I'm guessing you noticed I haven't paid off my uh, my big home loan yet as well. And uh, I just wanted to explain why that is because I do have enough to pay it off. The thing is, and obviously today the resident service is under a tent, but the reason I didn't pay it off sooner was because I would like to buy turnips this Sunday. I don't know if you know this, if you're a new player, but the first time you buy turnips, I think you're guaranteed a small spike. So that basically means we can't lose. Kind of like I just lost my shovel. Today's beach DIY is the cardboard chair. This is why we're saving those boxes. Now, if I want to put down something that kind of looks like a mess, like a messy cardboard box, I have that chair. I have at least two days worth of fossils here to turn in, so let's go ahead and do that. Eric is crafting the shell fountain, which is a really nice item. And with that out of the way, I think we can skip to the next day where hopefully we actually get the campsite. There it is in all its glory. The resident services building. Mabel's back as well, which is great. We might be placing down Abel's sisters. It's kind of hard to remember because everything is such a blur. Isabel has entered the chat. First things first, checking in with Mabel. It does indeed look like it's time to place down the Able Sisters shop, which is awesome. Now, of course, we're not really gonna be using the shop, but I want all the things, obviously, so <laughs> it'll be fun to decorate around it in the future. But yeah, we're just basically gonna place down a store that is gonna get no business and will probably shut down Maybe, I don't know, give it like two or three weeks before they blow through all their savings. Here we go, I'm getting the recipe now for crafting the campsite. I did forget this was something I had to craft myself. So I'll probably need to go on a, a supply run as well. Let's get our points. What's cool is after you build resident services, even if you haven't been getting your points every day, it apologizes that you couldn't get them the previous day and then puts you up to like the max. So it's seven plus days tomorrow, even if we haven't been getting the points. Um, which is great. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and buy my daily song that I wasn't able to do yesterday. I haven't checked my mailbox in several days, by the way, so I have like a bunch of songs and stuff. The, the art we bought, everything's just kind of sitting in there. Uh, we really have been rushing this despite how much I try and get done every single day. Daisy May was hiding right behind my house. I have some room in my inventory, but I'll probably want some more. Let's go ahead, let's buy our first batch of turnips. We'll need to keep track of how much these cost um, because I've skipped so many days at this point. I'm probably not gonna, you know, do any more until our next literal real life day. So I will just need to kind of write this down for myself. But uh, basically all I'm trying to do is calculate profits. As I said, this first batch of turnips is basically a slam dunk. You, you, you're pretty much guaranteed a profit. I just want to make sure I sell on the correct day and at the correct time. There's two times every day that the price has changed. So as you know, we're time skipping around, we really need to just remain aware of that too. So they're 93 bells each. I'm going to go ahead and buy a thousand of them, which is 93,000 bells, most of my money, uh, but with a little bit left over, obviously, which is probably a pretty comfortable place to be, especially for your first batch of turnips. Wooden field sign from Stinky. This is also a really cool item. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it also looks pretty good in like a farm kind of setting. We'll definitely need to make a farm at some point. Getting crops is going to be interesting. I've been thinking about this a little bit. When it comes to getting flowers and, uh, you know, different crops and things like that, it feels wrong in this particular challenge to just buy the seedlings from like the leaf or the nooks. So... I have kind of another plan. We need to unlock Captain. That's all we need to do because Captain will sometimes bring us to islands that have, you know, wheat and tomatoes and things like that. So 
that is how I'm going to get crops and flowers and shrubs and trees. I'm going to steal them from items that we or islands that we visit. I have a duplicate recipe here, the shell fountain, which I've already learned. Today's hot item is a barrel. I'm going to go ahead and craft that because that is a times five bonus for Nook Miles today. And of course, with my supply run done, I'm also gonna be crafting up the campsite. So we're gonna plop Able Sisters down right here, just like that, trying to leave as much room on this beach as I can for another house or two next to it. Maybe, wow, maybe three or four. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the campsite up on the peninsula. I'm putting it here because I have a feeling I might actually keep it here. This might be the permanent home for the campsite. I never really do a whole lot of interesting things with the peninsula, and I've always really admired a peninsula campsite. I think they look really, really cool. Uh, now, I could change my mind in the future, but right now, I think, oh, uh, I think this will be a good idea. This is actually smaller than I thought it would be, so let me, uh, the peninsula, I mean, too close. Uh, well, shoot. I thought this would fit. I was so excited. Like, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with my peninsula this time around. Uh, all right, well, I guess I'll just put it on the beach somewhere for now. All right, so I've gone ahead and just put it next to the dock for now, and I forgot that there's a day for the campsite to actually get built, and then I think the day after is when a campsite villager appears. I gotta be honest, the idea of playing two more days sounds kind of miserable to me. I have been time skipping so much, and as you've seen, I've been trying to get the most out of every single day that I possibly can, but I, I gotta tell you, I'm tired. Like, it's been hours of doing this for me. So, I don't know, I might, I might skip two days, but that would kill my Nook Miles bonus. My daily login bonus for Animal Crossing. <sighs> I do feel like crying, Eric. No, this is perfect. Th thank you. This is the exact emotion I was trying to convey just now. This is why Eric and I are best friends. That's exactly why. Eric knows me so well. I did manage to find a money tree, which does feel good. <sighs> We're also gonna lose that if I skip ahead two days. Well, at least I have this to look forward to. That's quite a few points there. And I also got uh, one by accident from chopping trees. But yeah, these now are not my concern. I am gonna go ahead and skip two whole days after I collect the points I forgot in here. Now, the idea behind skipping these two days is that the campsite should not only be built, but we should have our first campsite villager. Uh, the Able Sisters is now open, but I'm hoping that didn't get in the way of the campsite being built. Also, did you know Gee Whiz has its own new campsite? The campsite's a place for new visitors to experience the beauty of the island. Okay, I'm sure we get plenty of visitors. Are you saying we don't have one? We're, uh, she didn't say we have one, so, oh no. Looks like Lottie is here, but uh, you know, this is <laughs> this will be the last time we ever see her. If you tell Tom Nook and Lottie that you're not sure you want to design vacation homes, by the way, they just kind of twist your arm until, yeah, you basically have to say yes either way. It's so unfair. Like, no, I'm. you'll never see me again. I'm not working for you. You can't force appointment employment upon me, okay? I came here to retire. As promised, we do have Able Sisters. There's gonna be fossils, there's gonna be all kinds of stuff. The campsite is here. I have to skip another day. I'm so crushed and defeated right now. I was really hoping this was it and we'd finally get to see who our first campsite villager is. But alas, I have to skip another day, which is, is painful. It's painful at this point. There it is, our first campsite visitor. But there's something else we need to deal with first, believe it or not. You see, while I was waiting around in loading screens, I realized that I made a huge blunder. I forgot that we bought turnips. <laughs> so I've been just skipping days willy nilly. And there is that chance that my guaranteed small spike was now wasted. I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know. What day is it? It is, it is Wednesday. That's terrifying. That is way further into the future than I wanted to be. Uh, when it came to my first order of turnips. Hopefully, the price is just amazing and we'll just sell it right now, but we've not been tracking it. I don't know if it's gonna be the best price. As long as it's a profit at this point, I'm fine. Let's see what the damage is. 105, okay. That's not huge. I paid 93 per turnip, so it might be about to spike. I'm gonna go ahead and take the risk, even though I've already risked a lot. And all we need to do is wait like four minutes. I, I deliberately changed the time on the switch during the last uh, <laughs> during the last round of time skipping. And I did it so that 
the time would roll over to 12 in the afternoon. And once it hits 12, the price is gonna change. 112, not gonna lie, a little, <laughs> a little disappointing. I threw all the information I have into turnip profit and it is saying that there's still a chance here. This is Thursday saying that anywhere between 125 and 219 is gonna be our potential uh, maximum and minimum. And it basically stays that way throughout the rest of the week. If we wait until the, the weekend, at least in Animal Crossing time, then we lose. So I think I'm gonna take the risk and hold onto my turnips for one more day. Let's go ahead and see who our very first campsite villager is. I am looking forward to this big time. Are we gonna get another top 50 villager? It is Kid, who, believe it or not, is not in the top 50. It, 87, really, really high up there in the rankings, but not a top 50 villager. Now, we have to invite Kid no matter what. I would say for our first campsite villager, we could have done a lot better, but we could have also done a lot worse, as you guys know. So, you know what? I'll take it. Kid, welcome to G-Wiz. I've placed down Kid's house. <sighs> and that grind is finally complete. I can't believe that. So, that was easily the longest grind I've had in this entire series so far, and hopefully, the last time we'll need to spend that many hours doing one simple thing. It's day five of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we had our biggest grind yet. We upgraded resident services, we bought our first batch of turnips ever, and eventually we managed to get our first campsite villager to move into the island. So let's see what's in store for today. It's the 30 day DIY island. Oh, hey, uh, I'm just, trying to manifest something right now. I imagine it's no secret who this is. Uh, this is of course, the currently ranking, number 26 on the list, Poppy. Now, I really like Poppy. Poppy is awesome, and I've never had Poppy on an island before, and I thought Poppy would be the perfect villager for G-Wiz. So, that's what I'm gonna try and do. I don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully soon, because as you know, we need to place down a bunch of plots. We're gonna let them autofill, and I figured putting Poppy on the board gives us the best chance at manifesting that and making it come true. So Tom Nook is already giving us the task of increasing the island's population. Not only is Poppy the perfect villager in terms of their personality and warmth, every time I've encountered Poppy, she's been nothing but the nicest. But also, Poppy does sit comfortably in the middle of our top 50 ranking, and so I think she would make a fantastic addition for all of those reasons. But in order to get Poppy to move here, and some other folks as well, we'll need to start buying plots for 10,000 bells each, which is okay. I, if I forego upgrading my own house, I can get all these plots placed today no problem. Uh, so that's what we're going to do first, is we're going to place down our plots. Before we do that, though, I almost forgot it's time to sell our turnips. The price? 155 bells. Now that is more like it. For us, that is a small jackpot, and I am going to be selling these right away because we are going to need the money. As you saw, these plots are going to be expensive, and I am almost out of storage. I would like to pay off this next home loan if at all possible. So 209,000 bells in my pocket. I think we have a bunch of money trees to harvest too. We're in really, really good shape for money right now. And we just got two different miles tasks done from selling that many turnips. I don't know the next time we're gonna get turnips, but hey, like this was a really good start. I think we're gonna get turnips again a little later on. Here is the first of our last plots to be placed. And uh, now might be a good time to catch you up on the goals. So our immediate goal for today is to get all of these plots placed down and hopefully on the beaches. We need them out of our way because as you know, this is all gonna cost a lot of money. We don't need to be spending more on moving houses as well. It gets very expensive. So that is our immediate goal. Our short-term goal, of course, is to get the island to three stars as fast as possible. We will not be doing that today, but we can definitely make some steps towards that today. As you're probably well aware, getting three stars is no easy task. We need to have a whole bunch of not only fences on the island, which as you know, I sold when Tom Nook gave me 50 of them. Uh, so we need to make some fences. We also need flowers, like a bunch of them. If you haven't put all the pieces together yet, uh, I'll just explain it. Getting flowers is not as easy as it sounds. 
Just unlock the gong DIY though, so that's nice. Anyway, we can't simply buy bags of flower seeds and plant them. That would give us, you know, three stars very quickly. But no, we have to actually go and scavenge for flowers. We can grow them ourselves simply by watering a bunch of flowers every day. And we can go out to Nook Miles Islands and just steal the flowers from them. And that honestly goes for anything I want to plant on the island. If I want certain trees, if I want bamboo, if I want specific flowers, all of that has to come from different islands and or I have to be able to grow it myself somehow, but I cannot just buy saplings and seeds. That's not allowed. Here's another plot placed down. And just looking at the map here, I think that's the last one. And indeed, I can sell no more land. And this is why turnips were so great, because even after buying up all those plots, I still have more than enough to pay off my loan very comfortably and not worry about anything else, such as like moving the homes that are currently in our way. I believe those moving costs are just 10,000 bells a piece. So yeah, this will be just super easy. Let's go ahead and grab our miles for completing a loan payment. And let's beg Tom Nook for an expansion of our house. That next loan will cost 198,000 bells, which is cool, not too bad. In any case, now it's time to work on our short-term goal of that three-star island. And that means we need to buy a Nook Miles ticket. And this is gonna benefit us in a couple of ways. We're gonna go to an island and gather up all of its resources because I'm very, very low on resources. But we also could do a very small villager hunt as well. I did note in a previous episode that uh, I was going to just let these plots autofill, but I need to go to an island anyway, so we might as well see who's there. Maybe, maybe it's Poppy. Let's see who we get. Oh, it's Miranda. I don't know if I know anything about Miranda. And this is probably why. Evidently, people do not like Miranda. So in that case, um, neither do I. All that's left is the complete destruction of Mother Nature. There are some flowers on this island I, of course, would love to take home with me, but I did not leave myself a lot of room in my inventory. So any spaces I have left, maybe I'll grab a flower or two on the way out. But uh, yeah, we might have to save the flower run for a future trip to a different island. Well. My work here is done. See you later, Miranda. Taking inventory of our supplies here, we're doing pretty well on stone and clay and iron. It's the different types of woods that we are kind of in a bind with. Uh, the good news, if this is good news, I guess, is that I don't have a single fence recipe yet, and we get to buy two today. So let's see what we got. We need a certain amount of fences for the three-star island, I believe. So that's why I'm kind of focused on this right now. And it looks like brick and corral fence are both available to us. This is great because I think both of those give us a lot of opportunities to craft a bunch. The brick is gonna require, the, like I think, the stone and the clay. I think the corral fence is just one, maybe two types of wood. So this is a good variety for us right now. But as you know, having more wood is pretty essential. And that brings me to another mistake that I made really early on. And that was these peach trees. If you remember, I got these as a gift in the mail, but one of the rules is, of course, I can't have gifts. And because it's been determined that I need to get all of my different naturey things from various islands and not through buying the seeds and presents, it naturally means that I am not entitled to these peach trees. What I will do, though, is happily take the wood that drops from them. But unfortunately, since I should have never had these peaches in the first place, once I get a trash can, I have to throw them away. It's pretty depressing, but I'm just gonna leave them here as a constant reminder to maybe, you know, craft a trash can at some point. The other place I can get some extra wood though are these money trees. I've been letting them go because we time skipped a whole bunch and hey, they're, they're ripe for harvest, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop them all down right now. We're gonna get a bunch of money and we're gonna get a bunch of different types of lumber. While I'm gathering up supplies to start this three-star grind, I'm gonna go ahead and also do some of my dailies. For example, I need my fossils, I need to get the money tree, I need to find the money rock, and since my pockets are full, I should probably deal with my fossils that I currently have right now. Only two of them are getting donated, which I feel indifferent about. I think uh, I'm glad I can sell a bunch of fossils and keep making money, but oh my gosh, just just two? I really would love to finish the fossil side of the museum before this challenge ends. And the reason is because that'll just be one less daily to worry about, or I can keep digging up fossils and just sell them every day. I mean, 30,000 bells even for all of those? They're very, very profitable. This means I already have enough money to pay off my next home loan. And that's really nice to see because one of the goals from this whole challenge, if uh, you remember, is that we need to have a fully upgraded house, just in terms of having all the rooms completed. So having the next home loan already covered feels really good. But enough gathering supplies and finding fossils and doing dailies. It's just about time to do our first build. 
I just want to find our crafting recipe from a villager first. It's not Paula. Ah, it's Wendy. Wendy's gonna give us a mum cushion. Uh, <laughs> unless we find mums on an island somewhere, I'm never gonna be able to make this, but I hope so because the mum cushion is actually a really, really nice item. Anyway, for our first build, we are gonna make a whole bunch of brick fence, which only requires clay. Now, at this stage of the challenge, please don't assume that anything we build is actually gonna survive the, the finished product. I mean, it might, but I don't think so. My plan right now is to get a whole bunch of brick fences. We're gonna use as many as we can because we need a good amount of fences on the island, and we're going to fence in one big empty area. You'll see why in a bit. That empty area is gonna go about right here because this area is mostly empty as it is. I don't have a lot of work cut out for me to uh, actually empty it out, which is great. We'll be eating some cherries so that I can actually pick up the trees rather than chop them, them down because <laughs> since I can't buy saplings, I should probably be a bit more kind to the nature on my actual island. All right, I think this space will suffice. I'm gonna go ahead and begin placing down the fences. Out of 70 fences, I have 21 left and one nice big empty area. So why the heck did I do this? Well, as I pointed out earlier, there are only a couple of ways for me to get flowers. So I thought now's a great time to start removing flowers from our cliff tops and moving them down into an area where they could easily breed into hybrids and just excess amounts of yellow and red and white flowers. Because of the terraforming I'm likely to do in the future, this is probably something I'm going to want to do eventually anyway, like remove all these. Having them all in one place is gonna make it really, really easy for me to start watering them every single day and having them breed. I'm also doing my best to lay these out in every combination that I can think of so that I can hopefully get some fun hybrids out of this deal. Oh, I also found my first lost item. That's cool. It's coming along nicely. The lost item belongs to Stinky. And yes, I did get the balloon that was floating in the background. Don't worry. Five iron nuggets. All right, I'll take it. And that is every last flower that I could find on the cliffs. It actually looks really nice. Uh, but the whole point of this is, of course, to water all of it every single day and just spam hybrids like mad. I'll take anything though. The, the whole point is to just get as many flowers on the island as possible, again, without buying the seeds. And that should be all of our flowers watered. And these flowers put us one step closer to our goal of three stars. It's day six of designing an Animal Crossing island in 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we sold some turnips and planted a ton of flowers in an effort to get a three star island. It's the 30 day DIY. What I've done here in day six is time traveled about a week into the future. The goal in time traveling like this was to try and fill all the different plots that we opened up last time. Uh, I've never tried this before, uh, but it doesn't seem to have mattered because I just looked on the map as I got in. These are still unclaimed. So we have a whole bunch of plots that still don't have anyone inside them, which kind of stinks because I was hoping that would work. Bertha is crafting and it's a traditional straw coat. Oh my gosh. This is literally the first piece of craftable clothing. I was kind of hoping it would be pants, but you know what? This, this'll do. Since my plan of getting more villagers didn't work, I can at least kind of chill out for a bit and try and get some other little tasks done. I did go ahead and craft the straw coat and, uh, <laughs> I think this is gonna be our wardrobe for a bit. I actually kind of like it. And then I also made my very first wall for the house. I legitimately like this wall and I'm just glad because this is now starting to look like a house once again. Now we just need to get a proper floor. In the meantime, I'm gonna scout out all the different plots and see if we have anybody who's moving in from that big time skip we did. It does look like one plot was sold. We're gonna have to do this day by day, which is a little frustrating, but let's see who this is. And our first autofill is Angus which is not great. Angus is very, very low in the rankings and there is no way <laughs> we can work together to get Angus up in the rankings and that stinks. So autofill number one, total and complete utter fail. Ooh, we unlocked the Tiki Torch, which we already knew. Now I'm going to be going day by day, one at a time and seeing who we get in each plot until all the plots are full and moved in. During this time skip extravaganza, I'm only going to do three things. Number one is I'm going to water all these flowers each day I skip. And I'm doing that because uh, we're we're trying to get that three-star island and it's going to take a lot of flowers. So that's, that's step one. Step two, 
We're going to find the DIY on the beach. And then step three, we're going to find the person who's crafting a DIY. And then we're going to time skip again. We're not worried about money trees and money rocks and all that stuff. I do want to worry about that. And I want to have a lot of money. But we will never get this done. <laughs> I don't think you guys realize how long it took the last time we did something like this. It was several hours. So I do not want to spend that much time again playing each day to its fullest. I just want to get like a bare minimum amount of stuff done. Because we have still plenty of time ahead of us to worry about money making tricks and, and things like that. And there are some ideas I have there. So we're not going to be in too bad a shape, even if I don't get money trees and stuff like that. I guess there's one more thing I would like to do, and that is start to build up my Nook Miles again by visiting the Nook Stop. <laughs> so I'll do that too. But that is it, That that's literally it. Uh, Tom Nook is telling us we have a new home loan we can pay off. Uh, that won't happen every day, obviously. But uh, okay, cool, 50 points, bonus miles for checking this. And uh, while I'm here, I guess I could just redeem a song, but I think, I need money, because, yeah, I'm only going to be able to do that twice. Do we have any money? Ah, yes, of course we do. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll withdraw 50000 I would say easily the most difficult part of this challenge so far has been resisting the urge to just keep playing and playing every time skip. Anyway, step one each day, get all the DIYs and the bonus nook miles. It's Bertha again crafting, and it's a terrarium. Oh my gosh, I love this item so much. Okay, fantastic. Good, good recipe. Our beach DIY is a barbell. And our next autofill villager is Tasha. Tasha is a squirrel ranked 279. So again, definitely a very low tier ranking villager. Uh, nothing against Tasha myself though. Not, not bad, generally speaking. But as you know, we are trying to get three villagers who are in the top 50 before the end of this challenge, and so far we only have one. Flowers are already starting to come in, and we did get our first hybrid. I noticed it yesterday, but I didn't say anything. It's pink lilies, which is great. So uh, yeah, this is this is awesome. So we're getting hybrids already, and uh, some really good recipes. Yet one more shop we're not allowed to use during this challenge, kind of disappointing there. Got my miles, got my song, let's do it all over again. The next day we've skipped to is actually the bug off, which I'm not interested in playing at all. But, uh, you know, it's that's kind of cool. I guess if we were doing a different type of challenge, I would be trying to grind out the bug off too. But any rewards I get from it don't matter because I'm not allowed to use them. So <laughs> happy to totally skip the bug off. Uh, even though because my island is so empty, it is a very good island for catching bugs. So kind of a shame letting that go to waste. I'm starting with watering the flowers first. I was just checking. I still haven't found who's crafting yet. Uh, but we'll we'll get through this day pretty quickly. Our beach DIY was the Cosmos Shower. And I could not find anyone crafting, and it looks like our autofill today is Norma. Norma is ranked 351. <laughs> we are getting a lot of what this site calls Tier 5 Villagers, and that's not what we're about. I'm devastated. I did get my Nook Miles and my song, though, so I feel a little bit better. We're on to another day. I'm checking the map, and there's only one plot left, which means we only have to time skip one more day to uh, have everyone moved in. So let's see who's living in this plot. It's empty. I don't know why it's empty. Norma's moved in now. It's just one of those plots that won't autofill, I guess. I suppose we can go searching. <laughs> As you guys know, all the villagers we've been getting are kind of awful. So, I mean, finding our own is not, oh, you know, the worst thing. I do have some points. I don't want to spend all of them, but we can do like a miniature villager hunt. Stinky is making a log pack. And this represents my second item of actual clothing I can make myself. I did say I wasn't too worried about money rocks or money trees, but since this is sitting right here and we are kind of slowing things down with a villager hunt, I might as well start the process over again of growing a daily money tree. I was going to grab this fossil, but there seems to be a, a bit of... <laughs> A bit of a meeting happening upon it, so that's fine. Today's beach DIY is a pansy wreath. Okay, well, that's that's cool. I mean, something to put on my door. After all these days of watering flowers, I literally only have one hybrid so far, which is kind of confusing. I've been coming back every single day. I have all the flowers mixed up in all sorts of ways. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That might be a black lily right there. Okay, cool. I'm just going to say that this is a really interesting uh, turn of events, but no, we're good. We're, we're starting to get more. I just, I thought we would have even more, just flowers in general, but especially hybrids by now, but oh well, I guess I'm just getting impatient. Our bonus is up to 150 points now, which is awesome, and we are going to first buy our song, and then we're going to redeem, I think, three Nook Miles tickets. I don't want to buy too many, but I also don't want to come back and forth but we'll give ourselves three chances to try and find 
a villager in the top 50. As you can see, there's still a lot of things I do need to prioritize buying, so I, I really don't want to spend a lot on this. These villagers have finally liberated my fossil, and uh, I'm just going to kind of empty out my inventory a bit, and we're going to head out to our first island. And here's island number one. It is a money rock island. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's like the game knows that I'm not spending enough time gathering money and supplies. And who is this? It is Astrid, 359 on the rankings. So no thanks, uh, Astrid. You can you can hang out on your money rock island. I'll be taking the money, but you can you can stay here. While we're here, I'm also going to be cutting down all the trees. I was looking at my supplies before we came here because you know I've crafted some clothing now and stuff like that. I have nothing. Like, especially different types of wood, I'm completely out. I have some stone and iron because I was doing pretty good with hitting rocks. But yeah, we're doing a DIY only island and I have no crafting materials at this time. So the three tickets I got, I really can't let them go to waste. So as always, we can't just do something simple. It has to take forever. I will say though, this level of dedication from me probably should lead to you subscribing. Right? Right? Let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, entrance rock and jump across. Oh my gosh. I haven't had a Money Rock Island in so long. And out of all the different challenges I've done, this is the ideal one to get something like this. I'm so excited. <laughs> if you've never seen a Money Rock Island before, this is kind of what it's like. You have to just find yourself a little corner, bash a rock until it gives you all its money, and then just kind of do that over and over again until you get all the rocks. You can also eat and then clear out the empty rock, but I think you only get a stone from that. Yes, you only get stone, which is fine. I, I could use some stone too. For new players though, there are a handful of islands in Animal Crossing that you can visit for Nook Miles tickets, and they feature rare things sometimes. So one of those rare types of islands is in fact a Money Rock Island. There's other ones too. There's garbage islands, there's shark islands, there's islands that feature a ton of scorpions and tarantulas. So yeah, there's some pretty cool ones. If you uh, get yourself a lot of tickets, you'll definitely find a bunch. All right, last rock. We are going home with a lot. This is fantastic. <laughs> One annoying thing that you wanna make sure you check is that uh, once you fill up your wallet, you have to then stack all the extra coins, which is very, very silly. But uh, yeah, there we go. Money Rock Island is complete. I'm not gonna get all the little stones from each one. We just gotta move on. We've arrived at our second island. It's full of apples, which I believe are my sister fruit. So I'm gonna be taking all of these home. <gasps> Pudge, I can't believe it. 228, what? Pudge, Pudge is in the 200s? Guys, Animal Crossing Portal is a broken, miserable place and you should never go there. Anyway, as you know, I did have to throw away the peaches that I was gifted at the very start of the series because I realized later, oh, those are a gift. I'm not allowed to use them. So apples are going to be my money-making fruit, which is exciting because I was uh, kind of forgetting that we still hadn't found our sister fruit yet. So it is apples and I will be planting a bunch of apple trees to make a small fortune every now and again. Well, I hope Pudge wasn't hoping to have some apples for dessert tonight because uh, <laughs> those are no longer on the menu. This is the last rock and then we're going to our next island. Oh, sorry, he's not getting coconuts either. So we have a tough decision to make on this island because this is my last ticket. Do we want to get another ticket if this one doesn't work out? If not, are we gonna try to wait to see if that plot ever autofills? Wait, who's that? So it's Faith and Faith is 156 which to be fair is a better rating than some of the villagers we've seen today. But I do think we can try for one more ticket. As I've been chopping up these islands, I've been getting some pretty decent Nook Mile bonuses from just like having chopped 500 logs, for example, and things like that. So I think maybe we can afford one more ticket. I've decided that to keep this from going on all day, I'm going to make this the last ticket and we are taking this villager no matter what. And I know I shouldn't put that out into the universe before actually spending the ticket, but that's how serious I am. I don't care who it is, we are taking this villager. No way. I got a shark island and my inventory's almost completely full. Well, a shark island has to be good luck, right? Who is it? Well, it's Harry. 143, which <laughs> incidentally might be the highest ranking villager we've seen today. So we are gonna invite Harry to live on the island. Uh, for now. I mean, if Harry wants to move away, I'm not going to stop him, okay? This has been a whirlwind kind of day. I was hoping that this would be like an easy thing to do, 
just, you know, find someone halfway decent, get all the plots filled, not find a shark island with a full inventory. So while I'm here, I should probably catch at least a couple of sharks, uh, if anything, just to fill out the museum. I did get a money rock island, so it's not like we're leaving today completely broke. I'm just shocked that having only spent four tickets today, I found two really rare islands. I think this is my second or third shark island since I got the game. So this is pretty wild. It's day seven of designing an Animal Crossing island using only DIYs. In the last episode, we got our very first piece of clothing. We found two incredibly rare islands and we met our final villager, at least for now. It's the 30 day DIY island. I'm excited today for a few reasons. Reason number one, it is raining. And this is great because I cannot stand watering flowers. Reason number two, Harry is here. Now I'm not explicitly excited about Harry himself. I'm just excited that our final villager has moved into town. And apparently he brings with him a bathroom. Hopefully this is one everyone can use. There's not a lot of bathrooms when it comes to uh, villagers and their homes. And this definitely looks like a bathroom. So yeah, I'll be making some stops here. No, I'm dead serious. I don't think I can craft a toilet. <laughs> so I might actually need to use this house if it is indeed a bathroom. <laughs> Reason number three is that we have a new campsite villager staying on the island. As you know, I'm trying to get Poppy to move to this island. Poppy is ranked number 26 on Animal Crossing Portal, so very comfortably in the middle of the top 50, and just overall an incredible villager. Poppy! Oh, wow. Yeah, Poppy. Oh, I love Poppy. Oh, Poppy's the best. I can't wait to meet oh, her. so cool. I say we start this day off right, and uh, we check it out. Let's see. Okay, it's not Poppy, it's, it's Stu. Stu is ranked 265 on Animal Crossing Portal. And honestly, that ranking is not helpful to anybody. Anyway, I wanna talk about the goal for today, but Angus is crafting a raccoon figurine, so I thought I would drop in and grab that first. And I also found a rose bed on the beach, which I'm not sure I'll ever get to craft because I'll need to find roses somewhere else. I, I can't just buy roses. <laughs> anyway, now our goal for today is pretty straightforward. Now that everyone lives on the island, it's time to work our way towards three stars. And honestly, I think we can do it today. As a lot of you may know, three stars in Animal Crossing unlocks a lot of things. It kind of completes the early game story. You get your KK concert. Oh, CJ's here. Maybe we can make some money too. You get your KK concert. You unlock terraforming and waterscaping and pathing. And those really are the reasons I want to obtain three stars. KK slider is cool and all. But uh, I've been able to just kind of buy his songs through the catalog, so a little underwhelming <laughs> of, a, of a reward, you know, for beating the story. Let me know if you feel the same way. I've always thought the KK concert was neat, but they make such a big deal about it. This is, of course, again, a very ambitious goal, because look what it takes to get three stars. Everything you do is worth a certain amount of points, and that means you don't have to do everything by the book. You can kind of go your own way in terms of how you want to accumulate points. The thing is my island is pretty empty right now and to get three stars, if I'm reading this chart correctly, we need 160 to 399 development points and we need 270 to 349 scenery points. Basically what I'm planning on doing to achieve this is, uh, well, for one, picking up some weeds because I've just kind of let these get out of control and two, just placing down items and as many as I possibly can. We've been trying to do our best to gather supplies during the various villager hunts we've done and things like that. Those supplies can now be put towards maybe making our first build that might actually stay on the island. Uh, I, you know that I built the big flower area with the brick fence around it. That's probably not a permanent fixture of the island, but uh, you know we could start to think about areas that would have more permanent builds on them. The thing is, I, I am a terraformer. I really like taking an island and shaping it my own way. That's why I didn't make no terraforming part of the rules. I want to do that part. But, uh, you know, I don't want to start placing stuff down and saying, okay, build complete, only to realize that, oh, wait, I actually don't want the river here, and then I have to move everything. So instead of making things look nice, I can very well see myself just kind of randomly scattering items everywhere. But honestly, it depends on what Isabel has to say. So I'm gonna pick up some weeds, and then we're gonna head over to Resident Services, and I'm gonna see where we're currently at. I'm predicting now that everyone's moved in, we're at least at two stars, but I honestly don't know. Just a quick reminder to hit your rocks every day. <laughs> One gold nugget and the rest iron nuggets is great 
for uh, one of these rocks. Oh my gosh. All right, let's see where we landed on island evals. I was right, we are at two stars. So let's see what it's gonna take to get that next one. I keep hearing all things should be a moderation, but an island's image is worth working hard for, ain't it? Compared with the last report, more folks responded positively to our island scenery. Keep contributing however you can, and soon this island will be decorated to perfection. If you use the resources found on the island and decorated with items you've created, I bet you can improve the island scenery and folks' thoughts on our natural landscape at the same time. So Isabel is basically telling me to get on with the challenge and <laughs> start actually decorating with DIY items. Which is, which is cool. We're on the same page. This is going to cost me, but since we are starting to do some decorating projects now, I am going to buy the last inventory upgrade for 8,000 miles. And since we are starting to talk about decorating the island, I think it's also time to move some houses. These houses had to be placed on uh, the grass because they needed a lot of room around them. But now that everyone's settled in, we can start moving them to the beaches. It costs 10,000 bells to move each house. And uh, Tom Nook's going to give us the plot after we get Bertha's permission. And uh, we'll get that going. By the way, this whole exchange is really troubling. Bertha may seem like she's saying, oh yeah, moving sounds great, but they never ever say no. What does Tom Nook have on these villagers? Why do they never say no? Oh well, not my problem. Okay, we have to place items. So what's the plan? Well, I think I'm gonna focus my decorating efforts around resident services. For one, the resident services building never moves. So if there's any chance of what I build to actually stay put, uh, it would have to be built around resident services, I think. The other reason for building here? Well, the gatekeepers who work right inside this building have windows facing out to the front, which means if we put everything right around here, they will see that the town is coming together and give us our three stars. For this project, we're going to need a number of things. I'm going to bring some food with me so I can move some trees around, and I'm going to bring a whole lot of crafting materials. About like this, I also grabbed some customization kits as well. Now this is the first time I've actually taken stock in all the different crafting recipes I've unlocked thus far. And there's not a lot here it seems, but I mean, there is a good bit. I think we can do some fun stuff despite not having so many options. I think what I would like to do is keep it a bit rustic. So I'm gonna start with a bonfire as kind of the centerpiece and I'm gonna craft a bunch of items that would make it feel like a rustic but cool community kind of hangout spot. I think what we'll do is start to place down some items and remove some trees. And I say that because I have filled my pockets full of stuff. So I have to kind of balance things now. But uh, I am glad I bought that inventory upgrade. So I'm gonna place down the bonfire after removing that tree. I do want it centered with resident services, but I also want it kind of far enough away because I want to put some stuff around it too. This is going to be like just the focal point of this community hangout spot. Around the bonfire, I'm just going to be placing two log benches. And at this point, I think I've cleared enough trees to uh, kind of see my plan through. So I didn't have a ton of items here, but that kind of made the pressure all the more palpable. I mean, we're seven days into this challenge. I've only collected a small handful of DIYs, and now I'm trying to pull off this big glorious build in front of resident services. Despite my complete lack of items though, I actually started to really like this build. It started to come together given how simple it was. I actually really enjoy using random items like hay bales and pots and just kind of scattering them about. It made the area feel like it was, you know, kind of full of life. Like stuff happens here. People make things and then they just kind of leave them and go home. So far, I would recommend building like this. Go in without a plan, but just a handful of items and see how it goes. I think this little area is coming together. What it really needs though, I think, are some fences. And I don't want to fence the entire thing in, but just to kind of separate this area from everything else around it, I think it could use those barriers. So far though, I've only unlocked these four types of fences, and I think corral is probably the most inoffensive fe fence. Sorry, I, that was a really unintentional pun. I apologize. In any case, I do think they complete the look of this area in a nice fun way. I think the last step before we go check evaluations again will be to put some trees around this place. When decorating around the resident services building, one of the things I really like doing are taking the natural fruit that spawns on the island and using those trees in particular around the builds. It just kind of reminds me that my original fruit was was that fruit. Because uh, I visit a lot of islands, I have a lot of islands now, and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to get confused. So I think I'm gonna put the uh, first two cherry trees right up against these fences here. And I'm gonna try the next two right next to the log stakes on either side. If you couldn't tell, I am going for a little bit of uh, symmetry with this build, as I like to do. I really enjoy a little bit of symmetry in Animal Crossing, 
And overall, yeah, I think this kind of fills out the space in a pretty nice way. I, I like this. Let's see what a couple more trees would look like. This time we'll use hardwood trees. We'll put one here and then we'll put one right across from it. And just that one addition kind of makes the spot feel even more cozy, which I like a lot. Well, let's go ahead and turn on the bonfire and see if this is enough to get us to three stars. <sighs> Unfortunately, we are still at two stars. The island still lacks appealing scenery, which I find very offensive. And Isabel wants me to decorate literally the entire island, which is, in my defense, what I'm trying to do. My lack of supplies and unique DIY recipes is putting me in quite the state of despair. But we will carry on. It's day eight of designing an island in 30 days using only DIYs. In the last episode, we worked to get three stars by building our first actual build here on the island, only to find out it wasn't nearly enough to get three stars, and that meant we failed miserably. But will the work we do today finally be enough? Only in I absolutely love that it's raining again. <laughs> this is fantastic because my flowers need the water and my patience does not need the watering of the flowers. Today, we are gonna look at doing another build. We've built this, which is awesome, but now we're gonna try and build something new. But to do that, we're gonna need something. And that something is a supply run. We have a good amount of stone and iron, but we're really low in general on everything. This is not where you wanna be when you're doing a DIY only island. There are a couple of different ways we can tackle doing a supply run. The first and foremost easiest way to do one of these is to simply buy a couple Nook Miles tickets, go to those islands and just trash them completely. The other cheaper, more efficient way to do this would be to make a daily routine out of chopping up your trees on your own island. You would do this using maybe a flimsy ax so you don't have to actually cut down the trees and you would just make it part of your routine to run around and collect wood every single day until you have a lot. So similar to how I collect fossils every day and hit rocks and things like that, I think it makes a lot of sense to do kind of both of these today. I think I should set up a small tree farm that wouldn't take too long to kind of chop up each day. And then I think we should also, just for today's sake, buy those Nook Miles tickets and trash some islands. Our ultimate goal is to get one more build done today. I'm hoping doing another build will have enough items placed on the island to finally get Isabel to relinquish that third star. In preparation, of course, for the long day I have ahead of me, I am doing some of my normal daily routine things, and one of them is to get a crafting recipe from a villager and the beach and Kid is just pretty excited to be here. But is crafting a wooden knot wall? This is my second wall that I can use in my house, which is so good because I'm about to get enough money to upgrade my house again, and I'm probably gonna have more rooms soon. So, excellent. Now I have two different walls for the interior of my house. I would just love if I could have a floor, just one type of floor, I don't even care what kind. My beach recipe for the day was another gong, so this is a bit disappointing to be getting repeats so early on. So for now, I only bought one Nook Miles ticket because that left me with like 5,000 miles and there's still a lot of stuff I wanna unlock. We'll just see how much supplies we end up with from this one island and we'll go from there. And after destroying our Nook Miles island, I ended up with not as much as I had hoped and I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Uh, this could get us started, but I do think we definitely need to make that tree farm. I would say this is not the most impressive tree farm I've ever done. <laughs> but the point is that if you were to chop this up every single day, when you're not building a whole bunch, you would accumulate a lot of supplies. And that's kind of my goal right now, is to just have this come over here every day, chop it up. And that includes days where we time skip. If I have the extra, you know, time in the middle of the time skipping, come over here, chop these trees up. And uh, yeah, stuff will accumulate pretty quickly. We can always expand it if we need to, but uh, we got a lot to do today and I don't have a ton of time. So here's the current way the supplies are looking. And what we need to do is go through our recipes and try to find a handful of items that would make for a sensible build somewhere. I don't love the idea of going into an entire build without a plan. However, uh, sometimes some of my best work is done this way. So let's see what we can see. So after staring at my recipes for quite some time, I think I finally know what I want us to build and I'm gonna get to work. This one's gonna require a lot of pretty random items. So I'd say this build probably isn't gonna be super big or impressive, but I don't have a ton of stuff right now but it centers around the doghouse. I'm gonna place the doghouse right here and uh, I'm gonna explain what the heck I'm about to do. You see, I'm gonna make a junkyard. I don't necessarily want a junkyard and I certainly don't want one on the finished version of this island. However, the junkyard in my particular case has some benefits. You see, 
I don't have a ton of crafting recipes right now. So it allows me to just kind of place down a bunch of random stuff but make it part of a cohesive build, which is which is kind of cool. The other benefit, of course, to building a junkyard is that a lot of the items I use inside the junkyard don't necessarily have to stay in there forever. Once we tear it down, everything that I've crafted could be used in other projects, and in fact, probably will be used in other projects in the future. I wish I had some garbage crafting recipes because uh, so far it doesn't look like a junkyard. It kind of looks like a prison for a dog or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'd say that's a bit more horrible looking. What do you think? <laughs> is this enough to get three stars? It is not. Again, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Compared to previous reports, the island's natural environment is getting some positive feedback. Okay. It means it's time to work all the harder to improve the island's natural landscape. You just said it was good. Oh boy, here it is. Yep. That's what I thought. Just as I feared, I'm going to need even more flowers. Thank goodness it rained today. But you know what? Now might be a good time to take another field trip. We do need to keep in mind a couple of things here. Just because we go get flowers on one island doesn't mean that'll be enough. And it doesn't mean Isabel won't give us some other critique we need to worry about as well. So my priority on this Nook Miles Island is going to be looking for a DIY because as you can tell, I desperately need more. But then also just picking up all the flowers. With whatever inventory space I have left, we might also chop down some trees. What DIY did we get though? Please be something new. Stacked fish containers. Huh, <laughs> these might go perfectly in a junkyard. I think the fish container itself is an item I have to buy. I have been getting comments basically talking about how certain items are needed to be purchased in order to craft other items. So the stacked fish crates is a really good example of one of those whereby I might need to buy it from Nooks and then basically not place it down so I can craft it. So I can only use the stacked fish containers. I can't use a single fish container, if that makes sense. I'm still thinking about if that's how I want to play this. It's kind of a nuanced complication in my in my master plan to only use DIYs. And I know some of you have been supportive of that. I still haven't quite decided how I want to play that. Fortunately, I don't even have the stacked fish containers purchased yet, so we don't have to worry about it too much. So that is every flower on this island with a bit of room to spare, so I am going to go ahead and start gathering up some materials as well. Thankfully, these stack quite a bit, so I think we can get everything. Pretty good haul on that one. Let's head back. One thing I remember reading on the wiki is that you get more points if the flowers are fully grown. So normally, I would buy a whole bunch of seed packs and just plant all of them on the beaches until Isabel was happy. But because these are fully grown flowers, this might not take as many as I'm you know, thinking it'll take. We might not need to go on another trip. What I'm doing right now could very well be the tipping point for finally getting three stars, but let's find out. And it was. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe we actually did it. And there's Tom Nook realizing that the initials KS are indeed for KK Slider. They're freaking out, but you know what? <laughs> I'm not very starstruck by KK these days. I'm glad they're happy. With three stars unlocked, that means the work can finally begin. It's day nine of designing Animal Crossing Island in 30 days using only DIYs. In the last episode, we built a junkyard. We stole some flowers and that was enough to get us a three star island. Today, we claim our rewards. It's the 30 day DIY island. Today is the day of the big KK Slider concert. But more importantly, today is the day that the rest of the game unlocks for us and we can finally start terraforming the island. The credits are rolling, everyone's jamming out, but listen, we're just getting started. And there it is, the Island Designer app is unlocked. I have to go buy a whole bunch of privileges from the Nook Stop, of course. But of course, having this is the crux of today's episode. This is everything. Before we get started for the day, I should do my dailies. That's gonna involve just running around, getting fossils, all that stuff. Getting some points though, is really what I'm after. Nook Miles, anything that can give me some Nook Miles because the terraforming tools, they're a big unlock. They cost quite a bit of points and I need to be doing anything I can to earn them. Unfortunately, one of my Nook Miles Plus tasks today is to 
of course, plant produce. Why not? Leaf is here, but I can't just buy produce. That is against the rules. Today's beach DIY is a bird bath, which is super weak because I already have that and I got it from Tom Nook. <laughs> we got to find who's crafting today. Uh, also, there's a birthday. It's Eric's birthday. I accidentally uh, started my day uh, on Eric's birthday. I think I have just the gift for Eric. How would you like to be told that you have to move house <laughs> on your birthday while you're trying to celebrate? You're having a big party. Tom Nook calls you up and says, hey, can you come to the office real quick? Here you go, buddy. Start packing. Don't worry, I'll get him a real gift. I make my daily customization kit run on Nooks and I'm seeing the wrapping paper down there. You don't technically need wrapping paper. You do get some extra friendship points for using it. Um, I feel bad not wrapping someone's present on their birthday. And since the only wrapping paper you can craft comes around toy day, I'm just going to go ahead and allow myself to buy the wrapping paper. Um, <laughs> sorry if that breaks more rules or makes it more confusing, this challenge that some of you are trying to follow along with. But I, I think we'll make an exception for wrapping paper. There are plenty of gifts here to choose from because uh, Blathers did not take most of my fossils today. So we'll just wrap up one of them. And the party has not stopped despite moving day looming. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give Eric his awesome fossil birthday present and get a whole bunch of friendship points. And see, he appreciates the wrapping. Okay, there, there we go. I, that's how I know I did the right thing kind of breaking one of my rules. We'll buy some wrapping paper. It'll be worth it. And happy birthday to me because now I have even more points at a time where I desperately need them. Now, before we go any further, we do need to discuss Peachgate. 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 Yes, there has been some debate around the peaches that have landed on G Wiz. Are these illegal peaches? I say yes, but many of you disagree. So here is what I've decided. These peaches were sent to me in the mail by the mom character, not a real person, just the, the mom character in Animal Crossing. And I planted them without really thinking about it. And then later I realized that because I didn't really earn these on my own, maybe they shouldn't be here. So I cut down the trees and because I didn't have a trash can, I've just left the peaches here to, you know, be a reminder. And I've just been getting so many comments about it and thinking about it myself as well. There is no way for me to get peaches other than the, you know, the mail, essentially. I'm not going to be interacting with real people. So this would be the only way to get this fruit. So my decision is as follows. I will not use the peaches that were mailed to me at the start of the game. But don't worry because these are not the peaches that were mailed to me at the start of the game. I grew these peaches myself, and you can't prove otherwise. So now these peaches will remain in my storage for now with all the other fruit that I've collected, and once I'm ready to plant some kind of fruit farm or something, I will plant the peaches along with the apples and the cherries and the coconuts and all that stuff. The reason for this decision is because, indeed, peaches, as mentioned, are a crafting material, but all the fruit is. And there are going to be fruits that I will never get to use, such as pears. I won't be able to craft any of the pear furniture. And I am okay with that. But I do very much like the peach furniture, and I think it'll add some variety. And uh, hopefully we get some recipes for it, because, boy, those peaches became very controversial, and <laughs> making the decision to save them better have been worth it. The real focus of today is beginning to unlock the various terraforming parts of our new terraforming app. So there's all the different paths, of course, which I will be making good use of. And then the big ones, the waterscaping and cliff construction permits, both costing 6,000 points. I have 5,000 points. So we need to go out and continue trying to earn enough points to actually purchase at least one of those. Today, my focus is going to be on the waterscaping tool. And earlier I said Leaf was here, but maybe the KK concert scared him away. I swear he was in the title screen. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what happened. I, I did pick some weeds because I got a task to actually, pick, you know, sell weeds. And I thought that was because Leaf was here. Also, I got a task to plant produce. And I thought that was because Leaf was here. So I may have found kind of a bug. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, we're just going to be knocking these out. Uh, you know, finding a cicada shells worth 500. But that's really kind of rare. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to worry about knocking these out. I'm going to get 6,000 points. And in a minute, I'm going to explain to you the rivers and what I want to do with them. Chopping up these trees will not only get me some extra supplies, but it will knock out yet another Nook Miles Plus task, which is great. 
And then we're going to do the rivers. So basically my plan with the rivers is to decimate them completely. Today is mostly a day about destruction so that we can prepare the island for what we actually want to build, which is, uh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I, I don't have like a master plan for how the island is going to turn out to, to look. I don't have a theme in mind because I don't want to limit myself even more so than I already have with this DIY challenge. And uh, really all I know is that I want to terraform. I want to add elements of symmetry like I enjoy doing. And to do that, I think the easiest thing is going to be just to get rid of the rivers and potentially most of the cliffs, if not all of them. Uh, there's, there's a situation whereby I might keep the cliffs as they are, maybe edit them a little bit. I'm still kind of figuring that one out, but I know that I want to get rid of these rivers. Anyway, we now have our 6,000 points we need. So let's go ahead and buy our waterscaping permit. Now this is what our rivers look like at present. This is the natural layout of the island. I just wanted to take one last look at it before I completely destroy it. My goal is just going to be to get rid of the rivers on the base level. We may also do on top of the cliffs as well. Uh, this is going to take me quite a long time. Uh, and because there's not a whole lot to show you, I guess we'll just kind of speed build it. What I've decided to do here is keep the river straight on. So this is the river mouth. I do want a river going out that way. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do for this is I'm going to have the rivers basically connect at both river mouths on the map. So I started to remove this and then I realized, oh wait, no, for the river I'm trying to make, I think I'm gonna leave this alone. Uh, so some of this needs to be removed and some of it does not. And so I just need to keep my head on straight as to where the lines are. Given where we have the river now, I think what we need to do is take the South River and start to bring it up towards the North so we can figure out exactly where these are gonna intersect before I delete too many more <laughs> rivers that I don't actually need to delete, or I should say too many more water tiles. These four water tiles here represent where our new river is gonna go, and now we just have to take all four of these lines and have them go straight up. We are creating a very, very <laughs> linear river. Uh, there's not gonna be a lot of variation in this at all, but uh, where they intersect is where things will get interesting. I have decided to remove some of these trees. Uh, I know I've been kind of careful about cutting down too many trees, but uh, these are cherry trees and planting fruit trees is a lot easier for me than planting uh, non-fruit trees, thanks to the fact that, you know, fruit is plentiful <laughs> and I can't really buy the saplings. But getting these out of my way is gonna allow me to just kind of keep going. I don't just feel like storing cherry trees for no reason. And we get cherries and we get some wood, so all things that we can definitely use. And in this case, we get some points for chopping something down. Whew, all right. So I basically have one stretch of our river done and now I just need to do the stretch that runs north to south. At this stage of development, I am also considering making the river actually five tiles wide instead of four. The only reason when I do projects like this that I make the river four tiles is because the river mouths are four tiles, but there's no reason I can't make these wider if I want to. So that is a consideration as well. I think if we did five tiles wide, we'd get a couple cool things. Bridges extend over five tiles and it looks pretty cool like to have the longer bridges and you'll have that tile in the middle. So we can actually leave little bits of, uh, you know, grass tiles in the, the middle of the river and then decorate on top of those which is something I've always kind of wanted to do. I think that would be a lot of fun. And that is our north to south stretch of river complete. Of course, there is more waterscaping to be done on the cliffs themselves, but I'm not quite worried about that just yet. At this point where these rivers will eventually connect, this is where my cliff editing tools will come into play. The idea is that I'm actually going to build up a cliff area right in the middle and there'll be waterfalls that go down in either direction that fuel both the east and west running river and then the north south running river. Of course, this will be a lot easier to explain once I actually start building it. No joke though, I do think a river that is five tiles wide would be really, really cool. I've never done that before, but I gotta try it, right? Uh, the biggest thing is gonna be making the river mouth look good over here. So my plan is to make this fifth tile on the interior part of the river, which means this is where I would kind of need to look, I don't know, good. <laughs> 
So if I just do this real quick, let me just see what this looks like. Let's just back this up a little bit as if the river is indeed five tiles wide. And then we'll just kind of take a look. I don't like this sharp edge that this creates, but I mean, what if it's as simple as just covering this up, making the corner flush like that? I mean, there's no reason we can't roll with that. We could probably put a couple little items here to distract from that if we still don't like the way it looks. I don't. I think it looks fine the way the, the beach and the, the grass transition there. And yeah, I say we do it. I say we go ahead, take the plunge and make this river five tiles wide. I think that'll give us a lot of versatility and the opportunity for some really interesting builds in the future. Well, we did it. This, uh, this looks really good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to ask Tom Nook's permission to actually remove our one and only bridge. He's pretty excited about us building a new bridge. I'm actually here to demolish something. We are getting rid of our hot dog bridge. So in one Animal Crossing day, this bridge and this house will be completely out of our way. I'm gonna start picking up this furniture now. In order for the next day to be any use to us at all, we really need to get enough points to buy the cliff editing tool. I don't care if I don't get all the paths and stuff right away. Cliff editing is going to be a huge necessity to finishing this stage of the island layout. I can't really do anything until we get the island, lay island layout sorted. So we need points and I know exactly where to start. We need to do further edits on the G-Wiz mascot. And because I haven't unlocked the pro design tools yet, I'm going to be making a, a significant change here and adjusting the color palette of the mascot. And the reason being is because we're gonna make it a little more fancy. And I want some colors that complement each other uh, a little bit better. The biggest problem with our mascot thus far is getting the eyes correct. And it's been a struggle for me uh, ever since. So if we do this, uh, you know, he looks a little startled. This makes him look like, you know, he's just rolling his eyes, like you said something really stupid. But I think having the pupils in the center and then maybe working to make the eyes look a little more round might finally give us the look we've been dreaming of. Why would I go through all this trouble, you ask? Well, it's because it's time that we have our own flag here on G-Wiz. And who better to represent the interests of G-Wiz than the very mascot who's been with us from the beginning? Sure, he's seen some minor adjustments over time, but this is, this is him. This is the G-Wiz mascot, and now he'll be watching over us every single day <laughs> for the rest of this challenge. And also, changing the mascot slash flag, I mean, is how I'm getting even more points, because check that out, 500 points for me. I also just found who's crafting, and I need to talk to three villagers for even more points, but uh, I'm way more interested in getting another crafting recipe, which is the wooden plank sign. I think you just hang this on walls. I don't think it even goes on a door, so I was excited at first, but it's not the item I was actually thinking of. A bit of an underwhelming day for DIYs, to be sure. Oh well, 200 points for talking to villagers. We'll sell a hot item. We'll plant a couple of fruit trees. We'll hit a rock. We'll dive for three sea creatures. We'll chop at some more trees. We'll get stung by some bees. Okay, that one didn't actually result in any new points. The bee stings did help me learn the recipe for medicine though, so that's something. We'll catch five bugs. We'll water some flowers. And then we will stare at the number that just seems to be climbing up ever so slowly. Another thing we can do to earn some points is pay off our next home loan. I actually should have enough money for that. Oh, dang it. <laughs> and the next time I, uh, I jump on, I should get more points just for having that finished. Oh yeah, we are more than good on this. Yes, okay, great. Let's have Tom Nook expand our house. The next loan will be 348,000 bells and I do believe this gives us a new room. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Hey, so I don't know if you saw, but I'm working on this like 30 day like island challenge series. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering like when the island's complete, did you want to maybe like do, I don't know, like a video tour of it, like on your channel or something? Uh, people, people still play that game. Uh, yeah, I think a few people do. Uh, I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm good. Honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll be doing that. Uh, anyways, I, I've I've got to go record some Animal Crossing videos, so I'll catch you later. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Huh. 
So here's where we currently stand. I have half the points I need for the cliff editing tool. I've also been playing for several hours and I'm ready for a break. So I'm gonna take that break and then I'm gonna come back, but off camera and collect some more points and we will then buy the cliff editing tool and start uh, editing cliffs. It's day 10 of designing an Animal Crossing island using only DIYs. Yesterday we had our first KK concert, we began terraforming our rivers, we installed a new flag for the island, and we took our first boat tour. It's the 30 day DIY island. We are now a third of the way into this challenge and the stakes could not be higher. With our river layout complete, today we are hoping to do some work on our cliffs. I woke up today and the vision for what this island could end up looking like started to kind of take form in my head. So needless to say today, I'm feeling very motivated. I'm feeling very good. And I'm excited to see what this new recipe is. It better be new. A box shaped seat. That is this. But of course you can see we also have some other recipes unlocked as well. I now know how to make boots. The problem is I just need one more disgusting boot. So I'm hoping to fish one of those up eventually because that'll be my first pair of uh, actual shoes, which will be great. As promised, I did spend a bit of time playing off camera. I got the steel framed wall, the summer shell rug, a tire, which of course taught me to make the tire toy. And of course the boot, as I already mentioned. I also managed to get us up to 7,000 plus nook miles, which is great because we only needed 6,000 to actually unlock the ability to edit our cliffs. So that is done. And it's good that we have some points left over because as I was starting the game today, I learned two things. One is that we can now implement island ordinances and I'm thinking about going with bell boom so we can just kind of keep earning money as fast as possible. And the other, of course, is that we can finally ask our good friend Captain to take us to remote islands. This is a massive upgrade because this is how we are going to unlock various crops for our island. I can't buy them from Leaf, I have to find them myself. This is how we're gonna do that. So the goal today is simple. We're gonna work on our cliffs a little bit, get the island layout continuing to flourish. And then of course we are gonna take a boat ride with Captain to try and get some crops and a new DIY. Captain also unlocks the ability for us to start finding gyroids and I think cooking happens at this stage as well. So we're gonna be able to cook. We should get some really cool DIYs out of that too. Not just the food recipes, but like the stonework kitchen, which is a really nice DIY and probably the only way I'm gonna be able to cook in this series. So uh, yeah, I'm just excited for all the upgrades. We got another gold nugget, which is always good to see. And uh, I am gathering up supplies, doing the dailies, but I do need to show you guys something pretty cool. First of all, we've added our first extra room to the house. I did upgrade our house last night, which was very helpful. And uh, in addition to that, just having time to kind of, oops, having time to kind of sit down with G Wiz and just play a little bit uninterrupted was very helpful because I did manage to go around and collect some more supplies. I'm still very low on regular wood, but hardwood and soft, you know, tons of that. We have rocks, we have clay, I have tons of weeds. So I am slowly building up a whole bunch of materials that we can actually craft with. I definitely feel like throughout this series, it's gonna be important for me to take some time away from actually recording and just do a bit of those grinds. All but one fossil getting donated today. I always love to see that. Let's go ahead and sell a couple of things, buy a couple of things, customize a couple of things, and then we will take care of some business. We'll buy our daily song. And on my way to redeem my license for terraforming, I did see this, Be a Chef, DIY Recipes Plus. I don't know if not downloading this means I just can't get the cooking recipes yet, but it's 2,000 miles. I'm not ready to buy that yet. Cliff construction, 6,000 points, way more important. And ironically, a times five task for me was to spend 500 miles. So that replenished some of my points, which is pretty nice. We've also done a couple other tasks as well. And now it's time to play with ordinances. It'll cost me 20,000 bells to enact our first ordinance. And I am going to go with Bell Boom. Bell Boom for this particular challenge is great because while it does jack up the prices of everything at Nooks, we also get more money on things we sell. And I'm selling a lot more than I'm buying because this is a DIY only challenge. I'm not really buying any furniture. That ordinance will be put into effect tomorrow. Now, it's time to focus on this big behemoth of a project. We need to sort out our island layout. Now, I know there are gonna be cliffs on the island. Are they gonna be the same shape, all said and done, as the ones we already have? Not really, but I'm also just gonna kinda of let those be for now because I definitely have some ideas for right where I'm standing, 
and what we can do with cliffs right here. To start us off, I'm actually going to walk back this river just a little bit. I'm going to get rid of everything up to the waterfall because what I'm thinking I would like to do is I want to build like a hill and off of that hill, two waterfalls that feed both of the rivers, the run running from east to west and the one running from north to south. I might have to walk back even more river because this setup that I'm doing is going to be substantial. I'm not gonna be making a, just a little hill here. Ultimately, my plan is for this hill to not only be the source of water for the rivers, but it's also going to act as the way people get up and down into like the cliffside area of our map. I'm gonna outline this using dirt paths for now, but this is not the final path. But here's what I'm thinking. We're going to have a path that runs right alongside this river, and I'm thinking it's going to be at least three, if not four tiles wide. Why so wide, you might be asking? Well, the thing is, <laughs> this is a DIY only island, and I don't have a ton of options for decorating, so having wide rivers and paths kind of eats up some space. It's kind of a cheap way of trying to complete this challenge and complete this island, while also you know, making it look as good as I can make it look. And I'm happy to have these paths be three tiles wide, but going with even numbers is a little bit better when you're dealing with staircases and bridges in this game because they are too wide and there's not much you can do about that. Anyway, as of right now, the placement of this cliffside entrance and these rivers is a bit arbitrary. I don't really have, you know, exact placements in mind for the waterfalls and exactly where I want the entrance ramps to be, but I'm just kind of pretending it stops right here for now and we'll just kind of get a feel for it as I keep going. This is where <laughs> the decorating begins and uh, the plans end. It's also time to collect the last of my designer miles, which is great. That's 2,000 more points. We definitely have enough to afford some more stuff now. And as I build this out, I'm already seeing a bit of a flaw in my placement because I was thinking the ramp would start where this dirt pillar here starts. So imagine the, the edge of the stairs would be right here and you would walk up. The problem is you'd be up here and then the river is right here, but I want two staircases. I want one that runs up this way and then run one that runs up this way. So I do need to take this river and scale it back even more. And I have, I have to probably scale it back at an equal distance to this river. This is where the symmetry gets a bit complicated. Okay, this took me a few minutes to figure out, but I think I got it. So the two holes here represent the top of the staircase, okay? The path represents the, the path that I'm going for. Uh, you know, we'll have one path that runs up into the cliffs in that direction and one that runs up into the cliffs in this direction. So just imagine everything in front of me is filled with cliffs and everything over here is filled with more cliffs. The next thing to figure out is the placement of the waterfall itself. This is gonna really affect, I think, the aesthetic and what it feels like to walk around the island. You're walking by this big river and then you come up against a waterfall and a staircase. Where is that waterfall? Is it kind of next to you as you're walking up? Is it after you get up there? Is it before? So that's like the next thing I need to figure out. So in this example here, the staircase is kind of mostly right up against the cliff here. And uh, that means the waterfall is kind of giving the person walking up the stairs a bit of a, a mist as they walk up. Now, the problem with this is I don't think we can place a waterfall on the very edge here. I think this waterfall would need to be three tiles wide for a river that is five tiles wide, because yeah, we can't we can't put one here. And unless I extend the cliff that way, which I'm going to, I can't put one on this corner. So I need to be okay with a, a more narrow waterfall, and I haven't quite decided if I am. Fortunately for me and my paths that are four tiles wide, there is a pretty nice alternative solution to this. Centering both staircases allows me to add some cliff over here, which means I can make the waterfall wider, and it still lines up with the path that I desperately want running right next to the rivers. Of course, moving the stairs over also means that I need to uh, make the rivers a little bit shorter again, because now the staircases are just too close together for my liking. I really want some space between them. All right, so now our waterfalls are five tiles wide, our staircases run right alongside them, and they lead you right up into what's going to be all filled in right over here, but into our mountainy kind of cliff top area. What's cool about this spot is I also left room kind of here in the middle, and we can do whatever we want. We can just not fill this in. We can actually fill this in with cliff and then put something cool on top, maybe a fountain or something. I, I have a lot of different ideas for what could go in this spot and kind of add to the overall aesthetic of the area. 
but this is this is awesome looking to me. Uh, I think the paths I'm going to use on the interior side of the rivers are going to be stone, actually. I'm going to do the stone paths. And then at least for the exterior part of the river across over there, I'm going to be doing the wooden paths. And that's because I have a different kind of idea for what's going to be across the bridges that we will eventually put throughout here. Oh, didn't I get rid of this bridge? What's this bridge still doing here? <laughs> I could have sworn I told Tom Nook to get rid of this. Uh, in any case, um, we are going to have a few different houses, not all the houses, but a few different houses running alongside this river. So we're going to take this cliff, we're going to bring it out a little bit, or or push it in a little bit, depending on what we need. The houses are going to be right up against the cliff, and there's going to be, I think, a two wide, or maybe three wide, wood path that runs along this northern side of the river. And there'll be multiple staircases that kind of let you up. Um, to maybe even more houses or another shop or something. With that in mind, this is where we need to start making some decisions about this part of the island. Where I'm standing right now is kind of naturally where the cliffs stopped kind of forming. And both corners of the island have this. It's just this flat area that goes right up to the ocean. And honestly, it's kind of cool. I don't think I really want the cliffs to extend beyond where they are now. So if we decide not to extend these cliffs, that means we need to kind of work with the houses that are going to be over here, starting from right here and going all the way into uh, the more cliffy part of our cliffs. So in order to make this dream a reality, we first need to decide how many houses we want on this stretch and then how close we want them to the river. Let's first start by just planning the actual house and the distance from the river itself. So if we were to do a two wide path, we can actually put the houses right about here. Now, that only leaves one tile between the house and the river, but don't forget, the very front of the house is actually a spot where you can put more path. You can tuck some path underneath their doorstep, which is neat, but that leaves us no room for anything right here. If we wanted a little fence in front of them or something, we'd have a very narrow walk around these houses and it'd be very uncomfortable. So I think we're close but the best bet is to actually move the houses back just one more space. This leaves us, I think, a lot more room because we can still put a fence down and have a two wide path to walk along, which would be kind of nice. So if that's the case, I'm gonna work on shaving off this part of the cliff here, just so that it's all one cohesive line, one boring <laughs> line that doesn't alternate in shape or size the entire time. And looking at this from back here, we can certainly see that there is a lot of room for houses. If we wanted to put maybe all 10 of our villager homes just right there and have five on the bottom shelf and then five on the top shelf, we could absolutely do that, and it is tempting. While I think about that, I am gonna buy a couple more paths, the ones I know I'm definitely going to use, and that should still leave us with enough points to take a uh, cat and boat tour in a little while. Staring at the map here, I think what I would probably like to do is in fact do eight houses over here. We'll save two more houses for other areas of the island. Maybe our favorite villagers can have a little more space <laughs> than these folks. They're not gonna have much room, much privacy, and that's okay. It's just deciding how many houses or how far apart each house maybe should be. And again, symmetry. I want them kind of evenly spaced here. Where things get a bit tricky, of course, is uh, the, the path itself. So if I do a three wide path where I'm standing right now, and I want another staircase that goes up this way, which I kind of do, I run into the same exact problem with the waterfalls that I had uh, down there, where we can't see right now. So that means the path that runs over here should probably also be four tiles wide, just again to keep things simple and symmetrical. Which then also means that this house moves back one more tile, which means that I have to take another layer off of the cliffs. Oh well, this is exactly why I lay out islands this way. It's so that I can imagine where things will go, imagine what problems I'm going to face, and then just start to work with the terrain before actually placing anything down. There are, of course, different apps and programs you can use to lay out an island before actually editing anything on your own island, but I don't like to use those because I feel like they actually tend to limit my creativity. Uh, working like I am right now is perfect. This is when I'm most in the zone when it comes to decorating Animal Crossing. So the way things are turning out are already better than I was imagining when I woke up this morning and I said that, oh wow, I, I have like an idea for this island. It's it's shaping out to be so, so cool. 
I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I haven't gotten a single recipe from a balloon yet. Please be a recipe. Ah, changing room. See, I don't need that. I can sell it though. Oh, and I did get 200 miles for that. So at least, okay, that's something. Okay, another section of cliff has been shaved back. And a staircase would probably go in somewhere around here. I'm not worried about the staircase just yet. What I'm worried about now is house placement. And I think what I might do is just start by placing down a house right up against these cliffs, just tucking it right in. I can always edit the cliffs around it later, but that's what I wanna do. So let's grab our dirt and the house in question would go right here. So four tiles back, just like that. And then you might be asking, okay, how far apart is each house going to be? I was thinking about this and I wanna try going only two tiles apart per property. And the reason for that is because I want this place to feel pretty cramped. But also, staircases, again, are two tiles wide. So I'm thinking what I can do is have two houses next to each other and they share something in between, maybe a little market stall, a sitting area, just something really, really cozy. And then in the middle, right here, would be a staircase. So you'd go between two houses to get up to the next layer of cliffs. You know what's super interesting about this? <laughs> This was the original plot we were just playing with, and it's exactly in the spot that lined all of these up perfectly. I didn't I didn't move this yet. This is exactly where we left it. So, hey, that's perfect. That's so good. I feel like that's a sign that I'm on the right track. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with this layout we've created. And now the idea to complete the look would be to use this really awesome looking uh, tile that is made of like wood and have it run all the way across this river here. And like I said, there'll be little like market stalls and stuff between each house. So I'm thinking, remember the fish crates we got? I'm thinking we can use those. We can do all kinds of little fish markety stuff right along the river here with a nice wooden boardwalk. Now I did say this boardwalk would be four tiles wide. Right now it's three. The fourth one is gonna go right here, but when I start placing houses, it's gonna destroy it anyway. So I don't really care. We'll just fix it later. So staircase here. We have a little space in between each house and we have an opportunity to put another staircase centered on this path right up here and it'll get you up to the cliffs as well. I love this. I am ecstatic about how this is gonna look. From a distance, this is what we're kind of looking at. It's kind of hard to see obviously without any houses, but I do like the vibe so far. And again, there'll be a path running here with a staircase that goes up this way as well. I'm really excited to see what the heck I do about the waterfalls because one of the things I was planning on doing was having a river running from the mountains back in that corner and then putting water up to these waterfalls. So like water is coming all the way down from the mountains way back there. How I'm gonna make that work with all these intersecting paths potentially is a mystery to even myself. I don't exactly know yet, but we're gonna we're gonna work on it together. We'll find out. Anyway, for my next trick, we need to start placing down the stone path that is going to run along this side of the river. Again, the interior part is gonna be stone and uh, I'm excited for this too. I think these paths are really nice. I think maybe you were expecting me to design my own paths and I've, I've been there, I've done that. I don't like designing my own paths. One of the things I actually really enjoy is that uh, Nintendo gave us a handful of paths that place right into the ground like this and I like them. They're actually pretty nice. Uh, but yes, this path is going to run along the river like this. And then my first bridge on at least this side is going to go from here and line up with the staircase that we've decided that's going in right in front of us. One thing I did not take into account with this uh, path layout that I'm doing is the space between resident services and this big wide path. We have one tile separating the two here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I think I can place trees in here. Why don't we just try it real quick? If I can place trees in here, that's probably what I'm going to settle on. But let's just see. Can I put a tree right here? <gasps> yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'll probably put some trees right behind resident services here. And that'll look pretty nice, I think. I've now finished the outline of our first interior path. I'm going to keep these as an outline for now because you just never know what's going to change as, as time goes on here. I'm also thinking the staircases, I did put the landings where those holes are. I might actually move these back one more space. And uh, the reason is because I would like them now flush with the path that's right here. So I should probably do that before I forget uh, to grab the cliff construction tool. We're just gonna walk these back 
one space. Unfortunately, my tree farm is going to be a casualty of uh, <laughs> this project. This right next to us is where I was starting to just chop wood, just on the regular. And uh, now I gotta move that over a little bit, which is fine. It's fine. This is this is how progress works. And I've reached the beach area. I don't know how far down to go with these. Uh, because I like when all my paths kind of connect in one circuit. So, is this path going to end here? Am I going to end it sooner? I I have no idea. But uh, I have a really good idea of what like the top half of the island is looking like. And that feels good. I also am not fully sure of what I'm going to do on this side of our river yet. I think what I might do is actually bring this cliff over here up really close to the river. Maybe add a couple more little waterfalls here and there too. I still want bridges that go from, you know, over to that side to this side. But I think those bridges would just lead you directly to maybe a staircase that gets you up to the cliffs. And I'm thinking maybe on this side is where the campsite might go or maybe my house. Uh, the more I think about it though, the more I think most of our buildings are going to be in the top sections of the map in this kind of like cliff mountainy area that we're making. Because most of the houses are going in that top part we've already designated. But where I'm standing right now could be my house. Maybe the museum could go up there. Or maybe we keep museum and Abel's and Nook's on the lower half so we have something down here. <laughs> I don't know. So obviously all my plans aren't fully formulated yet. But uh, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. All right, so now the outline for our north to south running path is complete. That means next up on the agenda is just fill in this giant pit that I made where the two staircases kind of meet. And uh, once I fill this in, we can move on to the next phase. And there we go. It is all filled in. That leaves the next phase of our layout plans, and that is going to be up here. This is where the next layer of houses are going to go, and where things get a little bit complicated, because this part of the cliff up here looks nice. It's naturally spawning, but it's not going to leave us enough room to place a house and like an adequate path. I think my plan here is to keep the really cluttered feel of the houses. And we're going to have a path that is basically three wide. But the part that I'm working on, walking on right now is probably going to be like fences or something. So the path is really going to be too wide minus the little doorstep area. <laughs> it's going to be cramped up here. Same exact layout though is down there. We're going to have the houses two spaces apart. And I think I might put yet another staircase that goes right up here. I don't know what'll be on that layer of cliff. Probably just, I don't know, some decorations. I could eventually decide to put the campsite up there. But uh, yeah, this is this is kind of the idea. So the next plot would go here. The last plot would go here. And then that next staircase would land right here. There's also a chance I could decide to put the last two houses up on this little cliff area. Totally possible, just not sure what's gonna happen with that yet. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're going for. Let's look at the map. <laughs> it's quite the cramped little neighborhood. But, uh, you know, in person, I think it's going to look really cool, especially once we get them all decorated. I think that's enough island layout work for one day. Now, I would like to go check out our very first Captain Tor island, because this should hopefully get us something really awesome. Of course, before I go, I actually have to plant all these trees that I picked up, because they are taking up a ton of space in my inventory, and I need them. I don't, I don't want to chop down too many trees as you know because i can't buy saplings to replace them um <laughs> what you thinking about out here on the dock <laughs> what do i do listen unless you have like a wetsuit maybe maybe just stay up here on dry land i'm i'm gonna take a boat ride you better still be in this village when i get back all right what's our first island okay so we have cherry trees we have uh shrubs that are in bloom which is really cool I'm not seeing any crops of any kind, which is a huge shame. I was hoping to start collecting some different crops, but we can collect our first gyroid. I obviously haven't thought about it until now, but should gyroids be considered items we can decorate with? I mean, they're not DIYs, but I do need to like grow them in the ground a little bit. Uh, maybe. I'm gonna say maybe on that one. Let's see what recipe we're gonna get though. It is a crafting recipe, it's a barbell. I think I have this. Oh, oh that's so disappointing. 
Dang it. So I didn't get crops or a new recipe. All right, well, all that's left to do now is take my anger out on this island. I will, of course, be leaving here with as many shrubs as I can stuff in my pockets, though. The same should probably go for the roses. I'll take this one up here, but let's ultimately just plan to take as many as we can fit in our pockets after we've already taken everything else. So here is our haul. We caught a new bug. We got a whole bunch of shrubs. We got a bunch of supplies. I managed to get two of each type of rose just to fill out my inventory and some coconuts, and we got our first gyroid. I mean, was this the worst Captain Island ever? I'm gonna say yeah, I think it was the worst. I think it was kind of not worth my points, and that's because we didn't get much new stuff from it. I was really, really hoping to get at least some vines, a new recipe, and definitely some kind of crop, like a tomato or some wheat. That island was not much different than the types of islands we could get for 2,000 points. I know it cost half that, I'm still disappointed. Oh boy, you're still here. What is it? What is wrong? How long have you been here? I was sort of spaced out. I was daydreaming about starting a new life on another island. Bertha. <laughs> you know what, Bertha? If you're not liking this island already, you're probably not going to like it much here in the coming weeks because I'm moving literally everything around. So go. Just go. It's day 11 of designing Animal Crossing Island in 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we began laying out our entire island. And then, as a reward to ourselves, we got scammed by Captain. It's the 30 day DIY island. Today is moving day for our villagers. I'll be moving 7 out of 10 villagers to this new location, which we set aside for them yesterday. The reason I say 7 is because I moved one house yesterday and. Uh, there's, there's two more houses that are just going to be somewhere else because I only put eight plots aside here. There is one thing we kind of need to check first though. We need to choose a proper incline for this neighborhood and there's a few that might work. I thought maybe the log staircase, it's not super expensive and it kind of matches the vibe of like the wood path we put down, but so do the plank ramps. And on a completely different end of the spectrum here would be the steel staircases. They are the most expensive option but I also think they might complement the area well. However, at the end of the day, I only have so much money, <laughs> so let's just try this. The reason this is taking priority over anything else today is because I realized later on that I probably can't place staircases this close to houses. So I just wanted to see if that was true and uh, adjust my plans accordingly. So let's see, build, that's what I thought. There are two different things I can do to solve this problem. One is that I can take the houses that are next to the ramp area that I set aside and just move them over one tile each, which means everything kind of gets moved over a little bit. Not a big deal. I have the room over here. I have the room over there. Or I can dig the staircase into the cliff, which does take away room from the top half of this little village we're creating over here. That would probably put the landing of the staircase maybe about right here. And then the next staircase, which is mostly just for getting up on a cliff area, if I even have one, uh, would have to be dug in as well. But after taking away that many tiles, I might not even put a big enough cliff up here for you to climb up there anyway. I do really like the distance between all these houses right now. I don't want to change it too much. I like where everything is. So before I do anything else, I'm going to try to see how much I have to dig this cliff in and then figure out if I like that or not. My guess is this will still be too close to the house, as will this. And it looks like this too is going to be <laughs> probably one tile too close. So I need to dig this in quite a ways in order for it to work. And now I'm afraid I'm gonna have to probably terraform up top too, because it's gonna be like your staircase is going into a wall. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's fine with this. Let me imagine it. Is this a good spot indeed? <laughs> I don't... I don't exactly know. This is further back than I was anticipating. It does create kind of an alley feel walking between two houses to get up to the staircase. And I like that, but I got to think on this a bit more. The daily routine in the meantime can commence. I just shot a dress out of the air. What was, what was on the beach today? Let's see. It was an ironwood clock. Okay, mostly just for indoor only, <laughs> indoor use only, but I'm happy. That's fine. That's fine. It's new. I'll take new. First rock of the day is a money rock. That feels good. So not only do we have the staircase conundrum to worry about, but this in general is just going to be a pretty long day for me because moving seven or eight homes, looking probably like eight now, is going to take a long time. Uh, and I'm just going to have to do a lot of time skipping one day at a time and you know me, it's difficult for me to just skip a day and do nothing. 
So in that time, I'll probably try and make some money by planting some money trees, at least. Uh, even if we don't get the money rock every day, just having that many days worth of money trees waiting for me will be a pretty nice reward at the end of a very long process. The other task that I need to get done each day, if I'm really on top of it, would be to chop down a bunch of trees, maybe around where my tree farm is. And, you know, if I did that for that many days in a row, I'd probably come out with some pretty decent supplies as well. And as you know, the further along this island gets, the more supplies I'm gonna have to use because we need to get, you know, decorating at some point, like actually decorating. Oh gosh, and then there's all the DIYs I could get every single day. Oh, man, I, this is gonna be such a long process for me. The Unglazed Ditch set is a pretty decent little decorating item. It can be customized, I think, in a few ways. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. And little items like that I could put on tables, excellent. Fortunately for me, I have saved up quite a bit of money. I could have put it right towards my loan, but I didn't. And this money is great because not only will it help me plant those money trees I was talking about, but each house we move is going to cost a certain amount of money. And then if we decide to build any bridges or ramps along the way, that also is going to eat into my funds quite a bit. So I'm just going to keep all my money on my person during this process. I've decided to go ahead and move Harry's home out of the way. I've done my thinking and I've decided the staircase was in the right place the houses were not. This is going to kind of adjust the way the island is laid out a bit more than I would like, but it's okay. I, I was thinking about it and I can definitely get by with, you know, <laughs> with these changes. It just, just it's, it's not that big of a deal. After giving it much thought, I've decided to move this house out of the way. I'm going to put the staircase back where I originally planned to have it, and I'm just going to leave a little bit of extra room between the houses in the middle just so you can climb the stairs. We'll decorate around them, it's gonna look awesome. So each of these plots needs to move over a space or two, and uh, I think that means this last plot will start here. It's kind of hard to, to get my head around this. Uh, it won't go there. So basically this house just moves over one space and sits on top of this line of dirt. This plot then also moves over one space, just like that. And then if we come over here, we gotta do the same exact thing. Hopefully this decision doesn't screw up any staircase plans <laughs> for this area right here that I have in the future. It is probably gonna be fine, but that was the main thing keeping me from like committing to this early on. But now that we're doing it, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. All right. And with that, the bottom layer plots are now set in their new homes. <laughs> I guess my, my home plots have their new homes. I'm going to move Harry's house literally just right next to this. And with that done, our new layout has started to take shape. I got to do the top section still, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Now I can move Harry's house just opposite of where it is now, so I don't have to move it twice. We'll say this is the spot. Can I just say this move would frustrate me to no end? If I looked out my window and saw where I was going, <laughs> I would be so mad. I think at first when we place the staircase here, it's gonna look a bit awkward to have just this weird space between the staircase and the houses, but you know, we can maybe put some plants or something there, and I think it'll look pretty nice. It's just gonna, it's gonna take some getting used to, but uh, I, I do want to commit to this. I think it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for me, just a new way to kind of decorate a spot, and it's gonna look really awesome. Anyway, there are a couple of last minute things we need to do before we begin this <sighs> exhausting process. I need to empty out my inventory first and foremost. This should be plenty of room. Next, I need to make some stone axes. The reason for making these is because I'm gonna be coming, you know, in every day and I wanna just quickly chop down some trees, and I don't want to, you know, run out of supplies to do that. Ooh, got 2,000 points for storing things in my house. That's good. I know it sounded like I was about to go through a whole list, but that was it. Just, just those two things. Now we're ready to start moving houses. And on this day, we have a visitor at the campsite, which is going to be interesting because we actually do have an empty plot with Bertha having moved out. So we'll check that today. But the first thing I want to do is figure out the two crafting recipes for the day. So we're gonna enter any house that looks like the lights are on, see who's crafting. And if they're not crafting, I leave. At least the houses themselves for now are on the beach. So <laughs> this is only gonna take longer and longer, but it's easy enough to check all the houses and the beach at the same time. I don't wanna do this, but if I see a fossil and it's within reach, I may as well grab it because I am still trying to get that part of the museum done. Here we go, we got our beach recipe and it is honeycomb flooring. Look at that, that is the first floor that I've learned how to craft. I don't like that floor, but I mean, it's better than nothing. It's not like I'm gonna have a ton of options. Here's our empty plot. There's our campsite villager. <laughs> who, who is this? Could it, 
Could it be Poppy? Oh my gosh, Poppy? Oh, please, 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 please. I bet Poppy's in there. Guys, do you think Poppy's in there? I don't know, I don't know. Oh, we need to check, we need to check right now. Calm down, guys. There's no way Poppy's in there. Hey, shut up. Yeah, you're always so negative. Ugh, he's here again. Oh, I can't stand that guy. He just never lets up. Oh, that's not Poppy. Guys, shut up, shut up. He's going in the tent. It is not Poppy. He's a cat villager, though. <laughs> Monique. I never remember Monique, which feels bad. Should should we invite Monique? The thing is, we need to invite somebody, because I don't think we can move that plot without someone living in it. So, I don't know. We could let it autofill, but Monique is considering living here. So, let's just see. Will she just do that without making me play a stupid game? She has to turn it down. You know what? Fine, Monique. That's fine. Monique's ranking is 292 anyway, so we're not really missing out here. Eric is the one crafting, and it's a mossy garden rock. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so cool. I love... DIYs like this. We're gonna need as many little decorations as possible, and I'm just I'm just glad that we're starting to accumulate those. All right, let's start chopping up our trees. I'm not going to shake them first. I don't care if I get stung. Let's just let's just get this task out of the way. The last thing I need to do before moving the actual uh, houses today is to find <laughs> the money tree spot, and I have no idea where this is gonna be. I am, however, managing to find all the fossils, and so I might as well just dig these up. Oh, and while I'm over here, I should probably just place the incline as well. I'm tempted to pay this off now, and I don't really want to, but if I want bridges, which I desperately do, I may as well just pay it off now. I can always make land bridges in the meantime while we're still kind of building things up. So there goes about half our money. It's only fair though, we're about to put most of everybody over here, so they should probably have a way to get up and down. Fine, it's fine. Okay, I did find our money tree spot, and what I need to do, I need to make sure I do this very carefully. Let's try and put away everything first, and then we can take out 10,000 bells, and let's be careful not to bury anything but the 10,000 bells. There's a really good chance I accidentally click this amount of bells, and I don't want to do that. Aside from getting my daily Nook Miles, I'm also going to go ahead and buy my song every day too, because I can't help myself. <laughs> Next up, we'll move Wendy's house. Before I actually moved Wendy's house, I wanted to see what it looked like, because I'm trying to have houses that look a little more beachy on the actual river itself, but looking at all the options, there's not, there's not a lot of people that have beachy looking homes. I guess Eric, but Eric is one of the few I don't want to have move over there because Eric is already in the top 50. And so I wanted to put his house somewhere else because he's the best one. But when I say beachy, this is more or less what I'm talking about. This might literally be the only house though. <laughs> we might just have to deal with it. I guess Norma's house fits the description, but I think that's it. So yeah, let's go ahead. We'll put Wendy where Harry used to be, which is going to be right about here. And there we go. It is now time to skip ahead to the next day. Looks like Red is here today. And the DIY is right next to my house. Perfect. It's going to be a project table, which is an excellent, excellent table. It's two by one, and it's really just kind of one of those tables that can fit in anywhere. Stinky is not crafting. Paula is not crafting. The next day we skip to is going to be really confusing because... <laughs> Uh, there's also going to be gyroids popping out of the ground, which I still haven't decided if I'm going to decorate with them or not. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, what are you making? A log bench. I think I know how to make that. Yep, I know how to make that. <sighs> Dang it. I think Norma's house will be the one that we decide to move today. Here's how the neighborhood's shaping up, though. The log ramp is officially done. There's a lost item, which I'm going to completely ignore. And before we get too far into this, we should probably start moving these plots over as well. All right. That is all the plots exactly where they need to be. Found today's money tree spot. I'm managing to find all the fossils as well, which again, not intentional, but pretty nice. Uh, except for my shovel being broken, that's less nice. I'm not too far from Red's boat, so I might as well just go ahead and buy a piece of art, even though completing the art museum is not something that I'm like actively trying to do. But I don't know, I just feel like I'll regret it if I don't try. It's always nice too when there's like something that's clearly not fake and you can just run up to it and buy it without having to think about it. Next up is the tree farm. I'm making a new shovel, but here's our recipes we've unlocked recently. <laughs> a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, but yes, let's go ahead and make a shovel. And now it's time to move Norma's house. And with Norma settling in tomorrow, it's time to skip another day. By the way, that gyroid we planted, the first one, it's a tacoid. My first gyroid is a tacoid, which I would argue is probably the best one. I went ahead and skipped August 1st because I remembered that I made that my birthday and I just did not want to deal with that. So we're on August 2nd and now I'm getting the notification that Nook's Cranny is actually going to expand which is fantastic. It looks like Kid is the one crafting today and literally the first house I walked into, which is really nice. It's the acoustic guitar. 
pretty good decoration. Believe it or not, we've learned a hundred DIYs. It certainly doesn't feel like I've unlocked a hundred DIYs, but here we are. And I forgot we were gonna get an autofill. Who is this? I'm not gonna read the sign. I'm just, I'm just gonna go in. Is it, is it Poppy? <gasps> oh, no way. Could it be? Guys, I don't think Poppy's house looks like that. Shut up, what do you know? Oh, look at Mr. I read the wiki. Yeah, let us just have this, come on. Guys, I don't know, maybe he's right. Oh, uh, not you too. No, 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 it's Poppy for sure. Look, he's going in, he's going in. It is Renee. <laughs> Uh, I like Renee's house. This is this is a nice house. And Renee is ranked 110 on the list here. So not great, not terrible. I will say, though, that I think Renee's house is the one, in fact, we moved today. It looks really nice. I would love to have it on that riverfront. And for anyone, in case you forgot, uh, I cannot use Happy Home as part of the rules. So I won't be able to edit any of these houses. And I am just here taking one last look at the old Nook's Cranny before it gets upgraded. <laughs> Uh, oh, and I should probably mention that my inventory is completely full uh, and I need to get all these fossils identified. So, I don't know. I was going to sell some of the junk, but let's just go get, take care of the fossils too. Here's what we're donating and here's what we're selling. 43,000. Oh, wow, that's not bad for just running around and skipping days. Today's beach DIY is the Lily Record Player, which is an excellent machine for playing music and it works really, really nice outdoors. Tree farm time, so far I haven't been stung, but I, I think this is the round where we, we do get stung. And we didn't. Two fossils right next to each other, fantastic. This is literally my second soup kettle in a row from a balloon. I just sold one of these from a different day where I, you know, logged in, found a balloon, and I, I just, how do I get two soup kettles in a row? Who's complaining though? I mean, times five on a 200 nook mile goal? Okay, never mind. Give me as many soup kettles as you want. Oh, and my bonus. I forgot because I skipped a day. I now am back to day one on this. <laughs> Dang it. All right, it's fine. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just buy our song. And let's ask to move Renee's house. Renee's house makes for the final house on the bottom layer of our neighborhood. We just have four more houses to move. I still got to find the money tree for today, though. Aha, here it is. It's too soon to, for someone to want to move away, right? What's Stinky thinking about? Oh, he just wants to give me some trash. Great. I wish, <laughs> I wish the lantern was craftable because I really, really like using this item all over islands, but uh, it is sellable. I mean, we can make some money at least. In any case, our tasks are complete and it's time to skip another day. And you know the time skipping worked because Nook's Cranny is closed. I'm actually starting to have to check the neighborhood to see who's crafting. That's how many houses are here now. And it is Harry. Harry is making some modeling clay, which is another cool item you can put on top of tables. It can be customized in all kinds of fun ways. This is excellent. By the way, I do know that if I were to skip instead of an entire day, like half of the day, I could get even more recipes, but this is, this is already taking forever. There's no way I'm doing that. Still haven't found the bells that are buried somewhere, but uh, I will hit these trees and hope once again not to get stung. Oh, perfect. There they are. Everything's right here. And today's beach DIY is the golden decorative plate. I certainly do love a golden item. The next house we're moving is Tasha's house, and that's going to go right here. We now have three more plots that need houses. <sighs> and the neighborhood will be complete. I've also decided it's time to change my hairstyle to something that's more appropriate for how I'm feeling right now. I think this is the best representation for what I'm going through because I have to skip another day and this is taking forever and I'm feeling like it's running me ragged. Nook's Cranny is reopening today, but you know what? That shop is kind of useless anyway. They could celebrate without me. Got a fossil and a DIY sitting really close to my house and <laughs> right next to each other. What is it going to be? The woodland wall. Okay, yes. I really like getting interior floors and walls. There's just not a lot to choose from, so I get really excited at the thought of my house having some, like, interesting rooms. It is kid crafting again. What do we got? A ukulele. Okay, I got a guitar and a ukulele today. I am all ready for my YouTube apology video. The first thing I'll be apologizing for is, is that joke. One of the things I'm doing is uh, getting a decent amount of reactions today as well. <laughs> Just from all the time skipping, if I happen to walk across the path of the correct villager, I get a new reaction, which is something I wasn't really counting on. Uh, I'm excited to see how many of those we end up with. Time to do our trees. I've barely started today, and I already have uh, both DIYs. I see another fossil over there. This is going really well. I mean, according to this, we've unlocked 10 reactions. I guess it'll go up significantly once I spend my points on some as well. By the way, today's times five Nook Miles multiplier is for hitting a rock, and it's the money rock. So double whammy here. I'm really excited. I'll be taking that, and I'll be taking these. 
Speaking of money, I've found today's money tree. Got our bonus, got our song. And because today is going so quick, I'm gonna go ahead and buy some fence recipes because we need to start collecting these as well. Removing Paula's house. And we'll put it right here. Just two more plots to fill. It's another new day, and I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to decide the last houses I'm going to move. I think Stinky and Eric are the ones I'm going to have live somewhere else. They've easily been the nicest to me out of everybody in this <laughs> village so far. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what beach DOI we got. The bird bath again? Oh my gosh. Anyway, they've easily been the nicest villagers that I have on this island. Just hands down. I've broken another stone axe, but I'm really glad that I've decided to make this one of the dailies because, oh my goodness, we are getting so much in terms of wood. All the different varieties. I think Kit is the one who's been crafting the most throughout this entire day today, and I got an ironwood bed this time, which is awesome. Starting to collect all the ironwood furniture. Found today's money tree. Got our points. Got our song. And now I'm getting Angus to move. We'll put him right here. Oh my gosh, I only have to do this one more time. Before we skip to the last day though, let's go ahead and deal with our inventory, which is once again, basically full. We're only donating four of the fossils that we got. We're gonna sell the rest at the brand new and approved Nook's Cranny, which we only need to worry about coming into just to sell stuff and buy some customization kits every now and again. Looks like we're gonna get 45,000, which is a really good haul. So we're now on the last day that we need to skip to. It looks like this is the fireworks show which would be a really nice way to cap off such an intense grind, but I just don't think I can handle any more time skips. Let's begin with our last round of tree chopping for today. And what's nice about that is I didn't get stung one single time. <laughs> there was a week of time traveling there and none of these trees ever spawned a wasp nest. I'm pretty thrilled about that. The beach DIY is gold plate armor. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a new outfit but it's just the, the big suit of armor that just kind of stands around. <laughs> I can't even make that until I get the, I believe the iron plate armor. So kind of a useless recipe right now. Found today's money tree. Oh my gosh, this is too adorable. <laughs> it's a shame that I have to ruin their favorite tree with a house in a minute. I still have yet to find out who's crafting, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the plot for our last villager now because I'm gonna have to go up there anyway to see who's crafting. We'll get our song for the day as well. And I just love when this item shows up. Unfortunately, this is the wrong playthrough for it, but ah, such a good item. I'm also going ahead and grabbing two new fence recipes, a couple of my favorite ones, in fact. Oh my gosh, they're still here. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to build. Let's see, will it let me? Oh, <laughs> it just shoved Angus right out of the plot. Okay, good, this took long enough as it was. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So we have everybody here now. I think I'm gonna also get a bridge today. I was thinking about that. We have a lot of money, which I'm about to show you in a little bit. But uh, yeah, having a bridge the next time we come back would be great because we are gonna be making a lot of visits here. And I guess it'll be great for the villagers too. None of the villagers in our new neighborhood were crafting, which means the only other villager it could be after checking every single house is Eric, who is as far away from that neighborhood as possible. Oh, you're not crafting either. Oh, it's the fireworks show. I think people are distracted. They don't want to craft because they're too excited for fireworks. Well, that's okay. It's time to go over the hall. Remember when I said we have a lot of money? Well, that's from all the money trees we've been planting throughout the day. And oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, this is gonna this is gonna be satisfying. So I currently have 73,000 bells. Remember that number. I'm gonna chop these down one at a time. Gonna make sure that I don't lose any bags of money in the process. And we are now at 253,000 bells. That means it's time to reward our efforts with a brand new bridge. Now, I don't know which bridge to do. <laughs> I think this one, because given like the style of the paths and stuff we're using in that area, I think this bridge, not only you know is it affordable, but I think it matches the vibe. And we are of course going to line it up with our new staircase. That looks really good. <laughs> I'm like really excited about this bridge. Time to empty our wallets. While we're at it, let's start paving our new path as well because I really wanna show you guys what this is gonna look like having a four wide path with some of it going like underneath the doorsteps of these houses. I'm excited. Yeah, there we go. I think my plan for this is going to be to put a rope fence right along the river. And that should keep people from, of course, falling into the river. And again, I think it'll look really nice. Let's go ahead and taper off all these little spots here. I don't get why we can't put some path underneath staircases. That still, to this day, 
drives me bonkers. But Angus is enjoying it, so I, I do like that. We're going to be putting stone path up here in a similar fashion. I also think I might put some fences along here as well. I haven't quite decided yet because, again, not a ton of room. People up here might just have to risk it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. But that concludes another incredibly long grind. The next thing we need to do is continue terraforming and doing some more plans for our island layout. We need to decide where some other buildings are going to go. It's day 12 of designing an Animal Crossing island in 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we spent the entire day moving every single villager to a new permanent location. It did take forever, but it was a crucial step. It's the 30 day DIY. Now that the majority of our houses have been placed in their new permanent locations, we need to figure out the placement of more buildings today. In addition to that, I would like to continue working on the various paths and things like that around the island. I don't have a lot of money right now, so I can't be putting in staircases everywhere, but getting the paths down and determining more parts of the island layout is something we can do for free and will be very, very crucial for getting this island to five stars. There's a lot of life here around the town today. <laughs> Eric was just taking a nap in one of these hay beds. We have conversations going. There's just people kind of walking around everywhere. I feel like the villagers are really pleased that they finally have uh, <laughs> homes in a location that's not going to change for once, which is probably pretty good. They were all on the beaches before, and you know, sometimes the, the tide rises, their carpets get dirty, that upsets them. I get it. So I'm happy to have done that for them. We have two more houses where we need to figure out where those go. And we have four different buildings that also need homes that are not houses. The museum, Nooks, Able Sisters, and the campsite. Also, our beach DIY today is the log bed, which is one I was wanting to get for a while. This is a really nice item for all kinds of purposes. So that's great. So I'm not going to waste any more time. And I'm going to begin placing down paths, finishing up paths that were just kind of, you know... <laughs> hollow for no reason, and really working through the rest of this island layout. With our paths filled in, the next thing we need to do is start to place down our grid. When I build symmetrically, I like to make things in a bit of a grid style so that all the paths connect in a really nice way and it's just kind of easy to navigate around the island, no matter how much you clutter it at the end of the day. For me, one of the focal points in this type of city design, if you will, is going to be the immovable objects. In this case, resident services. The idea being is we want paths going to and from resident services because we can't do anything about this building. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just have a four wide path. We'll start with four. We'll just kind of try to keep these paths wide for as long as we can. I'm gonna have that come off into this direction. And we are actually going to turn it straight up towards the bridge up north, which is gonna create our first little spot that we can kind of choose how we decorate. So kind of like this, and by spot we get to decorate, I mean this area right here. In this spot, we could put all kinds of little things, a little garden, uh, you know, a little seating area, maybe some like, uh, maybe there's a music player, a little campfire. There's all kinds of things you could put in little spaces like this. And this is why I love doing kind of symmetrical builds in this game so much, because I like decorating little areas. When you give me one giant blank canvas, I start to get intimidated. I think a lot of people could relate to that. And this is kind of my way of combating that. Now, alternatively, depending on its size, we could also put a building here. I'm thinking maybe Able Sisters. If we did this, my thought process is that you would have Able Sisters here, you would have Nook's Cranny right across this little road from it, so right here, and the path itself would continue running in this direction until you got to about here, where you know, you'd have the option to go up that staircase, so on and so forth. We do need to take some measurements though. This is four tiles deep right here. We get kind of a fifth tile if you consider where I'm walking right now to be part of where a building could go because you can always slide the path under the doorstep of these buildings. So I think Able Sisters could actually fit in here perfectly while leaving a little bit of room right here to put, I don't know, something, a couple trees, just something to separate this path from this path. This is a page I found online about the different dimensions of buildings in Animal Crossing. And you can see here that Able Sisters is five by four. So we got five long here by four deep. So if we allow Able Sisters and the doorstep to kind of hit the path here, 
this is what it would look like, which is kind of perfect, actually. I say this is perfect because I have a gap behind Able Sisters and we have a gap behind Resident Services. The difference is that I could put a tree behind Resident Services. I can't put any trees behind Able Sisters because that'll be right up against a building. I think I'd rather have the space, though, than not have the space behind it. You could still put some maybe little items back there. So I do think I'm going to go with this strategy of putting it right up against the path. And uh, now it's time to ask Tom Nook about that. This does, of course, mean... <sighs> We have to smash another rock. You just never know where they're going to end up. So if we imagine it right here, that is what we're looking at. And I pretty much like this. I think this is a good spot for it. I like that it's right up against the paths. And I think if I put nooks across the way, it's going to feel like a nice city kind of vibe. Of course, we can replace the stone path underneath the front once the building comes in. But yes, that is how it's going to look. And now... Nook's Cranny, I think, could go right here. Before I do that, though, let's continue to build our paths. And I want to take this path and bring it all the way over to the other paths we have along the river. So this path, the top of it, is not going to perfectly intersect this one. But I think that's going to be okay in this case. Because the staircase will be here. And there'll be a staircase here. And I was thinking because of all that activity, I'd probably put some stone path just connecting from like sort of an angle anyway. So people might not really notice that these didn't line up perfectly. I think it's all right that they didn't. It's kind of too late for me to change anything now though. Uh, so we'll just have to work with it. It looks like I messed up the placement of uh, <laughs> the bottom part of this path anyway. So that's just making things even more confusing. So now this is the new location for Nook's Cranny. Again, right next to Able Sisters. I think this is gonna make things feel Pretty nice over here with the nice big paths. I'm looking very forward to kind of decorating this area. One of the buildings I forgot to mention today was my house. I need to figure out where that is going to go as well. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure yet. I have a couple of ideas, but we also need to figure out the placement of the museum and then potentially the campsite. But I'm up here because I think the campsite might go back behind these houses, just right up on that cliff over there once we kind of get this area figured out. I'm gonna get rid of the pond and then the river and waterfall that run from here to here. And I'll explain why in a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna put the campsite up there. That'll give me like a nice area to decorate the campsite without making it too big, you know, or too small. I think it's gonna be just the right size. As for getting rid of another naturally occurring pond and river, uh, this is because the area where the staircases are gonna go to get up to like the cliffs, that where the two staircases intersect, intersect, you know, that's going to be tough. Uh, doing that and having water flowing down is going to be really, really tough. So I decided that this is going to be the water source that probably has to go. And then what I can do is take the other water source and maybe work off of that. Maybe keep some of the natural terrain a little bit and use it to our advantage. So here's where our staircase would be. And then I think you would walk up here. And I think the campsite should go maybe around this area. So you'd have maybe like a little dirt path that kind of goes up and over to the campsite, which would leave us a bunch of room over here and a bunch of room right here. And maybe in the future, we could put like a little waterfall or something or some more cliffs. But yeah, for now, I think that'll be pretty good. So yeah, I think right about there, it looks like that would be in line with this home here, which is fine and plenty of room for a little bit of decorating. I'm excited. Real quick, I will say, this is one of the most unique naturally forming rivers I've ever had. I really like this little partial island that juts out, and uh, it's just a cool spot, and it's a shame to have to get rid of it, <laughs> but I do have to get rid of it. If I was doing a no terraforming island, this would have been a really ideal island for that, but I never went into this with the, with the intention of doing a no terraforming run, so I thought about it, but yeah, ultimately I, I wanted to make this my own. So uh, I wish it, I wish Animal Crossing had the ability for you to maybe put in a seed. A lot of games that have like randomly spawning maps and stuff have like a unique seed number and you can use that to always have that exact layout. Animal Crossing doesn't quite work like that and it's a shame. All right, that part of the river is now gone and then we just have this river left in, in terms of all of our naturally spawning rivers. This area right here is probably where I'm going to have some water going over to here and then into these two waterfalls. So I will bring that river down and it'll connect here and then it'll probably split off at and, and some point and then connect here as well, which means this path will probably feature a bridge that goes straight ahead 
and you walk up here to something. I don't know. This Maybe this is where the museum goes. You know what? This is actually a ton of space. Like, if the, if the path were to become four tiles wide again and go in this direction, and you just went up a little bit, you could create a pretty interesting museum entrance with the museum all the way back here. And then, you know, a plenty of room between the staircase and the path to decorate. And then the villagers could take a very short walk over to that museum. What's also interesting is that the secret beach isn't too far away. I thought it was right there. It's actually over here. So we could terraform a little bit and have a path that goes from the front of the museum over to the right and then like maybe down a staircase and over to the secret beach. I've always liked putting Red's uh, secret beach next to the museum when possible because it gives you the ability to very quickly take art from him and bring it, you know, uh, or go into the museum. You can't bring it there straight away, but you go into the museum and you see what pieces you already have. Uh, so it's kind of nice having those two things close together. I don't know. I got to think about that. It's a little bit of a, of a weird jump to go from the front of the museum all the way over to here, especially if I'm considering keeping this naturally spawning cliff with the pond on it. But, you know, well, there, there's probably a way to do that. Uh, maybe, maybe through some, like, different terraforming we do, it's a really thin, narrow passageway from from the museum over to here I, I don't know it could be pretty cool though now that i'm seeing this like this yeah uh, this is an option there's of course a lot more map to consider here we have two houses which don't currently have any plans in terms of where they're going to go we have my house and now the museum which we might have figured out a spot for maybe for now i'm going to get rid of a little more river and I'm gonna entertain this idea. I'm gonna put down a big rectangle that represents the museum, and I'm just gonna continue laying out the island. And as time goes on, I'll see if this spot makes sense for it. There is one small hiccup with this plan, and that is, of course, that the museum entrance is an uneven number, and our four wide paths are four wide, so that's an even number. So I'm not exactly sure if I could go straight from this staircase, or I'm sorry, this staircase, up and into the museum. We would have to find an excuse for the path to narrow to three tiles wide, and it would need to look somewhat natural and make sense. One thing that could definitely work in our favor, though, is the fact that this path is already three tiles wide and can't get any wider. So I could extend this path and have it turn and go north. I've decided to play around with this concept a little bit. So this is kind of what it would look like. Villagers would be able to go up here, turn, and the museum will be about right here. I'd leave enough space to maybe put a couple trees or something behind it. But yeah, that's the idea. And then if you go straight down from this path, you kind of naturally run into where this staircase area is gonna be. So at this stage, I think what would really help me is to know exactly the relationship between the two waterfalls and the potential river that's gonna run to kind of fuel these waterfalls. The problem with this is, is we're truly talking about a lot of water here. And I mean, a bridge essentially has to be placed down so people can cross over and get to here. And then you still have to figure out how the path goes from an even number to an odd number. This is always the challenge with my symmetrical designs and the museum and my house, of course, my house is also an odd number for the entrance. This is really, really tough. It does just so happen that the way I designed that path up there, it does kind of line up with this path here. So you can kind of imagine a staircase, you know, that's too wide and it comes up here and you know, your eye is a bit tricked because there's another staircase and another path coming right up here. So you're not expecting this to kind of go straight ahead. And then what I could do instead of a bridge, what if I had a pond that went from over here, perhaps, down to this waterfall? So it's two separate water sources still. One of them is just really ridiculously close to a waterfall. And one of them is really ridiculously far away. And it'll just kind of come down here. Is it the perfect solution? No. But this does allow me to have a museum entrance that does line up with a path and it still allows most of my paths across my entire island to be four tiles wide. I think this is probably, if we want the museum up here, as good as we're gonna get in terms of solutions for keeping things 
somewhat coherent, somewhat symmetrical. And yes, I know I'm using the word symmetrical kind of wrong. I'm just hoping you know what I mean, because the alternative would be a lot of winding paths and cliffs and things like that. That's not what we're doing. We're going for a more straightforward kind of aesthetic here. So that is where the museum would theoretically sit. Plenty of room between this path and the entrance for me to decorate a little bit and plenty of room behind it so we can put maybe a couple different types of trees or something in the back. Meanwhile, that path I was talking about that could go to the secret beach could extend right off of here and then go around this way. Or we could have like, like maybe a little dirt path that just kind of is hidden or obscured a little bit by some trees. And you're like, well, what's down here? And it, it is deliberately kind of like masked because it's the secret beat. Still a bunch to figure out, but I think we've decided on our museum placement. So with Nooks, Abel's, the museum, and the campsite all figured out, that just leaves me in my house. Oh, and of course, Stinky and Eric, but uh, you know, we'll worry about them later. I'm thinking I would like my house here, uh, here in this spot. This is of course going to require a bit of cliff editing because what I'm thinking of doing is putting my house up on this tier that I'm standing on, but having the property itself be kind of big. Somewhere along this river will be a bridge and it'll lead to a path that goes this way. And then as you walk, you'll realize you are at my place. It'll be fenced in. I'm thinking of having some farms in front of it, similar to how I did it kind of in a Canyon Duck, which was a previous island I did. And then there'll be a path going up centered with my house and it'll lead you right to the front door. In order to carry on this part of the layout, I'm going to need to uh, go to the museum, dump my fossils, sell a couple extra things I have. We just need to clean up our inventory a bit and I need to find some food. I have a lot of fossils on me and only three of them are being donated. That's a bit disappointing, but I guess that just means I'll have to keep the money instead. It's been a while since I've stored my materials and my goodness, I have a lot of stuff. This is, <laughs> this is really exciting because again, we're, we're crafting everything we, we place on this island and it needs to be five stars. So it feels pretty good to be building up our stockpile in this way. Anyway, I'm gonna grab some cherries, chomp them up stem and all, and I'm gonna start picking up trees just to get them the heck out of my way. And with the trees gone, it's time to do some cliff editing. We need to make enough room for my house. And uh, also I wanna leave some cliff behind it too. I might wanna put something up there. I'm not sure, maybe a pond, maybe a bunch of trees. But yeah, I am gonna walk this back a bit and we're going to use the extra space to you know have the house down and decorate a little bit in front of it but the big big area in front of the house is actually going to be on the lower tier we're gonna have two staircases coming up to this thing and we're going to decorate a nice big farm i might even put a fountain out there i'm feeling fancy what i've done here is extended the cliff out just a little bit and then i've walked this one back quite a bit and so my house is going to be somewhere up here i kind of need to figure out the paths but i don't want to lay too much down as well <laughs> because uh, I still haven't even figured out where the bridge over that river over there is gonna go. And that's gonna determine a few things as well. So I'm kind of running into a point where I'm getting a bit confused, a bit stuck. Maybe this balloon will cheer me up. Oh yeah, it's money, free money, I'll take that. So I'm thinking this tile here roughly represents like the middle of like this kind of cliff area and therefore the middle of my house. Maybe, maybe it should go actually over here-ish. Maybe that should be the middle of my house. Uh, <laughs> I need I need space on either side. Okay, we'll split the difference. That's the middle of my house. Okay, so tentatively, this is where my house is going to go. I've started to extend this cliff out as well, just to get some cliff behind it over on this side. Uh, we could do whatever we want with the cliffs later on. I could naturalize them a bit. Maybe I get rid of that. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just kind of see. But uh, once we know where the door is, which is, you know, we think we figure that out, we're gonna now plan our two staircases. I'm thinking one over here and one over here. It'll look kind of like this, but what I have to decide is, do I want to make big indents here for the staircases, putting them very close to my house, or do I want to extend the cliff out a bit to kind of bury the staircases in the cliffs while not keeping them too close to my house? If I extend the cliff out to here, we get, I would say, still a pretty decent amount of space in front of our house, of our property, I should say, for farming and things like that. It's not as much as I was imagining, but it's also not that bad. And there's still plenty of different opportunities to put paths going from that side of the river over to here. Another balloon, what is it? A garbage pail. I usually joke about the balloons being garbage, but now, now the game's just messing with me. <laughs> it is literally giving me garbage. So I think for the time being, this is my house planned out. We know the cliff is gonna extend a bit more. We know where the staircases are gonna go. 
and we know we're gonna have like a cool looking property for maybe planting some crops and stuff. It'll be a pretty cool walk up. There'll be two walk ups. There'll be one here, there'll be one here, and there'll be something cool in the middle. And yeah, maybe on the sides we put something. I don't know, I, I want a farm out here. Alternatively, if there's not enough room for a nice big farm, I could put one above my house on the cliffs behind it. So a lot of options, but I wanted to give myself a big, ridiculous amount of room for my house. I think I've done that. That of course leaves Stinky and Eric and they need a place to live. So in this section of the map, kind of where I'm standing, as you can see, there is a lot of room. So a lot of this stuff, especially like the flower garden, probably ends up going away in the future. And you could see a situation where we put their houses down here and just kind of make cool little entrances and yards for them. And that could work pretty well. Alternatively, right next to our villager neighborhood, there is that nice, cool, flat looking area where we have our junkyard at the moment. We could put one or both of their houses out here. I think it is a decision that I am going to sleep on. I, there's no rush for getting their house placed down iron armor. That is another outfit for us. Look at that. <laughs> Last time we got like the golden suit of armor, this one, but we can't wear it. So getting the wearable iron armor is pretty cool and it's not super expensive too. Maybe we'll make this sometime. Anyway, we're almost there. We got most of the island laid out. Almost every building has a spot now. It's day 13 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we chose spots across the island for all of the big buildings left scattered around the map. Everything is now in its permanent location except for two villager homes. It's the third. Today, we have to finish our island layout. If we don't finish this and start getting some decorating underway, we're going to be in trouble. We are inching ever so close. Jungle floor, nice. We are inching ever so close to the midpoint of this challenge, and we've not really taken decorating seriously at all. And our main goal is to get five stars. No one is ever going to want to tour this island if it looks like this, okay? Of course, our other goal is to get three top 50 villagers. And today I have a campsite visitor and I can only hope that it's finally flipping Poppy. Wait, Poppy's here? Guys, guys, a new campsite villager. Oh my gosh, it's time. Well, I don't know guys, we've been here before. I don't, I don't think I could do this again. Hey, hey. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, Poppy's in there for sure this time. Here we go, guys, I can't wait to meet her. It's Clay. Now, as much as I'm not like a huge fan of Clay, I will, I will give him this. Number 92 on the list. So in the top 100, now top 100 is not good enough for us. So we're gonna let Clay just sit here on the beach. But I mean, that's something. That's, we're getting closer to more top 50 villagers. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a captain boat ride. Now there was some speculation in the comments a couple videos ago about how I'm probably not gonna see crops on these islands until I learn how to cook. And indeed there are no crops, but there are vines. There's also moss and some new shrubs as well. So this is not a bad island. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, this is our second Captain Island, I believe. And the last one was a total scam. But here's the thing about unlocking cooking. You see, you get these DIYs on the beach and villagers are always making stuff. As soon as you learn cooking, Ooh, giant vine. It diminishes the amount of DIYs you see that are just items. And as much as I like decorating with food, I don't use it a whole lot. And it's food, it's not very big. We have to decorate an entire island. So if it's true that I'm not gonna see crops on these islands until I unlock cooking, that's okay. We're either gonna save that for later in the challenge or I'm just never gonna learn cooking. Oh, and I just realized I kind of played myself a bit. Um, <laughs> I have too many trees in my inventory. In any case, getting the giant vine recipe without using Happy Home <laughs> feels really good. The giant vine does take, oh, nice gold. It does take a lot of vines. So that's, that's something, but uh, hey, it's a great recipe. If we can even make one giant vine, we can probably kind of decorate around it and make something pretty cool. Because of my inventory and the fact that I want to gather some other things, I'm going to leave the shrubs behind this time. And it's because I already have some and I don't even know what I'm gonna do with them yet. So I'm not in like a super rush to get more. Uh, I will move this one out of my way though. And I've just broken my ax. Uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you cannot get sticks from these trees. Although I'm gonna try anyway, but uh, I actually can't make a new ax. And per my own rules, I can't buy any tools at all. So I guess I'm done chopping trees here. I'm back home, I crafted a new ax, and I think it's time to put down my first new floor. Here we go. Ah, much better. <laughs> you know, honestly, it doesn't feel like it changed anything in here because the color scheme is so similar. Okay, no more messing around. We have to do our dailies, 
And we need to move another building. Oh, and we need to craft a shovel. I actually have a flimsy shovel on me already, which is good. And I also, oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I was gonna say, I need to scoop up these flowers. These were also flowers that I uh, got, I think, from Tom Nook. They're not supposed to be here. And now they're starting to grow in the way of my rock. And you see how that messed me up. So yeah, these flowers are as good as gone. And here is what Able Sisters is looking like in its new home. We'll go ahead and fill this path in once again. See the finished product here. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So Nooks is gonna go right here. And this area is gonna feel really busy, which I love. We found out that Paul is crafting. Let's see what we get. Wooden mini table, which I already know. Finally found the money rock, which I really need. Got all the fossils. I think what I'm gonna do for now is put my excess trees up here, at least the the uh, cedar ones. And uh, I just, I, it's just to get them out of my way for now. They're definitely not staying up here, but I gotta free up my inventory. Looks like none of the fossils we dug up need to go into the museum, which I'm fine with because I could use the money. And it looks like with all the junk that I have and the fossils, we're getting 13,000 plus bells, which means we can plant our money tree, chop up our fully grown money trees, and move Nook's Cranny to its new permanent location. While we're at it, we'll buy our song and some new fence recipes. And this is unexpected, but Eric wants me to deliver a gift to Paula. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I like Eric. Eric is my only top 50 villager right now. I couldn't turn down a, a request. I couldn't do it. On my way there, though, I will place down Nook's Cranny. I think it's going to look pretty good. This is for you. And uh, yeah, sure, you look great. <laughs> now, please don't give me your trash. A wrestling singlet? What are you... Is that what you were wearing before? What's going on? I don't want this. And Eric is pleased with me. Now, with all of that finally out of the way, we can begin work on, like I said, the rest of the island layout. This is going to be an interesting day because one of the things we're going to do is start placing down, I think, the last of our paths, or at least most of them. And to do that, we got to make like a lot of rapid fire decisions here because I don't want to be at this all day. Uh, and here's my first problem. As I go down here and start to stretch this path to the south, you will see a problem that becomes very apparent. And it's not these two trees. Those are not an issue. It's not the third tree coming up. Also not an issue. No, it's this place. This dreadful flower garden that I used to get three stars. Now, I knew this would have to move at some point, but I really did not consider the full consequences for what I was doing and where I was placing this. Digging all of this up is going to take so many <laughs> shovels if I don't customize them along the way. Definitely patience, like a lot of patience. Let's get ahead of this and just start buying customization kits now. And then I'm gonna start digging a path through these flowers. I'm gonna talk you through my thought process here because I think I have a way to not only save us some time with this, but also I think I have a pretty good design concept as well. As you know, with a five star island, you still need a bunch of flowers. It's not like I can just throw these away. So having a big cluster of flowers somewhere on the island probably isn't a terrible idea. So here's what I'm thinking. We let this path come down and we don't dig up every single flower here. We dig up just enough so our four tile wide path can get all the way down to where it needs to go. And then as this path runs south, you realize that you are actually in a big flower garden because as you're likely well aware, we have a lot of big open areas we need to fill in. And having a place to grow some hybrids, probably not a terrible idea. They could make fantastic flowers to decorate with around various parts of the island. And uh, yeah, it's just a good excuse to fill a big area and gets us closer to five stars because again, we're going to need a certain amount of flowers. Now, the way I'm imagining this in my head, I still will need to dig up every single one of these flowers to do it the way I want to do it. But, uh, you know, we can, we can just leave most of them here for now and kind of chip away at this over time. We don't have to make this one big today problem. So for now, that is the plan. And I have removed enough flowers to begin paving the path, but I'll have to fill in these holes. I'll have to remove these trees as well. I just really need to see this area nice and clean because this is going to also determine part of our grid that I mentioned last episode. We have to make kind of a grid and we're gonna put things within the different path grids that we end up creating. So as this path runs down, it needs to connect to other paths that run in other directions. For example, I'm sure you noticed that we're not too far away from the entrance of this island right over here. And we're gonna want a path coming up from the entrance and leading into all the other fun areas. So lots to figure out. And in my quest for food, <laughs> I went ahead and just chopped down a bunch of the local fruit trees. It's because I'm probably not going to be decorating with too many cherry trees and it, ch planting more of these is just as easy as planting some cherries and I could use the supplies. So these are gone now. 
and I'll use these cherries to pick up these trees over here, get them out of our way. If you couldn't tell, this section of the island is going to be our most crucial section that we work on today because it kind of determines where the paths go on the rest of the island. If that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, it will soon enough. <laughs> Okay, so it's time to take this path and just kind of run it south and get it to probably the beach or at least close to it. I don't know how far south these paths are gonna go. I think it kind of depends on how we do our airport entrance. And I have an idea for that, that in my head is, is pretty unique and will work pretty well. All right, the path is done. Now we need to go to the airport and make a few decisions. As you know from the very beginning of this challenge, airport and resident services, they didn't align themselves too well. They're, uh, they're a bit out of sync with each other. Here's the airport entrance, and then resident services is centered with this fire pit. <laughs> so we have plenty of room between the two, but they, yeah, they did not line up. Now, that's not a, ooh, a balloon. That's not a huge deal because I think I have a way of remedying, remedying this situation that'll look pretty cool and it'll make it feel like they lined up. The balloon was filled with clay, which is fine, I guess. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to keep this little seating area we made or not, or at least maybe customize it some more. I, that's probably what I will do. But uh, this path should be centered with resident services. Oh boy, I have my doubts now. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it is. Okay, so <laughs> this path centered with resident services. We're gonna bring it straight down. Now the ramp that leads up to the airport may not have centered with resident services like we would have wanted it to, but you know what did? The rest of the airport. I mean, I think this is literally centered with resident services. It's just that the off ramp isn't. And realizing that you can kind of start to play around with what this looks like to the person who gets off the ramp, right? So we're a couple tiles off. It doesn't matter though, because some more path will be right here. And then what I'm thinking from here is we lean into the asymmetry a little bit. What if we got rid of this pond and we took Stinky's house, which is over here, and moved it kind of where the pond is and created an information center. So when people land on the island, they see Stinky's house and they know that this is a place where they can barge in and get information about the island. Now, is this something Stinky wants to have happen while he's just trying to like live his life? I don't know, not my problem, but it's blue, which I don't know, reminds you of, uh, I don't know, an information center. And it's uh, it's the first thing you'll see when you come off the, the ramp. I don't know where else to put Stinky's house, okay? So I think Stinky is gonna need to earn his keep. And in this way, he just kind of gets a job, you know? he's he's paying it forward you know we we've given stinky a lot and now it's time for stinky to return the favor deciding the exact placement of this information center is going to depend on kind of how we want to make our paths play out here so there is going to be a point in which these two paths kind of connect and i need to decide where that is because i think this is a bit too low but it's almost right so let's first try something like this we'll have stinky's house just here off the path our path goes right up to the front door and we have enough room, I guess, to bring this all the way over and have it connect upwards to this path. This also leaves a bit of room right here for like a sign that says like info center or something if we wanted to. And uh, I think this is probably a good way to deal with the unaligned airport ramp. I, I think this actually works really well. So the road will go up here. We'll figure out what to do with this later. And now that we know that we are indeed bringing this road all the way to the very Southern edge of the island, we can start to go over here and think about how these two roads will connect. So we bring this path over and what that's going to do is create a big section in between the two paths that we can do whatever we want with. Now we've already talked about maybe doing a flower garden around this path. So a good chunk of this area over here, so this could be flower garden and this could be flower garden. We would still have some space I think left over right in here and we could decorate that however. Maybe we put some fences that run up here so it separates the flower garden from this stuff. Maybe there's like fruit trees leading up to the seating area and resident services. That could be kind of cool. It doesn't matter. We're not focused too much on the decorating part just yet. Right now, it's all about the layout. This of course does mean that the flowers I just got finished moving <laughs> did end up right in the way of where I was trying to put down some paths. I could leave them for now and again, just not worry about placing them. Uh, you know what, actually, this is an interesting uh, turn of events here. The beach 
starts to encroach right here. So having a path that runs down to here doesn't really work, does it? Because let's see, does it line up? Oh, okay. I think the bottom of the path is as low as it could possibly be. No, we're good. That was close. Okay, so I will start to pave from this path over to the entrance, but we probably won't connect it right now because we have other parts of the island we have to work on. So here's what our map is looking like so far. And as you can see, the grid layout is starting to come together if you just look at the paths. So now we're looking to extend this road all the way over to here. And this is where you get to where I'm gonna be living. So this road is gonna run across the front of my property. Eric's house will move. And what I probably should do now is finish up the little cliff area because I have another idea. Oh, I see a balloon. We're about to lose it. Go, 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 go. Wait. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was really close. It's probably just going to be more clay. <gasps> oh, no, it's a recipe. It's something I'll never use, but I'll take it. Okay, we'll get this tree out of our way. So I'm thinking for the entrance of my house from the main path, we'll have two more narrow paths going up to the staircases. And again, this leaves room on the sides for like a farm. And if we never get crops, by the way, that farm is just going to be various fruit trees, I've decided. Uh, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to end up being between those two options, but I'm happy either way. I think fruit trees will look really nice and make us some money. I also think crops like wheat fields and, you know, potatoes and stuff will also look nice. So yes, two paths running down, and then we're going to split all of this up with a waterfall and a little river in between the paths. And I think that's going to look pretty nice. We can maybe put some flowers along the little river, and I don't know what it's going to lead to, if it's going to lead to a little pond or if we just kind of have it stop abruptly and we'll decorate around it. I'm not sure, but I do like that aesthetic. I think that adding water features to your front yard makes you look really rich. And that's what I'm that's the image I'm trying to portray here. I'm trying to I'm trying to show that uh, even though this is a DIY only island, that doesn't stop me from being super, super rich. So this island layout is coming together, but that only leaves now one thing left, and that's Eric's house. Where the heck are we going to put Eric's house? Well, let's kind of finish up the river that we started a while back because here's what I'm thinking. We take this new path that's going to run in front of the information center and then continue having it go this way, about maybe to here. And then we go all the way up north with it, leaving another space between, you know, our main path and stuff we can decorate around. And we hit this river right here. Here. We'll place a bridge, and then once you're across, this wooden path will be stretched all the way over to here, leaving a whole bunch of room to kind of decorate around it. And then from the wooden path, I think we go up and we put Eric's house somewhere up here. I think Eric could have his very own plot and he could run some other business. Like I said last time we were down here, maybe it's like a, a kind of a fish market or something. I don't know, but we'll put some stalls. He'll just have his own little like at home business back here. Before we decide exactly where that goes though, we should determine how many tiles are between these two roads right here to see if it's possible to put the same distance between this path and then the one we place over here. We don't have a lot of room, so I'm not thinking we can pull this off, but it's worth trying. So it's exactly 12 tiles in between this path and this one over here. Let's see if we have 12 on the other side. It's kind of as I feared. This hole represents the 12th tile, and then this path could only be three wide, <laughs> probably all the way up as well. And then to make matters worse, we would eventually run into this janky section of the river and we wouldn't be able to center the bridge on that path. So we are not gonna worry about making the paths like perfectly even in this case. This is again, the fault of resident services. Like you can't really, control the environment too much when it comes to resident services. So we're just gonna roll with it. 12 is an even number, so I'm going to keep another even number between these two paths. If I wanted to stop here, this would be six, and that is, you know, half of 12. And what's interesting about splitting this up and having a, uh, a line right here for six tiles on this side is that we know the flower garden we're making isn't going to come all the way over to here. You know, we said we wanted something to divide the flower garden from this kind of entryway area, right? Well, maybe this is our answer. So this won't be a path, but maybe a fence or something runs straight up right here. And then this path goes up this way. And now we have two areas around this main path that are, you know, even, and we can do kind of symmetrical things in those spaces. Listen, I know numbers are scary and uh, I've confused myself right now too, but 
it's going to be okay. As the paths come together, you'll see that you'll see it all kind of like start to make sense. So we've reached the river with our new path and this is where a bridge will go. And that means we've completed our outline. I'll go ahead and connect these here. <laughs> It's just funny to me. I know there are people who are out there gonna, who are gonna look at this layout that I've done and think that is the most boring Animal Crossing Island layout I have ever seen. But listen, I enjoy building this way. I enjoy making paths first and then creating little spaces in between them that have a little more character and, and intrigue to them. So I still think this is gonna turn out pretty cool. And uh, I, I think the only difference between like this and other islands I've done in the past is that I've really committed to having these big wide paths. And that's just mostly due to the fact that I'm gonna struggle when it comes to getting items. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it is just kind of funny. I know that uh, not everyone builds this way, but it's, I love it. I, I love this style. Okay, I've now stretched out our, I'll call it the boardwalk path along this side of the river. And we have our final area that we have to plan out here. Again, this is where Eric's house is going to be, but I'm kind of torn right now. I was thinking the junkyard is actually really, like, not a bad spot for Eric's house. Because not only does he have all this space over here, but he also has some area on the beach and this big rock. So I might actually disassemble the junkyard. We could have a junkyard in the future, but this was always kind of supposed to be a temporary build anyway, just to get us to three stars. Uh, but I ended up really liking it. It's it's a cool build. I'm thinking we get rid of it and maybe move it in the future or something. And then we leave the space over here just in case because there's a good chance I might want to extend this cliff and I'll really regret having his house down and then not being able to do that later on. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and well, <laughs> that's going to be difficult. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chip away at it. All right, just picking up the last of the junkyard. And we have to figure out exactly where I want his plot now. I don't want it, like, right on top of the rocks or the sand or anything. Meaning I don't want it too close to those things. I want to leave a little bit of room even behind the house. Because I'm thinking we could maybe surround this in, like, some palm trees and stuff. It could look kind of cool. And then give him a little, like, side yard here. So maybe we put it... This is a bit random, like a bit arbitrary, but maybe we put it like right here. How many spaces does that leave us between the rocks and the house? It looks like three. Okay, so that does mean we can plant a couple trees back here still. Yeah, I like that. I think this is good. We have a little side yard. We have enough room for a path to go up to it. And I'm not going to make that path just yet because this is where we might add a little more of a natural look to this. Maybe a path that kind of like winds up and comes up to here and then we can put some stuff like along the way i don't know i i want eric's house to be just spectacular because eric was our very first top 50 villager and just honestly incredible one of the best villagers in the entire game and even though the map looks pretty messy uh the island layout is complete everything has been planned to a t and i cannot wait to start decorating. Ooh, I just got water flooring from a balloon <laughs> on my way back to the entrance. That is awesome. More floors, yes please. The next things on our list include a big island cleanup. We gotta move trees and flowers. We need stuff kind of out of our way. And then I think we need to do like a massive DIY run. We do not have enough DIYs for this project and we're getting so close to needing all of them. It's day 14 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we finished the path layout for our entire island. We also determined the final location for our last buildings. It's the 30 day DIY island. It's cleanup day. This place is a disaster. And if we want to start actually decorating, it's time we get our stuff together and start cleaning some things up. Now, We've recently figured out the overall layout for this island, which I'm very, very pleased with. So the next step of the process is to get things, you know, kind of sorted and where they need to be. I'm also just realizing something. I made the incorrect assumption <laughs> that I could put paths under the front of Nook's Cranny. It works like that for a lot of other buildings. This is not one of them. And I'm sure uh, you guys noticed that in the last episode and I did not, that's okay. That's okay. We have an extra space behind it, and I think subconsciously I was designing for this very uh, for this very problem. So Abel Sisters will have this space empty, but Nooks will just have to move back one. <sighs> I was gonna move the museum today, but now <laughs> now this is a problem. Okay, I will I will handle Nooks 
today as well. It's cleanup day. It's cleanup day, and that's the perfect, you know, reason that we're having an entire day dedicated to it. This is one of the big projects. We need to clean this place up uh, quite a bit. We also have trees just everywhere, just wherever I could shove them. And uh, so you have all these big spots without trees, but then like you walk over a few steps and then you got a bunch of trees just kind of, you know, for different reasons and different places. And uh, it's it's a lot, guys. We have we have a lot of work to do. And I swear, it took a DIY only island for Nooks to get some really cool items consistently. Like every time I come in here, and maybe maybe it's just because I know I can't have any of it. Every time I come in here, there's some other cool stuff. The other thing I would like to do today is focus a little bit more on our finances. As of right now, we have 100,000 bells in savings and not enough money to pay down our home loan. In addition to that, we have bridges and other things that we need to place down that are gonna cost a lot of money. So there's definitely some stuff to figure out here. My first priority here for cleanup day is to prioritize getting all the paths filled in. I did them as outlines before, just to kind of get my head around where they're all gonna go. Now it's time to get them all looking nice and complete and intentional. And of course, the other part of cleanup day is gonna be, in particular, this flower garden. This thing is <laughs> gonna be kind of the bane of my existence. But before I do anything here, I need to get my inventory figured out. I have a whole bunch of trees that I do not want to throw away, and I just need to find like a temporary spot for them. So for now, I'm gonna keep those right here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the brick fencing. However, there is gonna be some fence around this of some kind. I'm just not sure what yet. I don't think brick is gonna be the vibe though. For this cleanup, I wanna keep in mind the mechanics of hybrid flowers. What we're looking at right now are lilies and all the different combinations you can get. Luckily for me, I already have all the different types of hybrid lilies. So my plan here is simple. We're going to try and get even more of those hybrid lilies to hopefully one day fill out this entire space and we'll make some kind of really cool looking pattern with all the different lilies we get. What this means though, is that I need to either do one of two things, spread these lilies out over a greater distance or dramatically reduce the amount of lilies we have in one space so that we can create a better, more efficient hybrid garden. Ooh, what do we think this is? It is an IV drip. I think the game is trying to tell me something. <laughs> For now, I'm gonna start dumping the flowers here on the beach just to get them well out of my way while we figure all this out. Clearing out one side of the garden was my first priority here and I'm glad I did because now, whatever we do on this side, we can just mirror on the other side. The next thing we have to do, though, before I can plant anything or figure out how this garden is going to look, I need to know the size of it. So there's a fence that's going to run from right here and go up. How far up do we want it to go before we cut it off and have it come back around to here? I'm thinking where I'm standing right now might actually be the best bet. And what we can do from here is have some stuff happening in between Able Sisters and Nooks and this flower garden. So you could imagine some fountains over here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all the DIYs we're gonna use. Maybe fountains, maybe a lot of fountains. Maybe there'll be fountains everywhere. Maybe I should just name the island Fountain Island and I could just make fountains and then get five stars using only fountains. In fact, let's do that. Let's start over right now and just make Fountain Island. Okay, fine, I'll make fences instead. I think what would really look really great are these log fences. These fences are awesome for those more natural kind of areas on an island. So let's start by just placing some of these down. And what I don't want you to worry about is how this is going to look with this right here, the, the corral fence and all this stuff going on. This very well could change, first of all. But secondly, I'm thinking there'll be trees, like a lot of them, between you know this fence and this one. So. It'll feel like two separate areas, but I am looking at it myself and worrying a little bit like, is this going to clash? I'm not going to worry about it, though, and I don't want you to either. Let's let's all just pretend I know what I'm doing and this is going to turn out awesome. So this is the start of our flower garden, and it already doesn't feel super big. I mean, fences obviously take up a good amount of room, so we will probably push it forward even more. But the determining factor is going to be how the flowers get arranged. What I would like to do to make this area look more interesting is place down alternating dirt paths. So I'm gonna go by the darker dirt path. And once I do, I'm gonna place them down like so, the lighter dirt on one part and then darker dirt, and then it's just gonna go down as like that consistent pattern. And based on the way I laid this out, I do think I wanna go up at least one more tile with our fencing. By the way, these paths are 2000 nook miles a piece. And as you can see, my nook mile situation is dire. I have been playing every day, but I have not been paying attention at all to getting more nook miles. 
That's gonna have to change. I'm gonna need to spend some time maybe off camera just gathering these up. The Nook Stop itself has a ton of DIYs in there and really good ones too, including Fountain. And we're about to hit the halfway point on this series, which means the decorating, the real day-to-day -day decorating is gonna begin very soon. So having time to get more Nook Miles, that's gonna be on me and that needs to happen. Here's what we're looking at for one side of our garden. So far, the hybrids we have in abundance are orange, and that's it. <laughs> we have two black and two pink. I want to collect them all because I don't exactly know what I'm going to want more of, but I think I want to make one entire side red and white, which will give me more pink. At the end of the day, I think the pink ones will go a longer way than the orange and black ones because these give like Halloween vibes and I just don't know if I'm going to be decorating anything that's going to use them. I don't know. So I'm going to set aside an entire side of this flower garden for pink lilies. Meanwhile, on the finance side of this challenge, I just caught this. And these are always worth something, so that's nice. Speaking of selling things, I have way more light white lilies than I do of, I think, any other type. So we'll be selling any excess flowers from here because from here on out, our plan is simply to just populate this place with hybrids and additional flowers that we breed. So should be pretty easy to replenish these. And uh, it's going to be a while before we have to really, really worry about having a certain amount of flowers. And as you saw with getting three stars, all that'll really take, if we can do a panic, we get towards the end of the challenge, it's just gonna take me going to some islands and collecting some flowers. Hopefully though, we can earn them on our own. So there's the red and white side done, and I'm really excited because I think it's about to rain. It's almost into another hour, and it's gonna rain, I hope. Which means I don't have to water these, which is Always good. I mean, you get points, and I was just complaining about Nook Miles. You do get them for watering, <laughs> so maybe I should do it anyway. But I'm, I don't know, I'm just kind of happy not to do chores. Now from here, I can go ahead and start selling the white lilies because I don't really need them for any other parts of this uh, design we're doing. The white ones are only used to get pink lilies, and we already set that farm up. There it is, the next hour, and here comes some rain. Ah, <laughs> all the flowers are watered. Oh, that is so nice. I finally cleared out all the flowers that were next to the path. There's still more I gotta go through, but I'm getting rid of all the holes now and I can start to put down the fences and uh, little farm looking paths next. Ooh, we got some lightning too. <laughs> I haven't been in a thunderstorm in this game for some time. I feel like it would be great to have, you know, like a raincoat and some rubber boots and things like that, but Unfortunately, I have to make all my own clothing. Oh, and I still haven't caught a second boot yet. I haven't tried super hard, but I need to go fishing and find a second boot so I can actually make myself my first pair of shoes. I don't know, if I have time today, maybe we'll try and do that. It is cleanup day after all. I just popped a balloon and got an underwater wall. So now I have, I think, the underwater floor and the underwater wall, which is nice, really nice. We haven't even looked for the daily DIYs today and I already got one falling from the sky. That's great. Anyhow, this flower garden is almost complete. I did not realize how many of these lilies I would be throwing away. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. I only needed six yellow lilies for the layout I'm going for, for these hybrids. And I mean, the rest of the yellow lilies and white ones are gonna get thrown out. And then of course, any red ones we don't use. But interestingly enough, I don't have a ton of red ones, I'm kind of worried I'm not gonna have enough. And indeed, I did not have enough. I need three more to complete what I'm trying to do down here, and I don't have them. So there is an alternative plan. You see, hybrids have a tendency to spawn more hybrids. So what I can do is take some of the red lilies out of the equation up there and replace them with maybe orange lilies, because that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get more black and more orange on this side. So I could replace them with like orange ones or black ones and hope that they just kind of populate those types of hybrids for me. And that way I can just have something in every tile where I wanted something. It's actually black lilies that I'm trying to grow in this top section. So I went ahead and grabbed my only two black lilies. I'm gonna put one here and one here. So now these red lilies will grow black lilies and then hopefully these two black lilies will grow more black lilies and we'll have black ones covered. And then down here, this is where we get orange lilies. And then again, this whole side is dedicated to pink lilies. And everything you see here is trash. This is the third time today that a villager has given me some garbage that I can't use, I can't wear. 
I don't know what's going on. They just keep giving me stuff. Oh well, more money for me. We've almost cleared the way for our path. I'm just taking out some last little objects here, like so. And we have some uh, flowers, but most of them are on the beach now. I'm still, it's cleanup day. We're still getting rid of them. And last one, there we go. And these will obviously be donated. This is coming with me in my inventory. And then the hybrids for now will live down here for a bit, but eventually they will make it up to here. It took <laughs> like almost an hour in real life, but uh, we can now finish laying down the rest of this path. Stinky is monitoring me like throughout this entire thing. Look at, he's just following, watching every move. All I'm trying to do is make sure I don't accidentally talk to them. <laughs> now he's distracted by a bug because nothing is more annoying than trying to do something and then bumping into your villagers and having them tell you about some dumb thing or put more trash in your inventory. I like stinky, but you know, just let me do my work. So speaking of work, we're done. I mean, with this part, we have uh, this path running now in front all the way over to this bridge and it goes up. All the paths are starting to connect and everything looks really good. I love how this build has evolved, by the way. I never was sure if I was gonna keep a flower garden in this spot. And I like how we decided to just kind of go with it. You know, we will keep it here, but we're gonna make it look a little bit different, organized a little bit differently. And I really like it and I'm excited to decorate around it too. And also, I didn't show you guys this yet, I don't think, but the bridge is done. Let's cross over here. And there is another area we have to tidy up a little bit, and that's this path. There isn't much to do, we just gotta fill this in. After we do this, there's one more area for the day that I want to focus on to uh, kind of wrap up cleanup day, and it's also gonna tie right into the uh, finance issues I was mentioning earlier on. All right, this path is now good to go. I don't know if more paths will kind of sprout off of it or we'll start to uh, maybe switch to dirt when we go back here for Eric's house. We'll figure that out later. This is looking good though, I'm happy with this. Oh, I forgot, we still gotta move Nooks too. So for now, I'm just gonna put Nooks right here and we will move it tomorrow back to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> this does represent a bit of a delay in moving buildings. I wasn't time traveling to do this because I don't feel like we're in a rush for this part, but uh, there is a lot of time traveling in our future. So I don't know, I, I won't worry about it too much, but yes, Nooks will move over the following day. Our last cleanup project for the day involves my place or the, the future site of my place. And uh, I'm going to just ignore Eric's house. It's actually, believe it or not, not in my way for what I'm wanting to do today. What I want to figure out is my money situation, okay? I did remove all the trees already, but we have a bunch of, you know, <laughs> a bunch of problems when it comes to trying to pay off loans and things like that. And we got a lot of loans coming up. So I thought having some kind of farm outside my house would be ideal. But because we probably can't get any crops just yet, it's gonna be a while, we're going to have to make a different kind of farm. So to solve this problem, I'm thinking of doing fruit trees, a fruit farm. And I'm going to have to figure out how to lay this out because I don't have a lot of room on this side, but I certainly do wanna plant some of these trees here. Essentially, I have five tiles of space between my path and then the, uh, the, the start of the beach there. So I think what I'm gonna do is lay all of this out with dirt all the way up to the edge where the stairs would begin. So right about here. This entire rectangle will get filled in with more dirt, like so. We're then gonna do the same exact thing on this side, like this. And then from here, I need to do a little bit of work to figure out the spacing because what I want is a fruit farm and I wanna make sure I can stuff as many fruit trees in here as possible, but without also making them feel like they're really cramped in. Uh, so ideally there'll be three spaces between each hole, which isn't gonna work because of the way this is laid out. Oh boy uh, <laughs> Already having problems with it. We'll uh, uh, Shoot no wait. Okay. We we see it. We see it right so I can put a hole here We can plant a tree here. It just can't get any closer to the cliff than that and then we can put trees in the middle like this, so we can kind of double up there. And this would be the pattern for it. My plan here is to alternate between apple trees and peach trees. That's right, the peaches are finally getting used. Bloom break, where are you? Is it over here? No, I was close though. Please be a DIY. It's a cypress plant. I would love to keep that, but I can't. What is this though? A sauna heater, hey, that's nice. I just got another balloon and that paid for our, uh, our nook's cranny blunder we had earlier. It's also times five points today for catching five bugs, so I've taken a bug break. Anyway, my hope is that one day this dirt plot, both of the dirt plots, will become crops of some kind, even if it's just one, even if I only get wheat or something. I would love to have crops, that I tend to and then that grow and then I pick them every few days 
and sell them off. I think I'd probably make more money doing that than having this little patch of fruit trees. You know, you can certainly fit a lot more crops in a condensed space like this. But there it is. And like I said last time, I think crops are as easy as just kind of learning cooking. But we need DIYs. That's going to be our biggest challenge. Speaking of which, I'm going to go find who's crafting today. It's Harry again. Yay. And Harry is making a tiki torch, which actually I already have. <laughs> I don't even know why I got excited. I might have been thinking about tall lanterns because I think those are going to represent our street lights around this island. Once we get the tall lantern DIY, we're going to put those things everywhere. The reason I'm so fixated on DIYs is because next time that is what we're going to be doing. We are going to time travel way into the future if we need to, and we're going to get as many DIYs as possible. It's day 15 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs, and that means we're at the halfway point. Yesterday, we planted some flowers in an effort to clean things up a bit. We touched up our paths a bit as well, and we planted what I like to call a fruit farm. It's the 30 day DIY island. Today, we do battle with my sanity. For how much we've been playing, we've managed to do, you know, just okay with gathering some very unique and interesting DIYs. Our list is growing, but it's nowhere near big enough to get a five-star island going. That's, that's not gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do today is run a bit of a gauntlet. But before I explain all of that, uh, I need to talk to Leaf real quick. I got a comment and it reminded me of something. Apparently, if you buy shrubs from Leaf, you unlock the DIY for like the hedge fencing. I don't know how many of these I need to buy, but I do vaguely remember that, so I'm gonna try it. According to this guy, I need to buy 30 bushes from him, so I think I'm almost at that point. Now, because of my rules, I can't plant these particular bushes. I gotta go find them on my own, but I can just sell these back to Nooks, no problem. If it gets me the hedge fencing DIY. That's all I want because that's going to come in real handy. So this is definitely 30 and Leaf did not offer me the hedge fencing. I'll buy a little bit more, but this is starting to feel like a waste of time. The guide does also mention Leaf would need to like have multiple visits to your island. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's what's happening here. It maybe maybe we'll still get the hedge fence eventually, but Probably just not today. In any case, let's focus on the day we have ahead of us, and it's gonna be a doozy. Today, we are doing a lot of time traveling, and as you know, whenever we have to do one of these big time travel days, it's a gauntlet, it's exhausting. I'm gonna start by trying to pay off my bridge. I need to go get a little bit more money. This bridge is gonna become crucial because what we're doing is collecting DIYs, and we're gonna have a couple of different focuses for every time we time travel. We'll have 50,000 here left over, by the way. And that's the bridge paid off. Okay, so focus number one is going to be going to the beach every day and finding a beach DIY. Then it's gonna be finding a villager who's crafting. We're also gonna grab our daily Nook Miles bonus because we're just gonna time travel one day at a time. I'm not gonna worry about watering flowers. I'm not gonna worry about maybe buying a KK song. Just. Little things like that. I'm just trying to get through this as quickly as possible, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to let that stuff slide. The only other thing I'm going to do is each day I'm going to move another building until all the move buildings are moved. We got to move Nooks. We have to move the museum. We got to move my house. And then there's two other villager houses we have to move, and then we'll be done. So that'll just be part of what we're doing. The other thing, as my money leaves my wallet, that I realize we should probably make sure we do today is plant the money tree. And I know that's just extra running around each day but super, super important to do because that's gonna be the main way I'm gonna make money for a bit. Anyway, this entire process begins right now because it is a new day. It, all, it is later in the afternoon, so my first time skip, or I should say my second time skip, is going to you know roll the clock back to an earlier hour because what I'm gonna be doing is actually time skipping twice for each day. I'm gonna skip to the morning of a day and then I'm gonna skip to the afternoon of, a sa of the same day because there's gonna be another villager crafting at that time. And I think, and this happens for me sometimes, I don't know if it's every time, I think we also get the benefit of uh, another beach DIY as well. But I'm prepared to be wrong about that. I'm not worried about it. Mostly it's just getting villagers crafting. Like Harry, for example. The first DIY of the day is a bamboo partition. Not bad. Anyway, each time skip is going to cost us a different amount of time itself because we have to, you know, find that money tree. We got to find the crafting villager. You know, some of these will be shorter than others. For me, this is going to be a long day. For you guys, you just kick back and hang out because you just get to see it all rapid fire. <laughs> 
I'm I'm jealous for you. I guess what's kind of nice though is that since we're time traveling twice for one day, it's it's not going to be like super difficult. The first part of the day is going to be a bit more annoying than the second part of the day. So, you know, silver linings, I guess. But I'm now traversing the beaches on our first morning here, if you will. Have not found the DIY yet, but I'm sure it's here somewhere. Oh, interesting. I'm sure you guys caught this last time, but yeah. Apparently, I didn't plant these trees in a way where all of them could grow. Okay, I mm, I guess we got to fix that too. I'm almost certain that you can have fully grown trees really close together. I guess we just have to have them grow in in more spaced out kind of areas and then we can replant them so the peach trees in this case are gonna need to move i or i oh i guess it's apple tree oh did i plant these wrong <laughs> i thought peach was in the middle oh no the peach ones are the okay yeah i got it these are the peach trees i'm confusing myself let's just get these out of the way and we'll put them back when they're fully grown. Ah, and here's our beach DIY. A pear bed. I don't know if I'll ever get to craft this because I don't think I'll ever have pears. Oh my gosh, so many tree casualties. I think this tree was never gonna work because it's too close to the shoreline right here. And I wish the game would have told me that when I was planting it initially. It looks like our tree farm hopes and dreams are getting dashed right now. Oh well, that is all the more reason to unlock cooking as fast as we can so that I can actually turn this into like little crop farms that actually make me money. But yes, money is also priority today because of course having this bridge is gonna make my life a lot easier during today. And then yeah, staircases, home loans. I'm not doing anything for my financial well-being at the moment. And as you saw, we're only running into more problems on that front than solutions. So I'm, I'm gonna catch this just out of desperation. Oh, we're not. Yeah, these are always worth a little bit. Okay, so this is the proper home for Nooks. And with that done and all the other little tasks I set out to do today, it's time for our first time skip. We're gonna stay on the same day and go into the evening. One thing I did not do was have a set number of time skips for this, this entire day we're gonna do. So we'll just kind of see <laughs> how I feel. That's really what I'm going off of today. How many of these can I manage before wanting to just take the longest nap in the world. And I can say with certainty that our time skip was a success. Harry is no longer crafting. I shouldn't have even bothered coming in this house because I knew he was crafting earlier. You might be asking yourself though, why, Dan? Why would you put yourself through all of this after everything you've been through? Ah, it's Paula, who's crafting the iron garden bench. Fantastic. Now the obvious answer to that question, of course, is that I'm trying to get as many DIYs as possible. But the reason we're doing it like this is because I always knew going into this challenge, I would need to set aside time just to collect DIYs to fill out all of our, you know, categories in our catalog and, and give as many options as possible. And this is, I figured, the best solution for it because each day there's something else to focus on and I only have so much time to sit down and actually work on the island. So I knew that I'd have to dedicate at least a whole day, if not more, to getting DIYs, just going out there and collecting them. There's also plans eventually to visit other times of the year because there are certain holidays, and I have one in particular I really wanna go check out, uh, where you get a bunch of DIYs. Now, I don't wanna do a toy day themed island, so I'm not too concerned about those types of holidays, but the one in particular that I have in mind, I'll just I'll just let you in on the secret, is Turkey Day. I didn't find any beach DIYs, so it's time to skip. Anyway, I don't think today is Turkey Day Day, but uh, soon, soon. Now, Turkey Day just has some incredible DIYs that go with any time of year, I think. So that's one particular event that I am very excited to visit. It's gonna be, you know, a bit to actually get all the tasks done for it, but it'll be worth it. I think it'll be well worth it. And I think we're gonna get some items that we can scatter all over the place. I haven't found any DIYs yet today, but we'll take our quick detour and start by, you know, getting our stuff done we need to get done. We gotta move a building. We gotta do all of our, I, I've still been buying KK songs. I can't help myself. I wanna, I wanna collect all of these. I just, <laughs> I think I even have, have this one already. I don't know. I just, I want all the songs. More importantly though, we need to get these last two villager homes moved. So Eric, it's your turn. As previously discussed, Eric is going to live right here. Also, he could very well be the one crafting, so we need to go figure that out. Oh, no, he's sniffing flowers. Okay, it's gotta be stinky. <laughs> I'm out of villagers. And it is, what are you making? Wild log bench. Ooh, okay, this is a good one. This isn't just any bench. It looks like a toppled over tree. 
which I love. Also, I found a beach DIY, I guess. I don't remember picking this up. I'm already subconsciously picking up DIYs. <laughs> I was about to go look for it. You know what? I'm still going to look for it just to be safe. Uh, but yes, okay, that's two brand new DIYs for us. I love that new bridge smell. Look at this. Look how awesome it looks when you have a river that's five tiles wide. That looks amazing. I can't wait to put a whole bunch more of those. All right, so that was in fact our beach DIY that I already had. Now I just gotta find the money tree. This is the thing that's gonna slow us down. I, I just know it, but again, so, so worth it. Interesting, it's really close to where the last one was. Once we've accumulated enough money, I would love to place down a staircase probably today. That would just make it so much easier to traverse everything because having to get out my ladder and my pole vault and stuff, it just takes up so much time. Anyway, time to skip to the evening. And yes, I am aware I can skip to even more parts of each day to try and get more recipes, but I'm, I'm doing enough as it is, man. Oh, perfect. What are you making? Tasha's mad because I haven't talked to her in a while. What are you making? A wooden chair? Really? Yes, I already know how to make a wooden chair. I will take a look at the beaches one more time, but I don't think I'm going to get two DIYs per day. I know it's happened before, but I think there's certain circumstances. Like, where I see that the most is where I have an island that actually has two human residents living on it. And so my theory has always been that, like, the game gives you one DIY for each of those people. But I could be wrong. You guys might know the circumstances for that better than me. Uh, and the other big opportunity I'm missing out on, of course, is not taking Captain's boat ride every day. But I have no points. Like, none. So, I'm just kind of letting that go, too. So, is this the most optimized thing I'm doing? No. Is it still going to work? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to work. It's just gonna be slow. We're on a new day and here's our beach DIY. Wooden block wall clock. Today we'll move the museum and according to my plan that goes here. Let me go ahead and imagine it though. Yeah I'd say this is awesome. Our daily money tree seems to be eluding us. Ah okay here it is. And now let's skip to the evening. It's Tasha again and she's making a coconut wall planter which I just got today on the beach. I've determined that Tasha only makes things I already know how to make. She's like the kid in math class during a test looking over your shoulder for all the answers. It's ridiculous. I've now skipped to a Sunday. Ooh, DIY. And I'm kind of wondering, maybe I should buy some turnips. Ironwood low table. Oh, this is such a good one. But yeah, it occurs to me that we are skipping twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening, which is the perfect cadence for checking nooks and, and turnip prices. We know that we had a small spike the first time we did turnips, but I think we've skipped enough now to we, we don't know what the previous week held, and it's really important to know the previous week's pattern. But, I don't know, not enough to worry about too much, right? I think we could potentially maybe hit the jackpot with what little funds we have. We could just throw them all into turnips while we do this. <laughs> Who knows? I've checked every villager. And nobody's crafting. I think that's because today is actually the day of the fireworks show. And usually on that day, for whatever reason, no one crafts. No one wants to do any work. I cannot believe I noticed this up here. <laughs> I barely saw the shimmering spot as I was running by. Uh, but yeah, no one wants to work on fireworks day. I, I guess I can respect it. So we did get an ironwood low table, which is just an incredible DIY. I do love that item. But we didn't get anything else. I think I'm going to do it, guys. I think I'm going to pool all of my money that I currently have, and I'm going to buy as many turnips as possible. There's Daisy May now. I got to get everything I have out of the ABD, and I got to chop up my latest money tree. I'm not sure what's going on because I must have missed a day. <laughs> um, there's no fully grown money tree. I've been planting them pretty consistently. So now I'm... Now I am worried. I don't know what happened. Is that a sign? Are turnips cursed? Should I not buy any turnips? Oh, and I guess at some point I already pulled all my money out of here. <laughs> oh, no. This is cursed, and we still need to spend money on moving a building? No, you know what? I'm not gonna spend money on moving a building. We are going all in on turnips, if it's the last thing I do. So this week, Daisy May is selling turnips at 109 bells each, which is just an awful, just terrible price. We can afford 550, and I guess that means it's time to skip to the next day. And it is raining on this new day. Let's find our DIYs. It is Angus crafting today, and the recipe is a mini golden dharma, which, uh, Kind of underwhelmed by, if I'm being honest. Not much I can do with that. Our beach DIY is armor shoes, which represents our second set of shoes we've ever gotten. We have our money tree spot. And speaking of money, one thing I am going to do is take all the fruit from these trees, and I'm just going to sell it because we are jumping through enough days to where this is going to grow back soon, 
it could be another source of income for us as we look to kind of rebuild our bank account. I will say as I do this, I don't enjoy harvesting these trees. Uh, having them so close together, I, and I knew this would be a pain. It's just in practice, it, it's worse than I thought. Trying to find all the fruit to make sure you didn't miss anything. Ugh, very, very annoying. Finally getting the Monday morning price for our turnips. And it looks like, of all the numbers, it is 69 bells for now. Today we'll move Stinky's house. We're putting that right here by the airport. And that just leaves the campsite as for uh, buildings we need to move. Our evening DIY is the cherry lamp, which I already know how to make. Our evening turnip price is down to 61 bells. We'll plug this into turnip profit. And at this time, turnip profit seems to think we have a 100% chance of a fluctuating pattern. Off of so little data, I'm kind of surprised to see it come to that conclusion so quickly. But either way, these numbers are not necessarily going to work for us. We need this to swing back to hopefully break even territory. But it's a new day now and our beach DIY is the Shell Music Box. Also a fantastic item. Love it. And they just keep going down. 54 is our AM price for Tuesday. Not great. Turn a profit suggesting here that our guaranteed minimum is going to be 99 bells. Not sure where it's getting that because, I mean, it's down to 54 right now. And our potential maximum goes all the way up to 153, which I'm not holding my breath for. To make myself feel better, I will sell the uh, excess stuff I've just been kind of holding on to for no reason. And it'll be worth 51,000 bells, which which does help. <laughs> As for today's other detour, I noticed that I'm getting times five nook miles just for watering some flowers. So, I mean, I might as well do that because... Having no Nook Miles is the reason I'm not getting even more DIYs after all. So at least I have that now. Let's go ahead and get our campsite move. Oh, oops. <laughs> uh, it's Wendy's birthday. Do I have anything? Uh, here, I uh, found this. You got me a summer shell. I was so totally not expecting this. <laughs> that's, that's a nice way to say, yeah, I don't like this. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and pop our campsite down. We'll grab a recipe from Eric. It's a Zen style stone, which is not a bad item. We got our money tree for the day. And it looks like I forgot to plant yesterday's money tree. So now we're gonna be a little bit behind on that, but it's okay. There's no urgent money needs at the moment. Let's skip ahead to the evening. Ah! Oh, <laughs> come on. I've been doing this for so long that like, I didn't even remember how to catch a scorpion. I just knew I needed to get my net out and it was, it was too late, but at least we got some miles for being a derp. Our evening turn up price is, oh my gosh, 109 bells. Why, that's exactly what I paid for the turnips. Our potential minimum and maximum have not changed, but I did say we need to swing back to break even territory. And this whole idea has been completely cursed from the start. So I am gonna go ahead and allow myself to in fact break even. I gotta say, it feels good not having that hanging over my head. And now we can just focus on getting this DIY, which is the natural square table. I do believe this is new for me. Yes, it is. Uh, hello? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's, it's good. Cool. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, I just, I wanted to ask, I'm doing this, like, I don't know if you saw it, this 30 day island challenge where I'm like making an island just out of DIY items. And I was wondering, would you want to like, when it's done, maybe like do like a tour of it or something? Uh, yeah, I did. I did see that actually. Um, are you going to have like any frog things on the island? Frog item, frog villager by chance? Oh, uh, I don't think I could do a frog item. I don't think there's a DIY for that. Uh, I guess I could find a villager. Yeah, yeah, you should probably do that. It's just I'm really busy and, you know, everything's got to be nice and frogified for me. So, yeah, maybe maybe get a frog villager. I'll see if I can stop by. OK, OK, I think I can do that. All right. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Let's see our haul. We found the wild log bench, the wooden block wall clock. Look at all this stuff. Uh, it's not as many things as I, wa I would want. But listen, I've literally been doing this for almost two real life hours. And with only those DIYs to show for it, <laughs> I think this is probably the right time to think of our plan B. And as I mentioned earlier, that plan B is gonna be like visiting different events, but we're not doing that tomorrow. No, we need to start actually decorating the island. It's day 16 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we spent the entire day looking for more DIYs. We got a few, but ultimately we came up short. Hopefully we have enough to do what we need to do today. It's the 30 day DIY island. 
Oh. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, hanging out. Uh, t today, I think, you know, we, we should just do some thinking, right? I think it's time to maybe re-manifest and, and, and change some of our, our former manifestations so we can manifest what's best for G-Wiz. I mean, by now, you've probably heard the conversation that I, I had with Raven. Are you going to have like any frog things on the island? Frog item? Frog villager by chance? Oh, uh, and Raven made it very clear that we need a frog villager on the island. So listen, I did some research. And as it turns out, Raven really likes Lily the Frog. And so to give us the very best chance of not accidentally getting the wrong top tier villager to join the island, I've gone ahead and drawn a perfect portrait of Lily the Frog. And listen, this is what's best for everyone. Because, ooh, balloon. Oh, it's just some clay. Anyway, this is what's best for everyone because Lily is actually rank 34, which is still very comfortably in the top 50, which is what we need for this challenge, three top 50 villagers. So the age of Lily has begun. And today we are gonna work even harder on getting Lily here because it's time to decorate the campsite. And it looks like somebody's here. <gasps> Maybe it's Poppy! Guys, come quick, it's happening again! Wait, who's that? Oh, yeah, what happened to Poppy? Guys, I think Poppy's sick. No, no, I don't think that's Poppy. What's going on? I came all the way in here for Poppy. Is he messing with us right now? This isn't happening. This isn't happening. I don't this know who happening. that is, this and is I want happening. nothing to this do with happening. them. Bring back Poppy. Happening. Justice this for Poppy! Happening. I hope Rodney's in that tent. Looks like today it's Mira in the campsite. Unfortunately, Mira is not Lily, but... Mir is also not in the top 50. So I think this is a hard pass. In addition to doing the campsite as our first big build after we've laid out our, all of our island, uh, we are also looking at some more Nook Miles today. And what I mean is I actually did some work ahead of time and got us some more Nook Miles. I did a whole bunch of things. I even grabbed today's DIYs, which by the way, were pretty decent. And I also managed to catch a second garbage boot. So I was able to make the recycled boots. But given how much time we waited, we were also able to obtain most of a suit of armor. <laughs> so now I'm kind of thinking, maybe we rock with this for a while. This could be a good look for us. And we even got points for changing into an outfit for the first time. I don't love this, but I mean, well, look, let's just keep it this way for today. In any case, the campsite is going to be a build that takes up, I think, quite a bit of our supplies. And we have, we have some. It's nice, but we don't have a lot. And I think we're just gonna, you know, go all out. We have to make a five-star island one way or another. So if this eats into a significant chunk of our supplies, it means we're just gonna have made a lot of items and taken a lot of steps towards that five-star island. What is cool though, is we have some items already kind of saved up that could work pretty well in the campsite. I'm thinking the log dining table, the swinging bench, and the log bench could all go up there. We could put the campfire up there very easily. I can definitely see a use for some log steaks. Of course, the frying pan and the wooden bucket wouldn't hurt. And now I've completely filled up my inventory. <laughs> Crap. I think the easiest thing to do is just to make like a pile of the items that we think we're gonna use. And we'll just kind of put those over here. I went and grabbed a DIY workbench. We're gonna leave that right here. And I also grabbed some food too, because we need to get rid of a rock and we're probably gonna wanna pick up some trees and as we finish this build up, I'm gonna scatter some trees around too. I'm already seeing that our pile of stuff is in the way <laughs> because I'm going to put a path, a small path from where the staircase is gonna go up to the campsite. The way I designed this island did not leave like a ton of room for the staircase, for paths, for the campsite and the front of the campsite, of course. So, I mean, we're just kind of working with what we got, but uh, I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's gonna be small, but it's gonna work. We're gonna take these paths, we're gonna go all the way over to here, and I'm going to make like a little dirt area that kind of tucks itself underneath the entrance of the campsite. I'm not exactly sure how wide it's gonna be yet, but let's just kind of play around with this. Okay, actually, I think this will work pretty well. So we'll have kind of like a larger path right up to the campsite itself, a smaller path kind of working its way over there. It'll look something like this. For now, let's dig up these trees and just get them out of our way. And I think the first thing I wanna put down is actually the campfire. Every campsite needs a little campfire just kind of hanging out right outside the tent. So I think for now, that's gonna be a good spot for it. Now, I already have a log dining table and one log bench. 
I'm thinking I'm going to want at least one wild log bench. And I don't know if this will represent the other form of seating around the table or we'll use it for something else. My inventory is going to battle me this entire time, I think. This will get easier as we go, but <laughs> I'll just put the, the table right here for now. And I will put the bench right here. I actually think I will use another regular log bench here. We'll save the wild lo log bench for maybe just another seating area somewhere else. I don't know. It could be in the back here. It could just be used as a decoration to make it look like a tree got knocked over at some point and we just left it there. And before we go any further, we should probably talk about customizations. I do like all of these different varieties, but I do think I'm going to leave it as dark wood throughout. I will add some placemats though, and I'm thinking these are the ones I like the best, so we'll use these. I don't have any of the Able Sisters patterns unlocked yet. Maybe if I do in the future, we can come back and like change them up. And on the subject of customizing, I think the frying pan is a really cool item for stuff like this. I'm going to go ahead and put some veggie saute on the table, right about here for now. And as I've been crafting and customizing, something did occur to me. The Nook Stop does have a number of very interesting DIYs, including the Brick Well and the Simple Well. We'll eventually unlock all of these, but for now, I'm particularly interested in the Simple Well. For a quaint little build like the one we're doing, a Simple Well feels like a really good item to use here. I wanna see what it's gonna look like with maybe like a little stone circle underneath it. Cool, it covers the circle completely. <laughs> So never mind that. Anyway, whenever I use a bucket in any build, I always think to myself, okay, but why a bucket? Like what's the bucket being used for? And so to me, this kind of implies that the campsite visitor is going to need to use the well to, you know, get water. Another thing I'm considering is that maybe our campfire should be more of a focal point for this build rather than how we have it now, which is kind of like a side item. And the way I might go about making it a focal point is creating like a little area off to the side which has like a, a dirt kind of path and looks a little bit more worn down in that way. So now the campfire kind of finds itself in the middle of a seating area and we put down some stone stools and the log bench and boom, we have a focal point. What's cool is there should also be room for a tree here, I hope. Yes. Yeah, I like that a lot. The next thing I want to do is add some fencing to this build and I did make some fences, but I do think the log stakes also make for a good kind of makeshift looking fence for such a rustic build like the one we're making. So I'm gonna keep making these. I don't have like any space in my inventory, but I'm gonna just have them only here at the front and it'll kind of keep people from, you know, as they're visiting the campsite, climbing up on people's roofs. It would be very rude to have campsite visitors just crawling on top of your house and uh, I'm gonna try and make sure I prevent that from happening. And of course, I love to have them alternating in terms of which way they're facing. It makes it look so much more I don't know, natural. Okay, yeah, that's looking really good to me. I love that. I like that as like a cool entrance to our campsite. It's gonna keep people safe and it's going to add to the overall item count of the island, which is ultimately all I'm trying to do. It also feels like right here is a great place for another, for another cedar tree. So let's try that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And this could very well be the exact placement of these trees before I got here, but I'm putting the other one right there and I think that looks pretty nice. Now, another kind of big item we haven't even touched on yet is the swinging bench. And I think this is also another nice relaxing thing to have here. And this kind of feels like the only place we can put it if we're gonna use it at all. So let me just try a couple things. I'm gonna put it here first and it might need some like dirt path underneath it or something, but it does feel awkward, especially with the table here. I could put it up against the tent, I don't know. It's, it's something that I think could look cool. Maybe, maybe it could go in here somewhere. Like even putting it right here feels a bit more intentional to me. I kind of like this better already. I am starting to wonder though, if this is like too much dark wood. Let's come back to that because the thing I also want to place down are these fences. I love these fences so much. I would recommend them for any campsite build. I'm just going to put them here in the back. The reason I bring up the color of the bench is because we actually can't customize these fences. So... In that sense, we could make the bench a lighter shade of wood, I guess, and then it'll kind of match the fences we have in the back. So now I've kind of gone with the natural wood tones, and I do think that does complement the fences back here in a pretty nice way. I also actually like having the well hidden behind this bench. I, I guess hidden's the wrong word, but kind of tucked behind the bench. So we have the bucket. So, you know, our campsite visitor, wake up in the morning, come over here, grab their bucket, dip it in the well, go and 
guzzle water out of the bucket and then the, you know they can come over here and and sit on this bench and and stare at the back of this roof it really is a lovely place we're creating and because i'm obsessed with putting paths under everything i'm gonna put a dirt path underneath this bench as well you know how uh swing sets when you're a kid like seem to have a suspicious patch of dirt underneath them where everyone's kind of kicked up all the rocks and stuff that's yeah that's what's happening here everyone's just dragging their feet on the ground and destroying the terrain around the bench so, <laughs> so yeah th this makes sense to me another item i definitely think we should use is the unglazed dish set now you can glaze the dish set in all kinds of fun ways and these look fantastic I think I'm going to keep it unglazed, to be honest. I think it has a better look that matches the vibe of this campsite if we keep it the way it is. So let's see. I think it would look good maybe right here. And then the classic pitcher, which I also left unglazed, can go right behind it. Although I don't like that the way it's facing right now. How about like that? Yes. Okay. That I will accept. I don't know about you guys, but I always like to leave one spot on these tables empty if I'm going to decorate on top of tables. I don't know. It just makes it feel like stuff is just getting set up you know I, I like that so i think for the table that looks pretty good another item i like kind of hiding behind things are these old-fashioned wash tubs <laughs> again uh you know you're you're out you're camping it's there's no there's no electricity here you got to wash your clothing somehow so there you go as far as items go i can certainly add a couple more things but i'm pretty happy with the way it is at present. Actually, one thing I will try real quick is maybe a tiki torch just at the entrance. Just one. And uh, I'm going to put that, well, yeah, maybe right here. And the reason being is just because, well, more items is more items. But also, I'm going to be having, you know, more trees. Maybe I'm going to put like a tree right here. It kind of feels like when you enter the campsite, there's a lot of stuff over on your left. Not a lot going on in your right yet. So, this kind of helps balance things out a little bit, I think. So I'm about to put my stuff away and start the next phase of this build, but <laughs> before I do, I realized I never explained why I haven't moved my house yet. It's because I don't have enough money to buy the staircases to go in front of the house, and I don't feel like using a ladder every time I need to get to and from my storage. I will be moving the house soon, though. The next part of this build is all about kind of naturalizing the area a little bit more. So we do have some shrubs and some roses that we grabbed from uh, an island a while back. I'm going to go ahead and start putting these to use now. I'm only going to use a couple of shrubs, and honestly, I don't have a lot of roses, so I might end up using all the roses. The logic behind what I'm doing, of course, is that flowers, shrubs, and trees are going to be great in the absence of, you know, a lot of little items. What's so great ever since, like, the 2.0 Animal Crossing update are, is there are, like, a lot of really cool little trinkets you can put everywhere if you're not doing a DIY only island. <laughs> because we're limited to DIYs, I don't want to use too many items, like too many little of the same exact item I mean over and over and over again in one area. And so I'm going to have to heavily rely on these types of decorations. Anyhow, we're going to start with the trees. I need to pick places for all of these trees that make sense. I'm actually going to try to put this one right back here at first. I don't think I can put it that close to a cliff edge, but let's find out. Yep, that looks good. And once we get the trees placed, I can decide where the shrubs and everything, you know, can go. Okay, so I think I've placed down the right amount of trees. We have a few over here, and then if you, as you walk over here, we got another one on the front, two there in the back. It kind of closes in the area in a nice cozy way. Uh, it creates a little clearing for this campsite, which I like. So let's talk shrubs. We can put a lot more than four of them down if we want to, but I'm going to start with four. And if we're vibing with it, we will go ahead and we'll grab some more. But I like what I like to do with shrubs is just kind of tuck them in little areas. So we can put one right here behind the well. And what I love about these is you can put them right against cliff edges. Like, they do not care. Shrubs are so chill. I love them. Uh, we can put one back here, too. Oh, boy. Yeah, we're definitely going to want more, I think. We can put this one here. I can't forget there's also roses. I don't want to, like, not plant roses as well i have one in the back there and i do feel like maybe another could go somewhere in the front maybe a couple more but yeah this is <laughs> i already really like the way that's turning out so now let's start to play around with the roses and i think this is a good idea i don't know i'm not one to decorate with flowers too much i like to make big flower gardens and kind of leave it at that so using flowers to kind of fill areas in something i'm not super used to but i should get used to it because these are kind of a nice cheat code for taking an area that uh you know feels like it's lacking 
and and just making it come to life a little more. Maybe our last one can go right here. And let's see, yeah, I think it just adds another extra little pop of color next to the trees and the paths. Everything's very brown and drab and uh, I do think these are helping a lot. The question is, how do we feel once we remove this from the equation and kind of open everything up a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'd say pretty good. I think the only thing that's missing now is custom designs. Like a couple little stepping stones from the dirt path to over by the campfire area would be ideal. I would love that. But I am not about to make those myself, and one of the rules is not to use any Nintendo online, so I'm not gonna go grab any either. I did want to keep this first build nice and simple as we start to get into the second half of this challenge, the decorating half. Despite how few DIYs we currently have, I love this build. This is probably my favorite campsite build I've ever done. I suppose tomorrow will be another build. It's day 17 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we tried to summon a frog and we decorated our entire campsite. It's the 30 day DIY island. I thought we'd start our day by taking a captain boat tour. And the reason is because it seems like the jury is still out on whether or not we can find crops on captain islands without actually unlocking the cooking skill. Uh, I seem to get comments going in both directions and I want to believe everybody. I could probably look it up, but that's silly. So we're just gonna try this ourselves. Now that I have some points, there's also no real downside to doing this too. It is once again an island with vines and palm trees, which is fine, love the vines. Uh, yeah, there's no downside. We get vines, we get a recipe. That recipe, again, is not going to be a cooking recipe, which is awesome. And this is, because I'm not using Happy Home, the only way I can get vines. So if I ever wanna make the giant vine item, I'm gonna need these. Uh, I also recently did one of these and unlocked the vine stool. So yeah, a lot of vine unlocks, which is pretty great. They're uh, they're an awesome set of items. Our beach DIY is the glowing moss wreath. So we'll hang out here for a few minutes. I'll, I'll pick up some shrubs and a few things and I will explain what it is I would like to get done today. I'm thinking today would be a really good day to start decorating around our big villager neighborhood that has that kind of like boardwalk in front of it by the river. I've had some ideas now for a while as to how that one could look and it is right by the campsite too. So I'm kind of wondering if all the designing we'll do is gonna kind of like spread. Now the campsite is the first thing we've decorated and we're just gonna slowly spread out from there to other parts of the island. We'll do the villager neighborhood, we'll do the museum. I don't know, I don't know what order I'm gonna do things. Honestly, I'm just kind of going off my inspiration like in the moment. So right now I am feeling pretty inspired by the walkway we've created in front of everyone's house and I wanna start working on that. In the background, I've been trying to also make more and more time to unlock extra DIYs too. So I played a little bit after the recording yesterday and managed to find a couple more DIYs. So we are very slowly filling out our collection and it, this is kind of a balancing act, right? Like we need to try at this point to build something every day if we wanna to hope to finish this on time. And then we need to keep unlocking DIYs before we run out of time and it's this constant tug of war, chicken and the egg situation. And uh, it's, it's gonna be really interesting as we get into the second half of this challenge, where things are gonna go. Where are we gonna be by day 20, which is just a few days away. But thinking about all this is ruining the relaxing vibes of my Catton Island getaway here. So <laughs> let me just finish gathering up some supplies. For the time being, a lot of my extra shrub and plant storage is going to be over here and we're just gonna like kind of pick up shrubs as we complete builds or want to complete builds and we need a little bit more nature. I love that we get so many of these, what are they called, plumeria bushes. I, I think these are excellent. I loved when they were added to the game and every time almost I go to a Captain Island, these are what I get. So we're probably gonna make really good use of these as time goes on. For today's build to work, we're going to need to finally start to unlock some of the DIYs that exist only in the Nook Stop. And there are a lot of really good DIYs in here that are gonna help a ton. Some of my favorites include the fountain, which has a number of different customizations, the silo for when we wanna make like a farm area, the brick well, and of course, the stall. I'm gonna buy two or three of these different recipes though, 
The stall being the premier thing that we're going to be using along this kind of boardwalk area because I wanted to create like a busy looking area that looks like a lot of different small businesses exist, right? So the stall is always a, like a really good one. So the recipes I settled on were the stall, the destination signpost, the drinking fountain, and the donation box. The drinking fountain, of course, is something we need to make the big fountain. So if I ever want the big fountain, I'm going to need to learn the drinking fountain. I have like a few thousand points left over, and we're just going to kind of leave it at that for now. Speaking of DIYs, I still need to find the DIYs that we just get every day. So Stinky is crafting a bamboo drum. I don't know if I currently have any bamboo, but I'd really like some for some of this build that we're going to be doing today. I feel like it would fit in nicely. Luckily for us, I did buy turnips a couple times, which means Daisy May would have sent us some bamboo shoots. Now, if the peaches were allowed, I guess the bamboo shoots are also allowed, so I will be planting those. The alternative would be just going to different Nook Miles Islands and finding some bamboo trees. But since we planted the peaches, that kind of messed things up in my head. So the ooh, wooden mosaic wall. So the rules now are it's okay to receive those types of things from NPCs in the mail, which I wasn't going to originally play it that way, but you know. The peaches just got too controversial. It, it kind of it messed up the whole challenge. Another thing we need to do today is buy our first staircase. And this staircase is going to be used out in front of where my house is going to go. I'll place down that first staircase right here. And I didn't bring as much money as I thought I did. So I'll just put in this for now. <laughs> Oops. And we'll we'll need to go ahead and pay off the rest later. I do have my, my fruit grown in today. So we can go ahead and harvest this stuff, I guess. I picked up all the fruit. I managed to dig up all the fossils. And I even found the spot for our money tree for the day, but I have zero bells on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix up these fossils and start selling stuff. Lathers only wants two of these today. That's good for me. And we will take home 58,800 bells. I didn't realize how many distractions I would have today <laughs> when trying to do this build, but I keep finding things that I just should probably touch up because they're starting to bug me. Like this path, for example. There's a few paths that need to be kind of fixed up. This one by Stinky's house slash the information center, for example. And then also this path that's going over to my house, for example. But all right, we are now ready to craft. And there's some pretty cool things here. We have a whole bunch of DIYs that uh, we just unlocked. And what I would like to do first, I think, is make some rope fence. We're we'll going to be putting that all along the boardwalk. I'm also gonna play around with some cardboard box recipes. If you remember, we are allowed to grab cardboard boxes from the recycling bin, but we are not allowed to just decorate with cardboard boxes. We have to craft them into something. I went ahead and crafted a bunch of stuff, and as I start to place down my fences, it is worth noting that this build might be one that we kind of continue to build on as time goes by, because we need to unlock more and more recipes. For example, I want to create a stall that specializes in selling like fish, but I don't really have any fish DIYs. And it also feels like it's against the rules to catch fish and then use their tanks as decorations. They're not DIYs. And I know I've made a lot of exceptions thus far, but before I just go ahead and do that, I want to challenge myself to see if there's another way I can do it. We got the fish crate recipe at some point. Maybe just like the books, we can buy some fish crates and we can decorate with the stacks of them. That that could work pretty well. But of course, we will just kind of figure it out as we go. I do think the rope fence here is a really nice touch and it's going to already make the area feel nice and full. Looking at it in the distance, this definitely feels like the right call. I stopped right about there, but looks like I could have kept going. Our bridge is gonna go here eventually. Next, we need to start customizing the look of specific stalls. So uh, one of these is going to be one that sells like fish and stuff, I think. So waves is a good pattern to put on the awning. And then I think we'll go with a white stall for this one. And I think out of all the default combos, this is one of my favorites right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this too. The stalls themselves, I always envisioned going between the houses. So we'll put one here. And uh, this is actually the one I want on the other side. We'll put the lighter one here. And I'm not quite sure how far it's gonna stick out yet. I also know I'm gonna put some stuff behind it. But for now, let's just kind of put it right there off the path. And we're gonna put the other one right here. Again, just off the path for now. But I have a feeling I'm gonna end up pulling these out. For this stall, I envision something a little bit different. This one's gonna specialize in pottery. So we have the modeling clay, the classic pitcher. We have this little pot right here. And honestly, as I'm doing this, I do think that everyone when everything should maybe come out just a little bit. Yeah, have it hanging on the path just a little. 
That feels better to me. I'm also gonna need to pull these out more to get back there because I was just climbing back there with a ladder realizing, oh, I'm gonna get stuck. But uh, I put a cardboard chair in the back and then I'm thinking we're gonna put maybe another pot back there. I, maybe some other stuff too along the way, but what I was thinking is we kind of place a pot right there next to the cardboard box and just kind of make it look like there's some extra stuff happening in the background. And that means the other pot can go right here. And for now, uh, I'll call our pottery stall done, but yeah, there's there's a lot more we can do with something like this. Hopefully we get some different items that, uh, that work back here. In fact, I did have one more idea. The, this box shaped seat could be the perfect item to place our pot upon. Kind of like that. Yeah, I think that's something. All right, so yeah, little pottery stall. Maybe a bit of a work in progress, but still pretty cool. And it's giving this area that busy vibe that I'm going for. Another item I really want over here is the destination signpost. But as you can see, because it's so big, it's difficult to place down in a way that doesn't block the path entirely. I did manage to shove it against this house and we can still walk in front of it, which is good. But yeah, I, it, it definitely adds something to this area. Maybe this is not the right customization, but I chose that color scheme because of this stall right here. I kind of thought they tied in together and I thought the blue of this roof would work with the blue on the sign and stuff, but I don't know, I kind of, I kind of wish we had the Happy Home customizations because I don't love this, the color schemes of these houses for this build, for this entire area. It's fine, it's just not ideal. I don't know, I'll have to think about it. Anyway, for now, behind this stall, I did grab a few barrels, so I thought it'd be cool to maybe put just a couple of those uh, tucked in the back here. And, you know, I don't know, fish in a barrel, is that? <laughs> Is that what I'm trying to say? But I don't know, in lieu of having like any actual items that make sense, I thought this was maybe a good strategy. To give this build a little something, I'm gonna go ahead and put a garbage plant right there. I I don't think this is a fish stall, but it's definitely a stall that sells something one day maybe. I think another thing that makes sense for now is putting these shrubs somewhere next to these stairs, probably pushed up against the cliffs. I think little touches like this help a space a lot start to come together. And then of course, I do have a drinking fountain, which could go, you know, right out here somewhere. Just, this is a busy area with a lot of people kind of walking around and shopping. So I thought this would be a nice little item to kind of put over here and people can kind of visit when they need a break. Something that would definitely help is giving our visitors a place to kind of sit and relax. So. I've created a couple of different benches and I wanna see how each of these is gonna look. I also know that having them on the path like this really limits the space in which you can walk. I wish you could get these benches closer to the fences, but that's just not how it works. But we have this log bench. I also have a, uh, I think it's called the iron garden bench. It's metal. I'm not sure which one of these to use or where to put it. Looking at them side by side though, next to this big path here, I am leaning more towards the log bench I think that one just kind of looks better, matches the feel of this area a little bit better. This is great for like a park or something, and I'm probably gonna be building a park at some point anyway, or it could go in front of the museum. But yeah, let's go with this for now. I also have an extra barrel on me at the moment. I think it can go right there, kind of tucked up behind this house, because now it looks like this particular house is the one in charge of this stall here. I don't know, I, I think just stuff like this works. Obviously this area is a bit awkward, Right now, we need something else here to kind of start to transition it from boardwalk area to nature path that's going to eventually lead to Eric's house. And maybe that's the thing. We will leave this here for now as a reminder, but this is probably not the final placement. What I need to do is get a path going from about here up to Eric's and then we can decorate accordingly. I also have for no particular reason a donation box. And I don't know why this is here or what it's implying, but I have something in front of the stall over there. So I might as well put something <laughs> in front of this stall it's, it's really bright, so I don't know if I'm going to use this color scheme for it or if this is the placement for it that it needs, but I don't know. I, I just like the idea of this stall not really having any particular purpose and then having a donation box in front of it as if to say, hey, like, if you give me some money, maybe I can open a stall one day. Will it sell plants? Will it sell whiskey? I don't know. Just give me money. I'm also curious to see what it feels like to have a little bit of fencing right up on top of these holes between the houses. I don't want to put fence all along this because this is already kind of a narrow path. But if we go down here, yeah, it definitely feels like it needs a different fence. But having a fence up there between the two houses sounds like a good plan. I was thinking maybe this cobblestone fence would work since the cobblestone path, but I don't really like this. From down here, it doesn't look too bad. 
but it's just kind of weird. What if we tried another log bench over here? I'm finding it a little bit difficult to center this, <laughs> but it, it's, it does serve the purpose I want it to serve, uh, which is it keeps people from falling right into this pit down here unless they sit on the bench and get a little comfortable and lean back. But that's their problem. I just want to see if it looks good. And from down here, it definitely looks good. I, I actually like that a lot. And because it's kind of between the gaps of the houses, it still feels relatively easy to walk along the path. I think for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. Similar to the other bench we put down there, it's just kind of a reminder that, hey, we wanted something here, maybe that something is a bench. In case you're wondering, by the way, those nook miles in the corner were for customizing furniture and it's another thousand. So we're back up to 8,000 nook miles today which is great. I've decided to try another customization for the destination signpost, and uh, this one's just called Old, <laughs> and I like it. I think it's a little more neutral than the one we had before, and fits better with the houses. I don't feel like it fits better with the theme of the area, but it looks better with the houses and everything around it, so we are keeping that one. I thought it was time to come home and maybe put a few things away. Why is that? Well, it's because I gotta be honest with you, I feel like today has been a bit of a disaster. I found myself pacing around this build quite a bit, trying to figure out what's up. I'm placing all these different items down, and individually I like all these things, but collectively it all just kind of feels like a mess. I mean, our campsite came out so good, but it honestly feels like this build isn't living up to that same standard. So what's the pro- oh. So what's the problem? Obviously, it's just a complete lack of good, compelling DIYs. So I've decided it's time to regroup. If we want our Riverside Boardwalk to look good, it's time to cut our losses for today and do some of the biggest time jumps we've ever done. It's day 18 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we attempted to build out what I'm calling a boardwalk area. It did not go well. I made a lot of really weird choices and I just kind of ran out of DIYs. So today I'm feeling like I have a lot to prove. It's the 30 day DIY island. This is gonna be potentially the weirdest day we've had yet. As of right now, I'm still on our regular schedule. Uh, every time I catch a shark, it's just a sucker fish. <laughs> Anyway, yes, regular schedule, haven't done a big time jump yet, but today we are doing our first really, really big time jump. We are gonna go all the way forward into Turkey Day, and we are going to buy the Turkey Day DIY recipes. Before we do that though, I wanted to make sure that I at least grabbed a couple more regular old recipes. <laughs> oh, apple rug, nice that uh, we could just get on our beach and things like that. I'm getting a, t a Cosmo shower from Tasha, which I already know how to craft. Don't get me wrong, I know that Turkey Day is not going to just solve all of our problems, but it is just a bunch of recipes sitting there waiting for me to grab them. Originally, I thought I had to do the event, but I was reminded that no, Turkey Day recipes can just be purchased, which is pretty cool. Oh, and I've been so busy <laughs> with each of these days that I forgot to finish paying off this staircase even though I went and out of my way to collect the money for it. That is very silly. Okay, we only need about 10,000 more bells. Okay, so I guess this will be done soon. I, I suppose while we're about to time travel, I might as well move my house to our new location, uh, you know, just to get that out of the way. But while I work on the last of my dailies before this big time jump, it's important to mention just how much of a wake-up call yesterday was. Like, I did something very predictable, and that was run out of DIYs. But of course, I didn't call it a 30-day DIY challenge because it was gonna be easy. Huh, I guess I planned too big of a spot for my house. <laughs> you know, with the little dirt areas around it though, maybe it'd be a nice spot for some flowers, I don't know. All right, so we'll have a staircase done when we do our time skip and our house will be right here. That is really good. Another thing I wanna do is visit a Caton Island. I still have some points and I'm looking for another DIY, as well, again, as crops. Having crops in front of my house would be a lot better than the mess of trees I currently have. <gasps> and we did it. We found potatoes. Oh my gosh. We are now potato farmers. <laughs> you know what? I'm just happy to be a farmer of any kind whatsoever. I'm going to be grabbing all these potatoes, and I'm also going to dig up all of the little potato plots. Just, just take everything I possibly can. I'm gonna fill my yard with potatoes. I'm guessing this DIY will be another glowing moss item. It is the stacked shopping baskets. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. 
I did not know this was a DIY. I literally thought this was something you could buy. I'm guessing we have to buy the shopping baskets just like the books, but that's great. We're kind of creating a commerce area where Nooks and Able Sisters is. So if we find the shopping basket item, I should definitely remember to buy a few of them so that we can make that. In addition to getting potatoes and the shopping basket DIYs, we also have mums here. I don't think I can carry all this back with me, but mums are great because there's actually a recipe or two I would love to be able to craft. In particular, the mum cushion, such a nice recipe. So I'm really glad we found these. We're definitely gonna be trying to make more. Anyway, I'm sure by now it's become apparent to you that I am running out of time. I'm running out of time and I don't have anywhere near enough stuff. So other than Turkey Day, what's my plan? What am I gonna do to combat the severe lack of DIYs? Well, I'm glad I pretended you asked because you see, once we get to the Turkey Day time period in Animal Crossing, I have a feeling we're gonna be spending a little bit of extra time there. Other than the Turkey Day items, there is a bit of a backup plan that I have in mind for getting even more incredible DIYs. You see, there's something I've known for a while that I'm probably gonna have to do that I'm going to just despise every minute of. Thought I had more to sell. <laughs> it's just gonna be sucker fish today. That something though is looking to the sky. You see, the DIYs that I can get from just a little bit of patience, it's kind of incredible. Because in November, not only can I get the Turkey Day DIYs, but I can also get the Maple Leaf and Mushroom DIY sets if I'm willing to pop all the balloons to do so. And if you've played any amount of Animal Crossing before, you know why that sounds just awful. Having to sit and wait and pop balloon after balloon. What a miserable experience. But here's the thing, I've played RuneScape before and I'm no stranger to a grind. So listen, if we have to do it, we have to do it. We'll, we'll see how desperate we get. But what I will say is that the Turkey Day DIYs that we can simply barge into nooks and buy here in a little bit are really nice. And they're going to help us kind of fill out a lot of the little spots in our islands. In particular, the Turkey Day garden stand. Like, what a fantastic item. I mean, just look at how majestic it is. Not to mention because we'll be skipping to fall, I think because we'll be able to visit Captain Islands that'll be in that season sometimes, we could also get some of those recipes from Captain Islands too. Anyway, it's on my mind, it's in our back pocket, and if we have to go to those extremes, it's just what we have to do. For now though, my focus is potatoes. <laughs> we are going to grow as many potatoes as possible. I've planted all of the ones that I scooped up from the island, and now I'm planting every individual potato we managed to pluck while on the island. As I obtain more crops, I will of course reduce the amount of potatoes, but until uh, then, I'm gonna fill every single tile on this dirt patch and the other dirt patch with just potatoes. I'm gonna plant them, we're gonna water them, we are going to harvest them and make a bunch of money. And there we go, we got some more nook miles for doing that. It's great because we have a lot more we're gonna plant as well. And once we skip ahead, they should all be grown and I can harvest them and continue planting. Where I'm gonna put my fruit trees for the time being though <laughs> is a different story. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of plant these all crammed in next to the shoreline. I don't think I'm gonna be decorating here right away, but they will move again. I think we'll make like a proper orchard at some point, but we just, we just gotta get these out of our inventory. Now that we finally found crops, I'm not as concerned about keeping all of these trees. I do want the fruit for different crafting recipes, but I don't necessarily feel like we need them as much for making money now, because managing like fruit trees is kind of annoying. They take just as much time, I think, to grow out of the ground, like, or not out of the ground, but grow fruit on the trees. And then you have to shake them and then pick all the fruit up and, you know, get fruit all over the ground. It just takes forever. It's, it's all these like multiple actions, whereas crops, you water them a little bit and then you just have to pluck them out of the ground once and they stack neatly in your inventory and Timmy and Tommy buy them for a bunch of money. Another thing we should do before we head off is plant and water all of the mums that we collected on the off chance that maybe they breed a little bit <laughs> uh, during this little uh, time jump. I guess they'd only have one day to do it because I think it's only gonna count that I watered them one time, but that's fine. It, it's better than nothing and we just need more of these. I'm also too lazy to replant these fruit trees, so I'm just gonna sell them. All right, it's time to launch ourselves into fall. Oh my gosh, there's already weeds in the title screen. This is gonna be such a mess. And our first DIY of the season is gonna be from Isabel, who's giving us a mushroom wreath. Well, our house moved. That's good. Uh, we got our staircase. How are our potatoes doing? Okay, it looks like we managed to get two potatoes on each of these, which is going to be enough to replant, I probably 
maybe might be able to fill out all of the tiles now. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these and leave them. I'm not I'm not gonna replant just yet. The reason is that I think we should treat this day like we treated the previous day, whereby we gather up all the DIYs and we also visit a Captain Island. And if there's any chance we get an additional crop, I'll be really annoyed with myself for having planted everything as potatoes. And then I have carrots or wheat or something that I could also plant. In any case though, 66 potatoes. I'm also getting Nook Miles for, of course, harvesting the potatoes, which is really nice. It is really weird to be seeing this game in fall right now. And the weeds are bothering me quite a bit. I'm trying to ignore those for now because there might be some even larger time jumps we need to do in the near future. There's just gonna be more and more weeds. I can't do anything about it right now. We are able to start picking up mushrooms. We're gonna have plenty of time to do that though because for now, I am gonna be keeping the game in November for a bit because again, we want all those additional DIYs and we'll have plenty of days to go ahead and make sure we gather up mushrooms. We also managed to spawn one new mom while we were away. So, okay, well, at least it's something. Our beach DIY is the shell fountain. We already know. Oh, my poor little tacoid got left out here all by itself. We do have a balloon in the distance. I cannot be letting these go. Even though it's blue, it probably just has some clay in it or something. If there's any chance we get a fall DIY out of it though, this will be worth it. <gasps> it is a mushroom table. Oh, wow. I haven't even bought the turkey day recipes yet and I already have <laughs> my first fall DIY. This is fantastic. I think everyone's gonna be a little bit sad to see me because I did disappear for a while, but little do they know I have zero feelings either way <laughs> because all I'm looking for are more DIYs. Harry is crafting and it's a wooden plank sign. Oh, which I know how to make. Oh, I was thinking it was the shop sign. Oh my gosh. I want the shop sign so bad. They're really holding out on me. I was about to go and check out a Captain Island, but it looks like Paula might want to move out. Yep. Paula wants to move out. Well, go spread your wings. Have fun. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have time to hunt for another villager. I don't have a lot of tickets. I know I need to get a frog villager. That is now like my new directive. But we also need to focus on DIYs. And I do think the villager hunting could be a bit distracting, especially with hardly any points. So the plot may or may not autofill. I'm not going to worry about it. Our Captain Island for this new season that we're in is another fine and glowing moss island. A little disappointed. I'm not going to be grabbing the shrubs. I'm not going to be worried about too much other than the DIY and the vines and the glowing moss. <laughs> Still good items to have. But yeah, no, I was really hoping it would match the season we were in because that would mean another new recipe. But maybe this is a new recipe. It's the woven vines hat. Well, this is my first hat. I'm not really jazzed about spending my vines on it, but I mean, it does represent our first hat and that's something worth celebrating. All right, I think I got enough from this island. We will head back. Oh, right, I got roaches in my house. <laughs> I better get rid of these because if a villager visits and sees roaches, they immediately get scared and leave. But this is actually one of the few times I would like a villager to visit because I think I am entitled to some new fruit when that happens. Potentially, they could bring me the gift of a fruit that I don't already have. So we got to make sure things are cleaned up for them. The woven vines hat looks pretty decent, actually. I might actually wear that. We have the mushroom table and, of course, the mushroom wreath. We got some other DIYs along the way, but these are the ones that's showing us. And uh, this is, I mean, this is without even getting the turkey day stuff yet. Today has already been a pretty decent day for DIYs. I was only looking at that, though, because I was trying to customize my shovel. I have to plant all these potatoes, and I need a fresh shovel. And that's just a pro tip for any of you who don't play a lot of Animal Crossing. You can actually customize your tools to refresh them rather than waiting for them to break, which is kind of cool. With the addition of these potatoes... As we time travel, skip around, try to collect DIYs, I'm gonna be a lot more ruthless. Before, I was going out of my way to get my bonus nook miles, to plant my money tree, to maybe even find a money rock, like do all the things I need to do to try to like, you know, up my chances of having some cash and the things I need to, you know, eventually pay down my loan, stuff like that. Well, now that we have the potatoes, we don't have to worry about that as much. Our money problems, I don't wanna say they're solved, but things, Things are gonna be easier with this right in my front yard. And it would seem we are only one potato shy of filling up all of it. Yes, both plots are basically full minus one potato. I'll take that. Hey, that's fine. That means the next time we harvest these, we can sell like all of them, <laughs> which is great because I haven't even had these for like a full day, really. So let's get these watered, maybe even get some points for watering a whole bunch of crops along the way and move on to finally buying our Turkey Day DIYs. We did get a thousand Nook Miles for planting our uh, potatoes, 
which is cool. The next time we get one of those, we'll have probably found some new crop because <laughs> I'm not gonna be planting much for a while. It looks like Nooks is having that Nook Friday sale. We're not worried about that. That has nothing to do with us. We are just here for the DIYs. The Cozy Turkey Day DIY. It costs 16,632 bells. This is gonna be all of the furniture that you can unlock from actually doing the event. There's also basic cooking recipes and Turkey Day recipes but we haven't unlocked cooking yet, so we can always just kind of come back for those. Everything else here, we already have. So now we're looking at some really, really cool decorations. My favorite ones would be the chair, the table, and the Turkey Day garden stand. Of course, I can also see using perhaps the hearth and the other items as well. The Turkey Day wheat decor is also good as long as we... Oh, it takes weeds. <laughs> I thought it was going to be wheat, but no, it takes weeds. Uh, yeah, so these are all really, really strong, solid items for all kinds of stuff. But now with our Turkey Day items in hand, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around the island. I'm specifically looking for mushrooms, but the goal is to find those mushrooms and then time travel backwards a little bit. We are gonna go towards the beginning of November, which is when I believe the maple leaves will be flying around. We'll still have mushrooms. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the balloons will be both mushroom DIYs and maple leaf DIYs. So it's kind of like double DIY balloon opportunities. <laughs> if I'm gonna sit there and like wait for balloons to spawn, I might as well up my chances of getting something good as much as possible. As I search these trees and cliffs for mushrooms, it also occurs to me that there is a really solid argument to be made about actually reducing the number of trees around the island significantly so that mushrooms don't have like a lot of places they can go. But because I can't buy saplings, at least with these trees, I can't get them back. I can always plant money trees, take the money off them, and get hardwood trees again, but I can't get more cedars. So I'm really hesitant to cut these down because otherwise I'll have to go to like Nook Miles Islands and try to find them. And that's just not fun. Anyway, I found what I can for now. Let's go ahead and roll back the clock. The only problem with rolling the clock backwards is that the watering I did to my potatoes apparently did not follow us. <laughs> so spending that time was... Kind of silly. All right, no, it's fine. I understand. I will go ahead and water these again. And from here, we're not gonna be time skipping like we have been all day. It's just gonna be one day after another now as we stay in the month of November. So these will grow. I was just kind of hoping to like pop out of my house and <laughs> have a bunch of potatoes, but I didn't even get the announcements from Isabel. So I don't know, I, I haven't time skipped a whole lot in my time in Animal Crossing in general. And I didn't realize going backwards would just completely prevent you from getting announcements or, or any kind of meaningful progress. The good news is though, I didn't have to replant them. What's even more interesting about this time jump backwards is that my money tree I planted before didn't grow, but we also have a new money tree as well. <laughs> Thankfully, I did get a new beach DIY. And it's once again the stacked shopping baskets for the second time today, which is super weird because I only just learned that that was even a crafting recipe today. All right, Norma, what are we making? It is floral swag. I had to remind myself, but this is what it looks like. And this is actually something you hang inside on the wall. So nothing I can use outside. I was looking around and realizing I wasn't seeing any maple leaves flying around and I did make one miscalculation. It looks like November 16th to 26th is when the maple leaves will actually appear in the game. And you know, my potatoes didn't grow. I have all these duplicate DIYs. So we can jump like a little more into the future, right? What? What could it hurt? At least Isabel is hooking us up with an amazing DIY, the red leaf pile. That thing's gonna look really good in the campsite, which I was saying could have used like maybe some stepping stones or something. I think like a red leaf pile up there would look really, really cool. But all right, now I am officially in the part of fall that I want to be in. I think we can get both mushroom DIYs and the maple leaf DIYs this time of year. There's also a bottle already on the beach, which is great. I didn't even have to, have to go looking for it. And weirdly enough, it's the bamboo wall because yeah, we're totally like in spring right now. I know the spring recipes are different, but I don't even have bamboo. <laughs> I, maybe maybe we'll manage to find some at some point. Potato-wise though, looking strong. We have two potatoes in each spot. So I'll go ahead and pick all of these up and we're gonna sell these. I like this so much better than harvesting fruit from trees. Oh my goodness. We're just able to run in here and pick these up very quickly. And I cannot wait to see how much this farm is gonna make us. This isn't even like the full potential because we haven't watered it enough to get the three potatoes per spot. 
the next time we harvest this is gonna be worth even more. Let's go ahead and plant one of these. We'll start to get them all watered. And without even looking, I managed to find a balloon. This could easily be a recipe. It's 10,000 bells. I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll take that too. I haven't really planted a lot of money trees or anything. And with the potatoes that basically filled up my inventory along with some DIYs that I already had, We'll sell all of this stuff and see what we can make. 83,000 bells. Oh, I love to see that. In all the time travel chaos, I completely forgot that Paula had moved away and the plot has not autofilled. As you know, we are trying to find Lily the Frog, so it's probably worth grabbing a couple tickets and at least trying to find somebody for that plot. I did go ahead and buy three tickets. There's also a chance we find some DIYs on these trips and it could be all kinds of villagers that are in the top 50, which is important because Ultimately, that is the rule. A frog villager is like a bonus at this point, especially Lily. But if we can get anybody in the top 50, I will be happy. And it's a bamboo island. I was just saying that I have no bamboo. <laughs> this is perfect. The villager on said bamboo island is Pierce, who is number 248 on Animal Crossing Portal. Hard pass. Getting a bamboo island though is huge for us because I don't think I've had one yet. Or if I did, I definitely ignored the bamboo on it. And now we can take some of these back home with us and have a source of bamboo. There are a lot of DIYs I've not been able to use because of this. So we can definitely start harvesting bamboo. And if we want to, we can even go back early enough into spring to get young spring bamboo and benefit from those recipes as well. I did just enough to break my ax. The rest of these, or at least a number of them, I'm actually going to scoop up so I can just go ahead and replant right when we get home. I went ahead and grabbed six bamboo trees on my way out. This is going to be awesome. We can find a place for them. We can even decorate around a little bit, just make like a little build out of it. And honestly, the more builds, the better at this point. All right, let's check out our second of three islands. And this one features Tipper, who is number 140 on the list. Better, but still not worth settling for. I think we can do one more island and see about getting somebody who is closer to the top 50. We did find a DIY while we're here, and it is a pear umbrella. Not only do I think we'll never be able to craft that, but uh, <laughs> it just kind of feels pointless because I'm not sure where I'd put one. Oh my God. We were down to our last ticket and we found Mary, who is, in fact, at least right now, a top 50 villager. By the way, if you're ever hanging out on this site and you wanna, you know, maybe hit this button a little bit, and vote for Mary <laughs> so Mary can be, you know, raised in the ranking, that would be awesome. I will have to wait till next month to try voting some more. And trust me, it's worth your time to vote Mary up because I am in fact inviting Mary to live on G Wiz. I cannot believe we found our second of three top 50 villagers. Now we just need the last one to be Lily, honestly. And there's a DIY here. It's the deer scare, which is a bamboo item. It's a pretty good one. It's this thing. It's just a nice decoration. And it's cool because I just talked about making a little area for bamboo, like a bamboo build. And that would be perfect for it. Well, today was a huge day, but next time we definitely need to worry about building something because we are getting really uncomfortably close to this challenge being over. It's day 19 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday was a huge success because we found our first bunch of potatoes. From there, we traveled all the way into November and we began collecting a whole bunch of fall related DIY recipes. And let's not forget about Mary, our second top 50 villager. It's the 30 day DIY island. Despite not actually building anything, yesterday was a rousing success. We managed to travel to the fall season where we've begun unlocking all kinds of cool DIYs and we now have a fully fleshed out potato farm which should make us some decent passive-ish income. In the spirit of this new farm, I thought of a perfect build for today and we are building again. <laughs> I am at a point now where we do need to be making sure we place down some items every single day if we hope to finish this on time. So I have some pretty big plans for one specific area, but before we get into those, we are doing our kind of regular routine right now. I'm gonna water my potatoes, refresh my tools, pick some mushrooms, dig up any fossils I find, secure our money tree, say hello to Mary who's just moving in, find a recipe from someone who's crafting, looks like it's the manga library wall, find our beach DIY, which is the bamboo stop block, and then grab our daily nook miles, which of course is not a lot because we've been time traveling a bunch. Money-wise though, we are in a pretty good situation. I'm gonna go ahead and withdraw, well, I clicked the wrong thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and withdraw everything that's in my ABD because we're about to 
build something. I'm gonna build another one of these wooden bridges. This particular bridge is going right over here, and that's about what it looks like when it's all complete. And there are a few reasons I need this bridge. At some point, we are gonna be doing some balloon hunting, which it basically involves me running up and down north to south trying to wait for balloons to come in from the uh, ocean. So having this bridge is gonna make that a lot easier for me. More importantly though, for the purposes of today, I need a bridge here because today we are gonna be working on Eric's house. And I just wanna make sure everyone can get to and from no problem. Now, Eric's house is the one house that I set all by itself with pretty much the most property of anyone else. Eric was, of course, my first villager that I found that was in the top 50. We need three in the top 50. Eric was there for us. So Eric gets all of this space. And what I need to decide is how we're going to go about actually decorating this spot. Uh, so I'm thinking for this one, we kind of do a, a limited to no terraforming deal here. I don't want to say absolutely no terraforming. I might want to put some more cliffs in the back just to kind of like obscure the ocean a little bit. I might want to move the pond a little bit, but I do want him to have a pond. And I just kind of want the area to feel really, really natural. Oh, and he wants to tell me something. He's giving me a present just for no reason. I can't wear it. The plain paperboy cap. So the plan for this is to actually get rid of all these trees. And we're just going to, you know, start with a bit of a clean slate minus the terraforming. And I'm going to find a place for a dirt path. I know I put the bridge here. We're actually going to put some fences in front of it just to kind of separate the property line from the main path. We'll worry about that later. And then we're going to take a path from somewhere around here and have it kind of wind up. We're going to have it go to the left. And then we're going to have it meet Eric's doorstep. And for the first time, my plan is to actually chop down every single tree. Now, I know I've been trying to preserve a lot of my hardwood trees, but I've realized a couple of things. I have a lot, okay? <laughs> like, a lot of these trees. And the reason that's kind of silly is because we can just go ahead and plant money trees and not chop them down. And that'll give us more hardwood trees. It's kind of a hardwood tree hack. The cedar tree's a bit harder to come by, but also... I've done five-star islands in the past. I don't need as many trees as I have, is what I'm realizing. I've been saving my trees just in case, but it is kind of a pointless endeavor. We will not need this many. So, I do intend on putting some trees in the final product here of, of Eric's property. But not this many, not in these places, and I will be honest with you. I've not been collecting any wood at all, as well. So... Having an excuse to chop down a few trees, not a bad thing. And yes, I know I can use the stone axe, but again, I wanna I wanna kind of get rid of some trees. But now you might be wondering, well, why Eric's house though? Like, what is my genius idea? Like the last build I did went very poorly. I don't have enough resources. I don't think I was in the right headspace that day too, because I just made some really weird calls, and we'll we'll address those in the future. But yeah, what, what's my plan with this? Why do I, why am I so confident today? Well, none of your business. I'm gonna keep you in suspense for just a little bit longer. Oh, I found a new stump bug, nice. I was actually thinking of leaving this stump here just, you know, for the sake of having just some more stuff in this corner. And uh, now that just feels like a sign. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and leave this stump, we'll see. Anyway, Eric's property is now prepped and ready for design. But before we do that, I want to take a quick little detour. I'm trying to make it a point to visit a Captain Island every day now because we are starting to get some really cool stuff. Oh, this one looks uh, <laughs> rather treacherous. Okay. No crops that I can see, but let's see. The DIY is steel flooring. Oh, I was really hoping I was going to get this because I have the steel wall and I'm starting to collect a pretty decent amount of walls and floors for my house, which we will eventually be decorating. The first rock I found here was a money rock, which kind of makes me wonder if the rest of them are gonna be money rocks, and they are not. I know I could pick up some more of these uh, flowers and bushes while we're here, but I'm not really here for any of that stuff. I was really just looking for a new recipe and some crops. Did not find the crops, did get a cool new recipe, so at least there's that. And a gold nugget, I mean, come on, this is great. Two gold nuggets <laughs> out of one rock. I literally don't think that's ever happened to me before. I could not get a third one though. Wow, oh, that would've been awesome. And I know I'm still keeping you in suspense, but I did have a pretty urgent museum run. I've just been kind of accumulating fossils forever. They're starting to take up a lot of space in storage. And out of all of them, <laughs> only one gets donated. I I don't know, either we're almost done with the fossils or that's just terrible luck and I'm really frustrated. That's fine, I will definitely not turn down the free money. 55,000, I'll take it. Now just as a quick reminder, one of my goals is to get every single room in my house so we can decorate like a fully 
decorated house. <laughs> so I am definitely trying to pay down my loan I think in like little bits at a time. With how much is left on my loan and how much money I have, plus my money trees, I could probably pay it off right now, but I am just gonna wait a little bit longer because I'm not in a rush to decorate the house and I really need more bridges and staircase. But the other reason we are at the Nook Stop is to buy a couple of very specific DIYs. And this is basically gonna be the last of my miles for a bit. And why those specific DIYs? Well, I'm glad I pretended you asked. You see, Eric is going to live on a farm. Yes, <laughs> I have a farm and also Eric has a farm. Listen, DIYs that match the vibes of a farm are just pretty abundant, okay? There's not much I can do about that. So we're gonna embrace it and we're going to give Eric his very own farm. The first thing I'm trying to do is decide where the path to this farm should go. And I'm thinking this is probably a good spot for it. It leaves enough room definitely on this side, possibly even a little bit on this side to put down some different plants and things like that. I think the main farm, the crops themselves, will probably live over here-ish, uh, but I don't know. We're just gonna kind of work with the terrain we have and let things slowly come together. So that's his path done, and this is cool because this kind of starts to lay out the rest of the build. I'm gonna go ahead and place my favorite fence here at the entrance. It's going to come across like this, and create that kind of separation we need between Eric and the main path. We can also have it start to come in to the market area, uh, but I'm not exactly sure where it's going to stop, and also Tasha's probably not gonna let us just <laughs> place it down, which is a little bit annoying. Nope, here we go, all right, perfect. We'll leave it there for now, but it could end up going all the way to the side of this house. And just as I had hoped, we are also finding balloons over here. We are next to the side of the island where they do spawn in, and we are gonna be walking back and forth over here, so we could get a lot of these. Of course, getting random pieces of clothing is not very helpful. Now, as for the actual crops that will be on Eric's farm, that's where I'm still trying to decide like how much of them, how many different types. Of course, that all depends on finding more on Captain Islands, but I was wondering if I should just do little kind of areas, little patches of dirt like this, where we just put down a few, and maybe we do like three or four of these around the area. Or perhaps I could do one really big area, but I don't know. I, I think little spots like this are a little more manageable and we can decorate around them and it'll look kind of cool. We could maybe put a little patch right here next to his house. We could put one right over here. I could even do some on this side of the pond, but I feel like maybe this is like some trees and a, I don't know, maybe a bench or something. Just he loves fishing at this pond, see? So I think maybe we create like a little fishing area. That could be kind of nice. I do think though it wouldn't hurt to make this patch a little bit larger. The other thing this would be great for is having some fruit trees because I, as you saw, I'm a little overwhelmed with the fruit trees that I currently have at home. Maybe if Eric had a little apple orchard of his own, that would be kind of neat. I'm trying not to get rid of the stone, but if we're doing an apple orchard, I might need to. Maybe we can put it like over here. I don't know. I got to think about this. Another thing we could do is place these fences behind his house, kind of like this. And instead of doing cliffs, we have those fences back there. It kind of closes in the property a little bit more. And, uh, you know, you can still see the ocean, which is cool. If I wanted to, I could even create a gap in these fences if we want to, like, let him get on that rock over there. But I think having it come right out to here protects him from falling in the ocean. And we do want to protect him. So let's just kind of map this out a little bit. Pretend we are indeed going to put apple trees back here. If I space them out like that... That would create a pretty decent backdrop. You still have a little bit of room between the trees and the fence if you want to put something else by the fence. And we can still get behind his house, which I could keep the trees going behind there. I guess the one thing that we'll need to figure out is can we put a tree right here? If we can, I can leave them spaced out just like this. Well, let's go ahead and steal some apple trees and try it out. I'm thinking this isn't going to work. Yeah, okay, we gotta, we gotta space these out a little bit differently. Can I put one by these rocks? Yes. Okay, so what I've done is I've basically moved all of them back a little bit right up against the fence. I did like the space behind them, but that's okay. I still think these make for a really cool backdrop. Well, despite my compromise, yeah, this is looking really good. I like this a lot. They go all the way back behind his house, up to the beach, and again, the property starts to feel a little more cozy. And on my way to get the DIY workbench, I did find another balloon. Please be a recipe. Oh, it's another useless piece of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I'll put it in the pile, I guess. It's time to start customizing some of the items I've set aside for this build. So I did make the silo, of course, and the silo has so many really cool variations. Uh, I never know which one to pick. And I also made the brick well, which has even less 
but pretty awesome looking variations. I think I'll keep this one red with the little brown roof. It'll kind of go with his house a little bit more, but I'm gonna try the green and dark brown silo because I think this is one of my favorites. I think we'll also go with green hay beds because I am gonna put a few of these around as well. When we finish up this island, it'll most likely be in the spring. So that is one of the kind of factors here. The grass is gonna be a lot more vibrant and green. And so this will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what everything looks like once we get closer to the end. I'm gonna put the silo here for now. This area does need a big item. I just don't know if this is the exact spot I want it, but I do know I want the brick well to be right about here. I think having it next to this pond and kind of by the corner of this path looks like a really natural fit. I'm gonna go ahead and craft a bucket to put beside it. I was thinking the bucket could go in front of it, but I'm actually gonna try it tucked behind it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I think having maybe the butter churn next to his house is kind of interesting. It, it makes me think about different items I could maybe put over here. Of course, this whole build isn't going to look complete until we do get some crops for these different patches we have. I could just give him a bunch of potatoes, but <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of waiting for those to grow and then I'm just going to sell them. So it'll be a bit before potatoes end up here, but if we find maybe some wheat or something on an island soon, I can definitely start filling out this place. Another item I'm going to go a bit wild with in this build is going to be barrels. I'm thinking of making like maybe four or five of these things and kind of putting them in different spots. It is a shame that these are not customizable. Ugh, I feel like you could do so many things with a barrel. I actually love these right here, but now it's looking like too much brown. So let's try a natural wood butter churn right here. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. I don't know if it's overkill for this spot, but I'm just kind of like putting the hay beds here. Eh, I like it, but... Maybe just, maybe just one. Oh, balloon break. It is a maple leaf rug. This is more for indoors, but that's fine. I will take any maple leaf recipes I can get. Anyway, I'm not loving the hay beds here. We'll find something else. The hay beds actually make a lot more sense to me behind and around the silo because they kind of match the roof. And I also think tucking some barrels back there is a nice touch, but uh, I don't know. Part of it still seems a little bit off. I like the barrels. I love hay beds in general. I just still don't know if that's the right spot for them. I did think of one kind of interesting detail though. I wanted to try a mossy garden rock, just kind of back here, up against the rocks on the shoreline, just just kind of like that. Maybe, maybe pushed up against this a little bit more. Eh. Maybe not, it's not really doing much. However, by this pond might not be a bad idea at all. And we can maybe put some shrubs around the pond too. Oh, that could look cool. Of course, another item we can use to kind of add to the commerce of this area would be these wooden field signs. And these things are awesome because they have, they're they double-sided and you can put all kinds of stuff on them. And the reason they make a ton of sense for this build is because if someone is walking on this little boardwalk area and they were looking to you know shop at a, a nice local farm, there would be signs here advertising something. I love how many balloons we're getting. I hope it's a recipe. It is gears. <sighs> I think there is a recipe for golden gears and we would need these gears to make the golden gears. So maybe I don't throw them away right now, but I'm not really excited about it. I'll say that. Anyway, I found myself making another natural wood swinging bench, but I'm also pairing it with a natural wood rocking chair. These two items don't match as well as I thought they would. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the idea is like we wanted to create that seating area that was kind of by the pond, just a little place to come and relax. The more I look at it though, the more I feel like the rocking chair does not really fit this vibe. A perfect item for this build that I somehow haven't used yet is the birdhouse. Whenever I use a birdhouse, I always like to pair it with a bird bath. I don't exactly know why, but I wanted to see what it would look like if I put like a table and chairs out here. I, I guess just a little garden seating area, right? We could maybe stick a shrub or a tree or something right back here. It just, it needs something behind it. But uh, yeah, I, I do like all of this stuff together in this area. It feels a little more cluttered, which I think is cool. Uh, still trying to figure this out, but I did grab a couple more trees. And so I do think it's time to start playing around with uh, the idea of bringing back some trees now that I've kind of <laughs> scooped them all up and made the area look sad and desolate. I think maybe right here would be a good spot for one. It does kind of add a little bit of separation between this little seating bench area I'm trying to create and then more of the farm kind of area. Throwing one behind it like that kind of closes it in as well. Yeah, I like that. Let's go ahead and add our signature dirt path underneath yet another swinging bench. Another balloon? Oops, what's it gonna be? Ugh, literal garbage. Speaking of trees though, we do need to plant some up front now. I do think I am gonna leave that stump back there. I, I think with my lack of items, it's kind of like a why not situation. Uh, but yes, so we have some trees. These were already here, which I think look fine. And then we have the bench with a couple trees behind it. We're getting our garden area sorted out. 
We also have, uh, you know, the bird bath and stuff. It does feel like we need more items, maybe right here. Uh, something could go right here. Let me try something. What if we did this? This is kind of classic, right? Like just two rocking chairs sitting on a farm. So, so you know, two people can just like sit down and people watch from a distance. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to make the rocking chairs a thing. <laughs> I don't, I don't like them. What I will do though is place down a few knickknacks. I think a little flimsy watering can up there looks nice. I'm trying to place down a flimsy fishing rod, but I gotta be honest with you, the physics of this thing placed down makes zero sense to me. And I've never given it much thought, but I don't want this here. <laughs> this, that's weird. However, the old fashioned wash tub is something I would like somewhere around this river. I just gotta find the right spot for it. I don't know if it looks good next to this well or if that's like too cluttered. I think maybe next to this rock like this is pretty good. Eric kind of comes right out of his house to do laundry. Yeah, I like that, that's that's fine. Actually, I'm gonna put it like right over here maybe. We already have a bucket over here. So I'm just trying to separate things in a way that makes sense. But now that looks too, I don't like that either. Okay, I'm hiding it behind a tree. How about that? Uh. No. I think that looks good. <laughs> it, that item belongs here somewhere. It's just a matter of where. I think I'm going to keep it right where it is. I also made a terrarium, which I think looks really great on this table. And let's go ahead and grab the last of these shrubs and kind of put these a little bit here and there around the farm. I did say we needed something behind these uh, tables and chairs and by the barrels here. So I am going to put one of each type of shrub right here. Yeah, pretty good. It'll be kind of hard to notice, but I'm gonna put one by the pond here. Whenever I have little cliff corners like this, I like to put a shrub just kind of tucked right in there. And then the last couple could kind of go next to these trees back here. Again, just to clutter them up a little bit, although they really don't want to be here at all. There we go. Maybe the last one could go right there. I do need to find more of those bushes though. Let's pick this up and then ask ourselves the question, is it done? Okay, obviously not. There's definitely room for a ton more items once I get them. And of course, we don't even have crops. It's a farm without anything to farm or sell. But am I still proud of it? Yes, even with a complete lack of items, I'm still very happy with what we've accomplished today. It's day 20 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we built a new bridge on the island. We also designed Eric's house, making it a glorious farm. Unfortunately, like other builds, it's not 100% complete though. This really begs the question, can we finish this challenge on time? Only in the it always feels good to start a new day with a plan already in motion. I'm starting to walk around. I just got here and look, I got an ironwood DIY workbench, which is great because not only does this look cool, it serves a really valuable purpose. All right. So first things first, let's harvest these potatoes. And as I do this, let's go through that plan for today. Step one and in the midst of doing all of my day to day tasks that we need to do, I think I'm going to buy some more turnips. If I sell all of these potatoes, I'll have quite a bit of cash saved up and buying turnips just sounds like a good idea. It sounds like a plan for getting massively rich, which we could really, really use right about now because we are at the 20th day. That means there's only 10 days left of this challenge and we're nowhere near any of our goals right now. One of those goals, of course, though, is getting up to a five star island. Now, either way, we're designing the whole island. That's that's really the challenge here. Designing an island in 30 days, okay? So whether or not, whatever star amount we're at, we still need to design the island, even if we are somehow at five stars right now, which I know we're not. That being said, though, it has been a while since we've checked and I've been trying not to put the pressure on myself of, of knowing that day in and day out, but we are overdue. We are going to check that out. So potatoes, turnips, star rating. And then today we are going to be decorating the museum. And I'm going to tell you right now, the museum build is one that I feel like is going to be a bit of an unfinished project for at least at first. I'm at a stage though where I'm starting to embrace the unfinished projects. 91,000 for this first round of potatoes. I figure though, if we have a bunch of unfinished builds, right? Over time, we're gonna get more items and we'll be able to slowly kind of add to them. The key here is to just get items placed down kind of where I want them to be forever. And the more things we place down, the closer and closer we get to the five stars and a pretty much finished island to the point where if we get to like day 28, for example, and builds aren't finished, 
it wouldn't be so bad to have to run around, try and collect some more DIYs, and just fill in those little blanks. 2,000 points for me, which is great because uh, we were at a huge point deficit there. Uh, let's start watering these and then move on. By the way, it is Saturday, not Sunday, so if I do want those turnips, I guess I will have to skip a day. But I am kind of determined to spend this money on, on that investment because I had kind of a good feeling about this week. So we might actually skip ahead a day at some point and uh, grab those, but we'll see. With the potatoes all done, let's go ahead. We're gonna do a quick captain tour since we did get some more points. Actually, I should probably sell the excess potatoes first, just have a little more room. 33,000, and I know I'm already getting really distracted, but another thing I thought that I need to probably do today if we are gonna check the star rating is go ahead and pick up all the excess weeds we got from time traveling so much. This is going to just help increase the point counter on the island. If there's any chance we're at four stars right now, which I don't think we're at, uh, we definitely don't want the weeds fighting against us. Our Captain Island is a money tree, Captain Island. <laughs> uh, I think that means the rocks are money rocks too. I don't know. This is all signs are pointing towards a full on turnip investment. Watch this be like the money floor recipe. Okay, wooden block stool. Fine, I'll, I'll take it. Ah, okay, the rocks are not all money rocks. There might be one here. It would be worth kind of grabbing this stuff because the build we're doing today also is gonna require quite a bit of stone. I have some pretty expensive plans for the museum. The bells on these trees, I think are all just a thousand a piece. I'm not gonna complain, that's still something. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would've, been, it would've been really cool if these were like 10,000. Gold nugget as well, nice. Times five points for hitting a rock today as well, which is cool. Speaking of money trees, we've accumulated a few of our own. So I'll go ahead and tear these down. These will have 10,000 bells on each one. It'll put us over 200,000 bells total, uh, probably close to 300,000. I might even have money in my storage. So when we do buy some turnips, we can buy like a full inventory just about, which that would be very helpful. Assuming, of course, we get a decent price. And we got a balloon here uh, flying over Eric's property, which is looking awesome, by the way. Uh, no regrets about this build at all. I was just kind of hoping to find some more crops for him today, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Elegant dress, totally useless. Never mind what I said, I'm angry about everything. I'm angry about the balloon. I'm angry about not finishing Eric's house. <sighs> That's, is that a sign of not buying turnips? Should I, should I maybe not buy turnips? I just don't know. You you really want to make sure you're, you're in good fortune when you're about to make a huge investment. Wendy's crafting today. And it's gonna be a giant teddy bear. I actually think I already have the giant teddy bear. Yep. Yes, I do. I honestly think that's another omen. That's just another bit of bad luck for me. I don't know. This is... This is getting a bit dicey. Planting a new money tree will make me feel better though. We have another balloon, which I missed. It's a cute DIY table, which is basically trash. All right, so it looks like this is the last of the weeds that I can find. If not, it's most of the weeds on the island all picked up. And so I should be able to, in theory, go and get a pretty accurate reading of where we currently stand in terms of our star rating. I'm not sure. I think everything is based off of a points system. So. You can get rid of like a good amount of flowers, but because you've placed down a whole bunch of items and fences and things like that, you actually accumulate quite a bit. Oh, I just scared away that leaf. You actually accumulate accumulate quite a bit of points and you can actually still get three stars or five stars. I mean, my main island, my five star island, it does not have a lot of trees or flowers. So we'll see what this turns out to be. I have just emptied my ABD, by the way, which brings me to over 300,000 bells. Oh, I can't wait to buy these turnips. Let's talk evals. It would seem we are still at a three star rating. This is actually good news because this means we don't need to plant tons and tons of flowers to continue maintaining three stars. Folks responded positively to our island scenery. Keep contributing however you can and soon the island will be decorated to perfection. So Isabel putting a really fine point there on decorating and decorating with items we've created, which is great because that's the only type of item I use. I did find some more weeds though. <laughs> So, so now I'm not sure where we stand. I'm, I'm sure this very small handful of weeds didn't make much of a difference. Before we jump over to Sunday, there's one last thing I want to do, and that is empty my inventory of all the bamboo that we collected uh, from the previous day or a couple days ago. I don't know. I'm losing track. It's all blended together. But uh, I need to get rid of this stuff because it is taking up a ton of space. I kind of thought this could be a cool little bamboo area, but it's just giving me so much trouble already. I think the best place for this, and I'll probably have to move it twice, but I think the best place would be by the secret beach once we kind of clear it out a little bit. We will be clearing this out a little because we want to get the museum to have like a path from here over to the secret beach. So there will be some terraforming that takes place for now. 
I'll just plant the bamboo kind of back here. I gotta be honest, it actually kind of looks cool up here on the cliffs with the ocean down there. I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I might make good use of that. All right, let's skip ahead. And Isabel's just given us the Trees Bounty Little Tree Recipe. Because again, it is fall, and uh, fall really makes it rain when it comes to DIYs. Speaking of that though, there is one thing I need to remind myself about. We should be very careful about how many days that we skip ahead right now in this season, because the whole reason we're here is to make sure we have like the maximum amount of balloon DIYs. But if I skip ahead too many days, I lose that potential, that those extra DIYs are gone, because I could get too far away from, I think, maple leaf season, so let's just be really, really careful about that as we skip ahead. It's especially tempting now that we're about to do a big turnip run <laughs> to just keep skipping, but we'll, we'll be careful. What I need to do, and I'll probably have to do this off camera, is sit down one evening and just look for balloons. Just literally stand by the beach, run up and down, and wait for balloons to fall. That would be probably my best bet. Let's see what Angus is crafting though. It's a bonfire, which is, yeah. Yeah, that's like the first recipe you learn. <laughs> Never mind. I was really excited. I'm like, a bonfire? Oh, right. Yeah, we definitely have that. I just don't get it because if I play this game every single day, shouldn't I be rewarded with more DIYs that I already don't own? Especially so early on. Like we've gotten tons of duplicates and it doesn't make any sense. We're, we're investing so much time into this. It's not fair. And, you know, back when I first played, I wasn't complaining about it. But now that I'm, like, trying to play every single day, sometimes I skip multiple days in one, in one day. It's really, really frustrating. Is this going to be a duplicate? It's the wooden chair. Like, what is this? Is this, is this like day one? Did I just get off the plane? Like the wooden chair? Where's Daisy May? We did find another balloon and his ski pants. <sighs> Total utter junk. At least we found Daisy May though. It looks like turnips are gonna be 105 bells each for us. She's charging quite a bit. Could that be because they're going to spike really, really high? We'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and place all the turnips just outside of Nook's here. And yeah, now every day we need to be checking at least twice a day to see, you know, how they're faring. I have been running around trying to do my chores now that we're in a new day. I'm gonna go water potatoes. And then I think it's finally time we unwind with a little bit of decorating. And I guess we could do another cat and island as well. I see vines and glowing moss. That's not bad. I mean, hey, maybe we can make that giant vine. We talked about that a while back and uh, we've gotten even more vine recipes since then. So that, that could be kind of a cool little area. I mean, we're talking also about a bamboo area by the secret beach. Maybe all of that stuff could be one big build. In this case, though, we got the glowing moss flooring. Great for my house, not great for a glowing moss build. I did find a money rock, though, which is good because you did watch me spend every penny I had on turnips today. So <laughs> rebuilding our bank at the moment is probably a good idea. And it's always great to find a gold nugget as well. A successful trip overall, but now it's time to head back. For our build today, this recipe is what it's all about. My plan here is to start with two of these fountains. We're gonna put them on either side of this museum entrance, and we are just going to decorate around those. We may as well get this rock out of our way <laughs> because uh, I don't see it surviving this build. So I've gone ahead and grabbed some food so we can get rid of it. And I'm also gonna scoop up a bunch of the trees around here as well. We are of course very limited on fresh new DIYs at this point, but that doesn't mean we can't make a pretty epic looking museum. So my plan here is to start pretty much from scratch in this area. We're gonna get rid of all these different trees uh, I'm also probably gonna get rid of this rock as well, so we may as well just see what's inside. And now that everything's cleared out, I can kind of begin laying things out and showing you what my plan is. I wanna start with some fencing, and I think the one that makes the most sense is the iron and stone fence. This fence is going to stretch along the back end of the museum. It's just gonna kind of be there, keeping people from falling into the ocean. It'll look a bit like that, but I've also kept a gap between them right now. This is eight fences here and this is eight fences here. And I think just knowing that amount is going to be important. Now we understand that this cliff is closer to the museum than this cliff, because we kind of just counted it out. So that will allow me to kind of plan accordingly. I might have to do some terraforming, so I just got the hat on just in case. But the next phase of this plan is to start deciding where I'm gonna be putting down some trees. We're gonna use cedar trees back here, and we're just gonna kind of create a backdrop with these fences and trees. And I think the best way to do this would probably be in this pattern. 
So that'll basically be three trees. Well, that doesn't really work. I'm gonna go ahead and remove a layer or two of this cliff back here. Kind of like that, just, just shave it off for now. This, this mountain here <laughs> was always kind of slated for potential destruction. And I think we are at that point. Let me see something. Okay, I figured out a pattern that gets all the trees evenly spaced and in the background here. Now I finished placing down my fences as well. Okay, and now we have a line of trees right in front of our fences. It's already feeling a lot better to me. Now, each fountain costs 20 stone, eight iron nuggets, and then a drinking fountain. The drinking fountain is eight stone and two iron nuggets. We'll need to go get some more iron, but I have plenty. We're actually gonna make four of these fountains, which I know is completely overkill, but also I, I just don't have a lot of stuff. What are, you what are you supposed to do in this situation? By the way, something I challenge you to do, and this just happened a second ago, I caught it, just barely a frame of it, but the fountain, always kind of shoots up into the air at the top of a new hour and I just hit a new hour and the picture of the fountain had shot up into the air. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that was such a cool detail. It's incredible after all this time we're still finding new things out about this game. Now that we have our four fountains we need to decide how we want them to look. My temptation is to keep them as like the gray stone but I was originally going to do the white marble looking fountain. The problem is because we're using so much of the gray fencing in the background and we'll probably use even more stone kind of gray items. I do think these ones will look the best in this case. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put two fountains right next to the museum, one on either side. And I want these kind of centered between the museum and then the, the cliff, just like that. Just staring at these for a bit, I do think they are in the same position. It is a little bit tough to tell. Uh, it also doesn't help that I think now this cliff is sticking out more than this cliff, uh, but there's an easy way to fix this. We basically should be able to fit two holes between this fountain and the cliff, which I keep screwing up. Okay, there's one and there's two because we can only fit one hole here. So it's pretty much one and a half holes away from the cliff. That's perfect. And noted, if we want to, we can bring this cliff out by one and that'll really keep things symmetrical. Anyway, the idea here is that uh, the other two fountains are going to go out in front of the museum Kind of like this, which I would say creates already a pretty grand entrance. I went ahead and I also had created some extra fencing, probably not enough, but I want to see what it would look like if we had the fence go from the house over there all the way up to the museum, kind of keeping people from playing in and around the fountains. And that is a pretty interesting look, I would say. It definitely feels like though we should and we would put another round of fencing over here and kind of wrap it around. Maybe instead of a house, the fence would kind of connect with a cliff. I could have the cliff kind of come out here a little bit more. And then we'd ask the question, well, what about a path? Could we take this path, extend it, get rid of this river, maybe get rid of a lot more of this cliff over here and it could go straight up through to the secret beach, which we have talked about being like accessible from the museum. And that would look something like this. As I start to fill in this path, things begin to make a little more sense. Uh, we might actually be able to do this. What I can do is I can take the cliff over here and I can bring it right up to this fence. We can create kind of like a natural little point where this fence would connect to it. The path would continue this way. And what I might do is keep a lot of this cliff area over here, but kind of cut out a section in the center. We could even create some waterfalls, like a little water feature and make the secret beach entrance itself look kind of grand and interesting. My primary focus today is the museum, but I'm starting to get really into this plan. I wasn't sure what we were gonna do with the secret beach area, but this might be our answer. So that would mean our cliff does start to kind of come back. For now, we'll just kind of smooth out these corners. I've created a part that kind of juts out a little bit. We can go ahead and fill this part in over here. And that honestly doesn't look too bad to me. We could put some trees up there, maybe the bamboo farm or that bamboo area we were talking about goes up on this area, this, this cliff spot we've made. This is, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what becomes of that. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's the next build we do. I also got rid of a fence here so I could walk between these two things. And now I'm thinking we actually stop the fence right here because it is a little bit annoying not to be able to get in here. If I see like a buried fossil or something, I'm gonna be really annoyed every single time it pops in here. Also, I am trying, but I cannot tuck the fence or the path underneath the staircase here for some reason. I was 100% sure that you could do this, but it's no matter what I do, I might just have the wrong angle but it's not, it's not letting me do it. I, maybe you can. The next DIYs I wanna make use for with this build are the Turkey Day Garden Stands. These also have kind of a stone variant to them and I am going to do that so they match the fountain. I did just notice this balloon drifting overhead and it is a maple leaf umbrella recipe. If I want to, that is something we can place outside. So uh, 
that's pretty cool. But hopefully we get some of those more boring maple leaf recipes out of the way <laughs> so we can start to collect, I don't know, some actual furniture. So I'm only starting with four of these stands. I'm gonna put one right here, one opposite of it right here. I'm actually tempted to put the other one here and I don't know what I'm putting on these yet. I think I need a trophy of some kind, but that is one I can craft not a trophy that we like earn from something. So that's what's, that's what's kind of tricky. I'm also thinking now with these, we move the fountain away from the fence a little bit more. Uh, yeah, that kind of feels better. I know it, the fountain is not centered in here. Uh, how would that look? It's not too bad, but it does draw a little bit of attention to this fountain not being centered with it. But I think actually, no, I don't think that's too bad. Right now, these are all the different DIYs that I can place on top of things. I would say the terrarium could be a good item. Maybe pots because it is a museum. I mean, the decorative plate, the golden decorative plate and the mini golden dharma, I think these would be like ideal types of items if I can get more gold tabletop kind of items. But then we got to get the things to actually craft these. And that's going to be tough. I think this is from helping Gulliver. I, it's, it's hard to remember. And then there's items like this, like the tree's bounty little tree is, is a decent little item to put on top of something. I might do pots for now, or maybe nothing at all for the time being, which I know is a bit boring, but I, I just, I want these empty to remind me to keep going, right? Like we need to keep looking for DIYs. And if I just put something there, that's what's gonna get left there. It's very likely that I come back in and start filling in blanks. It's not very likely that I move stuff, I take stuff down to replace it with other things in the future. <laughs> we, we don't have that much time left. So we leave them empty. That gives them the best chance of being filled, if that makes sense. Over to my left are a couple of gyroids that I've buried. And those could also be really good for those pedestals. Uh, so I'll keep that idea in my back pocket as well because we did decide a while ago that gyroids were something that we could use to decorate with. Uh, but it's the closest non DIY item I'm willing to go, right? Like I'm not using fish and bug models from CJ like and, and flick. So yeah, I, I think we just, we just keep it simple. Gyroids could go up there. We'll, we'll see. But right now I'm grabbing some shrubs. I'm grabbing some shrubs and I'm going to also grab some trees. I've used what, like eight items today or so. I, I've used almost nothing. Uh, <laughs> and, and that kind of stinks, but at the same time, I don't want to clutter this too much with, with stuff. This just feels like a build that needs to be minimalistic in terms of items. But we are going to use some nature. I need to go get some more food so I can scoop up more trees. But I'm going to dig up some more trees, and we're going to put shrubs and trees in this fenced-in area. I think sticking two more trees in there like that kind of makes sense. It does ruin a bit of the symmetry, like things start to look a little bit off kilter. But at the same time, I don't know. It, it makes it also look more dense, and I, I kind of like that. Honestly, anything to find a use for these <laughs> cedar trees, because I have a bunch of them, and I've been so tempted to cut them down, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to find them a good home. What's kind of cool about the shrubs is I can put them in front of the museum, but still walk around them. Which, that's kind of nice. I think they look good in these positions, and they don't obstruct my ability to get in and out of the area. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's all going to look even better when spring rolls around, too. I want to also try adding some pink lilies to the area. You know what's interesting is that this side has been spawning pink lilies. And this side hasn't spawned anything. So the guide I looked up, and which was kind of old, might have been completely wrong about the patterns for how I'm supposed to plant flowers. <sighs> so anyway, I only have four pink lilies right now. But that'll that'll do. I'm, I'm going to have to just add some flowers and items along the way. I've learned to accept that about the builds on this island. They're just going to be like half finished and they're gonna stay that way for a while. The placement of these, honestly, uh, underwhelming. <laughs> I think I need to ditch symmetry as I continue and like just put trees and random stuff in there. Or I could find some more fancy items along the way and, and maybe put those in there. I would love to use statues. This is like a perfect museum entrance for using like fake statues, but that is not an option. Either way, it's looking it's looking okay. I was more encouraged by it when we started. I'm a little bit deflated now because again, I've, you know, run out of items. However, that doesn't mean what we've accomplished today is invalid. We've done some really good work 
and tomorrow we're going to do even more. It's day 21 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we bought some turnips, and then we continued our upsetting trend of unfinished builds on the island. Essentially, we've started designing around the museum, but this build was important because it led us to a clue on what we can do with our next build. It's the 30 day DIY island. I checked this earlier today, and now I'm starting to get a little nervous about what's in store for me <laughs> with turnip prices now. Oh, okay, it's 112. Now, because we don't know what our previous pattern was, I had to put that I don't know, but I know that we paid 105 on Sunday. This morning it was 101, and now we're up to 112. Turnip profit seems to think we have an 88.4% chance of a fluctuating pattern, the alternative being a small spike. So, given that we've already made money, and it's a very high likelihood we're on a fluctuating pattern, which was what we got last time, I think it's best if we just get rid of our turnips now. We'll make a tiny, tiny profit. Yeah, I think it's best to just kind of avoid the embarrassment. Plus, checking turnips every day is kind of exhausting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't enjoy doing it. So, this will be good. We'll make a tiny bit of money. We'll make sure that we secure ourselves with this price, and we're not going to check it anymore. Because if we check it and we realize that, oh, well, in fact, we would have made more money, then we'll feel sad. And I don't want to feel sad. I, I need to feel motivated. It does kind of stink, though. It would have been really cool to have, like, a huge, large spike. At this stage, it's just very unlikely that we're going to be actually, you know, buying turnips again. It's just too late in the game for that, and the risk is already a lot. We've got fluctuating twice in a row. We don't need that kind of stress. So I think going forward, money is just going to be a bit of a grind. I think this looks pretty good for our next staircase, so we'll put this here, and we'll go ahead and pay it off. And now we can go ahead, run around, and start to do our dailies. We'll plant our money tree, pick some mushrooms, manage our fully grown potato farm. I actually think one of these only had two potatoes in it, so I guess I didn't do a very good job watering it, but mostly fully grown potato farm. We'll try and water it properly this time. We'll get our potatoes sold, and they'll be worth 125,000 plus bells. We'll grab our beach DIY, which is gonna be the the rose bed. I believe I already have this. Yep. We'll also find our crafting villager, which I hope is Eric because he's literally the only one home right now. And he's making a fancy lily wreath. I do have lilies, but <laughs> I just don't, this doesn't really do much for me. I found out why everyone's not crafting. Keep practicing, y'all. They certainly need it. All right, let's try another Captain Island. We got the DIY right here on the beach. It's a log, extra long sofa. Well, in that case, while I'm here, I may as well cut down some trees. And I broke my ax, so I guess that's good on tree chopping. <laughs> With all that out of the way, I can finally explain what it is we're doing today. I alluded to it last time, but today we are gonna work on our secret beach. The reason I'm standing here on this path is because the secret beach is just back here. So we're actually going to terraform all around this cliff and create kind of a cool little entryway to the secret beach. We got most of this done early on with the island layout, but we did leave this section, and I did think that we'd probably leave it mostly natural. I would just extend the river a little bit. But with this new plan, it looks like I'm gonna have to kind of change some, some of my original ideas. You see, originally I was thinking of taking the waterfall from here and actually bringing it down and having it connect, a little river, having it connect to the waterfall over here. And then we'd probably do something separate with this waterfall. But even that run I just did from over there to here is a little bit daunting. I'm thinking now we're going to put a pond or something in this area and we'll have a smaller river meet this waterfall over here because that will completely free me up to do whatever I want to do with this spot over here. This new area we're making is going to serve a couple of purposes. It's not only going to be the entrance to our secret beach, but it is also going to be our one and only bamboo farm. I'm not exactly sure how it's all gonna to come together in the end, but uh, you know, we always figure it out. The first thing I'm gonna do is dig a big trench over to where I believe the center of the secret beach is, or I don't know, center-ish to the secret beach. So yeah, pretty much something like this. I'm gonna dig out the middle, and I think what I'm gonna do is actually make this four tiles wide. It is a little bit silly to go from a path that's three tiles wide up to four tiles out of nowhere, and I think three tiles would even center on the secret beach even better. However, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be using a staircase going down here, and that's only two wide, so I just, I have to work with what I got. And now in the center of that aisle I've just created, I'm gonna dig out another path. From here, we'll need to take this road and bring it on over. Now this path is gonna go all the way up to right here. 
and then stop where the staircase starts. And it's obviously going to narrow down to a path that's two tiles wide and brings you to the secret beach. I wanted to do it this way because I thought it would give me a lot of little areas around the path and the ramp and stuff to kind of decorate, and I thought it would look nice. We'll taper off these corners here. And we're already building a staircase today, but once we can, we're gonna put a ramp here. I'm thinking of using that really cheap ramp, the, the dirt looking one that looks really natural. I like that a lot, don't use it a whole, not, a whole lot at all. So we're gonna use that. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this layout. You might be wondering also where the bamboo comes into play here. Well, I'm going to take the bamboo that we have and I'm going to start planting it on the cliffs. This is of course where I wish that I had grabbed even more of these bamboo trees while we were out and about, but uh, we can plant more. Not only do I think these like spawn more bamboo on their own, but we've bought a few rounds of turnips now. I should have some bamboo shoots waiting for me in my mailbox. For the moment though, I'm gonna pick all of these up and we're just gonna start from scratch. I think for this bam build, Sorry. We should probably place these a bit more random. So far I've tried to keep the symmetry on this island, at least, you know, somewhat. And we're at a point now where we gotta start thinking about those areas that just need to be kind of random. And the reason this is important is because it allows me the space to kind of put whatever I want in this bamboo farm. We want room to like chop up these bamboo trees to get more bamboo. But I mean, ultimately this is about getting an island fully decorated and trying to get it five stars. And we're not gonna get it five stars if we, you know, place down just a couple things and walk away from a spot. So I'm gonna check my mailbox and see if I can dig out some bamboo shoots. I'm gonna plant another one here and then we're gonna put a whole bunch on the other side. Daisy May did send me three bamboo shoots. I've bought more than one round of turnips, but I only got these three bamboo shoots. So that is a bit disappointing. I thought we'd have a lot more. But that's okay, I will plant a couple over here, we'll plant the last one over there, and I don't know, at some point I guess I'll visit a few more Nook Miles ticket islands and see if we can get ourselves, like, some more? I swear this whole challenge is just me constantly out of items. Alright, well one problem at a time, let's start looking at some of the crafting recipes we're going to use over here. One of the items I've definitely wanted to find a place for was the giant vine, and we finally have enough, we can craft almost two of these. This build definitely feels like the right place for it, so I went ahead and made one. I'm also gonna make a couple of vine benches. Now, I thought about customizing these items, but I've decided against it, mostly because the bamboo is gonna be green, and once we're back in spring, which is when I wanna like finish the island, that's the season I wanna finish the island in the spring, the grass will be green. And so these lush green vines will make a little more sense. So we're gonna keep them green. I'm gonna put one of the vine benches up here, just kind of nearby, making it look like this, this vine is kind of like, you know, <laughs> starting to spread a little bit. And we're gonna put one of them down here. I only have two right now because I ran out of vines. We can maybe solve that problem later, but uh, I do love this idea that the vines are just kind of like sprouting off of the big vine. I wonder if I did that, would that look better? Actually, you know what? I kind of like that. I think it's, I think that having that different orientation there, kind of cool. So yeah, vines, bamboo, and then we could possibly put some mushroom items up there too once we get a few more. Oh yeah, this is gonna look awesome. I think I've underestimated how many of these bamboo items I'm intending on using because <laughs> uh, I've started crafting these bamboo partitions and I've realized that I want a lot more of them than I can afford at the moment. But the idea is that I'm going to actually line the sides of this path with these bamboo partitions. Just just six of them in total is what I need. I have three. So we'll, we'll get it figured out. But yeah, I'm moving them over right now. And yeah, I'm thinking we can fit another one right here. Kind of like that, except I don't like how it's kind of poking out beyond the cliff. So I need to shove them over one more space. I think that looks pretty cool. I, I like that a lot. And having another one here will kind of start to close off this wide path a little bit more. It might start to feel like it's three tiles wide again. Which is, uh, which is neat. It'll kind of transition nicely. I made a bunch of other stuff too. So I have a deer scare and I think I'm gonna put it like right here on the corner, just as a, a little welcome, you know, welcome to the, the area. It also kind of hides that harsh looking corner, which I like. With that in mind, I think another deer scare, which I do have, goes maybe up here somewhere. It's a good little knickknack. Kind of, it kind of fits in nicely. It'll be subtle up there too. As you kind of walk by, you may catch a glimpse of it. While I'm up here, I may as well start chopping away at the bamboo again. I did just say I was out, so <laughs> let's start remedying that problem. I'm finally seeing my first balloon of the day. 
You would think working outside so long I would have found more, but I think they were just flying on different parts of the island. Let's see what this is. Probably just some supplies. Oh, it's the colored leaves flooring. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. We managed to craft two more partitions with the extra bamboo. And yeah, I'm really liking this as a concept <laughs> for a walkway. This is cool. It also keeps people... Oh, well, I thought it kept people out of here. People are going to cause all kinds of problems up here if we don't do something about that. I'm thinking I'll just let it happen. Uh, but I did make a couple of bamboo stop blocks. I usually don't use these in, in random situations like this. But I was kind of thinking just having them poke out in a couple of random areas might look good. Like, hear me out. What if you just kind of put this random mix of items like that? <laughs> I don't know. Something about that looks nice. Additionally, I made another couple of terrariums, which are one of my favorite DIY items. And yeah, I'm going to put these randomly as well in just a couple spots of so one here. And I have no idea how much bamboo we're going to get on this side or where it's going to go, but I'll put the other one over here. I'll even put a stone stool under it. I also thought a bird bath could look nice up here as well. Uh, and, and maybe just a nice present for some birds. But uh, yeah. I, I think that's kind of cool, especially once there's a bamboo stock right here and maybe a couple more little items here and there. I went and stole a coconut tree that I had on one of my beaches. And uh, yeah, that's just, I think, a nice touch. When we're doing such like a tropical looking entrance, I thought maybe this time we don't put a bunch of garbage on the secret beach for red. We, we actually make it nice and welcoming. Another great item to scatter around would be the log stakes. So I've gone ahead and customized a few of these. And, uh, well, they don't look great up here. Okay, I'll admit, when it comes to log stakes next to bamboo, I'm not really into it. But uh, maybe we can put them kind of near other items like this. Kind of makes it look like there was something else here at one point before bamboo overtook the area. So, I don't know. That we can we can do it that way. I mostly wanted them for the beach itself, though. I think having them kind of in this arrangement looks looks good. It looks like a whole bunch of little trees were here at one point and they got cut down. I threw my last set of them right there. Now there's a lot more to do, but until we get more bamboo, I can't really make more bamboo items. But we do have some other things we should probably get to today. I've been talking for a bit about how we need these waterfalls to have like more water behind them, and I think we should worry about that now. So one of the things I was tempted to do was put a staircase right here. And that would make sure we had a little path connecting right here, which would be great, but we don't really need it. We're already, you know, designating a lot of spots for staircases. And if I do that, I can't really put more water here, which is what I want. So I'm actually thinking this entire area can be dedicated to some kind of pond that meets this waterfall and then kind of fuels it in a hopefully natural looking way. So if that's what we're doing, I think it's time we kind of alter this area a little bit. So let me just go ahead and build it up. I think even something simple like this works for our purposes. We can put a little item here and then we have plenty of room for water up top. The shape of this awkward little pond is kind of a big question mark to me. Uh, I, it's, it's gonna look very interesting. I don't want any waterfalls here. So we need to just kind of have it wrap around to here. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'll stop everything for this. It is just a cool dining table. Nothing to see here. I think we'll start with just getting the waterfall itself connected to this little pond we've made. And I think that looks okay. And then we can come over here and maybe taper off these corners a little bit. And this right here could be the finished product that we're looking at. It's, it's a bit odd, especially right up here. I think part of the reason for that is because of the way we did the cliff down here. I don't have a lot of room without making a waterfall to like expand this. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit better. So we could probably put a couple shrubs or flowers up here. I'm thinking we could put like a bench right here. And I mean, why wait, right? We could just go ahead and start doing that now. We can get a little bench kind of make this, makes this whole area feel like more like a park place you want to hang out. I also made another signpost. I thought since we had all this space next to this new pond on the corner, it could go right there. And uh, you th this is a good intersection for it. There are a lot of different areas you can go. We'll start to put down some shrubs. Suddenly with a few shrubs and some flowers, which still need to bloom and a couple of items, at least this one corner of the island is starting to feel complete. But the next thing we need to worry about is this waterfall here, which is a problem. Now, my temptation, is to make just a big pond and put it right here and call it done. But as you can see, there's a lot of space behind me and we need to decorate an entire island. So what I could do instead is take this, make it a river again, stretch it up, turn around over here, and then we put like a nice big pond over here. That would take up a lot of room, which is kind of what I needed to do. And it would look more natural. And then this waterfall would have, you know, 
water to fall out of it. I'm starting to map this out a little bit, and what I need to keep in mind is that if we do this kind of diagonal river, it does allow me to take a little bridge and put it over that river. And the purpose of that would be because my house is right here. So the idea is a path would go up and then meet that bridge. And so I would have like quick access to this section of the island without having to go down and up a bunch of ramps. So my point in bringing that up in the first place is just to uh, <laughs> remind myself that I might need to redo this at some point if and when I decide to put a bridge here and it needs the room. And if at this point you're wondering, yes, I do regret making an island that I actually terraform. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think this challenge would have been easier if I had decided to make it a rule that terraforming was not allowed. Uh, but it's okay. I'm, I'm not really regretting it. I think what we're creating is really, really cool. <sighs> it's just sometimes I think about it and I think, man, if I didn't have to use these tools and I had to work around what was given to me, that would have been really interesting and probably easier because <laughs> now I'm rebuilding a river. And I mean, where I'm digging water tiles, I'm probably putting water back where it used to be. Honestly, not not in this pattern, of course, but a eh, good amount of river I got rid of over here just to just to make this work. But anyway, I'm going to make this pond like ridiculously big. Definitely not the size of a default Animal Crossing pond. So if a fish is somewhere in the middle of it, I'm going to have a problem with that. But I don't care because I'm not going to be fishing over here. I'm going to be just, you know, <laughs> decorating around it and then not thinking about it too hard. So I'm trying to make it look natural. And I think this is probably the shape that we're looking at. We just gonna kind of now dig it all out. And I'm almost done digging this out. And if you're wondering how I'm gonna make it look natural, essentially what I like to do is do like that rough outline like you saw with just the little blocks of water dug out. Take out the middle and then start to just smooth out the corners everywhere where there are sharp corners. We'll definitely keep modifying and tweaking from there, but uh, yeah, that's the general idea. Okay, so all of this is dug out and we now officially have a pond that leads into a river that fuels a raging waterfall. All right, and now, as I said, I will just come through and just kind of chip away at these sharp corners. Uh, see, and then sometimes add pieces by accident. But we'll chip away at the sharp corners and we'll try and make this look somewhat natural. And you can kind of see while we're on this side, the work I've done over there, it does look, ignoring all these little jagged parts here, if you look across the river, it does look like it's pretty natural, you know? it's. It's, it's kind of diagonal, but it's not all one straight uh, diagonal line, if that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, if I just take these away, it should look, I'd say, pretty decent. Taking a look on the map, it definitely does look like a pond that kind of morphed into a waterfall. And uh, it is strange, right, to have like perfectly straight canals and then natural looking water sources on, on top. But I like it. <laughs> I don't know. This is just kind of how I do things sometimes. I like it. And there's plenty of room around this to put different decorations. But I would also think that this would be a good spot for maybe a couple more of those bamboo items. I don't know. Definitely some more shrubs, which I'm almost out of now. And uh, yeah, just, just a lot of little touches over here for sure. Of course, I'm still left with this big empty open area as well. I'm not sure what'll go here, but definitely probably some items of some kind, maybe some kind of like outdoor eating area. So we'll put some tables and chairs and maybe we finally unlock cooking at some point. So we'll get some like different cooking recipes like and place down the food items. So it looks like just a big gathering outside the museum. Let's see what this is. <laughs> it's a kitchen stove. I can't use this, but that's, you know, I'm always looking for a sign, right? And that does feel like a sign, maybe. Maybe it's time to unlock cooking soon. It's day 22 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we did some terraforming and decorating around our secret beach entrance. We also began waterscaping around some other areas and kind of naturalized the island even more. It's the 30 day DIY. As our deadline looms closer, things are getting interesting. I have today pretty well planned out. First, we're gonna go ahead and do all of our daily chores. I'm gonna pick these potatoes, we're gonna sell them, we're gonna run around, grab some things, all that fun stuff. And then from there, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We are going to do a rapid succession gathering of DIYs. I think this will be the third time we've kind of done something like this, but this time we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently. My plan here is to time travel forward a couple times a day and get as many DIYs as possible, but this time we're not gonna worry about 
anything else. We're not going to worry about picking and watering potatoes. We're not going to worry about money trees or money rocks or anything like that. It is literally going to be a speed run of how many DIYs we can get in a certain amount of time. We're going to do that for a while and then we are going to time travel backwards. Yes, it is finally time we leave the fall season uh, ahead of us <laughs> and we are going to go backwards in time to cherry blossom season. But all of this information isn't fair. You guys are starting a little bit behind. Let me show you something. After I got done recording yesterday, I did jump ahead and start to try and gather some extra DIYs. And then I stopped and started to hunt for balloons. I basically stood in one spot and these, what you're seeing right now, were the spoils of all of that effort. And then of course I was left with a duplicate DIY by the end of it, which was so frustrating. I spent hours looking for DIYs and these new ones you see here is, are basically everything I ended up with. And while I love all those recipes, standing in one spot for a couple of hours and trying to get balloons and all that fun stuff is just not gonna be an efficient way to get this done. So we're gonna try rapid fire, time skipping again, and we're gonna grab the, you know, beach DIY. And we'll grab a couple DIYs from crafting villagers. We'll hope that both of those DIYs are new. In this case, one of them is not. Oh, excuse me, I guess Golden Dishes is new. We'll collect these new DIYs for a while and we'll do it all over again and again and again until I can't see straight anymore. And then I would like to see if we can't address some of the more sparse areas on these builds we've created recently. I think we're doing such a good job at laying out the island itself, but as you can see, filling things in is a bit of a challenge. And not only do we need to fill in the empty gaps, but we also need to start thinking about patterns we can create on the island, which will require a lot of supplies and a lot of repetitive items. For example, a DIY I would very much like to get my hands on soon is the tall lantern. I plan on using this DIY as the primary street light for the, basically the entire island. But of course, going to cherry blossom season also opens us up to possibly getting the cherry blossom lantern or whatever that thing's called. Also, another fantastic DIY street light. We have some pretty wide paths here on GWiz, so those types of items which can create really nice patterns would be fantastic. Before we go though, let's see if this balloon can kind of make up for things. Vivid tights, yeah, thought so. So anyway, that's the plan. We wanna collect what we can from today, then we wanna time travel a bunch to get a bunch of DIYs, and then, once we get back to spring, we are going to take it easy and try to edit some of our already built things around the island. Anyway, now that I've over explained that concept, let me sell the last of these potatoes. Grab the last big Nook Miles bonus I can get for a bit. Ugh, I accidentally bury 99,000 bells. Find a money rock through the pain. Plop down a new staircase that I now can't afford. Fight back tears and donate some money. Hope that these Nook Mile points cheer me up. They didn't. And I guess start time traveling to different days. I will find out if this tree produces as many bells <laughs> as I hope it will, but oftentimes I think the 99,000 bell strategy is one that doesn't always pay off, but I've never tried it before. So this will be a, a fun experiment I've now been forced into. One last red maple leaf for the road. How about that? Oh, I'm sorry. I do want to do at least one cat and island today as well. Oh, and I'm so glad we did because sugarcane, we found sugarcane, our second crop ever. And the recipe we're getting here is a money floor. Okay, <laughs> all right. I don't know when I'll be able to afford something like this, but fine. This island also has roses, which I'd love to take with me, but after I grab all this stuff, I'm not sure I'll have room. Side note, I don't think I've ever seen three tiny little fish grouped up together like this before. It looks like for me, it was a new fish, it was a bitterling. And I've now caught 40 different types of fish, which is some points for me. And that was a great island, but also a bit distracting because <laughs> I now want to give these crops over to Eric. I'm excited about this because I was just talking about how some of the builds we have are kind of feeling incomplete. And this was one of the exact things I've been waiting on to try and complete Eric's farm, you know, actual crops. So now we have him growing some sugar cane. I'm gonna leave it mostly unharvested because I don't really have time to water these every day and worry about that. We will worry about getting this to be more full in the future. I'll definitely take another balloon though. <sighs> do you see? Do you see what I'm going through with these balloons? <laughs> it doesn't, it's never a recipe and I don't know why I bother. Okay, now we can time travel. Let's start by going forward just one day. And it looks like the day I chose was accidentally Turkey Day itself. Because it's a holiday, I don't even think I'm going to bother trying to find a villager who's crafting. We're just gonna get the beach DIY and leave. And that DIY is a palm tree lamp. This is actually a really, really good one. I talked earlier about tall street lights. This this is pretty much that, only it's shaped like a palm tree. Such a good recipe, I completely forgot it exists. Next, we have an orange end table and an apple umbrella. So two fruit recipes in a row. I honestly don't know if I'll ever get oranges. So I don't know, maybe we just have the umbrella. And same day, later time, we're getting a boomerang as another DIY, another indoor only item, but that's okay. Just one quick detour as I destroy some money trees so I can go ahead and pay off that staircase we got earlier. There we go. Mary is crafting stacked magazines. If we can find magazines for sale in Nooks, that means we can actually craft that one. 
Uh, we just can't decorate with single magazines. It has to be crafted now into the stacks of magazines. Anyway, this DIY is an apple chair. We'll skip again, but so far, hey, we're getting a lot of new recipes. Eric is making a music stand, and this is great because we now have a music stand and a couple of instruments that we are able to craft too. I shouldn't do it, but because it's starting to snow and because I am kind of like out of money right now, I am gonna harvest these potatoes because I don't have to water them and uh, you know, they'll grow back big and strong. Our beach DIY is the hedge standy. That's a great recipe. Anyway, now it's time to see if this tree is gonna completely scam us. <gasps> no way, it worked. 300,000 bells, are you serious? I'm gonna cut it down for good luck. And this one too. And with the sale of these potatoes, we are up to 401,000 bells. So while we're taking detours, we might as well buy ourselves another staircase. Wendy's crafting a cherry rug, and somehow that represents my 200th DIY. <laughs> so I'll take the 3,000 points. It does not feel like I have 200 items to choose from for this challenge. Anyway, before we skip ahead, I'm going to also grab the sugar cane. We'll be selling it. But uh, again, good opportunity for us to just get some free watering done. And Stinky is crafting a pear umbrella, which we already know. And honestly, can this please be the last fruit recipe? Because there's so many of these I cannot craft. Our beach DIY is a cherry umbrella. So I guess that's a no on the last fruit recipes. And Stinky's crafting a pear wall. I don't have pears though. But you know what? That's all right, because on this particular day, we have a campsite villager. And as you know, I am looking for a very specific villager. Ugh, this again. I don't like Lily. Give it a rest, we're over this. Yeah, we get it, we need a frog, whatever. I'm not sure why you're so excited. There's not gonna be anyone in there who anyone cares. About. Guys, I don't know, I, I think I'm done with this, I'm out. Oh, you don't have to leave. Yeah, hey, hey, it's gonna be okay. No, listen, I've been thinking about this for a while. My, my things are packed. I'm, I'm out. No, you can't go. Yeah, rent here is expensive. Who's gonna help us? <sighs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's not the same since Poppy. Wait, don't go. This is the worst day of my life. I hate it here. I hate everything about this. We're doomed. Doomed. Oh, there he goes. He's going inside. Shut up. No one cares. It's Igly. I thought Igly was pretty cute, but Igly is actually ranked 248 on the list. So, uh, yeah, no, Igly, you could just enjoy your stay, buddy. Well, that's all right, because I got myself another treat to cheer us all up. We're going to be putting our ramp right here. And I believe this is the very last ramp we'll ever need. And what's great is we have enough money to pay it off right now. And while I'm on this side of the island, I have really good news. Bamboo shoots are now starting to spawn around our bamboo trees, which is very, very great because we ran out of bamboo a while ago and I don't know when or if we'll ever get more, but I have a lot more bamboo I actually want to plant. I'm taking a lot more detours than I originally thought I would take, but this feels worth it. And it's now evening of that very same day, and I'm really glad we time traveled like this because it's snowing again. It was not snowing earlier, and now our crops are gonna get a full dose of water, which is great, because I was not gonna water them myself today. And Angus is crafting the golden decorative plate. Now this I do know I have already. We got our beach DIY. It is a windflower crown, so uh, <laughs> I guess it counts as a hat for us, but I don't have windflowers. I don't like the windflower crown. It's completely useless. And Harry is crafting a tiki torch, something I got like on day one. So again, <laughs> pretty useless. Tosh is giving me the wooden music box recipe, which is a pretty nice one. I have access to a few musical devices now. I should really start putting songs around the island. Anyway, on to the next day. Our beach DIY is the tension pole rack. I don't remember what this is. And Mary is crafting a green grass skirt. I don't think you understand how long I've been waiting for this recipe. I can wear pants now. There are a number of DIYs that let you, you know, wear something on, on your bottom half. But uh, the green grass skirt is one I've been waiting on a very, very long time because it kind of matches this whole <laughs> vibe of me just kind of wearing various leaves and garbage that I find. So this is my outfit complete. And Eric is coming to visit. This is also my very first villager visiting my house. So will he give me some fruit that I don't already have? I brought you some snacks. It's an apple. I guess that's what I get for putting apple trees all across his property. All right, Eric, get out. So now that I have the green grass skirt, now I'm ready to move on to spring. Oh, also Leaf is here and I could maybe get the hedge recipe from him if I buy some stuff. He didn't give it to me this time, but I think I just need to purchase one more round of something from him next time he visits and I'll get it. Now, before we head to spring, there is one more purchase I would like to make, and that is a bridge to go across this little river we've made here. The idea is that I'll be able to walk from my house, which is right here, and easily get 
to like the museum area without going around this whole pond situation. I might have to do a little bit of terraforming, but let's try and put it like right here. It seems to be okay with the land being kind of jagged. And yeah, it looks perfect. I wanted the suspension bridge because I feel like it kind of fits the vibe of this area. And I had just enough money to pay it off right now. I know time traveling backwards kind of messes things up, so I am gonna go ahead one more day and we'll wrap up our time in fall before we go over to spring. I would just like to see the bridge finish before we go to spring, you know? And there's our finished bridge. Oh, it looks really good. I love it when the bridges are like longer like this. This is pretty cool. Wendy is crafting a foxtail, which is just a cute little item that you can kind of hold and walk around with. Maybe you could place it on the ground, it would look kind of cool, but I don't know. Our beach DIY is a green grass skirt. <laughs> Two of those on the same day. I honestly can't believe it. So since we're not skipping ahead any more days, I'm going to just allow myself one more Captain Island while we're here. Without even trying, we've accumulated a lot of miles, so might as well. This one has vines and all kinds of tropical things like that. Let's see what the DIY is. It's a ruined seat. Oh, this is a cool one. I do want to save the vines for more vine benches, but the ruined seat will probably require these as well. It just, it looks too nice not to use. I did clean out that island and I ended up with nine vines. 16 glowing moss, which isn't bad, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. That was great. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about fall. Let's go ahead and roll the clock back and hit up cherry blossom season. I put in the wrong date. This is not cherry blossom season, but I mean, <laughs> I might as well grab some more DIYs. We got the mum cushion, which we actually already know, thankfully. It's a great item. And Mary is crafting cherry speakers, which I got like ages ago. So yeah, this was a complete waste of time. This is arguably the best season in the entire game. I'm now pre-programmed to just look for DIYs, so let's see what our beach DIY is. It's the money floor, which I also got today for the first time. We'll look for the crafting villager, but the cool thing about cherry blossom season, other than just how amazing the island looks, is that we will now get balloons flying overhead that have cherry blossom recipes in them. Wendy is making a windflower wreath. So now I got the crown and the wreath today, <laughs> both things I will not be crafting. And we also came back to another campsite villager so yet another chance at finding Lily. Oh yeah, just go in the tent. There's like no one here. No one cares anymore. They all left. I'm alone and I can't afford to rent. I'm about to be out on the street. So yeah, thanks. I hope you find Lily, I guess. It's Kabuki. Okay. I don't know guys, Kabuki is at number 54 in the rankings. That's not far off and Kabuki's gone up in the rankings since the last time they were tallied. So it is very tempting to try and invite him to the island right now. It just kind of depends on how long he kind of fights me on this. And then also who he wants to kick out of the island. He is offering to play a game for living on the island. I'm probably going to lose. It's just a 50-50 shot though. I'm going to choose red. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. All right, here's our second game. 50-50 shot, I'm gonna choose red again, and it's black. I'm getting so annoyed. <laughs> and this is now my third card game, where if I win, he'll move here. And now, of course, he's broken it up to make it almost impossible. I'm just gonna choose diamond. <gasps> it worked! It looks like he's prepared to kick out Tasha. As a reminder, Tasha is currently 279 on the list, so yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good trade. And there we go. <laughs> We've got a campsite villager to move in. Now everyone just needs to spend their votes on Animal Crossing Portal on Kabuki. We'd be cutting it really, really close. In fact, I don't even know, I'm not good at math. We, we might not make it, but in eight days, Animal Crossing Portal will update. And if you haven't spent your votes on all the villagers I've asked you to spend your votes on previously, and you feel like spending your votes on Kabuki, there's a chance we could just squeak that out. The goal is to have three villagers in the top 50. We currently have two. So if we can get Kabuki in the top 50 by the time that resets, will be golden. I do think there will be other chances though to get different villagers, so I'm not too worried about it, but it is kind of a concern. We're getting very, very close to the end and that third top 50 villager is gonna be tough. So now that we gathered up a bunch of recipes and we're in spring, the, the season we originally wanted to be in at the start of all this today, What's next? Well, I need to manage my inventory a little bit because we're gonna do some crafting and I just got all these trees that I need to find new temporary or permanent homes for. I have a fish that I need to donate, a flower I should plant somewhere, and I also have a ton of fossils in storage that I can have identified, donated, and then sold which will uh, help our money situation a bit too. Once I finish all that though, we can take inventory and see what we need to do to get some of these areas, again, that are a bit more sparse, kind of filled in more. Lathers will take the fish and then only three fossils. So I guess we're gonna make a lot of money. A potential permanent home for some of these trees is gonna be right here on this cliff edge. I have some spaces like this that I currently have no plans for in terms of decorating. These are the spots on the island that I kind of want to have remain 
just natural looking. When it comes to island design, I really like spots like this because you can still decorate around them. If you just have some random recipes, you can just kind of scatter them in the trees and they look pretty nice. And I have a feeling that's one of the last things we'll be doing as we look to wrap up this island. We'll be looking for little spots like this, opportunities to just kind of dump a bunch of random items. So I'll be looking at spots like this first when trying to fill things out. Another one of these spaces is right here, kind of behind the bamboo farm. And I think this could eventually actually end up being bamboo, but I don't really have a lot of extra right now. So it's gonna be trees. 43,000 for all those fossils and various junk we had. So on to the crafting. After all that time, these are just some of the recipes that we ended up with. They might be all of them, but I've been in here a couple times and sometimes once you see them, they go away. <laughs> they find their permanent home in the menus, but I'm thinking we're just gonna make like a handful of things. I was really hoping for more items that I could use repetitively. I think the ruined seat is one of those items. It's gonna take three stone and three vines for each one. I could probably use a few of those. I also think it'd be fun to set up the music stand with a couple instruments and create like a little band area. And in terms of repetitive items, I do feel like I can make a number of these and put them kind of maybe around where our bamboo is, kind of by the secret beach. I. I don't know, we just, we do need to kind of spam certain items at this point, and this could be one of them. I will go ahead and make one of these right now, because we know we need one more anyway. I'll go ahead and put this partition right here. We'll move it in a little bit, and that will complete our nice little walkway we were trying to create before. I made some ruined seats, so let's go ahead and customize these. I'm thinking of using this variation because it has the green vines on it, and we are kind of keeping our vines green. And I did make all the musical items. I don't know where I want to put these or how I even want to customize them. Maybe let's figure out where they're going to go first and I'll come back to these. I'm taking away my stone seats and I'm replacing them with the ruined seats. I think that means the stone stools should probably be scattered somewhere in here next to these fountains. For now, I'm just going to kind of leave them as a reminder. But yeah, we definitely want to put some stuff on these. For some context, my focus right now with my decorating is on the top half of the island. We've definitely spent the most time decorating here so far and it feels really close to being done. And so that's why I'm trying to just find places up here to kind of put some of these items. Ooh, could this be our first cherry blossom DIY? It is a climbing wall, which I can't use. So <laughs> now I'm disappointed. So I do think one area to consider for these musical items could be between some of the houses up here. So I don't know how I'm gonna customize these yet, but for example, we can put the log bench back there and I can put the ukulele on top of it. We can put the acoustic guitar kind of nearby, maybe not right there, but perhaps right there. The music stand could be turned like that. And I also made a donation box because I thought it'd be kind of funny to imply that whoever's playing instruments is looking for donations, but this isn't <laughs> quite enough room. This might not be the best place for this, but listen, I'm gonna leave it for now. This is still like a good strategy just for getting items on the island itself. Since we have placed so many items since I last checked, I do wanna check again and see where our star rating's at. And we have reached four stars. <laughs> Isabel is suggesting I put down more furniture, of course, which is great. So that means in terms of like nature and stuff, we're doing good. We're not being asked to put down flowers or trees. I'm hoping I can cut some of the trees down. So all in all, I would say this day has been huge. I honestly thought I was going to do more decorating, but I just didn't have the time. It's day 23 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we invited Kabuki to live on the island. We traveled to Cherry Blossom Season. We did some more work around our secret beach entrance, and we found out that our island has now hit four stars. It's the 30 day DIY island. Kicking off today with an outdoor picnic set recipe is not something I was expecting and exactly what I need. Unfortunately, Isabel also mentioned she was finding eggs everywhere. So I think we're kind of into bunny day territory, which yeah, here we are. I was not anticipating this. This is gonna make collecting recipes interesting because I'll tell you right now, I have no bunny day plans for this island. But this picnic set on the other hand only takes 10 cherry blossom petals and is the perfect item for this section of the island right here. It was actually suggested to me from a comment that this could be a picnic area and I did love that idea. So we can do like maybe two of those and place all kinds of fun picnic-y things right about here. We'll leave a little bit of room for the path from the bridge to this path here. However, today my main focus is around my house. What I'd like to do is add my second staircase and ultimately start decorating around the house just as I would anywhere else. We need to reduce the footprint of this farm just a little tiny bit. I do like having all these potatoes, but they are taking up quite a bit of room. You also may have noticed this weird bit of cliff just kind of jutting out for no reason. This was kind of a note to myself to extend the cliff behind my house to about here. So we're going to finish that project today, and then we are going to make a path from my house 
up to this bridge as I discussed earlier. So that's going to give us kind of like a natural way to get up to this area, to our new picnic area. Basically this entire uh, part of the island is going to be, you know, really under construction today. And you know this is the right section to work on because the money tree is here and that means part of my dailies are already done. It's like the game wants me to focus all of my time up in these hills today. Side note, I love how the baby trees immediately turn into cherry blossom trees. <laughs> I'm gonna put this here for now, but since we're doing so much work over here, we'll probably end up moving all of these trees out of our way, but uh, I'm just in a hurry to get started. So as I begin my dailies, I'm going to <laughs> ruin my chances at getting some cherry blossom petals. I need, if I want two picnic sets, I'm gonna need 20 of those and I gotta find a bunch of recipes and everything anyway, so we'll try and catch those along the way. It's like he knows he's not welcome here. Look at him, look at him, just sitting by the beach, hoping to get picked up by some random tourist who's on like a little rowboat or something. Watch, watch, he's gonna pretend to be all happy. Oh, everything's fine. Yep, I love it here and I love your island and I wanna, no, you don't fool me, Zipper. Nobody likes you, you don't like it here. Because you know I'm doing a DIY island and I'm not including a single one of your DIYs, you creep. I'm already getting a balloon though. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. Is it a bunny day balloon? Please don't be a bunny day balloon. It's a bunny day balloon. Oh, cool, an egg. And it broke my slingshot? That's what's gonna break my slingshot? A stupid egg? This is war. Is Stinky thinking of moving? Could this be my chance to get another top 50 villager? Oh yeah, this is definitely setting me up for disappointment. On the fence about whether I should leave the island. Stinky, you're supposed to be the information center of what people are gonna feel so lost when they get here. Eh, you know what, good luck. I know that Nook Miles have not been something I've been able to keep my hands on for very long, but hey, I am more than happy to have a villager hunt on my hands because I am genuinely concerned about the three top 50 villager goal we've set for ourselves. We're on the cusp of getting that done, but <laughs> it's it, we're cutting it close. I dyed my net pink for good luck. It's not working. I can't catch any of these cherry blossoms. I'm so bad at this. Today's villager crafting recipe is the giant teddy bear. This is probably the third time I've gotten this recipe now, so uh, already having a, a great time <laughs> with accumulating more DIYs. Uh, the sad irony of getting DIYs I do not care about. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're just going to ignore it. We're just going to ignore Bunny Day and all of the stress and pain that comes with it. And then my other regular DIY I got today is the wooden music box, which I got, I think, yesterday. So, <laughs> yep. Yep, not not my day so far. And I know that I have a pending villager hunt, but I am gonna buy a couple of new DIYs from here today because I have a feeling pretty soon I'm gonna want some recipes like this to fall back on. If we're gonna be using stone in some recipes, I do need to be doing a better job at hitting rocks, of course. Being that we're around bunny day, I'm gonna be getting eggs as well. We're gonna need to do some traveling during that villager hunt as well or I'm sorry, not traveling, collecting as we travel through our villager hunt so that we can get some rocks and just some things we're gonna lack here soon. Ugh. <laughs> when I tell you I'm bad at catching cherry blossoms, I'm not, it's not put on, I'm serious. I've still only caught one this entire time. I'm almost done with all the dailies and I'm about to start building. I've caught one stupid cherry blossom and I, I really think that this dream of having two picnic areas, look at this. It, it's going to be harder to do this than to finish this island on time. That's what I'm predicting now. As I run around though, trying desperately to catch cherry blossoms, I will say, I love the flow of this island in terms of just the paths. Everything is laid out so nicely. It's so easy to navigate this island. The paths are nice and big. Everything kind of connects together. The only like last point we have to connect is this area behind my house. And we're gonna do that today. So yeah, this is about to just feel so good to kind of do laps around. Okay, this above he my head camera angle might be better for catching cherry blossoms. Uh, I, I just kind of turned it this way and I've started to run around. And yeah, that was a lot easier. I've become very fixated on this goal. <laughs> and this is not even the premise of, of my whole day. My day is supposed to revolve around my house, but now it's just, I'm on this mission, this mission of redemption. I need to prove to myself and the world that I can indeed catch cherry blossom petals. All day, every day. All right, well, we'll worry about the cherry blossoms later. Let's hit up a Caton Island. And it is an island that features crops, but those crops are potatoes. <laughs> so, uh, 
Is that a win? I don't know. What's the recipe? A scarecrow. Oh, this is fantastic. I love this because a scarecrow is like the perfect item for the build I'm trying to do today, which is basically a farm. I'm trying to turn my place into another farm and I want to use the scarecrow there. I also want to use the scarecrow on Eric's farm as well. I think just scarecrows everywhere. Just a great item to kind of spam around with so many farms on my island. It's incredibly frustrating that there are eggs coming out of this rock while I'm on like a remote island. <laughs> and and mostly eggs, mind you. It's like not even, not even stone. I'm here for stone and I'm here for recipes. I'm not really here for much else. I guess I could pick the potatoes and sell them. What a miscalculation. What a terrible idea it was to bring myself to cherry blossom season thinking that, oh, maybe I'll get some cherry blossom DIYs and then immediately we're hit with bunny day. At least the eggs are teaching me DIYs. Listen, it's like I always say, uh, those who expect a perfect plan uh, are dumb. And that's not me. I'm no dummy. So I expected this. I expected things to go horribly wrong. They did. I'm not disappointed and everything's fine. Do I desperately need stone for the projects I'm trying to do? Yeah. Am I completely enraged at how many rocks don't seem to have stone in them? Yeah. Am I gonna let that stop me though? No. S sorta, maybe. No, no, it's not gonna stop me. All we need to do is release a little bit of tension by chopping down these trees, which are also gonna drop eggs instead of wood, and then head back home and build our farm. Let's look on the bright side though, because I'm refusing to use bunny day DIYs in this project because I just hate them so much, I'm gonna be able to sell all the eggs for a nice little profit. So there. It's actually good that I'm doing this. All right, let's get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is harvest these potatoes. I'm not going to water them yet because as I said, I think I need to make these farms a little bit smaller, but I'm not sure by how much yet. So I'm just gonna, you know, take it easy. We'll harvest them, we'll sell them. We'll feel really good about the money we have. And uh, then I think with that money, we'll go ahead and buy our second staircase. And with our second staircase in front of the house purchased, I can now focus on the terraforming. I think I might actually spend some time reducing the size of these farm plots before doing the terraforming because part of this terraforming project is going to kind of depend on how wide the cliffs are, as weird as that sounds. It's just that I kind of want the cliffs to be the same width as like the potato field. And uh, you know, just again, it's all about symmetry. So I am thinking of reducing this quite a bit. At first I was just gonna get rid of the row of potatoes at the top and the bottom and that would just leave me a little more room to decorate at the top and the bottom. But now I'm also thinking about getting rid of the potatoes on the edges as well, which will just leave kind of like this three wide big row of potatoes in the middle. And that would leave me room to decorate around both sides of this path and then even put some decorations right out here. I'm not sure what, but it kind of feels like I need the space. But of course that would really screw up the profits that I'm making and I don't want to mess that up too much. Now I am going to replant some of these potatoes over at Eric's farm because he's lacking crops anyway and he's got a couple more empty spots where we could put a couple different things. So I think one of those things for now could be potatoes unless we suddenly find two different types of crops. I'm kind of doubting we'll do that. So it could be potatoes over uh, there and then that will help uh, you know, not completely kill the profits I'm making from these because there'll still be a place to go harvest them. And we have so many potato plants <laughs> that I think I'll just put them on this plot here, this nice big one. Essentially, Eric's farm is my farm. So going in and watering these for him and then, you know, picking them up and selling the spoils, hey, that's something I can do. That means I'm just gonna have four potato plants left over and I'll just sell them, no big deal. While I'm at it, I may as well steal some, some uh, <laughs> sugar cane and sell these as well. Oh, and just in case you didn't watch yesterday or you weren't paying attention, that was Tasha's plot up there and it is now going to belong to Kabuki. Of course, before we can edit our cliffs, we need to edit our trees. Now, Eric has the apple trees and a little tiny apple orchard kind of behind his house. He's all set with apples. I think I'm gonna be the peach person. I'll have peach trees on my farm. So obviously that means we can get rid of the excess apple trees. While I'm at it, I'm also going to get rid of the excess hardwood trees because as you know, I have a ton of these things saved up and I'm just not worried about having extras. My temptation is to sell the apples, but I'm actually going to hold on to them. I did get some apple recipes recently and I would like to maybe use those. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna need some stuff in my house because eventually we do need to decorate the entire interior of a fully finished house. Nowhere near that yet. And uh, you know, as, as much as I need money to make that fully finished house, <laughs> these DIYs from eggs, um, you know, it's, it's probably more important to keep supplies on hand so that I can make 
furniture to fill it. Believe it or not, we're doing pretty okay in this challenge when it comes to money. I think the staircase that I've put down in front of my house now is the last staircase or bridge I need to do. I think the infrastructure on the island with that purchase is fully complete. I did talk about putting another bridge across this river, but I'm at a point with it where I just don't know what purpose it would serve. I can't reach that pedal. Uh, because no matter what, the bridge would just bring you right here, which doesn't make a lot of sense given my financial situation. So going forward, I think all the big purchases we make are gonna go towards my loan rather than my, uh, you know, <laughs> infrastructure. So hey, I mean, 23 days in, that's a really big accomplishment, having, you know, a good chunk of our infrastructure done and it keeps our finances more in check. And now we can start focusing on paying down our house. Thinking about how expensive those home loans are going to get though, <laughs> I do start to get worried about the grinds we have ahead of us. We've already done a number of grinds throughout this series, but none are gonna be more grindy than getting our money together to pay down all of those home loans. As you remember from the rules of this challenge, I don't need to pay down the final loan. That's not what I need to do. I just have to make sure that I have every single room. That includes the upstairs and the basement. The house has to be fully, fully finished. So what I'm saying is once I replace these peach trees in their new permanent home, I should probably harvest them and sell. You might be wondering when I am gonna start decorating the house though, and I think I am saving it for last. One of the last things we'll, we'll do because it'll just be, I don't know, kind of refreshing. I actually really like doing interior decorating. I think it's a lot of fun in this game. And, you know, having these menus where you can get in here and, and kind of move things around a lot easier than you can outside. It's just going to be a good way to kind of unwind after designing an entire island. But enough about our future plans. Let's worry about today problems. And today we need to get these cliffs figured out. So... I'm gonna go ahead and finish designing these. Pretty simple what my plan is. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna extend this by two, which I've already done, and I'm going to connect it over to here, and we'll just kind of naturalize it. I'm also going to bring out this corner a little bit and naturalize it as well. In order to naturalize it, I'm just kind of taking part of this cliff and just extending it back this way. This is the final width right here. But to make it look more natural, it's good to bring more of it out like this. So we'll kind of maybe come right to here and then we'll chop off the sharp edge and there we go. And then we will actually taper off this corner here and we'll do something similar right here, which of course I do not have as much room by the beach to kind of mess around with it. But yeah, I'm just gonna fill all of this in right about to here. And then maybe just for that natural look, we bring out just a few bits <laughs> right here. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but once I get to like the edge and, and the beaches and stuff, I start not to care as much. And if you're wondering what I'm going to do about the beaches on this island, just going back to future plans for a minute, not much. Uh, <laughs> on pretty much all the islands I do, I don't do much on the beaches. I kind of fill them with coconut trees, maybe some flowers. Maybe I make one little beach seating area oftentimes. But yeah, I, I'm not really a beach decorating person when it comes to Animal Crossing, and I'm not about to start now because I have enough island to worry about. Okay, so that cliff is done. We'll taper off the edge here, and now we've done it again. We have a symmetrical cliff. One thing I might also do is keep it like this. So you can actually cut the corners off by the staircase, and I just, I don't know, that creates kind of an interesting shape to me. It's a little more inviting. So yeah. We might keep it that way. To do it over here, I think I have to wait till the staircase finishes. Let me see. Nope, it'll let us. Perfect. Yeah, that, oh, that looks a lot better. I like that. I want to experiment with taking this path and having it actually end once it reaches the beach here. And Zipper is going to do his best to like, kind of get in my way while I do this. So the reason is because I would like to put some fences in front of the crops and having a path going in front of the crops would give me a good excuse to put those fences down. So I'm going to do this. And you might be thinking, why not just put fences without the path? But I don't know. I, I think the, the combo of fence and path looks good. But the path could maybe stop right about here, right? And and we'll just, you know, we'll cut off the corners a little bit and it'll feel inviting. Like, it's kind of inviting you to, hey, you know, go check out what the captain's doing, you know? And a fence could run right up to here. And we're going to use that fence throughout. Well, 
I don't know about right here. I'm still thinking about this spot, but we're going to use the fence all the way over to here by this bridge. Oh, which fence are you going to use? Great question. It's obviously the log fence. <laughs> this is what you use when you make a farm now. Those are the rules. Creating the separation between the path and my farm is going to feel really good, and it's also going to give me some very solid boundaries to work within when it comes to actually designing my farm. Yeah, I definitely think these crops look a lot better with a little fence in front of them. And again, I may still put something here. I'm kind of deciding what to do because this river in front of my house kind of got away from me. I, I designed it thinking, oh yeah, that'll be cool to have like a waterfall and a little water feature in front. But I don't know, the more I look at it, the more underwhelmed I am. I like the waterfall, but I'm wondering if I should get rid of the water in front and then do something else in the center. Like, okay, you know what might look really cool? What if we put some dirt down, dig three holes, and then plant our peach trees in the center aisle? I'll taper off these corners. I think this looks pretty cool. I think it gives us a nice, natural looking, rich person path up to my house. I mean, I have a waterfall, I have two staircases, I have a little fruit orchard just right in front here, and we still have plenty of room to kind of decorate alongside it as well. I created a little water basin in front of the waterfall, so I'm just gonna taper these corners as well. Again, it's about making nice little natural looking features. I think this looks pretty nice. The waterfall isn't seen by too many angles, but it's there, it's definitely there. If we really wanted to, we can add one on either of these cliffs too, but I'm going to refrain from that for now. We are left with four peach trees. I'm thinking I can use the peach trees in front of my house, similar to how this apple tree was placed down, but you know, better. We can create kind of like a symmetrical pattern with two peach trees on either side. Before I do anything of the sort though, let's start by getting our paths kind of placed down. and. I was gonna use dirt, but now that I think about it, I actually do wanna continue using cobblestone. What we're doing here is just kind of creating the walk up to our front door. What's strange about this is I should be able to put some path underneath the step, but I think the mailbox is blocking it and I am unable to pick up the mailbox at present. I think I need to upgrade my house a little bit more before it lets me do that. So uh, we might just have this awkward kind of tile underneath my step here, which is silly, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> let's just get the path kind of connected. You get the point. Just imagine there is some more cobblestone underneath where the mailbox kind of is. So I'm thinking the path kind of just looks like that. You know, it tapers off on the corners there. We'll have it, uh, you know, tapered off right here. We'll get it placed properly. And we can then decorate right here. Not sure how yet. And we can then place down our peach trees. For symmetry's sake, I'm gonna extend this cliff out two more tiles. The reason is because I did the math and this cliff actually comes out to here. And I'm thinking, well, why not both of them? Why can't they both do that? Still leaves a little bit of room to walk up to this bridge. But as you remember, there's a whole bunch of room down there. So we can actually extend this even more if we would like a wider path around this cliff. And I think that's exactly what I'm gonna end up doing. But the idea I have is that our peach trees will actually be placed here and here. And then in the exact same spots over here. I just have to extend this out a little bit. All right, I think our peach trees are looking really good in their new homes. I like that a lot. It kind of has the same sort of vibe as Eric's house, but obviously a bit different. We have dirt paths under these ones. They are aligned with the house instead of behind it. And uh, then of course you have the row of peach trees in front, same vibe on, on top of some dirt. This place is looking nice and I haven't, I haven't even put down any furniture yet. But let's do some cliff designing, shall we? I'm going to extend this cliff just a little bit. Uh, again, all just to make things feel a bit more natural. We'll taper our corners. Let's move these trees out of our way for now. And then we need to do a whole bunch of cliff editing over here. I'm trying to balance how much cliff to kind of like put back here because I still want this river to be something you can walk around this way, you know, it, it, even if it doesn't follow the path, I want you to be able to go this way around it. And I want it to feel natural. So this natural progression of the cliffs. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to figure out now. So I think what I can do is something like this, not there. I want to put it here. I want to cut this off. And okay, okay, that's looking a little bit chaotic. I like that. Let's actually remove this. Let's bring this out again and we'll chop it off. And I think we'll cut off this corner as well. We'll cut off this corner. And we are left with room for a path to go up like this. However, uh, we need a little more room because now we don't really have a lot of space to go from here over and up. It's just too narrow. Oh, 
We got another non-bunny day balloon. Let's hope it doesn't... Oh, my peach trees! Okay, that's fine. I need to, uh... I need to make money anyway. <laughs> I wanted to keep peaches on them for now because I wanted that as a finished look, but that's fine. A mantis head model. I shook my peach trees for nothing. At least I can catch another cherry blossom. No, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go. No! Uh... <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. All right, fine. Stick to cliff editing. Got it. Nope. No problem. I understand. I understand the assignment. Edit cliffs. Don't do anything else. That's what we can do. That's fine. I'm going to take this cliff and I'm probably going to extend it. I'm going to keep it this width and probably just extend it for a while. Okay. So what if we take this corner away? We take this corner away. How does that look? Yeah, I feel like that looks pretty good. We can actually tuck something in right here. And then when you come over here, well, I missed a spot, but when you <laughs> when you come over here, you are, you know, looking at not a lot of room to decorate. I don't know what goes in this strip right here. I know I don't want the cliff to come all the way out. I'm kind of part of me asks myself why not, but I think we could just put some trees down here. I definitely feel like we need to at least do something like this just to make that corner not as sharp. But yeah, something should go in here. I'm thinking trees. My farm is probably going to start about here and go down to this fence and then some room on the other side as well, obviously. So a lot of my decorating now is going to take place in like this zone and then up by the house. I keep talking about this path, though. What's this path going to look like that goes from here up and around? Well, when I'm in these situations where I'm not using custom codes or anything, I find that the best way to do stuff like this is to actually use little circles, right? So you just kind of like skip a space and then you create like a little circular section. I'll start with squares just to not waste too much time because I might end up moving these around. But the idea is that we can now have them kind of lead you like little stepping stones, like dirt stepping stones up to wherever it is we're trying to go. When I'm not using custom codes and I have a diagonal bridge, I found that this is my favorite solution to that problem because we're gonna get to this bridge and go, well, wait, the path looks kind of janky if we try and like have it go under the bridge, that's not really an option. So if our circular path just kind of stops in front of the bridge, it implies that we go over the bridge. Uh, unfortunately, I'm miscalculating here and it, it is a little bit off. So to fix this, I'm basically shifting every square up by one tile and it's giving me the desired result. It's just gonna look a little bit weird when uh, you get to the entrance of the path, which I did space out one tile away from this path, but now it's probably gonna start a tile further away. Oh well. Of course, one more problem is that I'm using dirt for this and I've used dirt here, so I can't shift this the way I want to because if I push it up one, it's gonna connect, I believe. Well, let me wait a minute, let me wait a minute. Yeah, it connects to this, and that's not great. So taking a look at it now, having this many circles in like a straight line does feel a little bit goofy to me. It's kind of like, well, why don't you just connect this into one straight path? But I don't know, the circles could still look pretty adorable, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and start turning these into circles. I'm committing to this. I think it actually looks pretty nice, even though I could have just made one straight path and it wouldn't have been a big deal. Uh, but yes, so, Circles it is, and then we can even put maybe some more fences around it. Like, we don't want anyone to... This is confusing enough, right? I mean, the path keeps breaking up. It's it's circles, and it's confusing. So, a fence right here will keep people from falling off the edge. And, uh, yeah, you would hate to see that. I don't have insurance. This is a DIY-only island. Do you think we can afford insurance? And look, even a semi-randomized path, like the one we've made here, has symmetry to it. <laughs> because this circle shifts over by one tile like this, and then this circle down here does the same exact thing on the other side. Like, I can't get away from symmetry no matter what I do. And by the way, the circles on the map look pretty cool. Where it gets a bit funky is creating the circles on the other side of the bridge because I have some pretty decent space between the bridge and this circle, but I'm finding it really challenging to replicate that on this side and get the path where I want it. So I think what we're gonna do is put one here and then I'm just gonna shift up one here. And I don't want it to connect with this path. So I'm actually gonna have it come to about here and it encroaches a bit on our picnic area, but I also think it kind of invites you to make the choice. Do you wanna have a picnic or do you wanna to go to the museum? So ultimately I'm good with this. I'm not going to stress too much about the fact that <laughs> this side of the path is too close to the bridge when compared to this side. I don't think it matters and 
having it a little bit random looking is probably good at the end of the day. I am going for a lot of symmetry here. Although I could probably stand to move this down one. <laughs> I, it doesn't stop. All I want to do is finish this. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks awesome. While we're over here, let's grab the crafting table. I'm going to jam it right in front of my front door and I'll pull it back to here so I can still get in and out. But this is where I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of my crafting. I do have supplies inside, obviously, but I don't like going in and out because the loading screens take like 10 years. Before I forget, let's steal these peaches. We'll sell them. We'll make some money. Is that a regular balloon back there? Please be a cherry blossom recipe, please. It is. And not only that, it's an amazing one, too. This floor makes it so encouraging to build like a cherry blossom room inside my house, which would look so good. Maybe we could even include the outdoor bath in there. Ugh. We have got to stay vigilant for balloons. There's no way I'm going to leave this season with nearly enough cherry blossom recipes, but if I can at least get the wall and maybe a couple recipes here and there, we could create a pretty nice room. And in case you're wondering, every time we sell our peaches, we net exactly 12,600 bells. So. That's something. And I mean, if I combine that with all of the fruit from Eric's farm, that wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, now that we know where our path is, we can start to replace some of these trees and uh, put them in what I assume will be their permanent homes. I think we can also put one on this side as well. Maybe it'll stay here, maybe it won't, but uh, we'll see. It is time to start crafting now. And I think what we're gonna do is begin by making some scarecrows. In terms of fencing, I was actually looking for the country fence and I don't have it strangely enough, and it's usually one of the first ones I get. They do have the log wall fence in stock, and maybe this could be a good compromise for now. Maybe I'll turn out to like it. But uh, yeah, the, the country fence was kind of what I preferred. The idea behind this fence was to put it over here by this path again, so no one falls over. And I, I mean, it looks nice, it's fine. Just not the best option, and I may very well replace it in the future if I get that fence and uh, get the itch to do the extra work. Because yeah, this doesn't this doesn't really have the vibe I'm going for. Anyway, back to crafting farm items. We'll make some barrels, we'll do another silo, we'll do all kinds of fun stuff. A crafting ingredient I'm completely neglecting are these flowers because I can make a handful of things out of flowers and it's about time I start making a habit of just picking some of these. Specifically, I wanna make a lily record player and maybe not for this build, but I also want access to mum cushions. It looks like those are just yellow mums. I picked all of them and I can only afford one right now, which is kind of sad. But I could probably make a bunch of these if my pockets weren't full. So I've crafted a handful of items and we'll start placing them around and trying some things out. The first thing I thought that might look cool is if we put a silo back here. I did say I wanted to tuck something into this corner, but then I was also thinking it'd be really cool if there was a second silo. We had like two that were kind of pushed up against each other. As if to say, like, I have a lot of grain that I'm storing, but the problem is that I'm out of stone, and uh, that's a bit frustrating. <laughs> I think I've hit all the rocks, or almost all the rocks, but, you know, we have bunny day problems too, and you know that I have a villager hunt coming up tomorrow, so I can't really go ahead and, like, get stone yet, but it is on my mind. I think we get stone here really, really soon. You mean tomorrow, which means we only can do so many things today. I think I'm gonna take one of our scarecrows and put it right here next to this cliff. Maybe we'll have it turned this way towards the path and we'll kind of pull it in that way. Um, we, you know, we might need a, another thing or two in front of the cliff like that, but yeah. I mean, I can't put it on top of the crops, but uh, that looks kind of cool. I think another scarecrow could go maybe like right about there. It kind of gives you something to look at as you're like walking up towards the house. Yeah, I like that a lot. I did make the Lily record player after all, and I did make it pink. Once there are peaches on the peach trees, I think this will look pretty cool. I don't know exactly where it should go, but I do think it should be kind of tucked in with these trees for now, and having it play some kind of, I don't know, farm sounding ditty would be cool. As for these barrels, I don't know what my obsession is with having two barrels next to each other like this. I do this all the time, but I do like it, and I think I might keep them there. They block the waterfall which I made a really big stink about earlier. And they, yeah, they completely block it. I don't know, okay, maybe not right there. I do the same exact thing with hay beds all the time too, but we could put the hay beds here and then we can maybe surround them with the barrels. One thing I am trying is to have the log stakes kind of surround the waterfall like that. And I'm trying to decide if I want them in the same orientation. Like I could spin this and have it perfectly match the other one. And I actually don't think that looks too bad. I, I like to alternate them, but in this case, I think that works. I have a third set of log stakes and I can maybe put those here and just kind of turn them like that. 
and there's room for more stuff here, obviously, but yeah, okay. For now, this is what I've settled on for my barrels and hay bales. It's fine. <laughs> uh, everything I put down, it feels like it needs more stuff around it. it. Everything feels so unfinished right now. And as a quick detour, I made a third scarecrow for Eric's place, which I think I'll put right here for now. Uh, you know, this, this farm could probably use a few more scarecrows as well, but yeah, uh, it's just more stuff in this area was definitely needed, so I'm not mad about that. Maybe we'll put it like right there. Yeah. In case you're wondering, by the way, I did end up catching enough petals to end up making two of these picnic sets like we wanted. Uh, I'm going to turn that one that way. Obviously, this is not a complete <laughs> build. Lately, nothing I do is. But hey, like this is a good start as well. It reminds me, oh yeah, we wanted to put some like fun little picnic-y stuff out here. So we'll continue catching these, hopefully get some more recipes from this set. And I think it's gonna look really, really nice. For now though, a lot of my problems revolve around not having enough stone, which is something we can try and remedy tomorrow when we do our villager hunt. It's day 24 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we did some terraforming and designing around my house. Once again though, we ran out of materials and items and it kind of left us in a lurch. It's the 30 day DIY island. We had Kabuki arrive today and Stinky leaves tomorrow, so we are going to be doing a few dailies today, getting our points up, and then skipping to tomorrow. Oh, a tree standy, which means we can actually start doing our villager hunt. That is the plan today. I think today is our last chance, potentially, to get a top 50 villager. We need three in order to complete our goal. And ideally, one of those villagers will be Lily. Lily could potentially complete our goal of having three top 50 villagers and also get us a tour from none other than Froggy Crossing herself. The chances of that happening though are slim. <laughs> I'm not getting my hopes up. I am still, at the end of the day, a realist. More often than not these days, Mary is my crafting villager. I love it. I do not mind this at all. And Mary is making a garden wagon. Oh my gosh. That is an incredible item that I'm worried I can't craft. Oh, it's as I feared. I need Hyacinths and Cosmos if I want to craft this. I have the Yellow Roses. Ooh, that stinks. <laughs> That's I would put those everywhere. It's such a good item. The good news is we do have a handful of islands we are visiting today, including a cat and island or two, which we'll go do right now. After this trip, we have about 8,000 Nook Miles left over, almost 9,000, and we have some pretty interesting, you know, double tasks today for Nook Miles. I think we can knock all of these out and try and replenish the ones we just spent because I'm probably gonna do another Cat and Island once we time travel forward a day. This is um, eh, kind of a boring one. I, I'm glad to get more vines. Obviously I need these as a crafting material, but I, I still would much prefer to get some like different crops and just different types of Cat and Islands in general. Today's Cat and DIY though is the Glowing Moss Jar, better known of course as the Jar of Farts. <laughs> I've hit two rocks so far and not gotten a single piece of stone from them. There are a few items I desperately want to make, but they all require stone. And I'm starting to worry that I'm going to have to remove myself from cherry blossom season quicker than I wanted to if I want to start getting those rocks because the eggs are taking up so much room in the queue that I don't know how I'm gonna ever get enough stone to complete the projects I want. This one had one piece of stone. This tree only had eggs instead of wood. At this point, I'm so desperate, I'm even smashing the rocks open just to get the extra piece of stone. I've been thinking about it and eggs aren't the worst thing to have depending on the bunny day recipes we unlock because I have been thinking about it and some of the recipes I currently have. There is one type of build that I could see using some bunny day items for, but I've not fully committed to it yet I'm just gonna keep it to myself for now. But uh, I'm just letting you know, there is a circumstance in which maybe I use some of the eggs to craft after all. <sighs> Before we leave this season behind us, we still need to do a villager hunt. I'm afraid if I time jump to where I want to go, which is forward, uh, obviously that plot is probably gonna autofill more than likely. We definitely don't want that. It is pretty cool to see red on the secret beach now that it's pretty much done. I mean, we're still kind of working on a couple little things here and there, but yeah, I just love seeing a beach entrance come together and then having red's boat pull up. <laughs> it just kind of, it gives you that feeling of completeness. Before I time skip though, I am gonna come back and harvest the bamboo we have. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy if this is the only bamboo I can get for this bamboo farm, I'm pretty happy. I would only add at this point, maybe one or two other trees 
if I was to have my way. But there's plenty of other things I do want to add up here, just little knickknacks and things like that. I, I mentioned putting the palm tree lights up there and never got around to it. So still plenty I can do with that area. But uh, overall, as I walk around the island, there are plenty of areas that feel unfinished, like the one I'm walking by right now. But we have so much done, too, that I'm not really worried. Uh, which might be surprising, perhaps even naive. But yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling really good about where we're at right now with the island. And, uh, you know, just running around and doing these dailies kind of reminds me that, hey, you know, it's okay. We're doing a pretty decent job. However, I still have plenty of time to screw this up. <laughs> because we have more days behind us now than we do ahead of us. So it is a little bit nerve-wracking. Maybe that balloon in the distance is going to be a non-Bunny Day DIY though. Nope, it's a table lamp. It is a completely useless table lamp. Do you think Sable and Mabel get really upset that I come in here every day? Like I come in there every day dressed like I glued a bunch of twigs and leaves to myself. And they must think, oh my gosh, like this customer's gonna buy so much stuff. Like I take time out of their busy schedules to just pester them. And then I just go about my business dressed like walking yard work. Speaking of which, I cannot imagine how itchy all this stuff is that I'm wearing all the time. I'm gathering up shells, by the way, because it is one of my duties to sell 10 of these if I want some extra points. However, I'm going to keep the giant clams because those are used to make some really, really cool recipes like uh, the big fountain we can get. And I think the music box. Basically, anytime you get a really cool DIY that has shells in it, Giant clams are going to be the most difficult resource to have on hand, so I'm going to keep those. All right, I think this will bring me back up to about 10,000 or so points, which is perfect. That means I could buy up to five tickets, and five tickets is the maximum I could possibly have for hunting for the longest time possible. Before I buy those tickets, though, I did want to check and know the fence I want is not in stock. So, all right, let's buy, let's start with maybe like three of these tickets. And I am about to skip to the next day, but we need to harvest this bamboo. And as a little bonus, we're getting young spring bamboo as well, which opens us up to craft a whole bunch of other recipes that I think we have access to, but just never had the materials to craft before. So doing this every day is also gonna be really important. This is basically one of the reasons I'm not planning on decorating too much up here because I still need it to be a functioning bamboo farm. Let's face it though, the biggest reason is obviously because I don't have a lot of things. And with my dailies for this day done, let's go ahead and skip to the next day. Oh, on the subject of young spring bamboo, I just got the bamboo noodle slide recipe, which was one I was looking for. I wanted to include that in the area we created by the beach and yeah, that's great. I'm just now realizing I forgot to water my potatoes on the previous day, so I'm stuck with two in each plot. That is going to eat into our profits a bit, but not the end of the world. Let's see if this is going to be another new beach DIY. It's the Chic Mum Crown, which is new, but eh, just not very exciting. Our Bunny Day DIY is going to be the Bunny Day Vanity. No plans to use this. Here's our empty plot, which we'll be filling today. Kid is crafting. And it's a rose bed. I think this is maybe the second or third time they've tried to give me this recipe. Why don't we see what Captain has in store for us? No way. We found our third crop. I love that it's tomatoes too. They look so good in this game. Of course, this is the time where my shovel breaks, so now I have to go around hoping to get enough supplies to craft a new one. Looks like our beach DIY is gonna be a golden garden bunny, which is cool. I think I have to buy the regular bunnies or maybe craft them. Either way, I can't make it anytime soon. I should mention, in case you're wondering, I have to craft the shovel myself. That's just the rules I've set. You can't buy tools. Fortunately, I have exactly enough hardwood to make a new shovel. I was really hoping this island would have the flowers we need to make the garden wagon, but unfortunately that is not the case. And I'll be honest, I didn't even pay attention to the flowers on the previous Captain Island. While we travel today for other islands, we really need to make sure we're paying good attention to that. I'm just uh, so disappointed at the amount of eggs. It kind of feels like every egg could have been a piece of stone, you know? It probably could have been any of the things you would normally get, but I'm assuming they're all representative of stone, and that's because I need stone the most. I honestly don't know how we meet any of our goals if we stay in this season. I don't I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and give Eric the last crops we'll ever need to give him. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and harvest them all and get everything nice and watered. I like focusing on Eric's farm more than mine because there's less things. It's just easier to water, easier to manage. But ultimately, I'm just glad we finally found a third type of crop. I can finally stop feeling like I need to go to Catton Islands every day because I don't see myself making any more farms, and I'm good with the crops we have. We're not really doing a lot of cooking, although I guess that could change if I get some cooking recipes that I really like and I need wheat, for example. 
I will regret those words. I'm going ahead and buying the lattice fence recipe. Still no country fence, but hey, lattice fence is pretty cool. I can definitely see the using this on our farm. While we're here, I'm also gonna go ahead and pay down our loan. I'm gonna go ahead and just pay it from savings. I have over 100,000 just in my pockets and I had the full loan amount just sitting in my savings account. I didn't even need to use my savings to buy all the stairs and stuff because we've been doing so good with money. Let's go ahead and expand my house. It's gonna be half a million bells to do so. I mean, we are doing pretty decent with money. This is just a money tree, 30K just sitting there. I haven't even touched it yet. And we have another money tree we need to plant. Oh, I accidentally buried a thousand bells though, so. Never mind that. I was trying to put the thousand bells away so I could grab 10,000 bells, but it's whatever. We Again, we're still doing good. We're, I'm not worried about it. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. This is a very generous rock. I'm super excited to get so many stone pieces. Ah, uh, that feels good. No eggs, some stone, and a gold nugget? Yes, please. Before we begin hunting down top 50 villagers, let's go ahead and do the tedious task of selling all of our half-grown potatoes. And yes, I know they're not literally half-grown, it's just I'm bitter. Found our money rock, so let's combine that with the potatoes we just harvested. And we have yet another 100,000 bells. That's already a large chunk of our next loan in savings. I'll admit I am a little bit worried about the state my house is in right now, but overall, as long as we keep harvesting crops, there is a path to paying this thing off enough to get all the rooms. But enough chores. We have three tickets burning a hole in our uh, grassy pockets and it's time to see if we can get our final top 50 village. And our first villager is, is that Fret? Okay, it is Fret, but I don't know how this is possible. 408 in the rankings. Are you serious? Fret is adorable and was added later even. So you would think because Fret is a newer villager, at least for New Horizons, and super, super cute and a dog, people would actually, you know, like him. But that's not the case, and I'm confused and sad. I mean, okay, is he top 50 material? I don't know, maybe, but 400, that's like the bottom of the list. So far, this is the only stone I've gotten out of these rocks, so uh, I guess we'll need to be breaking him again to try and like get that last little bit out of him. <sighs> Bunny day is the nightmare that everyone said it was. I will never question people's anger towards this holiday ever again. We're about to spend our next ticket, but I just wanted to give you a quick reminder as to where we currently stand with villagers and villager hunting. We need three top 50 villagers according to Animal Crossing Portal, and we have two already. Eric, who's number 27, and Mary, who's number 46. And we also have Kabuki, who is just under the top 50, and we're hoping by the next time the rankings switch over, he will have moved up potentially. But given that Mary and Kabuki are so kind of low in the rankings, we have got to find at least one more top 50 villager, and we have to do it now. And our next one is Stu. And I worry Stu is not gonna cut it. And indeed, 265 for Stu. Oh, better than last time. I mean, we've gone up like double that amount since the last villager we saw, so that's something. Better than Fret, evidently, but still nowhere near where we have to be. End up just now realizing this island has cosmos. Now if we just find Hyacinth, we can craft all the flower wagons we want. While the flowers do make me feel okay, the lack of stone is still a problem on all of these islands. I am not loving how hard I'm having to fight to get stone. Despite all the fighting, we have 17 somehow. Now 18. But think of how much more we would have if it wasn't freaking bunny day. All right, I only have one more ticket. This has to be it. And I'm sad to report that I think we're not gonna get the villager we need. Rocco somehow does rank higher than Stu, but is 117. I am beside myself with grief and anger, and I still can't get any stones unless I break rocks and apparently shovels as well. Honestly, I'm so done at this point, I'm not even gonna remake my shovel. And I can too, it wouldn't be that hard. I'm just. I just want to go home. I used what little patience I had left to walk down to this beach, and I did find a DIY. It's a cardboard sofa, which we don't have, but it's not really exciting. I have enough points to afford myself one more ticket, and that's what I'm going to do. This is pure desperation at this point. I, uh, uh, I'm wasting my Nook Miles right now, just completely flushing them down the toilet. I just know I am. And at least the island we're going to has apples. These are not my native fruit, so I can take all of them and make a little bit of money. But the villager is Pashmina. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to look. People like Pashmina. I don't like Pashmina, but that's more of a personal thing. Guys, Pashmina is ranked 58. At this point, given the position we're in, I have no choice but to invite Pashmina to the island because there's always that chance that in six days time, when the website updates, which will probably be on the last day of the challenge, maybe, just maybe, the three villagers we have 
or the two villagers we have that are below the top 50, maybe they rank up. It's possible. It's maybe possible. And of course, we do have a little more time and a lot of time traveling left to do in this challenge. So there's always the chance that a campsite villager comes around, someone else who's low ranking leaves. So I'm gonna take Pashmina as a win, a small win, but a win. A, a, we'll call it a silver medal. My ax is going to break soon, but I'll go ahead and chop down these apple trees, try to get enough wood and materials to go ahead and make another ax. I'm gonna need sticks for that, so I may as well uh, <laughs> shake one of these trees before I chop it down. We did break it, and I did get enough materials to make a flimsy ax, so I can upgrade that, but <sighs> my patience for this entire day has been wearing thin and I have to pick all of this up. I picked up what I cut down. I'm gonna cut my losses and we're gonna head back. I got some materials, I got apples I can sell, and we got pashmina, which is something. Today overall has been a roller coaster. We got some really good things done and some things just didn't work out in our favor. But overall, it was an important day, despite it being kind of a short one. It's day 25 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we collected some more new DIYs. We found tomatoes for the first time, and we recruited what might be our very last new villager to g -Wiz. It's the 30 day DIY island. I woke up today feeling inspired, which is good because we don't have a lot of time left. You see, the plan for today is to spam items around the island as much as I possibly can. What I mean to say is that if we hope to get five stars, and we do, we're gonna need stuff. Just a lot of stuff on the ground. And as you're well aware, my biggest limitation to stuff has, of course, been these DIYs. Sometimes you get new things like the pansy table, and sometimes you get old things like the rose bed, which I've gotten like three times now. So that's been probably the biggest limitation. The second biggest limitation is of course the fact that I can't seem to get a lot of supplies. Because of this, we are in bunny day season, okay? I was calling it cherry blossom season because that's what I was aiming for. It overlaps with bunny day. However, according to Google, bunny day ends on April 9th. And if I remember right, cherry blossom season should end on April 14th. So I'm gonna let things like bunny day balloons pass me by. And for the first part of today, we're gonna run around and just let bunny day be bunny day. We're just gonna let it be. And then we are going to put bunny day behind us finally. Because for the second part of this day, I'm going to travel forward just enough to be rid of bunny day, but not cherry blossom season, at least not quite yet. The hope is that we can get some cherry blossom DIYs while we still work on the island. But at this point, I'm no longer relying on them as a source of items for the builds I'm trying to do. We've already wasted quite a bit of time in this particular region of time in the game, and we can't really afford to hang out here any longer without getting some real progress done. So while I want to make sure that I have some of these petals stocked up, we definitely can't plan on getting ourselves enough cherry blossom DIYs to fill out our island. And so you might be wondering, well, what's the item spam then? If you're not even gonna get a whole bunch of DIYs, what's, what are you spamming? All right, well, no need to be rude about it. Well, I'm gonna take stock of all the different DIYs we currently have and Hey, maybe someone's crafting something new. And they are, and a fantastic item at that, but I'm gonna need the first version of this recipe to make it, and it takes turnips to make. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so annoying. So anyway, never mind that plan. We're just gonna spam a lot of the stuff we already have. I've had my mind on a few different items that I think could go all over the place. As a result, the island will feel more complete, and we'll be even closer to our five-star goal. And look at this, I'm getting enough bamboo shoots to kind of finish up this bamboo garden I was trying to do. I did say I just wanted like a couple more, and now I have three, so that's amazing. And also, we need to chop these up. I started to yesterday, <laughs> and my ax broke, and I never came back. So we'll have to make a flimsy ax or a stone ax and, and come back over here. But let's figure out where the last couple of these are gonna go. Yeah, I think right here and right here, and that's it. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat or sell the last bamboo shoot. I don't care, we're good there. Or I think you can craft maybe one or two things with them, so maybe I'll just hold on to it. As I finish up the dailies I'm working on though, I did forget uh, one important reason as to why we're leaving Bunny Day behind. It's probably not something I need to spell out. I mentioned supplies. In particular though, I am just very, very low on stone and no matter what I seem to do, if it's Bunny Day, stone, it seems to be the lowest priority for the rocks. I don't know that to be true for certain, but for me, it definitely has played out that way. I don't have 
any rocks at this point. So we definitely have to make sure we time travel forward today if we want to do some of the builds I'm planning on doing. Like, look, I'll show you right now. It's basically all eggs and iron. Like, th this is what I've been dealing with. We got these yesterday, so I'm gonna go ahead and start watering them. Let's go ahead and sell some excess items we've been holding on to. And we're knocking out yet more of these tasks. I'm gonna go ahead and catch some sea creatures next because we definitely need to get this times five bonus. And then also, I just, I can't do this one because I'm not allowed to buy flower seeds. You would think planting the flowers from the island would be it. We can definitely catch five bugs though. So yeah, this is also gonna be part of the dailies that I do. Tom Nook is gonna congratulate us on our larger house. And we can move our mailbox finally. <laughs> Renee's giving me a DIY for a bunny day crown. Why can't they just give me DIYs like this when it's not bunny day? Like, why? This, this holiday is such torture and torment. Anyway, on to diving. Now I've been getting a bunch of comments, both in my comment section and outside of my comment section, asking why I don't do more diving for scallops so that I can go ahead and start getting mermaid DIYs. It's a good question. And the simple answer is that I don't really like the mermaid DIYs. <laughs> They're cool looking. It's just, it's not a type of item I would normally decorate with. And that being said, I shouldn't be so picky given the type of challenge. So we are out here and if I find a scallop, great. I might dive for more than three just to see if we can get one. But I, I don't think at this late stage, I don't think I should be spending my time looking for these. It should have been something I was doing from day one, honestly, it, you know, in retrospect. But I'm not going to worry about it too much now. I will take a peek. But I think if I was going to decorate the beaches, which in this case, I'm probably not going to, maybe it'd be great for that. But I don't know. I don't know. I know I know. it's blasphemy to say you don't like the mermaid stuff. It's just, it's cool. They did a really good job designing it, but I'm just, I don't know what to do with it. Anyway, subscribe for more blasphemy. I've continued diving for a little while. My inventory is getting pretty full. I've not found a scallop just yet. And we got too much to do today. So let's go ahead and get this stuff donated. By the way, there's our times five goal. And we got some miles for finding new objects under the sea. I can't forget to grab my huge inventory of fossils I've been stocking up. And out of all of that, here's everything we're allowed to donate. This is an outrage. I mean, listen, I'm selling every single fossil. I'm gonna make some money. But <laughs> we have got to be almost finished with the fossil exhibit by now. Nope, Blathers is not giving us that news. I mean, it's not even a goal. It's just something that'd be kind of cool. But all right, fine, let's cash out. 77,000 bells, I'll take it. More than halfway there to paying down our next loan. I've decided to hit the rest of the rocks before we skip ahead past Bunny Day. And uh, hey, not a single egg this time. So I'm glad I did that. My luck was not so great with this one or this one. But honestly, all that's completely fine. It's time to skip ahead. And it's now April 10th, which is just the day after bunny day, hopefully. So we should be good now on the DIYs we do find. We should get no more eggs messing up the resources we're trying to gather. Let's test it out. Yes, that is what I like to see. All right. Even if I have to use Nook Miles to go to other islands and grab other resources, this is great. Planting bamboo shoots is one of my tasks. I don't, I never see that one too often. I think it's because I have bamboo and normally I don't. I actually don't use bamboo on a lot of my islands, so I didn't even know that could be a task. I mean, I'm not doing it. I have enough bamboo and I'm just kind of saving my bamboo shoots at this point, but it's there. Oh yeah, we're getting a lot of stone from these. Our money rock is of course in the one spot where I can't actually get eight things because of the way I've terraformed, but that's fine. I didn't even find the money rock the previous day, <laughs> so I'll take it. Anyway, from here, I'm going to deal with all the dailies, pick all the potatoes, water everything, blah, blah, blah. Let's come back in a moment when I go to a Captain Island. Okay, so we are going to go do a Captain Island right now, but I'm not quite done with the dailies yet. <laughs> it's just that uh, I, I'm right here anyway, and I just picked up a beach DIY. I'm like, oh, I want to tell them about the beach DIY, but I said I was going to go to a Captain Island first, so I'm holding on to that DIY, and we'll see what we get from the Captain Island. And we got a Money Tree Island on our tour. That's awesome. Those are usually, I think, a 1,000 bells on each tree, or I guess 3,000 bells in each tree, but I'm more excited about these two DIYs. Come on, tall lantern, natural garden table, which I already know. And this is the mini golden dharma, which I already know and can't really make. Also, we found potatoes again, which I already have. And I also already have money trees. So this island is a complete bust, literally a rock full of iron, which I already have. And the nerve of this captain island to put coconut trees on a beach. I already have these. In all seriousness, I actually don't have these flowers, but I did just get a recipe to make a table out of them. So, <laughs> all right, fine, I'll grab these. Still no stone though, which, <laughs> Getting very frustrating. Not a single piece of stone in this rock either. Please, this one has to have at least one rock. Just, just one. Can I leave this island with just one? 
Come on! I'm under the assumption now that whatever type of island I'm on, it actually isn't supposed to produce stone. <laughs> because there's no way I hit every rock and didn't get any stone from them. I did get one or two pieces from, like, the stone that just kind of sits next to it. But none ever came out of the rock from hitting it. I mean, I'm gonna say it. This was a waste of a thousand nook miles. At least I have my homegrown money trees to cheer me up. And now we can start the process of planting some more. I just entered Pajmina's house for the first time, and and I'm gonna say that and just make it clear. The last time I had Pajmina, it was one of those crafting houses. It wasn't like an actual one. This is I had no idea. This is Pajmina's actual house. And it's actually perfect because check this out. It is literally right next to the airport. We have an airport diner. I don't even have to decorate this myself. Like, this is amazing. Even if Pashmina doesn't end up being a top 50 villager by the end of this, I'm thrilled by that development. I had no idea. All right, Eric, I know you're doing some research here, but uh, I gotta, oops, I gotta clean this up. <laughs> yep, yep. Go find something else to do. I'll put your rock back, don't worry. I'm also here to steal his produce. I think after the money trees and then all the produce and everything we're selling, we might be able to pay down our home loan today too. If not, we'll at least get very close to doing so. And we found our first balloon since jumping past Bunny Day, and it's 10,000 bells, which is fine, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I did just say I wanted to pay down a home loan, but I would have traded it for a recipe for sure. All said and done, we ended up with another 64,000 bells. And I'm finally getting some of the custom fabric from Sable. Early on, I was kind of ignoring this, but uh, yeah, I decided later, no, I, I actually would like to have those as a customization option. I wasn't sure I was gonna use them, but the more I make, the more I realize, yeah, that would be nice. Renee is our crafting villager today, and Renee's making a key holder. This will be a nice little item for my house. Anyway, with this deposit, we now have more than enough to pay off our entire loan. Let's go ahead and get that upgrade, which will be three quarters of a million bells this time. I'm still not panicking about paying that off, not yet. Also, more good news, I found the rock <laughs> that I couldn't find. Like for days now, I've been trying to figure out, I know I'm missing a rock, it was right here. And with the last of these nook miles gathered up, I think that concludes my dailies. And now we can finally start thinking about item spam. In order to effectively spam the items I want to spam, we need to go ahead and start grabbing some crafting materials. And I'm sure I'm gonna miss some stuff. I'm just gonna grab a handful of things. And I have a handful of ideas as to what I would like to place down. First and foremost, I want to make an outdoor bath. This was one of the reasons I tried to collect so much stone because I have a couple of ideas for this item. We might make more than one. I did end up sacrificing my shovel to make that though. One of the items I've been threatening to spam a bunch of are these palm tree lamps. I'm gonna make a bamboo noodle slide while I'm at it and just a bunch more stuff. We'll go ahead and start customizing and then we'll start placing down this first round of items. I did not I did manage to make another silo I just made it the same color scheme as this silo. And the plan was to always have these kind of like shoved next to each other like this. I thought a brick well would look good just kind of like somewhere in the back of this area. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of wish there were some other color schemes to this. I, I didn't love any of the ones that I can currently craft or uh, any of the customizations currently. But uh, yeah, no, maybe not back here. Honestly, it looks pretty good up front. Our farm still needs work, but uh, I made a whole bunch of these palm tree lamps. Now these, well, originally, I think we're gonna go up top by the bamboo. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, maybe they would look better as street lamps, which was kind of my original idea, the reason I got excited to see them in the first place. So what I've done is I've created five palm tree lamps, it looks like, and I customize them in a couple of different ways. So I'm just gonna start by treating them like lamps that kind of line this path. And I don't know how far apart to space them yet. It just kind of depends on, I guess, <laughs> how far we think five of them can go. I think what might look good is actually putting three of them right here, just kind of lining this stretch of path. We could put one of them here on this little area. It kind of blocks the you know corner of the cliff there. And it's something that sits alongside our little deer scare. Or alternatively, we put it here. And I think that's still an even amount of spacing between all of these. Yes, according to my shovel calculations, this is exactly the same spacing. I have one more, but we'll use it somewhere else later. I made another vine bench, which I'm gonna place up here by the giant vine. I'm gonna throw a jar of farts on this little bench right here. And because I'm sick and tired of using my ladder to deal with our bamboo, we're gonna put some vines on this cliff. I think that's looking pretty good. I'll put one over here, and I'll even put one right here for good measure. I think I'm gonna get rid of this tree right here. I'm gonna try and find a place for this bamboo noodle slide. I think having it block the path here is actually not a bad way to go. It matches obviously with all the different bamboo items. And yeah, I just think it's kind of a nice touch. So I'm gonna keep that there. 
Maybe I didn't need to remove that tree after all. Something should go in this area. I don't know. It's again, it's all a work in progress. But what about the outdoor bath? Well, here's just one of my ideas. Oh, actually, I think I see a balloon. Yes, we got the wall. The other day I said, if we could just get the wall, I could make maybe like a complete cherry blossom type of room, even if I don't get all the recipes. And we did it. I do hope we get more though. In any case, the reason I haven't done much with this corner yet is because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. But now that we have the outdoor bath, I think it would be really, really awesome to create a little space up here for it and a few other items as well. I think that'd be a really nice focal point for where these two staircases meet. So I'm gonna try and craft that right now. This little cliff looks uh, interesting. <laughs> it, I wasn't sure how it was gonna look adding some cliff to this corner. It, it's, it's a lot, right? It, maybe I don't need to add this much. I'm definitely gonna take out this corner here just to help a little bit. I don't know how I feel. Let's shave it back for just a moment. Let's see what it looks like with one less layer on it. To me, this seems like a more modest clip. And our outdoor bath fits, but barely. From down here though, I mean, hey, this looks really good. Let me go ahead and fix these paths real quick. Part of me does wonder what it would be like if I went ahead and connected the two paths right here and, you know, just kind of let people walk through. That means we could put some items right here and some items right here and yeah, we could create a nice little quaint area. I'm not attached to this boulder here, so let's try it. So I'm thinking too wide is more than enough because I think if we make it four wide, it'll look kind of strange. So yeah, little tiny path and you can just kind of run laps <laughs> around this little thing like this. I will say this too. I think there might be a benefit to not making this cliff square, but actually adding one layer just to this side. So kind of like this, we would taper off these corners like so. And then what we could do is take this, push it all the way over or center it if we want, and then we have room for like shrubs and flowers behind the fountain. Yeah, I'm thinking this is a better way to go. I went and grabbed some more lilies and I'm gonna place them kind of eh, randomly-ish around here. Oh, I do see another balloon. Through the trees, there we go. And it's a cherry blossom wand. That means we got the floor and the wand and the wall and then the rest of the items should be like more placeable furniture items, I hope. Anyway, let's get some shrubs down. I believe for just this little section of the island, it's feeling more complete. There's probably room for an item maybe right here and then maybe a little something right here, but yeah, it's looking good. For now, we'll leave it like this with plans to come back with more items later. I had an extra glowing moss jar. I'm gonna put that by the museum right here. I have to imagine that when it comes to spam, I'm probably the exact kind of person you would like having email you because that was not like a ton of item spam. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some more bamboo. We'll see what else we can make. All right, let's do a bit of a reset on our inventory. I think I know the next area I would like to decorate around. However, this is gonna be kind of a tough build because it does depend on you know, having a variety of items, and I don't really have a variety of items, but I'm just gonna do my best. But one space out here I've been considering for a while, like how am I gonna decorate in front of Nook's Cranny, this big open area between Nook's Cranny and the Flower Garden? I think I finally know what I wanna do, and it's something very basic. We are going to make an outdoor eatery of sorts. Right now I'm just trying to decide how big I want it to be. I only have a few tables, sets, and chairs, and I think this is a decent size. It leaves us a little bit of room to maybe put something here. I'm not sure exactly what, maybe a couple of signs or if we ever get hedges, that might be nice over here. I don't know, but it feels like it shouldn't come all the way down to here and it feels like it shouldn't come all the way over to the path either, just to give us a little more room to play with. Additionally, I thought this little area would be an opportunity for us to take that stage we kind of made with the instruments and stuff and bring it down here. I mean, you'll probably get a lot more tips if you go to more a public venue. So it'd be a little area kind of like this. One mistake I think I made though was the color choice for the tables. I don't really know considering like nooks in the background and everything. I think I probably should have just kept them the natural wood color. And that looks like this. And I do think this probably looks better. I'm just gathering stuff up to go fix up that area some more, but I remembered we can move our mailbox now. So I actually want to try the mailbox right out here. I think that looks pretty solid, and then we could put maybe something else over here, but yeah, I love that. And then we can also fix the path underneath our house now. There we go, oh, that's much better. It's gonna take me a minute to kind of figure out the spacing and orientation of everything, but uh, yeah, I think this was a good choice. I think, you know, the oak would have also looked good in terms of the customization for the chairs and tables, but yeah, I can go either way. This is pretty cool. In terms of placement, I really like this pattern for them. I think this looks nice. Another reason I love decorating the middle of the island is because it's really easy to spot balloons. Let's see what we get. It's a reception chair. That means it is junk. We'll also need to create a stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new path. While I'm at it, I'm gonna buy some new design tools as well because I do think we will want a sign and I don't think I need these, but it would just be nice to have them. And for this little music area, I brought back all the stuff we made before uh, where we made that little stage by <laughs> Uh, one of the houses. 
And I've decided to customize this stuff in a different way. So everything here is going to be blue. And by everything, I just mean the two instruments. Because I think it kind of needs this pop of color over here. I get really into using neutral colors and I forget that, you know, there are other colors. So I think this looks pretty nice, actually. Uh, I might turn around the ukulele just so these aren't in the same exact orientation. For what this is, the music stand is kind of silly, but I'm keeping it anyway. And I did put a donation box front and center. What it does is it kind of separates the band from everybody else, and it implies that you should probably leave a donation. There's just a couple more things I want to do to tie that build together. First, I just want to see what it would look like to put some lattice fence behind this build. I've not yet unlocked the ability to customize these fences, but I might not need to. It just kind of depends. Um, maybe it's too many different wood tones here. I don't know. Uh, it just feels like it needs a little backdrop of some kind, just something separating it from nooks. I'll try and figure out how to customize the fence later. I also made a couple of project tables. Now there is a specific reason for those and I'll get to that in a bit, but I need to figure out where I could put these tables and chairs now because <laughs> they're kind of being blocked. Shuffling things around a bit, I think they're fine the way they are right now, so we'll just leave them. You see, what we've created here today is a potluck. And potlucks have all kinds of different types of food at them. For example, a casserole could be at a potluck. Someone might bring an apple they found in their kitchen. Maybe somebody picked some mushrooms on the way in. Or maybe someone was making beans, ate the beans, and then brought this empty can. You see, here's the thing about potlucks. We all know that they're super gross. When you invite all of your neighbors and friends to one place and encourage them to make their own food from their own home, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to shower beforehand? Do you think they're going to worry about the proper handling and safety of the food you're about to eat? Or is it more likely that they're going to forget there was a potluck today and grab whatever they can find along the way so they can bring at least something? The moral of the story today is that potlucks are nasty and you should never go to them. It's day 26 of designing an Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we did a whole bunch of chores. Then we made everybody in the world who likes potlucks feel really bad. But enough screwing around because it is day 26 and time is running short. Only in 30 days. We might finally get the recipe for hedges. And if we do, I'm gonna be putting those things everywhere. Look, even Gizmo's excited. What? You didn't know we named the mascot Gizmo? Guys, it's been almost a month. How did you not know Gizmo's name? I'm just disappointed. And honestly, so is he. All right, enough wasting time. We should just need to buy something from him, and I think he'll then give us that recipe. He did not. Uh, <laughs> please? Oh, wait a minute. He's saying something different. Hold on. Yes! Oh, finally. Recipe for a hedge. I cannot believe it. What a fantastic way to start the day. Oh my god. I'm going to use this in so many spots. As you saw though, it is probably a good idea at this point to clean out my inventory a little bit so we can get started. I've gone ahead and gotten a bunch of my dailies out of the way already so that we can focus on the task at hand, which today is really about putting more things on the island. I still do have a couple of more little errands I wanna run. For example, I wanna get these fossils identified, all of which don't need to be donated. Grab the points anyway, sell off the excess and all of our junk, buy a whole mess of customization kits, wish that certain items were DIYs instead of ones you can only purchase, and then track down our daily DIYs. This one's the golden samurai suit, which I do believe requires the standard samurai suit. I don't know if that's a craftable. I think you just buy that from Nooks. The golden recipes, unfortunately, are ones that I can't do much with. And Angus is crafting a pot, which, I mean, as you know, I already have. I'm putting them everywhere. So, <laughs> two DIYs I can't do anything with. Don't worry though, we have one more chance to get a new DIY today. Okay, pretty nothing special, Captain Island. There are some shrubs here which I like, but I'm probably not gonna leave our island in this particular season. I've been thinking about that. And I do wanna go back to like August, where we kind of started, because the bushes I already have are in bloom in that season, and it just looks nice, though kind of late summer. So I probably will be leaving the island in that season instead of spring. All right, let's see what this is. It's a shell music box, which I do already know. So <laughs> one new DIY, which I can't use, and two old DIY. Oh well, let's bash some rocks and head home. Now that all the chores are done, what is the plan for today? Well, it's pretty non-specific because we are down to the last days of this challenge. That means our focus needs to be the finished areas or nearly finished areas of the island. You see, for me, the biggest thing about designing Animal Crossing Island is making decisions. If you want to finish an island quickly, you just need to make a lot of decisions. So we're going to go to some of these more barren areas and make some decisions. And I think this is one area I do want to start with because <laughs> it's so boring. It's just a straight path that goes up to a bridge. That's dumb. 
we need to figure out what we can do to make this path more interesting. Now, of course, you know one of the recipes I've been looking for is the tall lantern. I never did get it, so this entire island is street lightless. And you've probably also noticed that I'm no longer in cherry blossom season. We did end up missing the, you know, the last of it in terms of getting presents. We just didn't, we didn't get that far. So I'm letting that go. I, I think that cherry blossom recipes are great, but I cannot just stand around waiting for balloons anymore. It's driving me nuts. So my thought for this path was that I would start by making some like benches and we would just kind of put benches in sort of a pattern and line the path with little places to sit. Speaking of balloons, it's a football. Okay, so let's just make a little junk pile for nooks later. Anyway, now that we have our new head recipe, we can make a whole bunch of these. It kind of stinks that they require stone, but I mean, we get a lot for not too many materials and we can start using these to help line our paths as well. Speaking of lining paths, there are even more fences I'm trying to get, so let's check the nook stop. Oh right, I paid off my house. I forgot about that. That next loan will be Easy. I didn't have the simple wooden fence, so that's fine. Ugh, there's still a few we don't have, it feels like. So I've gone ahead and made my hedges, and now we can start to clean up this area a little bit and get it ready for decorating. The first thing I'm going to do is actually chop down these trees. I made the decision early on to keep as many trees as possible so that I could, you know, have them to decorate with. But I have a lot now. Like, I have way more trees than I realistically need, and these ones are just kind of getting in the way. I also don't have a ton of lumber, so I'm just going to go ahead, get rid of these, solve two problems at the same time, collect the, the lumber that comes out, and, uh, you know, I guess three problems, because we need to clean up the area anyway. And I got some points for my destruction, so now I'm feeling like I should do more destruction. But for now, let's just focus on this. There are a couple of ways in which we can handle this situation. These paths are wide, so if I wanted to, I could put the hedges here, and here, and just kind of create a more narrow path, and just have it lined with hedges. Alternatively, I could put the hedges on the grass, like this, and then if I wanted to, I could put maybe a bench or something, and again, line the path with those, and put those directly on the path. Or, and the idea that I think I like the most, is actually putting the hedges one tile away from the path, and then putting my benches on this section. It's kind of hard to know exactly what to do in this situation because I think all options could be interesting for decorating around and having the paths unobstructed is kind of nice too. Just a really nice wide path you can run all over and not worry about tripping over benches and stuff that people left behind. My thinking is if we hate it, we can just pick all this stuff up and try again. We do have some additional shrubs to kind of clean up as well. We'll deal with those later. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and extend this path over to the beach like we've done in other areas, just to go ahead and like complete that transition of like path to beach all over the place. I guess that means I should probably do that up here too, but I actually kind of like that this ends with grass. I might, I might just leave it. So this would be what it would kind of look like when it was all laid out. So all of our paths or all of our hedges laid out next to the path. And then we'd have to decide the pattern, right? We are all about symmetry here on GWiz. So how many benches, how far apart, what goes between the benches, so on and so forth. We also have this entire area to deal with <laughs> on the other side of the path. I don't think I'm gonna worry about it too much. I might just leave it a little open. I will go ahead though and create a bit of an entrance to resident services like we did over here. I'm gonna be using the iron garden bench across this entire area we're doing and I'm going to go ahead and customize it into anything but green, honestly. I've gone ahead and made six of them. I don't know if that'll be enough, but we'll see. The white benches give me kind of like gardeny vibes, and since I'm probably gonna be using a lot of trees and shrubs and stuff over here, I'm gonna go ahead and make them all white. The most tedious part about this entire process is going to be figuring out how far apart to space all of the benches. Again, <laughs> this is where symmetry kind of bites you a little bit because it is difficult to get this stuff spaced out when you have so much empty room. When I do stuff like this, I tend to work from the edges and kind of go towards the center. All I really need to figure out is how much space to put between each bench. I'm gonna start with maybe just four tiles and try that and go from there. It feels like four was a good starting point. I have one more bench I can place down and uh, it, it feels like four was like so close, but Unfortunately, I think it'd be better to increase the space between each one instead of trying to shove more in there because if you look as we walk, I mean, that's a lot of benches. It almost looks pretty silly. So I think if we make it like, I don't know, at this point I should probably do some actual math, but like five tiles or around that, that would be a bit better. So one less bench, just more space between them. I've been at this for longer than I care to admit, but it looks like the magic number is in fact four tiles and just take the edge benches in a little bit. I'm sure there's a billion ways you could do this, but this works for me. 
I don't want to think about this anymore. I hate numbers. With our benches all placed down, we can finally decide what goes between all of them. So instead of that, I went ahead and crafted the things that will go behind the benches because I'm a lunatic. I've decided to use the very minimal amount of fall items that we managed to get from the fall season and put those back here instead. They have some really cool customizations. So this one was called the Strange Mushroom. I like this. I'm gonna use three of these tables, probably about like that. I think maybe we'll do something like that. So they all kind of face a different direction and no one's really gonna be walking back here. So I'm probably gonna clutter this quite a bit. There'll be these tables. I'm also gonna put trees back here and flowers as well. Additionally, I made a leaf stool. I turned it green. And uh, I, I, let's see, maybe it can face this way. And then I also made another one of my favorite items, a terrarium, because why not, right? We're just creating a weird overgrown-ish nature area. And I thought that would look pretty cool. While I was at it, I made a maple leaf pond stone, which I'm gonna put maybe right about here-ish. Uh, you know, just thought this would be a nice touch as well, kind of poking out in between the trees. I'm gonna turn it this way though. And to complete this area, it's just gonna be kind of trees, maybe a couple other odd decorations here and there. Meanwhile, I have all these shrubs and all of them except for two are pink. So for symmetry reasons, that's a problem. Also, I need to know what this balloon is. It's a ranch wardrobe. The balloons are literally just items I can't use anywhere. Oh, and you might've also just noticed I made a red leaf pile. The plan for that was always the campsite. And I wanted to put that kind of between these two areas here. And I think something like that looks kind of nice, helps fill out the area. It also makes no sense at all because these trees don't <laughs> produce red leaves. Uh, Try not to think about it too much. If I had the green leaf pile, I would just do that. But you know what? It's a nice little pop of color. I may grab it and put it down here somewhere. It'll probably make more sense in this area, but let's just let's just think about it for a bit and see how much space we have left. Anyway, in terms of shrubs, I'm just gonna start placing these down between the benches. And I don't know how many it's gonna take. I didn't really count it too much. We'll just kind of put them down, see what we got left. So I've kind of figured out a pattern for them. We have one in the corner. We have two between these benches. Then I've gone ahead and put one around this bench just on either side and then did the same pattern up here at the top as before. So I think that's fine. Next up, we'll grab some food and we'll begin clearing out these trees. This is my biggest stockpile of trees on the entire island and they're taking up so much room. I'm gonna eventually have to decorate this area separately. So we're gonna start to move these over into a new, more permanent location. I can't believe I picked up 10 and I've hardly made a dent in this forest. <laughs> I'm starting by just digging some holes where I imagine trees would go. You can see right here kind of opens up a little bit. So I may put like maybe another one right here or perhaps it can go maybe right here. And we'll just start filling those holes and seeing how things look. There we go. Yeah, so far so good. Kind of walk over here. We have some trees. Something's back there, but you're not sure what just yet. Put one right here and kind of, you know, makes the terrarium stand out a bit more. The leaf stool is subtle, but nice. I got two right next to each other right here, which, oh, that one's too close to the edge, it looks like. Let me just try one more time. So I guess they can't be like right on top of this little area. I thought they could come right up to here. Let me try this one real quick. Okay, now this changes things a little bit. I wanted to make sure that I had some right up against the hedges. So it kind of, in you know, certain parts of the day anyway, casts a bit of a shadow on the benches. And that's all 10 of my trees spent. Let's just take a quick walk through here. And yeah, it does feel a bit woodsy. It's kind of cool. I do wish I could get them right on the edge. It's a bit disappointing that I can't, but maybe this present will cheer me up. No, never mind. Dreamy shelves are nothing. But overall, I think this is pretty nice. I'm now thinking I will go get that red leaf pile and put it like right here. There's just a big open spot here. I don't feel like I need more trees. It's gonna need more stuff. And as we saw the red leaf pile, just, I don't know, having it be red like that just looked a little bit off. Maybe you don't agree but I can't get it out of my head. So we'll try it right about here. And uh, yeah, I like that. I think it kind of fills in the space quite nicely. I also grabbed one of my favorite fences for just kind of leaving around as if it's an item and it's called the spiky fence. Some might argue that this fence looks a bit aggressive. The reason I like it though is because of how natural it looks. It looks kind of rustic. Someone just like tied some sharp sticks together and walked away, you know? If you're walking on the path and you're paying attention to what's beyond this hedge over here, it does look like there's a lot of things going on. I think that is a gap right there we need to fill in with something. But yeah, you got the mushroom tables, you got the, the stone, the leaf pile, you got those fences just kind of like poking out every so often. The last thing we need are some flowers. And if you recall, I wasn't sure what to do with the orange lilies, but now that we kind of have this area with these mushrooms and fall vibes, this now feels like the exact flower we need to kind of scatter around in those more empty spaces. I was also left with some extra red and yellow lilies over here, so I may as well grab them as well. I only have a couple of black lilies and I'm probably not going to use those because once you add the black to the orange, 
it definitely looks like a Halloween area. <laughs> That's gonna bug me. Okay, so I've gotten the flowers scattered around, and yeah, this is this is looking pretty cool to me. I like it a lot. It's kind of one of those areas that you can't put too many things in, you know? Since no one's gonna walk back there, you could really chalk that full of all kinds of fun items. As you know, I don't have a lot of any items, fun or otherwise, so I'm just doing my best. Of course, the last thing I would like to do is just find some items that I can put on the tables at least. How do you make this? Of course, mini dharmas don't have those. Turkey day wheat decor could be something we use in at least like maybe one of the tables. If we customize them, maybe we can use a couple of bamboo candle holders. I mean, the pot recipe, we just got another one of these today. I, I think the universe is telling us to use some of these. Well, let's go grab some more customization kits because I did run out like ages ago. All right, I just made two of these bamboo candle holders. So I'm gonna try that right there. Yep, perfect. Let's see if we can get one right here. Uh, it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. I think right there is something. I also wanna try this. I'm gonna need to remove some hedges, but I think I can get the turkey day wheat decor to face the way I want it to if I just place it from over here. Uh, I'll, I'll accept that. I was hoping the bow would face out, but it, having it face towards people walking is also fine. The one thing I'm unwilling to do is move the mushroom tables at this point. I have them exactly where I want them. I crafted a whole bunch of these pots, so we'll just kind of put these scattered about as well. I always like putting them kind of next to each other like this. I think it looks kind of neat. And uh, maybe we'll take this one and kind of put it there so you can see it easier. Let's shove another pot next to this mushroom table here. I don't know if anyone will be able to see it, but for some reason I would like to put one behind this stone that we made. Just kind of shove it right there. You can just barely see it from certain angles. I like it. And then this spot's been bugging me quite a bit. It's so empty. Do I have another pot? I don't, but let's go ahead and grab this one. And let's try putting it over here, actually. Yeah, that's much better. I'm glad there's something there now. I could place stuff in this area literally all day, but I want to also not forget that we have all these benches and there's really nothing of interest around them at all. So one type of flower I definitely want to keep on my island are mums, uh, especially the yellow ones because you can make mum cushions with them. That's why they're plucked at the moment. And I'm thinking we could maybe take the yellow and the white mums and maybe put those over by the benches. I may as well grab the pink ones to see if there's a home for them. And we'll come back for the red ones because my inventory is full. But I I mean, there's no reason not to include them, I suppose. There's like a perfect spot between this shrub and this bench. So I'm going to put a pink one here and do a pink one on the exact opposite end as well. I've created a pattern here where it's yellow, white, yellow for the mums here and then here. And I just popped a balloon and literally got a green leaf pile recipe. We were just saying we needed one of these. What is happening right now? Are you serious? Well, we might as well make one. What a redemption arc for this campsite today. Look at, oh, well, that's not where I wanted it. Look at that. That's exactly, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> oh, I could not be happier. I forgot that there are still young spring bamboo recipes we haven't gotten our hands on yet. So that was amazing. Let me go ahead and also, let me taper this here. I forgot that I've been meaning to do that. There we go. Anyway, now that we know how our mums are gonna be placed down, there is one thing that I did want to do, and that was to put the dark dirt path underneath where the flowers are going. This always just looks really nice, like you've intentionally created a little flower bed. So we're just gonna do that in these spots. Yeah, this is looking awesome. I could almost put this path underneath this entire thing under the benches, the shrubs, but I think using it in moderation actually looks even better. As for the other empty areas next to these benches, I think I still wanna place stuff down. I don't wanna leave them empty. I just need to find the right items to put there. But we have other areas we still need to focus on today. It may not be that big, but this area in particular is one that I'm very interested in kind of finishing up. And if you're wondering why it seems a bit later, it's because I just ate some food. Due to the very central location of this particular spot, I've decided this is the perfect place to put a crafting area. In my opinion, little spots like this are the perfect way to unwind after a huge project. My favorite thing to use for crafting areas are the iron shelves, which I don't have. But my second favorite thing is barrels. So since I'm lacking tall items, I think instead of a shelf, I'll go ahead and grab another tree. I know I've used a lot of paths around this island, but I'm going to try and put a little dirt path underneath this crafting area. I think in this case, leaving like a little bit of grass in front of it might look good, but we'll, uh, we're, we're open to putting more dirt there. We're also open to just getting rid of this dirt if it looks bad. I'm gonna place a tree on the corner, just like that. I think that looks pretty nice. I also wanna try the corrugated iron fence back here since this area is supposed to look kind of like a little bit rough. We'll put the barrel down kind of next to the tree like this. So I'm gonna place the workbench maybe like right about here. And that does leave a little space there, which I don't know, is a, is a bit frustrating, but I can also kind of ignore it. And then I'm gonna place a box shaped seat right here to kind of close off this area a little bit, but I'm not going to stop there. What would a toolbox look like on top of the seat? 
Um, <laughs> it's a bit funny because the seat is so small, but you know what? I actually kind of like it. It almost looks like the toolbox has its own set of legs. And then another type of item I actually like decorating with would be customization kits. A lot of times I'll put a whole stack of them next to a crafting area. In this case, we're just putting one, but uh, it's nice because I use this to refresh my tools like all the time and sometimes you don't have them on you. So going here and like grabbing your stack of customization kits and then fixing up your tools is actually a really good strategy. Could this be another recipe? It is, it's a basket pack. I legitimately love finding wearables for my character because of this DIY challenge. I don't know, I might actually update my outfit soon. Anyway, I'm not done quite yet. This area still needs some stuff. It's so like close to being perfect. I'm gonna try a tree here. Now, one, I don't think it'll work because it's too close to the cliff, but even if it does, I think it's going to obstruct the view of this little pond, or it might enhance it. I don't know. Let's let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, well, let it be known that something should go right here. I honestly don't know what. I need more tall things. What about something like this? I would say flowers placed down as items is incredibly underrated. I like this a lot. Something I've been meaning to do is unlock this right here. It's gonna allow me to customize fences. And the fence I wanna customize is this one. There's all kinds of fun colors, but let's be lazy and just try white. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And I know these have been kind of a go-to item for me, but I'm crafting yet another destination signpost. I mean, come on, where there's an intersection, there's confusion. So what solves that? A destination signpost. Going back to our hedges, I think we should put hedges somewhere nearby and I don't know if they should go around this build or kind of near the flowers. Let's try them here first. I kind of feel like a hedge backdrop could be a good choice. I will need to find a new home for these signs, but uh, <laughs> that's not really a problem. I'll, I'll figure that out. So I feel like the hedges here do add something, just an extra layer of separation between the flower garden and the potluck. We of course have to match them on this side though. And I just wanna see what happens when we kind of start lining the paths with them a little bit. Something about these here feels really good. I still need to figure out what's gonna go in front of Abel's. I have a little bit of room before you get into like this area we made forever ago, but, uh, oh, I have to get the balloon. Uh, I'm not sure what could go here. It can't be too big though. Let's go see what this is. It was just some iron. I was just doing some testing and something is off with the table placements here, but there's not much I feel like I can do about it. But like, for example, if you were up against this hedge and you walked, you would run into this table, but the same does not happen on this side. So I've been just kind of trying to figure stuff out. I still have like to squeeze through here. I still have to squeeze through here. But yeah, it's just because we're, you know, dealing with an even number and then odd numbers and it's causing all kinds of chaos. Anyway, as long as I don't include that information in the final edit of this video, no one will ever know. We have another balloon floating overhead and this one is a safety railing. So it is junk I cannot use. While we're here, this is another section of the island we really need to start figuring out sooner rather than later. This is of course our entrance, which we discovered isn't perfectly aligned with resident services unless you, you count the entire footprint of the airport. Then it is kind of perfectly aligned. So we made this big path but unfortunately it stops you right here because this was like one of our first builds as we were working towards three stars and it's never moved. It's always just kind of stayed this way. Because of this, we're kind of in an interesting conundrum. Do we want a path that leads right into the entrance of resident services or could you almost include this? as part of the entrance to resident services, this little camp area. I never intended for this build to never change. I thought I would move it around, but honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of thinking we don't change this build or at least remove it. I do think I could enhance it in one small way. Just a little patch of dirt. It makes everything feel way more complete. As for the front of the build, this is where things get a bit interesting because we started out symmetrical and then we did something to kind of change things. We added a house here <laughs> and I'm not planning on moving it. So I think we'll have to do something right here that kind of balances this front part out. And then back here, I'm going to include some cherry trees. Cherries are like the fruit for the whole island. So I thought it'd be cool to put them in like a fun pattern. We just got the light bamboo rug recipe from a balloon. So this is cool. I could use all the indoor decorations that are in the game, <laughs> so this is great. I'm gonna scoop up this money tree instead of cutting it down. Uh, I could use the money. Today's not been a great money-making day. However, we've kept that money tree for so long that I'm starting to feel a bit, uh, you know, territorial over it. I wanna protect it. Go ahead and catch these. I am gonna chop this tree down, especially because it just tried to kill me. What I would like to do over here is put yet more dirt patches. I'm very limited on the amount of space that I have, and if I'm using dirt patches to kind of like put underneath these cherry trees, you can see that I don't have a lot of room for as many as I thought. I thought I could put like maybe three on each side, but certainly not the way this pattern is working out. At least if I want the separation between them that I want, 
it's not gonna work out. That said though, there's nothing inherently wrong with having just four cherry trees up front, especially because we have even more as you go back here. So yeah, I think we'll roll with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put dirt where you see these open squares. I just wanted to like visualize how many trees we could place, but yeah, I'll do that. And I still don't know what's gonna go right here, but definitely something. This time around, we're actually gonna plant some little baby cherry trees because I think I've chopped down like all the other ones that <laughs> don't already have a permanent home. And luckily for us, planting fruit trees was a task. Oh, and we hadn't planted cherries before. <laughs> cool. So th that leaves only two other trees, oranges and pears, which we'll probably never get. So where does that leave us? Well, we have this entire stretch of path, at least the left side of it, all decked out. I don't think I need to do anything else over here except maybe put a couple little items between these benches Maybe. We don't even have to do that necessarily. If we walk over here, the entrance of the island itself is starting to come together with some brand new cherry trees that'll grow in soon and plenty of space to put a couple little other knickknacks, maybe some more hedges, I'm not sure. We also have decided that this build is just gonna stay right where it is. And we've started to come closer to completing this big commerce area next to Abel's and Nook's. The potluck area is looking a little bit better. Now we know we need to put something right in here. We're just not sure what yet. And then my favorite corner of the island so far is probably this one. Just something about this little section feels really, really good. And I'm hoping to put something right here that really ties it all together. Just not sure what yet. So this was a very productive day, but we still have so much work ahead of us. It's day 27 of designing Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we unlocked hedges and then we used them to decorate a pretty complicated section of the island. From there we went on to make a few little tweaks around other parts of the island as well. It's the 30 day DIY. There is a lot I would like to get done today, <laughs> not a lot of time to do it, which is not a position you want to be in when you're doing a 30 day challenge and you're coming up on the end of it. As always though, let's start with our dailies. Our beach DIY is the oil barrel bathtub. This one does require me to buy oil barrels, uh, but hey, that's a pretty cool recipe. I do like the idea of maybe putting those somewhere where we're looking to kind of junk up an area. So yeah, I'll just kind of keep that uh, in my brain. I don't want to forget that I have that. We'll sell off the rest of our crops, which brings us to about 175,000 bells. We'll get some more patterns from Sable. We'll find Renee crafting a wooden waste bin, which I think, I think this is my first trash can. Let's go ahead and spend some miles on a captain tour. And to my surprise, we found our fourth crop, I believe. Wheat. And the recipe on this island is one I already have, the extra long log sofa. But wheat, this is great. Wheat is one that I was really hoping to get because it is used in a lot of cooking recipes and it just looks really cool. I mean, if you get a big old field of wheat, I mean, not, come on, nothing says farm like big old field of wheat. If you've been following this challenge since the start, you know that I am not allowed to simply buy the crops. So this is the only way we can find them. And I am really impressed that we've been able to find four different types of crops this way. I found a money rock, but I forgot to pick up the stone on the end of it, so. <laughs> The best bag of bells is going to get lost, unfortunately. I guess if I tried to pick that up fast enough, maybe I could have gotten it. Oh well. Always clear your space around your rocks. It doesn't matter how many years you play this, it's just such an easy mistake to make it seem. So if I'm being completely honest with you, I was thinking the wheat would look really good in front of my house. And not just a little bit, literally replacing all of these potatoes with wheat was kind of my plan. but. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is a lot of stupid potatoes. It makes way more sense, in my opinion, to clear out Eric's potato farm. This is still a pretty decently sized farm, and, you know, it won't take us all day. My genuine thought here is wheat just looks better when you're creating a farm. It should at least be somewhere, and there should be a lot of it. But we have to, we have to just respect Eric as the sole wheat provider on the island. That's just how it's gonna be. I don't know how many times I can plant this in the wrong spot. Oh my gosh, that was annoying. <laughs> just sitting there like, nope, nope, nope. Maybe this balloon will cheer me up. Nope, it's garbage. What's pretty cool is that I only ended up with one extra ripe wheat plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick all of these. We'll get everything watered and sold. Uh, do I even wanna know what you're thinking about? Is it wheat? He's trying to stay busy. Oh, he wants to come over to my place. Yeah, no, that's not happening, but uh, you know, you're my favorite, bye. And now that Eric thinks he's my favorite villager of all time, I can go ahead and sell his stuff. We're almost at 200K and we can almost move on from doing our dailies, but we have a campsite villager. I'm not even gonna get my hopes up. I'm just walking in. No way. I knew it, Pietro is number 44. Pietro's a top 
50 villager. The thing is, these rankings are on the cusp of changing soon, and he's not super high on the list. That being said, I do feel like it's worth the grind to maybe like sit here and try to convince him to move in because, <laughs> you know, we could use all the help we can get with this goal of trying to get three top 50 villagers. And already he's kind of interested, so let's see. Of course, he wants to leave it up to chance. I'm terrible at these. Hopefully this is a 50-50 chance. And he's just asking me to pick a red or a black card. I'm gonna go black. Oh, dang it. Oh, it stings so bad. Okay, my goal is to sit here and try to get him to move in. I really want to see who he would kick out. We're already playing again, and uh, that was like only two seconds of him like deciding, well, maybe... All right, we're going to try black again. It's red again, a red diamond. Are you serious? Okay, so this next card game took a really long time to get to. And he's making me pick out of four choices, which I hate. I'm going to go ahead and pick red diamond again. It seems to be what he keeps drawing. And of course, it's not that. Now he keeps teasing me about moving here and then saying, well, no, but moving sucks and I don't really want to help you. I, no, no matter what I do, I can't, I can't win the games. Here we go, you should live here. And now it's up to chance again. Please at least let it be a 50-50 game. No, of course not. I'm just gonna pick Red Heart. I, we're gonna lose anyway. <gasps> okay, now, who do you wanna kick out? And it looks like Harry is on the chopping block here, which is no problem for me because Harry <laughs> is ranked pretty low. Pietro claims that Harry was about to move anyway. I was not aware of this, but I'm not worried about it. Here we go. This is officially our third top 50 villager because as of right now we have mary who is ranked number 46 and eric who is ranked very comfortably at number 27 and then the odds are stacked in our favor because we have pashmina who's ranked 58 and kabuki who's ranked at number 54 now of course they're not in the top 50 but there's only a few days left these rankings could change i know a lot of you have been voting these villagers up in the rankings and should things change I am confident that we are going to be able to meet that goal. So, is Pietro the villager we needed in the campsite today? Yes, absolutely. Is Pietro the villager we deserve? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I went ahead and grabbed the green bamboo fence DIY. And speaking of DIYs, here are all the recent ones we've unlocked. I'm still missing a few different types of fences I would really like to have for this challenge, but uh, I can I can compromise on those. Let's get to work. I am going to get some supplies. We are going to build some fences. We're going to build a few things. Well, look who it is. Eric? I specifically told you no. No, you cannot come over. What did you bring me? Apples. Of course, it's always apples with you, isn't it? This is what I get for telling someone they're my favorite villager. Get out of my house. Okay, anyway, so there's a few sections of the island I want to work on today, and we're going to start right here with this tiny little one. This is going to be our warm-up section. We're going to start by cutting down this tree. Not because we needed to, but because I just kind of needed to get that anger out. And now we're going to dig some evenly placed holes. And then we're going to plant some cherries. Cherries, of course, are our primary fruit here on the island. And I wanted to put something behind resident services, and I only had this one little strip of space to work with, so hey, I think this is fitting. They should grow here, but we'll keep an eye on them. Next, I'm going to put some fences behind Able Sisters. It's going to be a little bit tricky because we only have so much space there, but here we go. We definitely want to put them right up to this tree, but I'm wondering if I should put them all the way behind the building as well, just just to kind of complete this look here. I do think walking like right here, you can kind of see a little glimpse of this fence, and it looks fine. I, I kind of like that. I'm not sure about the color of this stall, but the, uh, you know, the idea behind this is just to create a little area of clothing next to Able Sisters here. And I keep wearing other straw coats. I want to wear my straw coat. <laughs> and I'm just trying to place down the ones that I've crafted. So I cra did craft an additional straw coat. We'll place that here. We'll place this grass skirt here. Place the log pack here. The idea behind this is that, uh, you know, Abel's doesn't need these fancy clothes. All they need is stuff they find around the island to sell people. And anyone who visits the island via dream address, which will be a thing, can go ahead and grab themselves an outfit. If I'm on top of things, I can maybe fish out some more boots and make, you know, a backpack wearable as well and make like a whole outfit for visitors. But this will do for now. And I changed the color of the stall because it was just way too much green. The next area we need to decorate is actually in front of Able Sisters. And this one is gonna be different. Oh wow, two rocks right next to each other here. I might try to leave these, but yeah, this area gonna be a little bit different. I saw a suggestion in the comments recently to set up a farmer's market somewhere out here. And I just thought that was kind of a cool idea. So we are going to be working more with some dirt paths. I'm just going to go ahead and put them over here. I don't know if I can keep these rocks now that we're doing these paths because I want the rocks on top of the paths and I can't do that with them in the way. We'll have to remove the stumps and everything. If we want stumps, that's easy enough. The rocks, 
Yeah, I can't really do much about that. I've never used a rock as a backstop to another rock, but well, no, maybe I have when I set up a rock garden, but never like this. this there's so much open space on this island. To see two rocks so close together is pretty impressive. This is good. I need stone, and uh, I'm about to cut down a bunch of trees so I can get more wood as well. This dirt area will be symmetrical with our potluck area, and I'm a little bit nervous because for a farmer's market, like, I don't have a lot of stuff. I have stalls, and I have some different types of food I can put in here, which, of course, I sold everything today, so I'm going to have to wait until the crops grow again. <laughs> There's a lot of pitfalls to this idea, but I just really enjoyed it, and so... I thought I would just do my best for now, but this is definitely going to be the unfinished build of the day, that's for sure. Now, this may surprise you, but I don't get out much, so I don't exactly know what a farmer's market is supposed to look like, but I do imagine stalls that, it's, that sell food and stuff, and I also imagine farm stuff. For instance, another hay bed. Hay beds are farm stuff, right? And I think hay beds could go somewhere in this build. Oh, and Wendy's looking for an autograph book. Okay. I know exactly where this item is, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. This is how I prefer to do lost items. I forgot they'll even ask you where they are. Usually what happens is I see a lost item, and these days, I don't touch it. I leave it alone completely because if it's one thing I hate doing, it's asking everybody I can find, oh, is this yours? Is it? I don't like it. And in this game, it is easier than previous Animal Crossing games because in, last, in the last games, like, you would just keep asking people. At least in this one, they tell you. Gears. I got more gears. So, anyway, when they ask for where something is, I, I like that. I like a little scavenger hunt more than I like having to hunt down a villager. <laughs> Wendy's gift to me is, of course, clothing I can't wear. A business suit coat, though. That would have been nice. Anyway, the only reason that happened is because I was headed home to grab some hedges. I'm going to go ahead and put hedges around our new farmer's market. I thought I would get away from using the lattice fence because I was just kind of using it here and here. And I like when things are symmetrical, but I also like to kind of change things up a little bit here and there. So we're going to close things off with hedges, which I think this makes the path just look really nice and inviting. Especially, again, if you're doing a dream address, you wake up, you come here, you grab your outfit. Yeah, this feels pretty cool. And then what I did is I grabbed a couple different types of fences for once you're actually like in the farmer's market. How do we separate this area from this area? It doesn't need to be completely closed off. I just want to create a boundary of sorts. I want the illusion of closed off. Go around, okay? You can't just like come in here. So we'll try barbed wire, <laughs> which is a pretty aggressive fence, but it gets the point across. And uh, yeah, no one's no one's gonna try and hop over that. Uh, you know, that's, that's not happening. It's a lot though, I'll admit. It's, it's a pretty messed up fence. Alternatively, we have some corrugated iron fence and this is pretty cool. I think this one fits the farm vibes even more. And it's just a it's just a good, solid, all-American fence. I think it looks rustic. I think it provides the separation we're looking for. And you can still go around it if you are just too lazy. I'm finding a lot of balloons today, but they are all filled with garbage I cannot use. Please be a recipe. Oh man. <sighs> and it's pants. It's, I just can't wear this stuff. I need... Now I don't have a slingshot, and I need recipes. I did also craft a couple of these wooden field signs. These are great for farms and farm adjacent areas. But now I'm looking at this gap we have right in here and thinking, you know what this needs? A tree. One could argue that there should also be a tree on this side, but then where would I put my signs? I don't know. These signs actually need to go somewhere else, I think. So maybe I do move a tree <laughs> into that corner. We'll... We'll figure this out. And I can't believe there's already another balloon. I'm glad I made a new slingshot. And that time it was a film projector. So I just have a bunch of stuff I gotta sell. Speaking of trees, I need to start clearing out this area as well. The farmer's market for now is almost done. I wanna make another stall, but I've run out of just regular wood. And I thought, well, I have some trees I need to clear out of my way. We need to be kind of careful here because we could be in, get in a position where we can't replenish the trees. I can of course shake money off of money trees and keep those. And I want a few, but I definitely don't need this many. So I'm just gonna get rid of some. And basically what we're doing is opening up the last big empty area that I have on the island. I mean, there's other empty areas, but this is by far the biggest. And I have a couple of different ideas for what we could do here. They're a bit strange, a bit out there, especially one of them. 
But hey, I mean, it would fill in the space and that's what it's all about. I did end up moving my signs. So we have potluck today kind of advertised at the entrance here. And then the warning sign is placed accordingly. I'm left with three trees, which I'm looking now and that probably was not enough, but I am gonna pick them up and move them to their new permanent home. I'm putting all three in the middle here. Now I say the middle because this is going to be in between our flower farm and a new build that's gonna go about right here. I have to pick up all of these money trees and I guess what I'm gonna do is probably hold on to them because I'm going to just use them in part of the build. Let's begin by placing down a sand path. This will be another build that's gonna be kind of difficult to complete, but I actually think I have enough DIYs to call it done today, which <laughs> has been kind of rare. As soon as I start placing down this fence, I think you'll understand what it is that I'm building. But here we go. I am making a park, a park for children to play in. Are there children? Well, uh, we just, Got Pietro, does that count? Or is that more of like a a children's entertainer kind of character? I, I don't know, all right? I'll let you be the judge of that. But we are gonna put up this fun, colorful blue fence and there's a whole bunch of items. Well, a small handful of items that I've unlocked that I think would make for really fun playground vibes. I'm not much of a kid core designer, but I'm working with enough of a small space here to where I think I can pull this off maybe. Maybe a kid core professional would tell me that I should alternate the colors of the fence so it's not just one boring color, but you know what? I would tell them, make your own island, leave me alone. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good start. In terms of flowers here, I'm just gonna leave them for now. I kinda just need storage for flowers at this time and I'm running out because I'm just kind of filling up the whole island. So I'm gonna leave them. Maybe, maybe it becomes a thing. I take all these flowers and I just mix them up, colors, types, and this whole area just looks like, I don't know, flower bramble. I think that could look kind of cool. Tree wise though, the reason I wanted more trees was because I needed some trees to plant around this park area. So that is going to be a money tree there, which we'll eventually just shake the money off of. And then we have a couple more and I thought they should maybe go on the side here, maybe around this path. So those create a nice little entrance for us. And then I just have these two shrubs. I have no idea what to do with these. So they're gonna go here, right at this entrance. And by the time I got done crafting, I actually had more than I thought for this build. I don't even know if I have a big enough area here, but we're gonna make it work. So we're gonna put some tree standees and hedge standees in here because I think they just look super fun. And then from there, I wanted to place not much, but just a little bit of furniture. So I made a table, a chair, and I also made a stool. I then went ahead and made some modeling clay and customized it as well. I thought this would be kind of a neat little project for uh, <laughs> for people to work on. I went ahead and also made a wooden block stereo, which I'm gonna tuck behind these tree standees here. I probably need to move these tree standees around to make this work, but I thought putting this back here could be fun. I have some extra wooden block toys. I'm gonna put one on the table just to clutter that up a bit. And then we'll put another one, maybe somewhere right here. I don't know. <laughs> I've never decorated with these items before. They're kind of cool. I'm gonna throw a ring toss right here. And speaking of fun, we got a balloon flying right over the place. Look at that. And it's a bamboo doll. This is basically the best recipe in the entire game. And I'm gonna show you why. Just look at this master craftsmanship. It's an incredible item and perfect for this kid core build. I'm keeping it. Anyway, before that happened, the item I was excited about next were these tire toys. These are just great. I, I love these. I kind of wish I had more tires. I'd probably place a couple more down, but you know what? We'll just take what we can get. And I honestly think this area is pretty good. I like it a lot. This is cool. We have some tree standees. We got lots of things to do. We're gonna have some music and then there'll be some trees kind of grown around it that'll make it that whole area kind of feel a little more enclosed. I was also thinking for these flowers, I may go out to different islands and grab maybe one type of flower. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't like too much randomness and this is starting to feel like it might be too much. So yeah, we'll figure that out too. But what about this whole area right here? Well, I did say it was gonna be a little bit odd, right? Remember when I said that? Well, here's what I'm thinking. We have this money tree that we've been just kind of like shifting around here and there. I haven't actually like harvested the money from the tree yet. So I thought maybe we kind of idolize this particular money tree a bit. If villagers would stop trying to sit under it anyway. See, this is what we're trying to solve though. I need you to go away. I need you to go away. Leave my tree alone. No, I see you walking towards the tree. I need you to stop walking towards the tree. Halt. No, 
Don't run towards the tree. Leave me alone. Oh, it's a butterfly. Oh, he just wants the butterfly. Okay, that's fine. In any case, I thought we would go ahead and place a little path like this around the tree. We will go ahead and smooth out all the corners. And then I wanted to try to see how I could fit this fence right around the tree. So let's start by just putting one piece of fence on all four sides. And as I thought, I don't really love that. I'm gonna try and close it off. There we go. Okay, so this to me is something. It's the start of something. I think what it needs around it now are just some flowers. And it's just a little monument to a money tree that survived all of the <laughs> struggles I was going through with money on this island. I mean, it hasn't been here since day one or anything, but it's been here for a while. I just kind of forgot about it. It's been through a lot of time traveling. It's been through a lot. And the last thing I need is anyone shaking the money off the tree. The next time I go out to find some nature to put around here, we'll go ahead and finish decorating around it. Well, we ended up with one completed build today, but we have a lot more ahead of us. It's day 28 of designing the Animal Crossing Island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday, we found our third and final top 50 villager, Pietro. Then we spent the rest of our day decorating some other spots on the island that had just been empty for way too long. It's the 30 day DIY. Today is a prep day. I do feel like we will get some decorating done today, but I've determined that it's very, very important that we actually make a lot of preparation for the end of this challenge, which is upon us. And one of those things we were missing was a town tune. Well, at least until now. Yeah, Isabel gets it. And I'll go ahead and take those miles while I'm at it. What I mean by prep day though, is that we have two very big home loans we need to pay off this one, and then one more after we pay off that one so we can get both the attic and the basement added to our house. That means that tomorrow is set aside for actually finally decorating our house. And today and day 30 are going to be the days where we kind of start making the finishing touches on the island. But again, today it's mostly prep. We need to go out, we need to find some different things, some different DIYs. We need to find some more naturey things like shrubs and flowers potentially some trees as well. There's just a lot of open space still that I need to kind of start filling in with nature so it looks complete, it looks like an effort was made. And listen, you guys have been here, you know an effort has been made, you know we're not slacking off or anything. But, I mean, it's no secret that the island isn't like full of stuff. There, there's definitely a lot of space that could be filled in with things and or stuff. I've decided that the right course of action is just to do the best with what we've got. Not every single island in Animal Crossing has to be decorated where every tile has something on it. We just need to fill in little spaces like this here and there and get things feeling a bit more finished. And look at me making the perfect amount of fences. We're good now on fences. Let's go ahead and start watering Eric's crops. And let's also talk about what it means to do one of these prep days. We've done a few of these, but they've been centered around the grind of finding DIYs. Now we need to focus on making money and our primary source of revenue has always been farming. Big farms full of lots of potatoes and now we have tomatoes and sugarcane and wheat and I wanna take full advantage of that. So right now what I'm doing is I'm giving the crops their kind of last round of watering. We are going to kind of go through the day as normal. I've already done a lot of my dailies uh, today. We just need to find a couple DIYs we are going to go to August, which is the month that I want to finish this challenge in. Once we're in August, all the crops will be fully grown. There'll be some time skipping as we continue to water crops, pick the crops, sell the crops, and, you know, make the money. And of course, along the way, there are some designy things that I would like to do. For example, I've, I've decided that these staircases could really use just a little more dirt around them. Yeah, I think that looks a little more natural. We're gonna do that down here as well. It's little details like this that are going to consume, I think the majority of my time when it comes to island decorating. Everything has kind of been set up though for success. Everything is kind of placed where it needs to be and we just gotta tweak it a little bit here and there. For example, I've had this stall for a while. I've never really liked the way this build turned out, but as time has gone on, I have actually really liked the pottery build, which I'm happy to leave the way it is but we're gonna go ahead and update this stall next. It was suggested to me a while ago that fish bait could be a really good thing to put on the stall since it was trying to be like a fishing stall and we didn't have anything fishy to put on it. And then I'm also gonna put a flimsy rod, but just in like toolbox form. Maybe if someone visits, they can grab the fishing rod and some fish bait 
and have some fun. And what the heck, why don't we upgrade the fishing rod just because we're feeling nice? I think matching the color of the fishing stall to the stall we have over here is the right call. I have the awning though a little bit different and we'll go ahead and put our fish bait and fishing rod up here. To me, that looks a lot nicer. It looks a little more like a stall that has something to do with fishing, which is all I really want. Another chore I've been putting off for some time is growing some gyroids. I've actually collected a whole bunch of broken down gyroids, and I thought now might be a good time to go ahead, bury these, and water them so that when we come back, we have a whole bunch of gyroids, and I'm thinking, I've been thinking about this for a while, we might use some gyroids around the island. I We did kind of make them ourselves, right? We'll use some gyroids, perhaps. And then uh, the rest, I can sell for money, and I need money. So <laughs> I will ruthlessly sell the remaining gyroids, no problem. It is gonna be so satisfying to have this many gyroids growing at once. Let's also head to the museum and deal with all of our fossils. It looks like just two of these are getting donated. Don't ask me why I'm still donating anything to the museum. I don't have any good answers for you. I don't know why I'm doing that. I don't need to, but let's go ahead and collect our bells. Speaking of collecting things, I found another gyroid fragment and our beach DIY, which is another grass skirt. <laughs> I just can't believe how long we went through this challenge without getting that. And then we just get spammed with them later on. And then Norm is making a wooden toolbox, which is another DIY we got later on too. Before we head to our Caton Island, I'll go ahead and water all of my flowers. This is something I have not done nearly enough of. For someone who is desperate for flowers, this is kind of an oversight for me. I, I should have been watering these all along. I don't like it though. I've made it as easy as I possibly can for myself and I still really don't like taking time to water flowers or crops for that matter. However, it's a bit more motivating to water crops because at least I can sell them for something. Now let's head out to our Captain Island and see if we can't find ourselves some shrubs and a new recipe. So it looks like the flowers on this island will be tulips. And I like tulips but uh, I don't really have them on the island already. I'm kind of looking for a flower I already have, so I don't need to collect as many. And we got the modeling clay recipe, which is another recipe we already had. I can't believe three chances to get a new recipe and <laughs> we didn't get a single one. I also don't want these shrubs because same reason I don't want the flowers. I already have a bunch of different types of shrubs and uh, I'm trying not to add too much variety there. I know that potentially the rocks on this island could be money rocks, but I am gonna head back and finish off the dailies that I have on my own island because we have some time traveling to do. Ah, there we go. And it looks like we'll get all the money from this one. And now that we found our money rock, we can go ahead and plant our money tree. Since I'm not quite sure yet how the final product of my front yard is going to look, I'll start planting the money trees here with the intent of just shaking the bells off and not actually destroying the, uh, <laughs> the tree yet. Uh, because we did chop down like all of our excess trees yesterday and I have like some regrets. Let's go ahead and bury these last two gyroid fragments, sell our excess DIYs. And then before we travel into August, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. You might remember a conversation I had with Froggy Crossing where she told me to find a frog villager for the island. Well, it just so happens I did find one. I haven't forgotten about our goal of getting a frog villager on this island that Raven would love. And when I realized that I had Lily's amiibo sitting on my shelf this whole time, I couldn't resist but invite her to the island. Getting Lily is super important because that is going to ensure that we meet our goal of getting a big YouTuber to, t oh, excuse me, one second. Hello? Hi, Um, quick question. What are you doing right now? Oh, uh, you know, trying to get a campsite villager. Yeah, with an amiibo. Oh. Well, yeah, I had some amiibos lying around and, uh, you know, Lily, it's been so like impossible to what? get her on the island. Ex ex who? Excuse me? Oh, Lily, the frog. You're trying to get Lily with an amiibo. Well, I have the Lily amiibo. I'm not really trying. It's just something I could just do. So I thought. You're doing this whole challenge and you're just going to use an amiibo just like that. You're just going to go to Etsy and get one of those little teeny tiny amiibos and just use it just like that. Oh, well, well, no, it's an official Lily amiibo. No, it's one of those tiny ones. I know it. R but you're going to get Lily out of all villagers. You know I'm trying to get Lily? You're really doing this to me personally? Yeah, yeah. I thought, well, if I get Lily, you'll for sure come and tour the island, right? No, no, no. This is, this is rubbing it in my face. This is ridiculous. I can't come to your island after this. This is a personal attack. I, I have other frog amiibos. No, this, this, is, this is too much for me. After this... I can't do it anymore. I can't come. I'm sorry. Uh, 
I'm not I'm not really sure we're gonna meet our goal of getting a big YouTuber. We'll find we'll find somebody. I just I didn't I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, let's just jump ahead. It's fine. I think we just have too much to do. We can't focus on this right now. Welcome to August. Oh boy, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I I fixed my hair. Yeah, it looks way better. Um we have weeds everywhere, which totally stinks. But uh you know what? This was worth it because we can sell them, I guess. <laughs> All of the next time jumps we're about to do are focused around making money. We need to come back with a lot of money so that we can pay down these home loans. And fortunately, it's raining, which means our crops don't need me to water them. And that feels really good because just picking them and getting them sold already is a lot of work for me. Gosh, there's holes everywhere. <laughs> Uh, okay, so anyway, we have the maximum amount of crops here. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna pick all of these We're gonna get them sold in addition to that though We are also going to buy a nook miles ticket and try to get to an island that has some different shrubs and flowers and things like that We'll need to do that I think a few times just to get all the naturey bits that I'm trying to get for this island as we look to finish it up And I guess I may as well do a captain island look for DIYs and all that fun. Look, we're not probably gonna do too many time jumps <laughs> But we need money uh, if, if I don't do it now, I'm probably going to have to play later off camera and just do a bunch of diving for sea critters and things like that to try and get the money we need. I'm hoping that this method of the time jumping and growing crops in, in rapid succession is exactly what we need for, uh, you know, finishing this up. Our beach DIY is the green bamboo mat, which I already know. We found our money rock, which is awesome. First rock I tried. Since it's been so long, we can go ahead and harvest the money trees that we have lying around. My playground is covered in weeds. That's so annoying. <laughs> I don't want to focus on weeds right now, but uh, I mean, we're trying to have a five-star island here. We should probably make sure these don't stick around too long. What I'm really interested in is making sure I get all the money from these money trees. Oh, I lost a bag to the fence. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. What a ripoff. You would never do that to me, idolized money tree. Right? Well, I'd remove the fence. Obviously, I'd remove the fences. Don't worry about it. Just go with it, okay? Listen, I will chop you down. Do not mess with me. I'm gonna go ahead and sell all of the things you see here, and they're gonna give me over 100,000 bells. And since we're doing a money run, we should probably keep checking on the hot item, which is in this case a box-shaped seat and a wooden block table. If anything in there is made of just straight up iron, that would be amazing for me, because it would be really easy to craft a lot of iron somethings. I have a lot of iron just kind of sitting around. By the way, if you were wondering why I chose August of all the months, it's the month we started the challenge in, and it just so happens that's also the month that our shrubs are in bloom. And I really wanted to make sure we finish this thing up while those shrubs are actually, uh, you know, showing flowers on them. Because I just think that looks nicer. I haven't said hi to Pietro yet. I've also never been in his house. <laughs> so Pietro moved here months ago and is just now reintroducing himself to me thanks to moving in from the campsite. Uh, you know what? I know a lot of people are terrified of you, but I, I'm glad to see you, at least in this context. Let's see what Norm is crafting. It's a pansy table, and I think I have that. Yes, yes I do. Now before we go selling all of Eric's crops, I think we should leave just a few behind for the farmer's market, but honestly, not many at all. I think maybe we literally drop like a wheat down, maybe we drop a tomato and maybe a sugar cane. The idea being that we are gonna wanna decorate this with something, and we don't have much, so yeah, perfect. <laughs> perfect farmer's market. We'll sell the rest of it, and we'll get another 53,000 bells, which brings us to 300,000 bells on our person. But don't forget, we also have a ton of gyroids to unbury. Not just the ones we planted here, but there's a whole bunch of stuff buried in front of my house, I think due to rain or something. So we have those to look forward to. I know we're not gonna get as many money trees as we got today, obviously, because I had like a few just kind of sitting but we need to find today's money tree. We need to do everything we can to just be stacking the deck in our favor so that every few days that we jump ahead, we can just cash out. And hopefully, I won't need to do this too many times to get the house paid down so that I have all the rooms. <laughs> we got two gyroid stamps here in our little stamp book, which means we got even more points. That's great. I almost forgot, but we also have some peach trees we can harvest. I suppose I could also harvest uh, Eric's apple trees, but 
Those have like a lot of stuff around them and I just, I am too lazy to deal with that. So in total, we have 480,670 bells. I'm gonna go ahead and keep 450,000 in there and we will go ahead and continue on our money-making mission. Blathers wants nothing to do with my fossils. That's actually good for me because now we have an extra 22,000 bells. Let's go ahead and do our captain tour because we still have some bramble to look for in terms of flowers and shrubs. And we dig in an island full of vines, which means we get the plumeria bushes that we've been looking for and more vines. But like a big stupid dummy, I brought all of my gyroids with me, which I meant to put away before we left. So now I don't know how much we can carry. What's interesting, and I've never noticed this before, but there's no flowers on these types of islands. It's completely devoid of flowers, which I just find kind of interesting. The DIY we got this time is the Suspicious Cauldron. That's, <laughs> I was not expecting to get this one. That's pretty interesting. All right, let's go ahead and pick up our gyroid and get out of here. The shrubs we found on that island were exactly what I was looking for because I want to put these in some other spots. For example, I wanted to put a couple in front of the staircase by the campsite. I would also like to scatter them around the big pond that we made that kind of feeds into the river. I really like this pond and I think, uh, you know, I'm only going to lightly decorate around it. And by that, I mean, I'm going to play shrubs around it <laughs> and maybe some flowers too, if we can find some. I'm also going to be putting some of these shrubs just kind of out here in these little grassy areas by our paths. I have no plans to decorate much with these. So just, you know, putting down a shrub or two here and there, probably a good safe bet. I'm gonna put this one actually over here. And I mean, just that one trip and I've already used all the shrubs that I collected. So that's pretty cool. We have that done now. I would like to go visit a Nook Miles Island via a ticket that we buy instead of, you know, a cat and boat. This one's gonna be more of a gamble because we just don't know what kind of island we're gonna get. I'm hoping to find some interesting flowers and shrubs though. Looks like a pretty standard island. It looks like everything's gonna be on top of a cliff, but I'm gonna run around and see if there's a DIY first. No DIY, but I am gonna, oh, well, I guess <laughs> maybe not. I wanted to grab some coconuts and also some uh, wood while we were here because we are gonna have more DIYs we have to craft soon. I'll just go ahead and grab the coconuts though. That's fine. We could just do that. The coconuts are because I would like to go ahead and decorate our beaches back home just with coconut trees. I like to keep it simple on beaches, generally speaking, but with this island especially, I have no desire to decorate my beaches. <laughs> I would have probably had to set aside a whole nother week just to do that. Good news is we found flowers that we've already started collecting back home. So if I grab every one of these and add them to the collection, I might actually be able to make a nice big area full of cosmos. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh our shovel and then bash all the rocks before I leave as well. I thought for sure I'd get at least one gold nugget, but so far that is not playing out. This is the last rock. And no, no gold nuggets for me. <sighs> And I barely got any stone too. Got a lot of iron and clay. So I kind of lost out there. This whole trip, I don't know. This one, this one took a bit. While I am pretty happy with the flowers that we found and, and this project that I'm kind of working on with the flowers becoming more of a reality, I gotta say, I'm not thrilled about how long it's taken me to just do everything I wanted to do in this particular day that I've time traveled to. It's becoming painfully obvious that if I want to make money, which I do, I need to just focus on that. I should be time skipping and only traveling to each day with the intent of making money. We harvest the farm, we look for the money tree and the money rock, and we move on. That's the way I think I should be doing this right now. And I'm not. <laughs> so we may need to, after I plant these flowers, kind of figure some things out. Because I don't want to get rid of these flowers, and I do need them for a couple of crafting recipes, or at least one, I'm going to plant them here. I'm going to pluck them. I didn't know what to put between these houses. The flowers are the perfect thing. Meanwhile, my excess mums will be randomly planted here in front of the museum. These are also flowers I want to use for crafting, so I don't want to lose track of them. We'll just go ahead and plant a couple here and there. I'm going to take the yellow ones with me because I can make mum cushions with those, and I think those would be great for filling out the rest of this yard we have in the museum that we just were never sure what to do with. While I'm at it, I will grab the yellow mums from this path as well just so we can start stockpiling these. I stole back the pink lilies from the museum, so I'm gonna go ahead and place just a few of these around this pond. My fatal mistake so far has been not focusing on the money, so let's skip ahead again and this time really truly only focus on making money. And unfortunately, the day we skip to, it is not raining, so I have to water these crops by hand. We're gonna water all the crops, we're gonna look for the money rock and the money tree, 
and then we will skip to the next day where we can finally harvest these again. Fortunately for me, the money rock was right next to Eric's crops, and it was the first rock I tried. So now we just need to find the money tree, which I'm realizing I didn't even look for on the previous day, or I thought I did, but I never found it, it never turned up. So we're not really stacking bells in our coffers at the moment. We're just doing such a bad job. Luckily, today's is easy to spot, though. With all that out of the way, and as much as it's going to pain me, I'm skipping to the next day. All right, it is harvesting day now, and we're going to hopefully make a whole bunch of money again. I think we'll have enough to pay down this home loan, which will earn me, I believe, the attic? And then we have a whole nother loan we have to pay down. But here's the thing. I've learned that Flick is on the island today, and I didn't really consider the opportunity until now, but maybe instead of time skipping like I am, which is already becoming exhausting, I can just spam bug catching. It is summer after all. There are a lot of bugs to catch. I don't know. It's it's worth thinking about. I think I'm just getting a little bit lazy is the thing. It's probably faster to do what I'm doing with the crops. In fact, it's definitely faster. I mean, we're talking about like another million or so bells I'm gonna need to earn. Our money rock luck is continuing though. This is again the first rock that I tried. And that's really nice. First round of crops, 100,000 bells for us. Second round of crops, another 54,000 bells, which puts us at just about 100,000 bells shy of paying off this loan. I did find our money tree though, but before we skip another day, I wanna try and juice our income here a little bit by checking out some of the gyroids we've collected. There's not one particular type of gyroid that I have like a lot of, but I can tell you what, I'm gonna keep like a couple different kinds because I am probably gonna use some around the island. But then I'm gonna go ahead and like sell all the others. Speaking of selling things, it's probably also a good idea to sell some of these excess fences. These are just kind of money sitting in my inventory. Oh, well, <laughs> they're gonna have to sit a little bit longer, I guess. And look who it is again. <sighs> Eric, I don't have time for your nonsense. We're out of here. Leave right now and never come back. Before we sell off our gyroids, we'll go ahead and get our fossils identified. Those should also bring us some extra cash. I am so curious to see what kind of money this brings. Is this gonna be enough to pay off the loan? Is it just gonna be maybe like 50K? I have no idea. 60K, <laughs> okay, oh, I'm a little disappointed if I'm being honest, but it's something. So we've learned that gyroids are not the most solid of investments. However, one of the hot items of the day is actually a terrarium, which means we're gonna get double of what we would normally get for selling these. So I am gonna craft a bunch of them. They only take iron and weeds, and I have a lot of that stuff. So I figure why not fill up and just sell some to, uh, you know, change things up a little bit. In case you couldn't tell, I really wanna pay off this loan without doing another time skip. Between those and some other junk I had, that's another 73,000 bells, which puts us at more than enough to pay off our loan. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> okay, now we only have one more loan to pay down. We need to ask Tom Nook to expand our house. That next loan is going to be 1.248 million bells that we need to come up with, like, basically immediately. It's day 29 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. The last day is almost upon us, and we spent yesterday preparing for just that. We gathered supplies, made some money, and touched up the island. And now today we start our final big project. It's the 30 day DIY island. It took forever, but I'm finally able to decorate an entire house. This is basically all the work we've done since starting, and I wanted to save the house for last because I wanted to make sure the entire island had enough stuff on it. That means we're probably gonna have to make some concessions with the house. You're probably wondering, where does all of this glorious furniture that I currently have leave us with the happy home people? Well, in the last letter that they wrote me, despite having zero points, I'm currently rank B. Honestly, I'm taking that as B for brutal. Anyway, a lot of what we do here is going to depend on the DIYs we've currently unlocked and that will just kind of help decide what types of rooms we want to create for the house. I'm going to start by gathering up some regular wood because that is the one resource I am pretty low on. Thankfully, there are a couple spots on the island that are just littered with trees that I'm probably going to move around a bit, but ultimately, if you see a spot like this, safe to assume it's not gonna change too much between now and end of day tomorrow. I'll probably need to pick some more trees to uh, chop up today as well, but hopefully this will get us going at least. And then I think we should also, while we're out, go ahead and pick up some customization kits as well. I figure I should also run around before locking myself indoors all day and see if there's maybe a new DIY on the beach, maybe someone's crafting something new. 
We could still use some variety when it comes to this build we're doing. It is, however, Sunday, so no one's going to actually be crafting today, but we do have a beach DIY. And it's the brown herringbone wall, which is exactly what I want to see. More wallpapers and floors, I could definitely use the variety. I don't think I'll be locking myself indoors for too long because I have 27 regular wood, but let's just grab what we can. The goal right now is to take this one room at a time, and I think the first room we need to look at is perhaps building a workshop of sorts. Hopefully I can find enough things to put in said workshop. Obviously the first and foremost needs to be a mini DIY workbench. I'll need to run through and just try to find a bunch of items that could fit this theme. I wish I could place fences indoors because <laughs> some of these might actually look kind of cool, but uh, we are limited in that way. And look at that, I've crafted over 200 pieces of furniture after gathering up some items to put into our workshop, which I am going to put in the back. As per my own rules, I'm not allowed to use this floor wallpaper that come with the house, so let's change that stuff out first. I have a steel frame wall, which believe it or not is a wall you can craft, as well as the steel floor. Now as usual, I did run out of materials, so I only have so many things in my storage that I can really put down at the moment, but we will go get more things and come back. Uh, but let's see, I think maybe a barbell, well, I don't know, I don't, can I make a gym with just a barbell? Because I don't think I have any other workout equipment, maybe that belongs in the workshop for now. Uh, random tables and chairs, if we need them. I made a couple different types of toolboxes. I do of course have the key holder, which I think is a great item for the workshop. And we could put a gyroid or something in here. The only reason I save these gears, these are store-bought. Uh, I save these because you can actually turn them gold, but I never got the recipe to do it. And this would be the room where I would want them, but whatever. So I think I'll just start by kind of placing some stuff down semi-randomly. Uh, just kind of put stuff in the corners. I think what we want to do is maybe take both of the barrels and keep them kind of like that. We'll take maybe this green toolbox and leave it there for now. Uh, the weight, the, the barbell can just kind of go in the corner. It's, again, it may or may not stay here. And I just want you to get used to this because this could very well be the entire build, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. We need to just go out and get some more supplies. I have a couple of ideas for this. I have an extra Nook Miles ticket, which we can use, and we can also take a Captain tour. And the DIY on our Captain Island is the tree standee, which I have already. Other than that, I got a great island because these are the shrubs I've been trying to find for a while. And now I have more of them, this is fantastic. There's also mums here, but uh, I mean, as much as I would like to have some more, I don't know if I'll have room. Maybe I'll grab a few on the way out if we have room. Mostly I'm just here for the blood of these trees or the wood that they drop. I, I don't know, it's the same thing. The regular chunks of logs, really hard to get your hands on. I'm trying my best, but these trees are just not dishing out too many of them. And that is what I'm out of. It's keeping me from building so many things I wanna put in my house. So we ended up getting 16 of the logs we need, but that's not nearly enough. I'm gonna go ahead and take on that cat or the Nook Miles ticket island next after I put my shrubs somewhere. I am really, really glad that I found the shrubs I was looking for because uh, I wasn't sure we were going to, and I really want to put more of these around the island. We got some pretty heavy rain on this Nook Miles Island. We also found some more Cosmos, which is really good because I definitely want to put a few more. I was like literally missing, I think, three in the area I was trying to fill out with them. So yeah, we'll grab some of those on the way out. I forgot to grab the mums on the way out of the last island, so hopefully I don't do that again. So I did bring back some flowers, and we have 37 regular bits of logs now, and I'm hoping that's enough for a bit because I don't feel like going out again. However, we should maybe probably plant some of these coconuts. I know I just said I didn't want to do more things, but listen, <laughs> if I don't plant these now, I don't know when we're going to have them grown in time for the last day. So we'll already have to do some time traveling just to make sure that happens. Let's go ahead and, uh, just try to get ahead of that problem now. The way I like to plant coconut trees is in little clusters. So I like to leave large areas of the uh, beach open and then just have areas that have like a bunch of little trees on them. I used to spread them out kind of evenly, but I actually prefer this. And if I were decorating my beaches, then this sort of pattern is ideal because you have like plenty of space still to decorate and it looks somewhat natural still. All right, so I have this half of my island's beaches done. Let's put a bunch right here. We'll put one right about here, and we'll add a friend for this tree right here. And I think that's gonna be all of the coconut trees that I plant around the island. All right, back to crafting some items for our workshop. Pretty much the main reason I went out was to make one of these project tables. I think what we'll do from here is we'll put the waste bin right about there. I'm gonna throw the project table in the middle of the room. I moved a toolbox on top, and then I'm gonna take these cherry speakers I made. I just wanted kind of like a radio in here, and. This is one of the ones I can craft. So I'm gonna put that in the corner on one of the barrels. And then I also made a couple random items. So I made a wooden field sign that I thought would be kind of cool to put somewhere. And then I wanna junk it up as well with some cardboard boxes. So I thought the field sign could go here, just kind of tucked in the corner. 
We'll have our boxes maybe where the barbell is. See, now it's kind of taken up some room there, but we'll put the boxes here, and then I have this additional seat. Honestly, this is more stuff than I thought I'd be able to put in here, so I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with it. We'll leave this space open on the project table. I was kind of hoping I could put a tool on there, like a shovel, but packed up in its little toolbox. I thought that would look cool. Not sure how to do that or if you can, so we'll move on from that. Let's go ahead and set up some music in here. When it comes to a rugged workshop, I think KK Rock is probably what you should do. You know, for not having Happy Home Paradise at our disposal, I'd say this isn't too bad. The next place I want to start thinking about is a bedroom. I have some random furniture here in the corner, which I will grab. We'll take us, we'll take that with us in there. And I think this side room could make for a good bedroom. Temporarily, we'll just use this to kind of make the furniture we need for this room. And I just need to choose some floors and wallpapers. And I think what I would like to do is maybe this wood knot wall. And we are extremely limited on floor selection. We can make this wood flooring and we can pair it with this wall. Unfortunately, though, I only have six Cherry Blossom Petals did not do the math there, so I can only make one of these. It's probably going to be this floor because we also have some weird ones, right? We have this like underwater flooring. We have the water flooring. We have the money floor, which I mean, I do have the money to make this, but I don't know, it'd be kind of weird. Uh, I did make a bamboo wall. I think that would look good in the kitchen. I don't like the honeycomb floor at all. And then there's the jungle flooring and the steel flooring. So I just didn't get any just normal looking floors. I mean, I would have even settled for like a fruit pattern on the floor. So I think we'll go ahead and give in and grab this. It's gonna look really good. Put that down there. We'll put our wood knot wall up here. And now we get to figure out how the heck to make these colors work. It really all comes down to customizations. And I think for this, I'm gonna lean into kind of red tones, the color red in general. So we'll do cherry wood. And I could just keep the orange bed sheets, but maybe we can find a pattern that would work better. I'd say this one looks pretty interesting. So I'm gonna add a cherry rug. We're just kind of leaning on some of the rugs and stuff from the fruit collections. Furniture wise, we'll put down the wooden simple furniture that we made. On the walls, I'm gonna put a few things down as well. And the idea is to put some things in certain spots. So I don't know what this says, but now it's on our wall. I'm gonna hang this boomerang for no reason above the door. I think I'll sleep right about here. And for the, uh, you know, getting changed area, I think what we can do is maybe something like this. I tend to do this a lot in my bedroom builds, but the, the mirror kind of faces this way, and then the clothing cabinet is like this. I usually put something in the corner. No idea what that would be this time. And then I have this rocking chair. I'll probably customize it, but it might go somewhere over here. The cherry rug will go here, just kind of for the benefit of, like, you know, the changing area. I thought the cherry lamp would make for, like, a good little uh, light that kind of lives next to the bed like that. Just, uh, you know, a little reading light or something. It may also look better on this side. Yeah, that balances the room better. I made the rocking chair white. I think that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I might honestly just put the second one here too. It's it's a, just, it's a bit weird. It feels out of place just all together. I don't know. It, the room just needs something there. I crafted a white acoustic guitar just to kind of balance out this rocking chair. And I think what I might do is put that, put the mirror here and put that like in the corner there. Uh, yeah, why not? That, that helps... I think uh, a, a little bit. Also with the wallpaper, let me just try something real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I think the bamboo wall in here actually looks better. Nothing stops us from then also putting this in the kitchen as we, if we want to, but uh, it just needed a lighter wood tone in here. And then we can move our sign down because the window's gone. I need the tacoid back on top of this where we had it before. <laughs> I'm not going to customize the tacoid. It's, it's staying exactly as we found it. And if you couldn't tell, I've been trying really hard to avoid going out again, but I want to make these shelves. So we are going to go gathering. I feel like we got a whole bunch of the regular logs this time. Maybe cedar trees just drop them more. I don't know. I don't know if there's science behind that. Well, we have a bunch more by the museum. So let's take advantage. That brings us up to 27. Not great, but not the worst. Just walking back in here, I, I kind of like this. It's weird, but <laughs> I don't hate it. So I'm just going to put these kind of where the work bench was to uh, maybe right there. I don't have much to put on tabletops right now, so we'll put this garbage plant like here. And with that, I think we call this room done. It's definitely odd, but I needed a bedroom. So you know what? It works. For the next room, since we were running lower and lower on materials and, <laughs> and recipes, so we don't have a bunch of repeating items, we're gonna need to start getting a bit creative. For the walls, let's go with brown herringbone. For the floor, it's gonna be strange, but we'll go with a steel flooring. Great, I absolutely hate it. Instead, we'll go with the jungle floor. <laughs> I don't know, we can't really win at this point. We're gonna create an array of items. I really wanted to make this log extra long sofa, which I got so many of. It requires two log chairs, but I never got log chairs. I guess we'll have to just settle for log. So what's the deal with this room anyway? Well, normally I'd put a bathroom in my house, 
but uh, I don't have a toilet. I can't make a toilet, so that's why the floor is dirt. Or if it can't be a bathroom, it might as well be a cool hangout spot. I've decided to go ahead and dye a bunch of things green, which I think is working pretty well, actually. I even went ahead and made a mossy garden rock just to kind of put in one of the corners. I don't know if it'll stay there, but I do like it. I have the log decorative shelves now, which I got recently. I do really like this item. Uh, I think it can actually go maybe in the back and we move this seating area maybe up here. I also made the log and we'll go ahead and put that in front of the fireplace just kind of as a way to, you know, indicate, hey, come have a seat and hang out in front of a fire. Uh, but I don't know, the seating in here is odd. Maybe a better call would be to kind of center everything around the fireplace like this, move it back a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't have enough leaves to make another one of these tables, but I do have a stone stool. And because this room already looks so off. <laughs> I guess we could use that. It is possible to squeeze in and out of here, so I, I guess this is about as close as I can make everything. This is the weirdest room I've ever made. Without customizing it though, I do have the perfect squeakoid to place right there on the fire. I like that. I had to go out for some more customization kits, and uh, I've been thinking I am going to want to make a kitchen next. It might be time to finally unlock the cooking skill. They're finally giving me the country fence recipe. I've been on the hunt for this one forever, so that is amazing. We'll make use of it tomorrow though. Let's unlock cooking. We'll go ahead and download the updated app, and now we can buy some recipes. The Nooklings have the basic cookbook here, so we'll go ahead and buy that. And the reason this is so ideal is because I really don't have a lot of items that I can put on top of tables at least ones that I haven't used a million times already. So let's see what we have. Obviously a lot of this stuff is gonna depend on me actually like not selling every single crop that ever grows, but we have all of these different foods. We have a few different desserts, including cherry smoothie, and I can make some of those. And then of course we unlock the stonework kitchen, which is the only kitchen we will be making. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I just wanted to try and, uh, you know, finish up this room. We'll throw down a record player and that's gonna go here in the corner. And I did manage to make some hanging terrariums, which are my favorite wall hangies that I can actually craft. And then I made a bamboo candle holder because it kind of goes with the different wood tones. And you know, it's just kind of nice. I made a non-hanging terrarium to put right here. Or actually, I think I might put it right here because I also made this ukulele for no reason. And I'm just gonna put that right there. And then for this corner, I have a green leaf pile. Or perhaps it can go in this corner over here. I'll leave this one empty because I'm gonna take this uh, bench with me. Yep. This is a strange, strange room. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know what people are gonna think whenever they come by and see it. Maybe they'll think, "Wow, this this person really was at the end of this challenge when they made this room." All right, just a few spaces to go, and these ones are gonna be pretty straightforward. This is going to be our kitchen. Now, normally, I would have like counters and little bar stools and pillars, you know, all the happy home stuff to make the kitchen feel really full. But instead, I'm just gonna make two stonework kitchens, ooh, which is gonna cost me a lot of my stone. Oh, you know what? I need my stone for other things, so we will make one stonework kitchen. Yep, that's fine. I'm gonna go with the mossy kind as well. My floor struggles continue. I am gonna try the steel flooring in here again. And I will put the bamboo wall up as well. The stonework kitchen will go on this wall here. And in an effort to solve my problems with flooring, I'm gonna make a bunch of these green bamboo mats. Of course, the centerpiece of this build is going to be the nice big table we put in the middle of the room. The way I hope this is gonna work is we're gonna put down a bunch of these. To me, they look very odd when <laughs> facing that way. So I am gonna keep them in this orientation. And this was kind of the plan. They're gonna go underneath the big table, but I think I need maybe six more to make this wider. I want this not to feel like too much like steel floor everywhere. I I wish I didn't have to get so crafty <laughs> to make this happen, but oh my gosh, this is what we've come down to in terms of items we have left and recipes we unlock. Of all the unlocks that have come in clutch for us, I just never imagined this would be one of them. But okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna flip this around, put it here. We'll put these here, put that one right there. And yeah, I mean, you can still definitely tell there's a steel floor on the bottom, but at least now the majority of it is made up of bamboo. And I have enough bamboo to maybe fill up the entire thing if I really want to, but let's just see kind of as this comes together how it looks before we go that far. So the nice thing about these tables is that you can use hardwood and softwood to create them. But for whatever reason, the chairs require the regular wood as well. So I'm going to cheat and use natural garden chairs instead of any chairs that require me to use regular wood. I've made eight of these. I know they're not a perfect match for these tables, but I do think they work just fine. I've made a few different things for the walls. I think surrounding the kitchen and potted ivies looks pretty nice. I also made more hanging terrariums to hang on the back wall. I'm gonna put one on each of these bamboo posts here, and I think that looks pretty cool. And for the dinner 
dinner guests waiting to leave the strangest kitchen in the world, I'm going to go ahead and put an ironwood clock above the door. And despite our limitations, it so far looks okay in here, but you know what? I am going to go ahead and commit to a full bamboo floor, which means I do need to go out and gather a bit more bamboo. This is of course the one resource I'm pretty confident we're not gonna run out of. All right, time to make the rest of our mats. So without placing any new ones down, this is where we're at so far with the bambooning of the room. I have eight more mats to put down. <laughs> the chaos of this floor situation, I'm just never gonna get over it. It looks like we're gonna need 10 more to fill in the rest of the space. Of course, I had to choose the biggest room possible for the kitchen. Instead of making 10 more though, I made eight. I did so though for a very specific reason. I just wanna see something real quick. How do we feel about there being just a little bit of room in front of the stonework kitchen that is steel floor? It kind of reverses everything, right? We have the green bamboo floor here, and then of course there is a steel rug in front of the kitchen. I'm going to keep it that way because <laughs> I think it adds a little something to this. Next we need to place down some stuff on the table, so I've made some coconut juice and a couple of turkey day things as well. I think it feels a lot more like a party in here now. <laughs> it's, Oh, the floor. I can't get over how bad it looks. It's better than the steel, but everything everything revolves around this floor right now. I gotta find other stuff to put on it. I do have a palm tree lamp, which believe it or not requires the same kind of wood that I'm currently out of, so I can't make more, but we can just shove one of those in the corner. And just to balance things out, even though it's very, very silly, I've made a deer scare just for that corner. I'm not gonna lie, I had high hopes for this kitchen. And I think we did okay for, you know, what we have on hand, but uh yeah, <laughs> not my favorite room, if I'm being honest. So all that's left now is the basement and then the main entry room. And I got to be honest with you, at this point, most of this is going to be phoned in. I'm sorry. Real quick, let's gather up some shells. And evidently, I don't have enough coral. So now I have to go get a Nook Miles ticket just to grab some stupid coral. But that's okay. I am determined to get this very simple build done. I'm not finding any coral so far on this island. I found a DIY, but... <sighs> Three shells and one DIY is not what I need right now. And it's a pear umbrella, which I couldn't make even if I wanted to, and I already know that one. <laughs> oh boy, this is not going well. But that's okay, I printed another Nook Miles ticket just in case. It cost me 2,000 Nook Miles to do one of these. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm getting an extra DIY here and there, but... I am getting nervous that I'm not going to find any coral on this island either. I did find the shell speaker though, which is kind of cool because I'm trying to do shell furniture in this basement. Okay, so this island also didn't have coral. All right, plan B. Welcome to two hours in the future. Shells don't take all that long to respawn, so I just jumped ahead a little bit. I didn't feel like doing all the dailies again. I could have just skipped till tomorrow, but eh. Here's one piece. Oh my gosh, guys, I cannot believe how rare it is to find coral. I, if I had known, I would have been collecting it this entire time. I don't even need that much. Will that balloon have coral? Nope, just clay. Okay, well I've explored the entire beach again and got one piece of coral. <sighs> well, enjoy the fireworks while you can because <laughs> it's not often nighttime here on Gee Whiz. But uh, yeah, we are looking for coral two hours later again. Hey, a piece of coral. I forgot how awesome the fireworks were. Look at this. That's so cool. Anyway, I have enough coral now for what I'm trying to make, but my dream scenario would be to get three more pieces. Uh, I'm not counting on it, but here's one. If I can't find two more, nothing says I can't work on this a little bit more tomorrow, but tomorrow's plan is all about the outside of the island, or the outside of my house, rather, and I have to make sure a bunch of stuff gets done so we can put the finishing touches on it. I can't really be hanging out working on this project anymore, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I have a backup plan. So all I was trying to make was this underwater wall, which looks amazing. And there's also a floor that goes with it, but it, failing that, I can just use this floor for now. But I would like to trade it out for the underwater floor that matches this wall. We can hopefully do that tomorrow. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this room is done, which you're kind of thinking like, what? But I, again, I'm just phoning it in here. I wanted it to look kind of neat when you came down here. However, I do have a few items, and anything we add at this point in this room is just kind of a bonus. So here we go. It turns out the shell speaker takes conch shells. I need one more of those. We'll skip it for now. Let's make a fountain. With my one pearl, I will make a mermaid table. I normally don't do the mermaid furniture, as you know, but hey, why not? I think turning out the lights in here is kind of cool because of the way the wall looks, but I don't know. It, turning them on looks cool, too. Uh, let's do, let's do this. And then I think we'll put a song on the music box here. This one sounds pretty good in the music box. I like that. 
Let's pick up our bench. And I think for now, this is good. I may come back in here tomorrow and add a couple more things. But yeah, I when it comes to this room, I never had any plans. And then I saw many summer shell recipes and things we had. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to put a couple things down here. I just love this wall. I think the wall itself is a focal point. But I admit... This is me kind of phoning it in at this point. But don't worry, the phoning it in doesn't stop there because we have one more room left. You see, one of my favorite things to do when I run out of items and or ideas in Animal Crossing interior builds is I like to stick a big fountain in the middle of the room and call it an entrance fountain. And as for the floor and the wall, I thought something like this would look super cool. If we keep it dark like this, the glowing moss looks really, really awesome. And then I also made a suspicious cauldron that I could kind of put like right there. Just for fun, I made a campfire and a bird bath. And I think for these, let me go ahead and light the campfire. I thought we can keep them kind of close to one another. I'm tempted to keep this workbench out here somewhere where it's easily accessible, but uh, meh. And despite how basic it is and how few items I've placed down, you gotta admit, this doesn't look half bad. With the interior done, that just leaves one thing left to do. We need to customize the house. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my favorite actual like layout for the outside. I'm just gonna play around with the roofs and the siding. I think all said and done, this looks pretty good. The house came out spectacular. I'm very, very happy with it. And uh, you know what? I'm even more excited to see how the rest of the island looks because tomorrow that's what we're gonna do. The finale, it's upon us. It's day 30 and our final day of our DIY design challenge. 29 days ago, we started fresh on a brand new island. And ever since we've been working our butts off to get as many DIYs as possible. Our primary goal has been to design the entire island from top to bottom with only these DIYs. Along the way, we've sought out the perfect villagers. We've done the work to try and convince other YouTubers to visit the island. We've defended the island from multiple threats. And I've personally spent hours and hours on and off camera trying to grind out everything we needed to get this done. And now we are so close to the finish line. It's the 30 day DIY island. So what does need to be done today to call this island finished? Well, for one thing, I can't have a farm with partially grown crops. I'm gonna go ahead and pick all these up. We are time traveling forward today to try and make sure that everything is like fully grown. We need all of our palm trees fully grown. We need the farms to look good. So I'm gonna have to work uh, overtime to get these watered the right way so that the farms are nice and lush. The good news is that I actually need food so that I can craft some of the new cooking recipes we unlocked yesterday. So instead of selling all this, I'm gonna hold on to it. But it's not just about watering crops. As you can probably imagine, there are a lot of spots on this island that still need like a little bit of work here and there. There are just some awkward, empty bits and I'm okay with not having the entire island every single tile decorated in some way that's fine I like a nice open island that doesn't have a bunch of lag I'm good with that and I know that we can pull off five stars without a ton of extra work but there are just a lot of awkward places that I do want to fix up today so as we time skip around things like that I'll be grabbing the DIYs we find I'm not really looking for anything in particular anymore it would be nice to get some cool stuff I suppose and if we get some kind of like crazy DIY we never expected. I will definitely incorporate it, but mostly today is just about taking these spots that got neglected along the way and finishing them up nicely. We also have a lot of areas on the map like this, which are just full of trees. And I don't intend on putting anything around here for the most part, but maybe some shrubs and a couple little knickknacks just to, uh, you know, make the forest feel a little more alive. But having some forests isn't a bad thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and focus on our dailies, which in this case include popping any balloons we find. And normally I would plant a money tree, but because I am good now on cash, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that hole. Let's put our food in storage. By the way, that balloon contained a lawnmower, so not using that. We're gonna check our beaches for both shells and DIYs. I did run out of shells yesterday and coral and things like that while I was trying to finish up the basement. And there are a couple more things I'd like to put down there. So I am gonna look for that as we go through the day and try to just finish that room real quick. Our beach DIY is the golden toilet. Oh my goodness. Remember when I didn't make a bathroom in my house because I didn't have a toilet? <sighs> It's only six gold nuggets, but I'm not I'm not redoing that room. It's just funny that we could have actually had a toilet. I forgot you could craft this. In any case, I have started unlocking some other things too. I did fishing earlier to try and find two boots, and I did, by the way. Uh, and we learned a couple other recipes I would have loved to have, but now I need three tires. I don't have that. Uh, we can maybe make use of these different dishes we unlocked as well. There are a number of spots on the island that could use some stuff, just kind of like 
around, especially related to food. So yeah, I'm happy I'm starting to get some cooking DIYs. Eric's farm is also only partially grown, so we'll go ahead and pick all this. We'll make food with it and we'll rewater as well. Pietro is cooking. Now, this is why I waited to unlock cooking because we've been trying to get DIYs and so often, instead of crafting, the villagers are cooking, which means you can't get a regular DIY. You end up getting a cooking recipe. But this time it's pound cake and I'm happy to get that because hey, I need, I need this stuff now. So we'll go ahead and learn that. And then we have some business here. As you know, one of our goals is to have three top 50 villagers. I'm not gonna go through the exact rankings again, but just know that Mary, Eric, and Pietro are all top 50 villagers. We also have two villagers not in the top 50, and that's Pajmina and Kabuki, but they're very, very close. Last we checked, Pajmina was ranked number 58, and Kabuki was ranked 54. Well, I'm happy to announce that we've completed our goal despite those villagers being in those rankings because at the time of recording this, the website has not yet updated. It has about 10 hours left, which means we did it. It doesn't matter what the rankings say now because we've actually done it. We did finish this island with three top 50 villagers. And that was just one of four major goals that we set out to achieve during this challenge. Our second goal was to have a fully upgraded house, which we did. We did that. We paid off all the loans to have all the rooms in the house, and we even decorated all of them. Our third goal is to have an S tier ranking from the Happy Home Academy. And this is one that, you know what, I don't think I did achieve, but... I do have mail and some of it is from Happy Home, but I think it might be a bit outdated because there's no way I still have zero points. There are no more cockroaches, so they're not mad about that, but they think it's empty, which we know it's not. They also sent a gift. Oh, and it's for the new addition to our home. We'll take that and throw it away. Eric also sent us a gift that we can't use. And then I have some art from Red I need to donate. We'll be skipping ahead soon, so we will get more mail from the Happy Home Academy and we'll find out later if I got that S tier ranking. The last goal, of course, is to have a five star island and We'll see soon if we did that too. And then of course, we can't forget one of the biggest goals we set out to achieve, and that was to get a notable YouTuber to tour this island when it was complete. So if you'll excuse me, I have a call to make. Hello? Hey, Kato, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Hey, uh, do you remember that uh, island I was working on for those videos? Yeah, yeah, the DIY island? Yeah, well, it's like almost done. So I'm just calling around wondering if you want to maybe like come tour it oh you know i actually i heard from raven i kind of heard what you did what with the amiibos and everything oh using amiibo to get lily on your island who does that i didn't actually like end up during a challenge yeah it was kind of a misunderstanding and i, I didn't end up actually like using the amiibo in the end but it's the principle dan you can't use amiibos during a challenge everyone knows that oh well I mean, Raven was pretty clear that I needed a frog, so I just didn't know. Yeah, but you're supposed to go to the islands to get the frog. I definitely, I can't. People can't see me touring an island that has amiibos on it. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have any amiibos. Like, the, no amiibos. You know what, Dan? Don't, don't worry about it. Don't call anyone else. I've already called everyone. No one is touring this island. Everyone? Could Kato really have called every YouTuber? Anyway, let's wrap up some chores and then start some of that decorating. I have a ton of fossils that I wanna go get identified and we just had those paintings, so we'll make a museum trip. I wonder if there's any chance that we finish the fossil collection with this. Only two of them get donated? And is that, they're the same exact fossil, okay. And that wasn't it, we didn't finish the fossil collection. <laughs> All right, nope, that's fine. It wasn't even a goal, it's somewhat of a stretch goal. It would've been cool. I'll take the Nook Miles though. All right, let's sell off our excess, buy up some customization kits, refresh some tools using those customization kits, and then let's visit a Cat Island because I would like to see what kind of DIY we find and if we can get some more shrubs. Oh, there's a disgusting rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did find mums, which I decided I do want more of those, so that's fantastic. And we found these shrubs we like. Uh, I was kind of hoping to find the uh, the plumeria bushes, but this is fine. I, I think I still need more anyway of the of the red and yellow ones. Anyway, let's see what DIY we get. It's cherry speakers, and I know I have those because I've made them before. I'm back from looting the island. <laughs> I filled my inventory. So let's start with finishing up the museum. I already have a couple shrubs and flowers out here, but I thought the best, oops, <laughs> I forgot. I thought the best way to handle this would be to just add a few more 
and uh, call it done. So we'll do a flower here, we'll tuck a shrub there. I'm already using these plumeria bushes here, so I'm not going to use any more of these unless it's next to a cliff. I do think, however, we could put maybe a couple flowers back here by these trees. And I would like to find something to go on this stool. One thing I got recently was the recipe for the recycled can thumb piano, so I guess we could make that. So we'll make this. While I'm here, let's craft a shell speaker, which we failed to make yesterday. I'm still looking for that coral, though. I keep having to scooch between the fountain and the cauldron, so I'm just gonna go ahead and push that right there. And let's head to the basement. Now this floor is what we want to change for later today. I'm going to go ahead and put the shell speaker for now right here. We already have a music box providing lovely music, so I'm not going to actually put anything on the shell speaker. I'm just going to let it be. There's also a couple other rooms that need some music, so we'll add some to here. I think KK slack key is pretty good. Squeakoid seems to like it. <laughs> And that's all the rooms with speakers. <laughs> there's there's no way they give me an S tier ranking for this house. Just no way. Anyway, I'm gonna put this little can piano right here. I threw a fish on it because we're always giving fish to the museum. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. We also talked about adding some gyroids in front of the museum. So I've gone ahead and crafted, or I should say customized some. And now we'll add them to all these pedestals. We'll go ahead and box them back in. Perfect. And uh, there we go. <laughs> I think the museum build is finally complete. I always hesitated to use gyroids in this build because I wasn't sure if they were DIY enough, but I mean, look how freaking adorable they are. Next up, when it comes to little spots like this, where it's just some trees, that's where I wanna come in and start adding some, of the more, some more shrubs and flowers that we picked up on that Captain Island, and I have them right here. So let's go ahead and start scattering these around. I don't know if I'm gonna add any items in here, but you know, even just the flowers and the shrubs, just a couple of them, make it feel a bit more full. And yeah, I like that. One thing I do wanna try making is like a broken dirt path. And I think I know how I might achieve this look. We'll start by making this a circle and then we'll attempt to make another circle maybe up here. Mostly I'm just trying to round as many edges as I can. Then what we're gonna do is start kind of like cutting them off a little bit. So about like this, and I think it creates like a little dirt stepping stone path that looks really good. And I only literally wanted a few of these just to put something here. I like this. Oh, I should use this effect more often. I wanna figure out what I can do next to our entrance opposite of our diner. And I need to make a sign for this diner too. Ugh. So something should go right here. In my quest to craft items for the entrance, I realized that I am just way too low on materials. So I'm gonna have to shake and then chop at all these trees. I'm also gonna go ahead and crack open some rocks or at least just, you know, beat them with a shovel for a bit. I need stone. I have like none. And there are a few things I want to craft with it. Flick, flick, no, ah, ugh, flick, why? The rock was giving me so much stone. I'm so frustrated. Oh man, I feel like I really missed out there. I was just getting stone. This rock's hard enough because there's a whole space I can't have anything drop. So Flick is officially the worst island guest, at least for today, because I really like Flick. And I have a money rock. Okay, Flick, stay away. Tons of stone from this rock. As for items here by the entrance, I have quite a, I don't know, boring selection? We'll start with my favorite for this whole series, which is the destination signpost. I mean, it's by the entrance. You gotta have some sort of like navigation, right? I made even more wooden field signs because this whole island has kind of had like a lot of farm vibes. And so I thought, yeah, why not? Throwing down a hay bed and another scarecrow. We're gonna put that maybe like right about here. And I know it's not much, but it does feel like at least there's a little something here. It kind of starts to set you up for the little bits of farming and farm vibes you're gonna see as you get onto the island and you walk up here and then you got even more. You got some more hay beds and you just have this nice cozy little area where people kind of sit and chill. Look at everybody singing and, and you know, catching bugs and uh, uh, waving at trees. And I know it's probably the most basic sign I could have made, but there we go. Now <laughs> everybody knows that this isn't just a house. It is a diner you can go in and, and eat at. Let's throw down a shrub right about here. And I think this looks a little more welcoming. It's it's still a bit underwhelming, but I'm not too worried about it. A lot of parts on the island, you know, kind of look like this where it's just a few things, it's pleasant, and then you move on. Let's begin cleaning up our flower beds a little bit. I just want to keep the initial flowers in here that are supposed to be to like help, you know, breed new flowers. And we're gonna take these flowers and kind of scatter them in different parts of the island. I am getting left with some excess here. I'm just gonna keep them for now, but there's a really good chance they'll all get thrown out because I don't want too many flowers on the island and I'm already, you know, accumulating quite a bit. But I will go ahead and finish my cluster of cosmos here. And I know it's just a pile of one type of flower in one spot, but honestly, this is looking pretty good. I did grab a couple of extra trees and I thought maybe they can go over here just a little bit 
we're not going to do too many things over here, but I never really made solid plans for this area, so I thought, why not? I do think that trees and shrubs are a good, you know, final touch for this kind of area that we have next to the river. Again, never had like a, a super solid plan as to what to do over here. But I always thought, eh, we'll probably just put some shrubs and stuff, and that's exactly what I'm doing to kind of finish this up. I don't know how many to put. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like it's really easy to overdo it with stuff like this, but maybe just a couple, and then, yeah, we'll throw some flowers in here. I have an extra tree. I'm going to put this by Eric's house, and uh, oh, I might move it a little bit back. But, uh, yeah, I just kind of thought this area needed maybe just one or two more trees only because it's just kind of vacant over here and I don't have a lot of plans for items. I do have a couple more rounds of crafting to do as I look to finish incomplete builds. We'll do our first round of cooking as well. We never actually finished our farmer's market, so I'm going to do that now. I know I put an apple awning <laughs> on this stall. I'm going to go ahead and put the stuff down anyway that is not apples, but in fact tomatoes. And everyone will think I just got confused. Let's see what this balloon is. It is a t-shirt, so junk. But this is about what I got for the farmer's market. So I made another scarecrow. This ironwood low table has the same log pack and shoes that I'm currently wearing. We have a bread store. We have a tomato store or an apple store. I mean, who's to say? And then I'm going to keep the Able Sisters area the same. So this is how you get the straw coat and the grass skirt that I'm currently wearing as well. So now if they want to, Dream Island visitors can find the entire outfit that I'm wearing and, you know, I guess walk around in a bunch of junk. We have this big area above my house that I've always wondered if I should do something with. And while I have a couple of ideas, I'm very, very low on supplies. And I don't think I can really make much happen without, <laughs> you know, some more DIYs, to be honest. I'm kind of just at a point where I've used so many of the same item over and over. I'm ready to just kind of like naturalize some areas. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of like take these trees, scatter them around, and throw some shrubs up here. And I'm pretty much gonna do the same back here as well. Up until this point, the peninsula has been kind of a mystery to me. And I mean, I, I don't have like the best plan in the world here or anything, but I figured it's about time we put something, something on this little spit of land. I wish we could have done something even better with it. Early on, I tried to put the campsite here, but it would not fit. That would have been awesome. Uh, but instead, I'm just gonna put some stuff here. Basically just a display of some nice little <laughs> bamboo, like tropical kind of items. Because why not? You know, it's it's quaint and different. I don't see a lot of people do something very simple on their peninsulas and walk away. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm short on time. I don't know, but this is this is good enough for me. Now that I have the actual fence I want to put here, let's go ahead and start working on this area. We're just going to line this entire section with country fences. And I'm going to go ahead and put a couple here as well. I didn't know what to do, so I made a couple of other little artifacts to put here. I couldn't forget my green leaf piles, though, so I'm going to put a couple of those down. And another item I almost completely forgot about is the mum cushion. I don't have a ton of these, and there's like a hundred places I would like to put them, but... I'm just going to go ahead and settle for putting a few by this river. We'll put one right about here as well. With a couple more left, maybe I'll put them by the museum. Maybe one there. I'll tuck one in right there. And slowly but surely, things are starting to feel finished. But I do need to skip ahead now to the next day. And the most important thing we need to do on this new day is water our crops so that all of the farm plots are nice and full. Today's beach DIY, the dark lily wreath. I actually have dark lilies, but... Uh, really care to make the wreath. I finally got the coral I need to make the floor I've been trying to make forever. We'll go ahead and put that in the basement. I decided this was probably the best layout we could maybe do for this room. <laughs> Having so few items down here is super lame, but I gotta say, the floor and the wall together now it does look a lot better. Now let's take a captain tour. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for. Maybe some more shrubs or something. And if that's what I wanted, I guess that's what I got. I got mums. And I actually have two left over. I've been thinking, do I throw these out? I kind of want more. And here we are. We got some more. So we'll take these, the DIY, and then maybe bail. It looks like the DIY is the cherry dress. Ah, too little too late, cherry dress. I'm sorry. Actually, one thing I would really like to grab while I'm here are some trees, believe it or not. I feel like I ran out of trees. There's just so many spots that are really, like, empty. And I've been filling them with trees, and then I'm left with a couple now. And I'm like, well, now what do I do? I don't have a lot of stuff, I'm out of trees, and uh, yeah, I think subconsciously I knew that this was probably a good thing to grab while we were in the Captain Island. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting some of this stuff down now that we are back from our Captain Island. I did think some shrubs would look nice up here, and I'm like, well, I don't have any shrubs. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? But 
we're in good shape now because we did get a handful while we were out. One of the reasons I wanted some trees is because all this time I've just not known what to put over here and I feel like it's just a little picnic park. That's it, that's the whole build. And we just needed a little something to make those picnics more pleasant. So how about a couple of trees to picnic under? Yeah, I feel like that keeps it nice and simple. I'm putting the rest of our mums kind of up here behind the house. I've gone ahead and put a spare tree right about here. Again, this area just feeling really desolate, not a lot, whole lot going on. And I think I'm also gonna place some shrubs alongside this cliff here. Let's go ahead and start selling our excess flowers. And wouldn't you know it, the nooks are stocking the fish crates today. This is one item I wasn't able to make thanks to these containers only being able to be purchased. It's not something you can actually craft. So I'm gonna buy three of them. And hey, I think we go ahead and add these to our fish stall. I think I'm gonna try these stacked fish containers maybe like right out front. We'll just kind of shove them in like that. Hmm, let's try them on this side maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that. We did something similar here in front of the pottery stall, so that works out. And with those tasks complete, it's time to perform our final time skip. All right, so with that time skip done, there are a few additional chores we need to do. First and foremost, we gotta clean up the island. We're gonna have to deal with some buried fossils, some weeds, things like that, the sticks that are gonna be scattered everywhere. This island needs to be tour ready. Our beach DIY is a ukulele, which we got really early on. Eric's crops are looking good. Eric's making a stone table, which we also got like day one. I just realized I have this fence here still. I, I'm gonna get rid of it, I don't know. I used to have a bench here as well, but it's, it's just the path is too narrow for stuff like that. I'm glad I noticed that, I almost left it. I believe that my final cleanup is done. And it looks like I have some mail. It looks like the Happy Home Academy has written us a note. This will determine if our third goal has been met, an S tier happy home rating. And no, <laughs> not even close. 77,000 points is not, uh, you know, it's too bad maybe, but rank B still? I had rank B at zero points. That means one of our goals is cringe. That's all right, let's go ahead and do our last fossil check. Oh no, 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 I don't have time for this. Brewster is not somebody that is necessary for this challenge. Uh, all the awards he gives me for, you know, talking to him and stuff every day, that doesn't matter because they're not DIYs. I can't decorate with the photograph because it's not a DIY item and expanding the museum means nothing to me. So let's go ahead and worry about the fossils and not a single one is donatable. That's all right, we'll go ahead and sell them. Well, it's time to do our final checks before we start asking around and seeing if someone's gonna come tour our island. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm glad I am doing some final checks because this is not where the rocks go. I might just go ahead and break maybe almost all the rocks. If, if they're in a spot that I don't mind, I'll leave them, but this is not, no, this is a flower garden. So I think this rock can stay. It's just kind of neat. I don't think it's hurting anybody. And I think this rock in front of the silos is also pretty good. And this, yeah, that's a bug. I have one here that is, I don't know, I guess kind of in the path, but kind of not, I'm gonna leave it. This one here, I actually broke. It used to be right here, and then it just moved a few inches up. So I guess we'll leave it. But this one though is definitely going away. I've always liked the one by Eric's farm, so we'll keep that there. And as I was doing my final checks, I spotted something. Does, does this mean? It does. We did it. We beat our main goal, which was to try and get a five star island through designing with only DIYs. And I'm now getting the golden watering can, which, hey, would have been really great to have during the challenge. With our final checks out of the way, it's time to make some calls. I got on Discord and called every YouTuber I could possibly think of. Hours and hours, call after call, not a single one picking up. Do they all know about my amiibo snafu? Well, I tried everything, but I've given this a lot of thought and I have one final plan. Maybe we don't need one big YouTuber tour the island. Maybe there's another way. I'll show them. I'll show them all. So that's it. The dream address has been uploaded, but before I share it with you, I just wanna say, thank you so much for watching this entire series, if that's what you did. A lot of you did, and I really appreciate it. There is very high demand for even more shenanigans here on GWiz, but with that, we are ending the challenge here. But don't worry, something new will be coming eventually, maybe. And when that does happen, it'll be on the screen right over there. Now, let's go ahead and put the dream address on the screen as well. Enjoy your visit to GWiz, post about it a lot, and I'll see you later.